Well, good morning then, everybody on Bus TV, and a very, very warm welcome from High Urkel, home, of course, of North Shropshire Grass Track Car Club, and home this weekend of round three of the Kent Cams and Simpson Race Exhaust British Autograss Series. Um, just to bring you up to speed on the venue, we are very, very close to start time. I think we are going to be hitting uh, advertised start time of 8.30, there or thereabouts without a doubt the uh, drivers are currently just completing their drivers briefing the marshals are assembled out there behind the marshals barriers and we are getting all set to go for what i'm sure is going to be another super weekend's racing here at the middle round of the 2022 series as i say big thank you to kent cams simpson race exhaust our overall series sponsors big thank you to beresford engineering because it's courtesy of them that you have the and I use the word lightly pleasure of being able to uh, listen certainly to me but certainly a pleasure to listen to the rest of the commentary team via Baz TV my name for those of you that have uh, been good enough to or lucky enough to avoid me Steve Langley going to be joined this weekend by a very established commentary team so we will entertain and dare I say inform you though if you can uh, see on the cameras then uh, yeah I'm all home alone at the minute but uh, Tim Jones I'm pleased to say is uh, with us this weekend as indeed is uh, Mickey B Mike Barker uh, Tim will be taking you through classes two four and six uh, Mike Barker taking you through classes five and seven Liam Williams not here yet but he's going to be here so uh, he's going to be with us a little bit later on to take you through uh, classes eight and ten and uh, making a guest appearance this weekend because uh, we haven't seen him so far at Baz Rounds, which is a shame but very pleased he's with us this weekend Russ Thompson Russ uh, we've put him in charge of the juniors for the uh, weekend so he'll be uh, looking after uh, both junior specials junior saloons and also I think the stock hatches and the F600s and I'm going to be taking you through classes one and three that's the the, the rough plan anyway but uh, there we go plans are there to be changed the uh, weather then it's, it's all good at the minute it has to be said a little bit uh, cloudy and overcast but we don't mind that not too hot yet uh, we're obviously expecting like all of the country that uh, we're going to have a hot and uh, at least dry day in terms of numbers then uh, i've forgotten to bring the number sheet in but it's somewhere around it's the high 600s we've got signed on for the weekend so uh, confirm actual numbers to you i think it's 680 odd for uh, this weekend so uh, that's a nice size unless you unless you've got to run the meeting but uh, no so uh, good numbers we will be looking at semi-finals we believe in classes one two seven and eight for the men's classes so uh, just to remind you the format for the weekend if you're going to stick with us all weekend hopefully you are then uh, the format for the weekend three rounds of qualifying for all of the uh, men's ladies and juniors classes and then those four classes so that's men's one two seven and eight the top 16 will go into a straight semi-final shootout. So two semi-finals for each class, top four in each class will go through to the final. It's that simple. All of the other classes, then we will be looking at the top eight to go straight through to the final. So uh, oh, 300 and... Uh, 300 plus races certainly to come your way this weekend so if you're uh, sat watching in your living room having your breakfast possibly at the moment then yeah sit back don't don't worry about the diy or anything like that then uh, sit back and enjoy the autocast racing but even better if you're within traveling distance i'll tell you what get yourself down here to this absolutely superb venue it's our first visit here in 2021 and quite rightly absolutely rave reviews left right and center and oh, couldn't have thought it got any better but it probably has the north shropshire team put on such an absolutely superb job here and uh, it does look absolutely a credit to them the sport and certainly to the british autograph series so big thank you to all of the team involved in uh, that and uh, helping to put the meeting on long day ahead of them 
um, without a doubt. But yeah, we are very much looking forward to it. Um, we'll get some details out. So if you want to sort of like message us and things like that, then uh, we will do our best to uh, get those messages read out and stuff as best we can. We are developing Baz TV. Uh, this is the third outing of it this season. And uh, yeah, feedback so far has been very positive and we do thank you for that. We will also thank you for your constructive criticisms and comments. And uh, as I say, we look to uh, develop it and uh, as always, I'm going to say it again and make no apologies for a big thank you to Nick Apps, who is the person that uh, launched the idea of live streaming autograph racing. And a uh, big, big thank you to Nick for planting the seed and uh, very much supporting the development of uh, Baz TV and live streaming of autographs. Talking of Nick, I have to say, then uh, I don't know whether he's listening yet, but uh, yeah, seeing on... Uh, on Facebook, then, uh, yeah, he's been on a little bit of a diet, and, uh, yeah, hey, Nick, well done. So, yeah, no, looking good, and be nice to catch up with Nick in person. I haven't seen him at any of the meetings yet, so it would be nice to catch up with him in person uh, sooner or later. And, of course, we're getting towards that big meeting where we can all catch up men's nationals only two weeks away, but we'll give you all the details about that because, as you can see, then we have got cars coming to the line, which basically means I'm going to ask Mickey B to do all the technical stuff, reach under the desk and put a switch on. And uh, we are now going to go live to the circuit as well. So I'm going to say good morning to everybody here at North Shropshire and a very warm welcome to you all. We are now joining Baz TV. They've had to put up with me already for about five minutes, so count your blessings. And uh, but to everybody here at the circuit, warm welcome to round three of the Kent Cams and Simpson Race Exhaust British Autograph Series. We are going to be kicking off, I told you, we'd be bang on time, with the Class 1s there, there on the line. And we've got eight races of Class 1 to uh, come your way. And uh, we can tell you that we are looking at semi-finals for the Class 1 machinery. I've got to go all technical and try and find an online programme to give you sponsors and things like that. Oh, I tell you what, I'm nearly 60. I can't be doing all this technical stuff. So <laughs> there we go. Hey, it worked fine at home. It doesn't work on my phone now. All I've got is blank pages. Help to the fellow commentary team. Can we see if we can get the programme up, please? Right. But I'll tell you what, we're racing already. So we will catch up with sponsors. I do apologise to all of their sponsors very important people they are but we're on three and three quarter lap qualifying we believe as they get away from the line for the first race of the weekend and that is the men's class ones and as they come past us it's the Evesham 82 car that's the first one to show there we go that's uh not all, oh, we're starting off on. This is race two, right? Okay, let's start off as we mean to go on. Right, as we go down the far side, so Tom Powell in Evesham 82 it is, that's the race leader. Dropping into that second place slot then, Ollie Hall in Scunthorpe 1. Ollie Hall, your current series leader, of course, in the SC1 machine. So he's looking to add more points to his total. I don't know why we've got race two either, so don't ask me. Chris Dyer in Evesham 28, and that's going to be my motto of the weekend, don't ask me. Uh, Evesham 28 in that third place slot. He's being challenged on the far side, though, by Andrew Owen in North Wales 397, running in that... Uh, fourth place position but 21F also looking to try and come up through the field Toby Chamberlain it is at the wheel of 21F Dan Jones in Invicta Kent 430 then just bringing up the rear of the field at the moment but down the far side Tom Powell in Evesham 82 coming back round towards us back round towards the chequered flag takes a good win Evesham 82 Ollie Hall I'm sure will be quite pleased with the second place North Wales 397 the Owen machine in third 21F then comes the uh, Eve from 28, that's Chris Dyer, IK430. And one that didn't get a mention, we'll try and put that one right, Damien Goodman in Stroud 66. Right, we have, th you've heard of the original three wise men, but well, we've got air version here. They're trying to get this um, online program up on my phone. So, uh, looks, like Lee, looks like Liam knows what he's doing. So yeah, as you, as you can tell, I've, I've got my friend. My friends have come round to play now, so I'm not on my own anymore. So that's good. Right, yeah. Race two completed. No, don't know why it was race two. Do we think we got race one on the line? If we have, and let's hope we have, Harry Parker in Ludlow 85, Tom Herbert in Stroud 31, James Slater in PAC 35, 
Carl Lloyd in North Wales 92, Alex Hill, St. Neots 164, Timothy Gardner in PAC 209, Hugh Davis in Tybee 9, and Zach Bowers in North Shropshire 159. We can tell you that the uh, series sponsor is TBR Race Engines for Class 1. What we can't tell you at the minute, and we will get this sorted, is the meeting sponsor. Right, let's try and identify some cars coming off the line to see if we've got the race we think we've got. We have, we've got race one, so that's good. Love it when, and we have got a plan, love it when a plan comes together. Right, coming round then, so uh, your race leader, it's that little white mini from the Stroud Club. That's the Stroud 31 car, Tom Herbert at the wheel of that one. He's been challenged on the inside, though, by Alex Hill in St Neots 164. As they go uh, down that far side, Alex Hill currently sitting fifth in the uh, overall standings of the uh, British Autograph Series. And how's uh, Stroud 31 doing then? Uh, can't see at the minute, but there we go. Yeah, he's sitting in 27th, so he's got a bit to do. But leading this race as they go uh, into that start line turn, once again, running in third place then, Hugh Davis in the Tyvee 9 machine. He's running all on his own in third, because then a little bit of a gap back to Carl Lloyd in North Wales at 92. Coming up through on the inside or trying to, I think that's the Harry Parker Ludlow 85 machine. Yellow flag with the black cross goes out. One to go, straight 31. St Neers 164, Tyvee 9. North Wales 92, North Shropshire 159. Then the Ludlow 85, Zach Bowers is in the North Shropshire 159 machine. The uh, back marker just at the moment, Timothy Gardner in PAC 209. But check a flag being made ready, and it's being made ready for Tom Herbert. So still life in the minis yet in Class 1. Stroud 31 comes round, Sydney, it's 164. Tyvee 9 in third, North Wales 92, North Shropshire 159. Ludlow 85, PAC 209, finishing just ahead of James Slater in PAC 35. There we go, Albany Fabrications, well done, technical team, and Mickey B. So, <laughs> there we go, our uh, class sponsors for the men, Albany Fabrications. So we thank them very much indeed for their support of uh, men's class one. Race three should be on the line. That's Jonathan Jones in TA4, Dave Chapman in 3F, Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48, Kieran McKenzie in Cambridge 403, Robert Hughes in North Wales 49, Katie Hobbs in South Somerset 101, Ryan Powell in North Wales 52 and Jack Firth in Spalding 86. So those are the uh, cars and drivers for race three of this first round of qualifying of the class ones and already they are away from the line and uh, as they uh, sort themselves out round start line turn it's Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48 that's the early race leader and pulled away a couple of three car lengths from the uh, rest of the field as he brings that field back round towards us already so Lee Deegan it is in Cambridge 48 your race leader running in second place North Wales 49 that's Robert Hughes Dave Chapman in the 3F machine, the one with a bit to do at the moment as they go down that far side, running in third place is Jonathan Jones in Tyvee 4, and it's all not going well for Kieran McKenzie in Cambridge 403, and it's all not going well full stop because we've got red flags. Not sure who's grabbed their radio. Somebody's got it, but they'll be listening to it, I'm sure, and uh, they'll let us know what's happening on that. I'm just wondering whether it's going to be associated with the... Uh, front end damage to the Kieran McKenzie machine but uh, we'll let you know what I can tell you with a degree of certainty is that we are going to be seeing that race again so uh, unfortunately our first rerun of the uh, day on race three so race four then I tell you what before we do race four right we've got lost and found and uh, we've got oh, I think they are I don't know what, what what their keys to, to be? Oh, the fact it says Van Vault on them. I think they might be Van Keys. Right, we've got somebody's keys here in commentary. They are no use to us. So, uh, oh, they won't be until Monday when we go around and see what vehicle is left here. But no, we have your keys here. So if you've lost them, then uh, come round to commentary. We have your keys here. Just describe what they are and uh, we'd be uh, more than happy to reunite you with them. Right, Spalding 86, Jack Firth getting towed there into the middle. So uh, we'll uh, let you know what's happening on that one. Right, so yeah, unfortunately uh, we're hearing Kieran McKenzie is going to be excluded from the rerun in Cambridge 403. Race four. 
Will Henry in SR19, Ryan Kemp, North Wales 147, Rich Parks in WS20, Wayne Price in SR1, Dave Owen in North Wales 97, Riley Dye, Print and Effany in Hullathorne in Scunthorpe 25. Those are the cars that already are making their way round that far turn from us, and it is Ian Hullathorne in Scunthorpe 25 that is the uh, first one to show into the start line bend for the first time. The North Wales car then of Dave Owen drops into second place in 97, running in third. That looks like the uh, William Henry SR19 car. Riley Diper comes next, I think, in... Oh, no, it's Rich Parks in WS20. But race leader, SC25. And then W97, SR19, WS20. Wayne Price comes next in SR1, making the move round the outside. Then is Riley Diper in 10F. He's battling there with Ryan Kemp in the North Wales 147 machine. But all on his lonesome, but all on his lonesome at the right end of the field is Ian Ullathorne in Scunthorpe 25. He takes that last lap flag. One circuit to go. North Wales 97 SR19, WS20 so Rick Parks completes the lead in four. All the cars then now on to their final circuit. These races absolutely flying by as Ian Ullathorne goes down that far side. Scunthorpe 25 it is then coming round for the chequered flag for the final time. Maximum points for the young man from Scunthorpe. North Wales uh, comes across in second place, 97 of Dave Owen, then uh, William Henry, WS20, Rich Parks, Riley Diaper, Wayne Price in SR1, and completing it all is Ryan Kemp in North Wales 47. Halfway stage. Four down, four to go in the first round of qualifying of the Albany Fabrications sponsored Class 1s. Gwyn Reeves in Tyvee 23, Craig Bagley in Cum D1, Reese Phillips in Tyvee 98, Jim Bob Johnson in Scarborough 49, Phil Owen in North Shropshire 8, Ollie Rigglesworth in Scarborough 221 and Tristan Daniels in Athelstan 2. Those are the cars that were on the line but they're not because they're on the track. They are race 5 and we are up and running. And on the inside, then, it's Tristan Daniels in the Athelstan 2 car that is just about the first one to show, trying to make a move around the outside there. Craig Bagley in the uh, C1 car, and it is the Cum D car that pops out as the race leader. Craig Bagley does seem to be enjoying his Class 1 racing, it has to be said. I think he enjoys his Class 7 racing as well. Uh, Jim Bob Johnson in Scarborough 49, though, sees that little bit of a gap on the inside and says, thank you very much. And S49Y then takes up the running, looking to track him through as well is the other Scarborough car that's Ollie Rigglesworth in Scarborough 221 running in that fourth place now is your early race leader Tristan Daniels tracking him through Phil Owen in North Shropshire 8 that's the leading five then the two Tyvee cars racing together Gwyn Reeves in 23 and Reese Phillips in 98 but it is still Craig Bagley in Cum D1 that comes round as the race leader line astern as the last lap flag goes out Scarborough 49 Scarborough 221 Appleston 2 North Shropshire 8, Tyvee 23 and Tyvee 98. All the cars then on to their final circuit and uh, plenty of uh, opportunity for positions to change as Craig Bagley leads them down the far side for the final time. Come D1, that comes round. Jim Bob Johnson in that second place. I think that's how it's going to finish. It is indeed. Uh, Ollie Rigglesworth third in Scarborough 2, 2, 1, then Athelstan 2. Then comes Phil Owen in North Shropshire 8. Tyvee 98 uh, gets the better of that inter-club battle. Reese Phillips finishing just ahead of Gwyn Reeves in Tyvee 23. Right, first question of the day then. What do TA16, Connor Griffiths, MA196, Paul Boland, TA18, Daffid Jones, ARC304, Luke Fairhurst, PhD48, Mitchell Collins, SP26, Jordan Robinson, and R76, Tom Hawthorne have in common? Easy question to start things off. Answer is they're all in race six of the first round of qualifying of the uh, men's class ones. Because all being well, those are the cars that are assembled up there on the uh, start line, getting ready to come at us. If you're new to British Autograph Series Racing, then just a reminder, of course, all of the races and grid positions are randomly computer drawn. So uh, this is what the computer has thrown out earlier on this morning as they make their way uh, down that far side. And coming back round towards us, then the first one to show just is the Tyvee 16 car. So, yeah, of Connor Griffiths. Yes, it is that Connor Griffiths. Tyvee 16, race leader. 
looking to come through then on the inside Luke Fairhurst in ARC uh, 304 up into that second place slot the other Tyvee car looking to come up through the field as well Daffy Jones in Tyvee 18 but Connor Griffiths it is in 16 ARC 304 Tyvee 18 then comes the Spalding 26 car of Jordan Robinson racing just ahead of Tom Hawthorne in Radford 76 visitor across from Southern Ireland then the Mallow 196 car of Paul Boland and completing it all is the PhD 48 car of Mitchell Collins last lap flag though already going out one circuit to go for Connor Griffiths in Tyvee 16 ARC 304 under strong challenge from Daffy Jones in Tyvee 18 the Tyvee car just looking for the gap through on the inside and uh, as uh, Luke just drifted a bit wide in 3.04, also Jordan Robinson taking advantage of that. But it is going to be Conor Griffiths in Tyvee 16 that's going to come round, take the checker flag, take a good win. Second place then goes to uh, Daffy Jones in Tyvee 18, Spalding in 26. Tom Hawthorne fourth in Radford 76, Mallow 196. Luke Fairhurst dropping back down the field a bit in the closing stages in ARC 304, finishing just ahead of Mitchell Collins in PhD 48. Race 7 then, Dylan Tyrrell in North Wales 6, Rhys Edwards in North Wales 44, Harry Witham in Spalding 14, Jamie Hussey in Scarborough 223, Michael Eichin in North Shropshire 192, Carl Dyke Whitfield in Cambridge 295 and Jake Hemsley in IK611. So this is the penultimate heat of the uh, First round of qualifying of the Class 1s. We do have the one in the uh, rerun lane, so not uh, quite sure when that one is going to be coming out. We'll try and keep our eye on the start line as much as we can. So just a little bit of uh, cone sorting out then on that uh, top bend. And as soon as uh, they're happy with that, you will see the yellow flags will go up on each marshal's barrier. That will indicate that each marshal is happy with their corner and will give the wind-up man the opportunity to wind the drivers up in the nicest possible way as they break then down the far side Carl Dyke Whitfield it is in Cambridge 295 one of the early ones to show uh, North Wales 6 then IK611 but we are hearing across the radio the call for red flags from the uh, marshals so uh, we've got an issue there on the top bend I think that was post red flags though as well so not quite sure of the uh, cause of the uh, red flags but uh, there we go race seven joins race three in the uh, rerun lane but uh, both cars there involved in that able to drive off so hopefully nothing too seriously astray we think we might have a crossover or we're not allowed to call them crossovers now are they but, we're in modern technology now, so yeah. But yeah, start line infringement or something, I think we have to call it now, because we're not allowed to call them crossover, I don't know. Must, must be some reason to do. And Boris outlawed it or something, but I don't know. Right, here we go then. Race eight, the final uh, race of the Class 1s is coming up to the line. Chandon Watkins in Swansea 10. Charlie Williams in Cambridge 42. Josh Fowler in North Shropshire 2. Ollie Tilson in St. Neots 196. Connor Urquhart in Tyvee 211, Phil McManahan in Yorkshire's 100 and Kyle McDonough in Evesham 177. Those are the cars we'd like and hopefully those are the cars that we've got. Not sure we've got them all actually because I can only count six out of there and we have got seven on the list. So not quite sure which one is a non-starter but here we go. Let's pick them up as they come past us. It's YD100 that is the uh, race leader. That's Phil McManahan in the Yorkshire Dales machine coming through on the inside then Connor Urquhart in the Tyvee 211 machine running in third then Josh Fowler in North Shropshire 2 I can't count because we have got seven cars out there YD100 then on the wide line and it does appear from previous races that might not be the best line for these class ones TA211 Connor Urquhart certainly says nope I'm coming through on the inside and Josh Fowler says well if you're going to leave me both the gap I'm coming right through on the inside and he does just that Connor Urquhart just a little bit wibbly wobbly that's as technical as I get in that start line turn and unfortunately finishes now at the back of the very hard charging pack Leading that way is Josh Fowler in North Shropshire 2 as he comes round to start his last lap. So near 196, Ollie Tilson in that second place slot. Phil McManahan in Yorkdale's 100 in third. Then comes the Swansea 10, Chandon Watkins. All the cars then on to their final circuit. So 
Your race leader coming round for the final time, going to take the race win. It's going to be Josh Fowler in North Shropshire 2. St Neots 196, YD 100, then Swansea 10, Cambridge 42. Charlie Watkins finishing just ahead of the Tyvee 211 and Carl McDonough in Evesham 177. Right, it hasn't come across officially, but I'll tell you what, I know these marshals very well. Very hard-working marshals. We're expecting the call very, very shortly. You drivers, you need to keep off these cones. They are not going to be picking them up and pulling them back like this all day. So uh, I think you've had your warning. So class one, you're, you're fortunate because your first one's out. So you might get away a little bit more than some of the other classes, but we are going to have to stamp on this. So, drivers, those cones are not there to be driven over, they are there to be driven round. So, make sure that you do, otherwise there is going to be lots of flags thrown. Right, so, uh, sorry, just going a bit quiet there. I thought, they only come in to turn me down. That's what normally happens. I, I, I think I've done well if I get through eight races before somebody comes down and say, you're too loud, we can't... Well, we have to, we can't understand you a bit, but there we go. Should be used to that now, so there we go. I'll tell you what, Ricky B's doing all his paperwork, but I reckon it's about time he introduced... Well, not introduced himself, because you know who he is, but it's about time I reckon we had a few words from him. So, uh, yeah... We've been work out all this technical gadgetry, Mickey. Right, I think if I press that, then you can say good morning. Good morning, North Shropshire. Yeah, and uh, well, we're back here, Steve. Uh, three weeks has passed really quickly. Um, I've uh, been really looking forward to this one. We were down here last year, weren't we? And it was a hot, hot, hot uh, weekend. And uh, I think the forecast again is uh, is hot. I arrived yesterday afternoon about one o'clock. Um, had a mooch around as you do. Spent a couple of quid with the trade stands. Thank you, guys. Uh, Jeff Berryford over there took some of my cash. Well, I haven't paid him yet, by the way. And BP Grassy as well that uh, managed to give me some uh, bearing grease so uh, thank you very much there's a couple of little plugs there I didn't get any discount by the way Steve you know but uh, uh, God loves a trier that's what I say yeah I think th this you, you see you can tell a racing family from me because obviously sort of like yeah you've got the trade stands and you quite rightly after a bit of discount I know they do good deals anyway but yeah a bit of discount and stuff what can we get from the trade stands and stuff and things like that for racing where do I pitch myself the ice cream van I, and I'm not sure, hands up, anyone around the track, right, who was yesterday thinking, oh, it's not that sunny, there's a bit of cloud in the air. I woke up this morning, I've got a burnt neck. I don't want to know, but you know, I, I, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> unless I left the heating on last night, I don't know, I woke up with a red face and a burnt neck. So, unless Jilly was trying to set me on fire. <laughs> well, I've always heard your hot stuff, so there we go, but, uh, yeah... <laughs> So, yes, uh, we, we might have to uh, bring you up to speed with some of the uh, messages that were floating around in the week. Um, but there we go. Right, we're on to Class 3, and Class 3, Ram Developments and uh, uh, Millford Car and Commercial Repairs, air sponsors. This is race one of five, already away from the line, and it's Bill Holloway in Isham 34 that is the one that blasts past us from the power machine then in that second place slot that's Jed Power in Yorkshire's 99 as they go down that far side and back round towards us but Phil Holloway been one of the top runners in class 3 for a few years now and you can see why in 34 Yorkshire's 99 Leon Dorsey in North 293 then comes the uh, Woodruff machine that's Steve Woodruff in White Rose 71 he's under strong challenge from Neil Corbett in Eastern 56 Vince Fugia in North Wales 3, Ocean Hughes in Tyvee 22 and then Dean Guy completes it all in Radford 70, last lap flag goes out one to go for Eastern 34 Yorkdale's 99, North Shropshire 293 that is the 1, 2 and 3, Neil Corbett in Eastern 56 makes a move up through on the inside of Steve Woodruff but Steve Woodruff looks for the cut back, that's the closest battle at the minute for fourth place because the chequer flag comes out and it comes out to Phil Holloway, Eastern 34 takes the win North Shropshire 293 just pinches second from 99. Woodruff gets back up ahead of Corbett in that battle. Then comes Vince Fugia in North Wales 3, Ocean Hughes in Tyree 22, and Dean Guy in Radford 70. 
So flying stuff then from the first heat of the Class 3s. As I say, uh, Ram Development, uh, British Autograss Series sponsor. And actually, sorry, Elite Transmissions are uh, meeting sponsors. Read the wrong class. So Elite Transmissions uh, sponsors here this weekend. Race two, Russ Tinker in York 4, Jeff Gibbs in Hereford 1, Stephen Goodwin in North Shropshire 41, Lee Almond in North Wales 27, Bob Matthews, good to see Bob Matthews back out in SR 55, Tony Goodsir in Scunthorpe 307, John Price in Penhow 119 and Callum Allenson in Yorksdale's 34. That is the lineup. And as they come past us for the first time, it's uh, Lee Almond on the inside in North Wales 27, Russ Tinker in York 4 slots into that second place Tony Goodsir runs third in Scunthorpe 307 problems for Jeff Gibbs in Hereford 1 and problems for Bob Matthews in SR 55 and uh, we've got red flags we've got black flags or we've got all sorts of things going on in race 2 so uh, they are going to go back to the uh, rerun lane we will uh, try and find out what the uh, scenario is on that one uh, YD34 Callum Allenson then uh, parked up on the uh, far side so uh, not sure whether that was all connected or not but yeah fast and furious absolutely coming your way as promised earlier on so we will uh, sort out the uh, situation down there the rest of them will make their way back to yeah what is probably a slightly crowded re well not sure whether they're operating a rerun lane as such but rerun area and uh, we've got two class ones and a class three in there now so uh, don't want, don't want anything else in there so uh, callum allenson though uh, looks like he can drive the yd34 machine off the track or he's certainly trying to so uh, yeah as soon as he makes his way back then race three will uh, make their way out and that's going to be simon farrah in yorkshire's 24 pete robinson in north wales 72 trevor cusack in uh, cork number 25 rupert lomax in north wales 99 jamie lee in north wales 10 keith kelly in mallow 247 adam saint in cambridge one and uh, mick sumners in radford 169 so a uh, little bit of water going down on the inside of the track cones being pushed right out on the top turn so uh, yeah right out it has to be said on uh, what is it turn three i suppose you'd call it but uh, yeah so we'll see what the drivers make of that but we're looking for uh, yellow flag clearance all round and i think we're just about there so uh, race three is going to be launched and i use the word uh, in its proper context from the start line and launched it is as they go down that far side it is keith kelly the uh, first one to show and oh we've got a couple of them all hooked up that looks a bit messy i have a feeling that this one's going to go race three is going to go the same as race two uh, that means it's going to be going back to the rerun lane so on that one see so mickey's trying to be super efficient and put points and things like that on and stuff and things and then he's trying to listen to the radio and ah, there we go well, fine man but uh, yeah we're uh, get sort of saying mickey b will be with you for classes five and seven so a little bit more uh, water just going down we're going to be seeing a lot of the water cart this weekend as i'm sure you could appreciate need to uh, keep the dust down and keep the track in its uh, ideal pristine condition as best we can it's going to take a lot of racing this weekend so uh, yeah you have to bear with us for the water cart and thank you very much for bearing with us for the uh, slightly earlier start North Wales 99, right we are hearing then that unfortunately rupert lomax in north wales 99 is going to be excluded from the rerun of race three didn't hear anything on race two but uh, we can tell you that rupert lomax north wales 99 unfortunately won't be back out in the rerun of race three neither i think will pete robinson because it looks like he's just been towed off the start line so we'll sort out these cars that are down there on the bottom line yeah slightly early start um obviously uh, not unsure of numbers we knew it was going to be a very very busy well supported meeting as indeed it is but also with the weather conditions and everything that were forecast the extremely hot weather then just trying to build in a little bit of safety net of a bit of extra time to allow for watering and everything and also obviously 
Ideally, uh, like to very much be able to give the marshals a break. Uh, they're going to be out there uh, all day and stuff. So lots of people uh, working behind the scenes all day, but uh, the marshals actually stood out there very much in the uh, heat of it all, if the forecast is to be believed. But hey, who'd be a weather forecaster? So it looks like the cars down there are untangling themselves. And uh, as soon as they're uh, all sorted and making their way into the middle, and the one that is making their way, Rupert Lomax, in North Wales 99. So, yeah, so unfortunately, I uh, think being caused, uh, deemed the cause of that one. I think Keith Kelly in Mallow 247 was the other car that was uh, involved in that one. So, yeah, as we're gathered here, I don't know where the year's going, middle of, middle of July for round three, and oh, the year's flying by. So, uh, yeah, we'll try and keep you up to speed with, uh, obviously, the future British Autograph Series rounds, two rounds to go after this one. Uh, we've still got the visit to Stroud at Gossington Bridge, and also, obviously, we'll be at Monkland, home of Border Counties Autograph Club, to round it all off. But we're only two weeks away because, yeah, not the first weekend in August, it is the last weekend in July for the Men's National Autographs Championships being hosted at that superb venue up there at Thornborough. So uh, home, of course, of Yorkdale's Autographs Club and things really kicking off now for the uh, Men's Nationals Championships. I think big thing that kicks it off also as well, live draw happening on the Thursday night. And uh, I think Russ and Mickey B are uh, going to be doing the live pairing draw. So the Nationals, of course, unique in terms of its pairings and everything like that. So that's all going to happen Thursday night, uh, I believe, in the beer tent. So uh, if that's the case and you're up there, not sure whether that's going to be broadcast anywhere or not or anything like that, live stream, perhaps or somebody will. I don't really know, to be truthful. Right, we think it might be coming over grass chat, but yeah, Russell, Russell know all about that. So, uh, yeah, but men's nationals, as I say, I'm sure nobody has now got it in as the first weekend in August. The date had to move this year. It is two weeks' time. So uh, there we go, 30th and 31st of July. That is all. So you've got next weekend, and then it's nationals, but now it's race four of uh, Class 3s here at North Shropshire. And as they get away from the line... It's Ryan Power in Yorkdale's 98 that is uh, just about the uh, first one to show. Bernard McKenzie in the Cambridge 442 machine then runs in second place. Running in third then tie the 11. Nigel Edwards at the wheel of that one. But going down that far side, Ryan Power in Yorkdale's 98 from Bernard McKenzie. This uh, Cambridge 442 car getting quicker and quicker each time we see it. First season out for 442, and it looks an absolutely superb machine. Yorkdale 98, 442, tie the 11. North Shropshire 50 then is the next one through. That's Paul Evans running just ahead of Gary Wickham in Invicta Kent 13. Then comes the SR6 car, Jody Faulkner at the wheel of that one, Warren Beatty in North Wales 40, and completing it all, Tom Hall in St. Neats 12. Power onto his last lap. Pulled away a little bit now from Vernon McKenzie in Cambridge at 442. The Tyvee 11 car in that third place slot under quite strong challenge though from Paul Evans in North Shropshire 50. As their race leader powers out of that uh, top bend for the final time, and it is a good win for Ryan Power. Yorkshire 98 takes it. Vernon McKenzie, Cambridge 442 in second place. Last lap problems for Tyvee 11, so North Shropshire 50 is next, then comes the IK machine, then comes Jody Faulkner in SR6, Tyvee 11 just across the line ahead of Warren Beatty in North Wales 40, and completing it all, Tom Hall in St Neots 12. So that was race two. Sorry, that was race four even. Race five then brings out Aaron McKenzie in Cambridge 401, Viv Cole in Carmarthen 4, Cash Yardley in Sturton 96, Martin Gould in North Shropshire 343, Adrian Davis in Tyvee 1, Rich Lee in Scunthorpe 700 and Richard Northway in Scunthorpe 306. So those are the cars for race five. We can just see the Keith Kelly at Marlow 247 machine being uh, taken off the track on the teleporter. Hopefully that is repairable because our understanding very much is Keith is eligible for the rerun of race three. I'm sure there'll be lots of people working around that car to uh, hopefully get it back out 
for the rerun of race three. In terms of reruns, haven't heard yet when the class one and class three reruns are coming, but we'll try and keep you posted, which basically means when we spot them on the line, I think. But here we go then. This definitely is race five of the class threes. And as they get away from the line, it's the man that uh, knows uh, this track, I'm sure, very, very well, because uh, I think he probably helped put most of it up. It is Martin Gould in North Shropshire, 343. That's the race lead. A little bit messy round turn two. Command and four then comes through in second place, though. We are still racing at the moment. It was the 401 car of Aaron McKenzie that uh, I think lost out in that uh, skirmish on that uh, first bend. But Martin Gould motors on from Viv Cole. North Shropshire 343 from Command and four. That's the one and the two. Cash Yardley, Sturton 96, runs in third place, but just drifts a little bit wide. Rich Lee looks to come through on the inside. It's gone up 700. Then comes the... Uh, 306 car Richard Northway at the wheel of 306 and playing catch up then is the Cambridge 403 car as they go down that far side battling with Adrian Davis in Ty V1 last up flag goes out one to go for Goldie in North Shop to 343 Carmarthen 4 Scunthorpe 700 racing then with Sturton 96 then comes the 306 car of Richard Northway Aaron McKenzie in Cambridge at 401 and Adrian Davis in Ty V1. All the cars then on to their final circuit, but it's going to be a win for Martin Gould in North Shropshire 343. Comes across that line. Big Cole command and four in second place. Third place goes to Rich Lee in Scunthorpe 700. Head of Cash Yardley in Sturton 96. Richard Northway in 306. Aaron McKenzie in Cambridge 401. And Adrian Davis in Ty V1. So that completes class three, other than a couple of reruns. Same for class one. Looking to the line, then that looks like class five machinery that is there on the line. So uh, we've said good morning to him, but now we're going to actually put him to some hard labour. So there we go. Once again, then, it's good morning. It's class five. It's got to be Mickey B. Yeah, thanks very much, Steve. And uh, yeah, we are already with the men's class five. So uh, double Bowser action going on around the track, which gives me time to tell you about the lorryinsurance.com and PTS Caravan Transport class fives down here at the third round of the British series down at North Shropshire. So uh, bring it out. Heat one, race one. It brings out bing pong. North Shropshire one, John Gaffney. Currently 15th on the point. Danny Lodge, she's leading the bass by 58 points in that Scunthorpe 212 coming out of lane 7. Barry Miles at Scunthorpe 94 out of lane 6. Patrick Daly, West Waterford 188, lane 5. Dan Godfrey, uh, he's currently ninth on the points in Cambridge 10. Riley Dayfair in uh, Wessex 255 in lane 3. Tom Ellis, currently 7th on uh, Bass Points after uh, two rounds in the Stroudon District 33. And then John Wilde in that CY7. Coming out of lane one, John uh, currently uh, 17th on points. Looking at uh, what he did between uh, Bass 1 and 2. He was a, 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 a bit of improvement um, last time out. And I'm sure he'll be looking for a stronger round uh, this time um, down here at uh, North uh, Shropshire. So, yeah, um, I think we're in for a, a cracking weekend. Um, uh, the good thing is that there's nothing, um, uh, anything wet from the sky that's forecast, but there's going to be plenty of watering, as uh, Steve mentioned a moment ago, that to keep on top of this track and to try and keep uh, that dust down so the drivers can make sure they can see all the way around, uh, there'll be plenty of water going down. So I'm not sure whether or not these uh, Class 5 boys are going to be thinking, yeah, that's great, that uh, plenty of water going down, just as we're going out the race but um, that's it you've got to race to the conditions and the conditions they'll be racing uh, on is uh, slightly slippy but uh, those uh, rear wheel drive uh, class fives um, uh, that's to make sure they uh, keep it in a straight line it's when they go into turn one isn't it and throw it in there you know will that back uh, stop going all the way around are we going to see some donuts um, did someone mention donuts? Is there any donuts on track? We'll uh, we'll wait and see. But yeah, um, over on the uh, over on the order trade stands, uh, you know, plenty to go and have a look at and to choose from as well. Obviously, we've got all the catering uh, uh, facilities here as well, and uh, and that bar as well, which I, I don't think will be open. If it is, then fair play to anyone that's having a, a quick cheeky shandy. But engines are starting to rev, so uh, I think we're going to go racing with the men's class five for the first time uh, this weekend and uh, keep an eye on lane seven where Danny Lodge is your leading bass uh, 
car and he is on cue uh, heads off up there Ellis goes with him on there as well looking for that inside line Dan Godfrey up there in the mix he's gone a little bit wider they're keeping it all under control so here we go then Danny Lodge then Scunthorpe 2 1 2 from Ellis from uh, that uh, Wessex uh, 255 Riley Diver then uh, is up into that third place and Ellis looks up the inside already coming out of that Stargate turn and now takes up the running down into uh, turn one but Lodge is looking for the gap is he going to force his way through there's no contact as yet but uh, they are side by side Lodge and Ellis goes with it then Godfrey then Diaper then uh, John Wilds uh, looking up in the mix as well and uh, then uh, you mean, we've got Ping Pong John Gaffney uh, running uh, further down the pack and oh we've got a spin out there and uh, look at uh, that He's, everyone's avoided contact but it means that we pick up the last lap flag one more lap to go on this one Lodgy then from Ellis from Wild who's up in that third place then John Gaffney then uh, we go down into Dan Godfrey in the Cambridge 10 Scunthorpe 94 here's the next show Barry uh, Miles as uh, we uh, look round to uh, the top two again and it's Checker flag and he adds 55 points to his tally it's Lodge takes it from Ellis from John Wild in third fourth goes to John Gaffney then we go down to Cambridge then Dan Godfrey Scunthorpe 94 comes over that's Barry Miles and then after that spin out the uh, Wessex 255 Riley Diaper there um, uh, not picking up uh, the uh, amount of points that he would have wanted but hey ho that's uh, racing so uh, we look up onto the line and we go with uh, race two Jaber Smith currently running second in the bass and he's just seen his uh, uh, the guy that's leading it um, take maximum points so uh, he's coming out of lane three James Mason in this one Jordan Powell Lewis Richards oh the Italian stallions out in this one Colin Chilvers the man who had the touch but shaved off to make himself look younger in uh, Yorkshire Dales 46 out of lane five he's fourth on the bass points uh, Daryl Sheen and Brian Neal and Neil Jones they make up your running and it is uh, Jaber Smith that shows them down into uh, turn one Colin Chilvers goes with it as well looking for the cutback up the inside as well but it is Jaber Smith then but who's coming on the outside there's that PAC 16 machine that's Brian Neal and Neal then does take up a, that second place and pushes down that opening straight Chilvers goes with them as well and then we look down into those uh, lower places James Mason I think is under pressure as they're bringing it round I'm getting turned down because I'm a bit loud by the way Jada Smith then from that the Brian Neal machine from Colin Chilvers then it's the uh, Italian stallion Lewis Richards now moves it up into that uh, fourth place the uh, PAC at 74 Neil Jones also looking to try and make some grounds James Mason work to do from the back but we're picking up the last lap flag one more lap to go on this one Ludlow 8 Jada Smith from PAC 16 Brian Neal Yorkshire Dells 46 Colin Chilvers the Italian standing across then no uh, oh that's a PAC machine 22 Daryl Sheenan and he's uh, running in that I think fifth place uh, sixth place at the moment here we go then checkered flag Jaber Smith does what his uh, lodge is done takes the win from Neil from Chilvers then we go down to Richards PAC uh, 74 PAC 22 love 24 and James Mason brings it up the rear in that Breeden Hill 11 so uh, that's it, uh, two down, and we move quickly into race three. And race three is pretty much these guys here could do with some big points. They're outside of the top ten at the moment, but it brings out Lee Cox, Ian Thorndike, Penny Smith, Adam Brown, Lawrence Blaber, Colin Hadley, Mark Ucker. They are your runners and rise in this one. Ian Thorndike, IK22. He's coming out of lane seven. Uh, normally quick off that line as well. And is he going to do it for me this time? He is quick, but uh, looking at it, we've got uh, someone else who's come out of that early lane. Colin Hadley, seven valley, two, four, seven. Hadley, oh, Hadley gets one in the side, but they keep it running. So here we go then. Thorndike from Hadley, from that brown machine. The uh, PhD 20, Mark Ucker then looking to cut back tighter in that fourth place as they bring it down that to opening straight. Uh, the work to do, Cox at the back. Oh, penultimate place at the back in that Forrester Dean too. But uh, they bring it out of turn two again. Uh, this track's great condition. It's always good. Thorndike from Hadley from Brown. Then uh, that Atkinson 13 
That's Lawrence Blaber there in that fifth place, looking for a cutback under the, the unside of Ucker. Ucker puts the power down and protects his fourth place, but as they bring it round its last lap flag, one more lap to go on this one then. And uh, can he be caught? Thorndike then leads it from Hadley, from Adam Brown. Uh, there we go, Ucker, after Blaber, then Cox, and then that's uh, Gloucester and District uh, 119, Penny Smith in that final place. Oh, she's made a place up because uh, one's uh, pulled back into uh, into the middle. And check and flag. And it goes to Thorndike takes the win from Hadley, from uh, Adam Brown in third place. Fourth goes to Lawrence Blab. Then we go down to Lee Cox in uh, fifth place. And then that uh, Penny Smith machine uh, comes across into that as well. And oh, we uh, black flag going out to PhD 20, Mark Ucker. So uh, that's why he pulled off. Good lad, because some of them do like uh, go colour blind, don't they? Oh, well, was it black? Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> After three laps and the marshals are flapping around with the, uh, the flags to go, come on, pull off. Here we go then, we're into race four already. Now this it brings out three in the top ten. Who's uh, highest up the pack? It's Ryan Jones in Cum D3, coming out of lane six. He's currently fifth in the bass points after two rounds. Then we go to Baxter Park at a Nottingham 45, coming out of lane one. He's six. And then Chris Tubgay in Wessex 15, coming out of lane two in tenth. So uh, there we go. We are now off and uh, running. And I think it is that, uh, Ryan, well, I say Ryan Jones, he looked like he was going to storm it into that first place. But Chris Tubgay has got uh, different plans as he uh, brings it round that turn two. So it's Tubgay then from that uh, Breed Mill 66. One of the best surnames in racing. Winnell is in uh, second place. Jones looking on the outside as they exit that uh, turn four or start gate turn. But there goes back to the Pargetter. Pargetter, was there contact there with Jones? Jones is facing the other way round. He's got it back going again. Yellow flag's been uh, waved around as they bring it all the way up into that. Oh, no. For the first time this weekend, I see red. Well, a second time, because when I looked in the mirror this morning, and uh, redneck, as they call me. So, uh, black flag, black flag. Oh, is it going to be a black flag for someone? Um, uh, I'm a bit presumptuous there, Mickey, I know, but, uh, yeah, the race got stopped. So, and there was a bit of contact down going into um, turn one. Uh, we saw that with Ryan, uh, sorry, the Kumdi, yeah, Ryan Jones there, Kumdi 3, got uh, uh, spun round. It looked like he had contact on that rear quarter, but uh, Steve's just listening in, and I think we are going to get a decision on this. And a black flag is being prepared. And, ah, uh, oh, Baxter Pargetter. That's not the way you wanted to start this weekend. Currently six on the points in the bass. And as they say on the Eurovision Song Contest, nil point. So uh, there we go. That goes back to the rerun lane. Then we bring out race five. So uh, Ian Jones, Cum D31, Jordan Bloor, York 44, Wessex 1, Jason Saunders, Matt Thompson in South Somerset 36, Phil Olsen, Breed Neal 27. Um, oh, good grief. Where's me voice of an angel? Um, uh, oh, Evion, I think it's Evion Griffiths in Typhi 19 and Asian Hathaway. So uh, that is where it is, and it's Jason Saunders that uh, brings them down into uh, that uh, turn one. Where's Jones coming? It's Jones looking to push up through the pack as we go up there. Jordan Bloor goes out on the wide line. Is he going to look to try and keep that power on? He's gone around the outside of Matt Thompson. Thompson says, right, I'm coming back at you, and goes side by side with uh, Bloor. Bloor now chasing down. That's uh, Wessex one, Jason Saunders, as they exit that uh, turn two. So Saunders from Bloor, from uh, Thompson, from Jones, from Olsen, from that Griffiths machine, and then the Breed Mill 44 of Adrian Hathaway. Work to do from the back, and already, look at the lead, he's pulled away from that first to the last place. It must be a third of a lap as they pick up the last lap flag. So one lap to go, Jason Saunders leads it from Jordan Bloor, York 44, from Matt Thompson, Sam Sunset 36, from uh, that uh, Olsen machine in that uh, next place down. So Phil Olsen 
What says? He got pressure on. Couldn't he? 31. Ian Jones may try and get close to him as he brings it in that turn one again. But exit in turn two for the final time. Check a flag. Jason Saunders, Wessex one, takes it from Jordan Bloor, York 44. From Matt Thompson, South Somerset 36. From Phil Olsen, Bree 27. From Kundi 31, Ian Jones. Then we go down to Typhon on him, Ethion, uh, Griffiths, and that final place, Adrian Hathaway in Breeden Hill 44. So uh, out of five, we managed to get four done. One goes back to uh, the rerun. So uh, um, we've got a rerun of uh, the men's class one. Do you know what? I'm, I am learning. I've been doing it for 15, 16 years, and I decided to look up on the line, and it's men's class one rerun. It's back over to Steve. No, I believe ignorance is bliss, because if you look up on the line, then you've got no excuse when you mess it up. So I, ju I just pretend that I haven't looked up there. Sort of thing. So when class nines come out, and I've been calling it as class ones, you say, it's, oh, I didn't look at the line. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey. So, yeah, another, another tip. So are we assuming, we are, that uh, this is race three? In which case, we've got Jonathan Jones in Tyvee 4, Dave Chapman in 3F, Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48, Robert Hughes in North Wales 49, Katie Hobbs in South Somerset 101, Ryan Powell in North Wales 52, and Jack Firth in Spalding 86. So, yeah, Mickey, uh, yeah, so we've identified Dave Chapman up there. So, yeah, that is the race. Unfortunately, running without Kieran McKenzie in Cambridge 403 and as uh, promised then a uh, bit of water going down once again so the water carts working in tandem and uh, third tractor out there so if tandem's two what's three so there we go that's today's second question it's a bit harder than the first question <laughs> so yeah what's the couple of days all right you laughing there Mr Barker for what's the three-way equivalent if a tandem's two just let me uh, go on Google and I'll come back to you. <laughs> so there we go. Oh, I don't know. So I'm no good with words. <laughs> Those of you that have had the misfortune to listen to me will absolutely know. So uh, there we go. So, yeah, I don't know about Mickey B, but, yeah, talking about the Nationals then as commentators, and we're both uh, going to be lucky enough to be commentating at the Nationals, then... Uh, They've wanted to do a little bit of a profile and a few sort of like questions about the commentators. So, yeah, there'll be some interesting facts up there, I'm sure. But uh, can you confess to anything now? Well, um, no, because I, I think I will wait for, for people to go and uh, get their programme when they come through the gate. All we do know is that it's going to be a cracking uh, weekend up at Yorkshire Dales. Always put on a good show up there. I mean, the track is super fast um it's a big track as well so it does uh, give us all the recipe for uh, cracking racing uh, through that saturday and sunday yeah a little bit earlier than uh, a week earlier than we would normally be but um i think um, end of july works works for me and uh, yeah i'm really looking forward to it um i've uh, I've kind of done some commentary up at Yorkshire Dales through their Klarna club meetings and uh, we've raced up there a few times. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And it's only a couple of weeks away. Absolutely. And you promise not to bring your speedos. But there's another story we'll go on to later on. So as we go away there, we are on the rerun of race three of the Class 1s. And it is Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48. I think he was leading when the race was stopped first time. He's leading when the race is going to be stopped second time. Not preempting the marshals here. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look good on turn one. But, no, are we all... No, we might be all right. So, there we go. No, we're not. So, yeah, rerun of a rerun coming your way. So, uh, turn one looked a little bit messy, it has to be said. So, but marshals are out there. They will sort it all out. It's the South Somerset 101 car... Katie Hobbs that uh, did finished up facing not the direction that she quite intended so they will all head back that way and uh, it's sort of like sensible people's breakfast time now isn't it so uh, yeah we'll remind you of all the catering facilities that are here there's a sort of like very nice catering village 
I suppose you would call it, which is situated up to sort of like air left from where we are in the commentary position. Then you've got sort of like a nice catering, very, very good variety of catering stalls. And then that moves into the trade stand area along the top part, the start line end of the circuit. So big, big thank you to all of our stall holders and caterers. And as I say, if you're feeling peckish, come breakfast time, then hot and cold drinks all available over there. But we're trying then take two, race seven of the class ones hopefully we can get this one through this time round. dylan tyrrell in north wales six it is that's uh, just about the uh, first one to show and uh, we've got one facing the wrong direction on turn one again but cambridge 295 then it is carl dyke whitfield that's the first car past us and we are carrying on racing on this one dylan tyrrell on the inside, looking to try and make a move around the outside on the race leader is Jake Hemsley in the IK611 car. It was Harry Witham in Spalding 14 that lost out in turn one. But coming round then, it is uh, Cambridge at 295 that's the race leader, but race seven goes the same way as race three. Rerun of a rerun. So uh, there we go. Right, so they go back to the rerun lane. It looks like Class 7 machinery is up there on the line. Indeed it is. So Mickey B is getting ready to take you through Class 7. We're going to say a big hello to little Zach Bowen, who's at home watching Class 7s and loves the sound of Mickey B's voice. So he's going to have plenty to come your way because here comes seven races of Class 7. Over to Mickey B. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. And it brings out Holtby and Archie Bentley and Simon Hawthorne all in that top ten. And uh, we are off and running. And Hawthorne's got an absolute flyer. Bentley goes with him. Bentley, is he going to be brave? Is he going to put that power down coming round that outside? Where's uh, Holtby on this one? As they bring a Holtby running at the back. So Hawthorne then takes it up from Bentley. The uh, Scunthorpe 12 uh, machine. Jake Lee up there as well in that third place. North Wales uh, 76 comes up there. Gareth Robert into that uh, fourth place but it is Bentley now finds a gap up the inside coming into that turn one out of one out of turn two Hawthorne's back at it Hawthorne then leads it up from Lee Bentley going still on that wider line from that to North Wales machine Radford 69 North Rupture 243 and Holtby running at the back of the pack in Scunthorpe 61 shock news also that S20 Sean Williams but last lap flag already oh Hawthorne's round he's spun it out Bentley takes up the running in first place, North Wales 76 in that second. Gareth Roberts, Gareth Roberts can't believe his luck on this one. He's exiting Stargate turn in second place. Lee follows him down there in that Scunthorpe 12, but they're coming round that final turn. It's going to be oh, oh, Archie Bentley, Border County 7, popping wheelies as well. North Wales 76, Gareth Roberts from the Scunthorpe 12, Jake Lee. Holby's going to make a place. Oh, well done, Andy Holby. Radford 69. Alan Green over in that uh, fifth place as well. Ah, oh, Simon Hawthorne. Radford 176 was absolutely storming it and uh, unfortunately spun it round. Sean Williams, the final car across the line. Maxport our series sponsors and DM Design and Fabrications are kind sponsors for the weekend. Right, let's move it into uh, race two. <laughs> And the highest point scorer after two rounds of British Series competition, it's Alfie Smith in Ludlow 23 coming out the middle of the pack in lane five. Paul Johnson, Scunthorpe 41, lane two. Bill Bradford, Border Counties 15, lane one. Kerry Pope in Spalding 82, lane three. White um, Rose 72, Lewis Woodruff, another young lad. He's just seen Archie go out there and nail it. What can Lewis do there? Matt Richards, Evesham triple five, and Aaron Long in the West Waterford 192. So, a day. you don't get a dull Class 7 race these days. They all could be finals in their own right. And uh, who's your money on this one? Here we go, then. We'll soon tell you, because we are off and running. And, uh, ooh, Paul Johnson popping a wheelie as he slows it down into Turn 1, around the crown of the bend and exit Turn 2. So, uh, Johnson takes up the running, then. From that to Alfie Smith machine. Bradford goes with him as well. Aaron Long in the uh, West Waterford 192. Oh! Pope and Long have contact. And you know what? I think I'm going to see red. Red, red, red. Slow him down then. Ah, slow it down, Paul. 
Paul Johnson, just slow it down, my friend. There, he is. Uh, he's seen the red flags just in the nick of time. And uh, that race two goes back to uh, the rerun. So that, that's a shame. Paul Johnson, absolutely flying start um, and was leading it with a plomb. But uh, contact there between uh, Sporting 82, Kerry Pope, and uh, that West Waterford 192, Aaron Long. And I think we may be getting close to a decision on uh, that one. Um, I'm not sure if Aaron Long uh, knew much about it. He did when he was like, that, thought he was on like a waltzer as he was being uh, spun around. And uh, there we go. Um, the Spalding 82 is confirmed as getting the uh, black flag. And uh, Evesham triple five. He, uh, he didn't get off the line. So uh, that was uh, Matt Richards. So when they come back, we're going to go down from uh, um, seven down to five so hopefully that will get done but before that we've got uh, race uh, three up on the line and it brings out barry ashmore mark jenkins tom page alistair griffiths uh, colin reed okay Dinu from central scotland 21 howard thomas and daryl heath bayard they are your runners and riders again in this max sport series sponsored class sevens and dm design and fabrications your weekend sponsor here we go, bungee lifts, and uh, oh, that's a quick one off the line. Um, uh, what's going to do on that one then as they uh, bring it round there? Where's Pagey? Oh, I think he's running around about third, Mickey, as we uh, get on. Colin Reid then takes it up uh, from that uh, Scunthorpe uh, 5, uh, Sporting 514, Barry Ashmore. Ashmore already under pressure as they exit that Stargate turn. It's Tom Page in that 15-19 uh, uh, machine. Scunthorpe 19 then. Up into that second plane. Oh, he's got so much grit. He can't keep the front wheels on the ground. Down that 26, uh, moves it up into that third place. Howard Thomas, but still leading this one. It's Colin Reid absolutely flying uh, this uh, year in the Bass. And uh, he brings it round that turn two for the penultimate time. One more lap to go on this one then. Colin Reid uh, from uh, Barry Ashmore from the down 26. Then Page up the four. Greenland Hill 106, Mark Jenkins. Radford 34, Alistair Griffiths. That is how they're uh, running. And uh, round he's going to come down all the way from Scotland as well. And picking up 55 points. Central Scotland 21. Colin Reid takes the win from Barry Ashmore. Sporting 514. Pagey up into that third place in Scunthorpe uh, 19. The uh, down at 26, uh, Howard Thomas uh, across uh, the line as well. Uh, 106 of uh, Mark Jenkins. And then we go down into Alistair Griffiths and the Daryl Heath Bayard. So... Uh, well done there. That is race three done and dusted. Uh, race four uh, brings out two in the top ten. And it brings out Ian Stevenson, who's currently running eighth in the uh, White Rose 20. And Craig Bagley, Kumdi two, out of uh, lane two, currently running ninth. Here we go then. We are off and running. And it is that Stevenson machine's got a flying start in that uh, White Rose at 20. Came out of lane seven. Um, and he's looking to pick up maximum points because he wants to climb up the ladder. Bagley goes with him. Then we go down in that tight 113. Then that man in there as well in that Evesham 152 as they uh, bring it down that. Uh, oh no. Oh, I'm, I'm looking around the track and I'm thinking, is anything stopped or is it. Mm, or was it off? Oh. <laughs> Steve's just made a signal like the X Factor, so I think I know what that means. So we'll uh, we'll wait to give you a decision on that uh, very soon. But uh, race four goes to rerun. Uh, so that was a shame. Stevenson was leading it before it got stopped. So race five then. Uh, Martin Dunmo, uh, Lee Dodd, Darren Adams, Sam Gould, Phil Barliman. Ayrton Ellison and Brendan Ellison. Ayrton Ellison's uh, made it through in, uh, to the Nationals in uh, the York Club, so we'll see him in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, but here's Sam Gould, North Shropshire 34. Currently fourth on Bass Points after two rounds and uh, looking for another strong weekend down here at North Shropshire. So uh, there we go. We've just seen Aaron, one of our uh, marshals, walking across back of the track. He's in his orange overalls again. Um, uh, I always think it reminds me of a, a you know 
that prison program where their life is in orange, whether or not he's been let out for the weekend, you know, he does need locking up, by the way. Here we go, then. We are off and uh, running again. And it is the Ellison machine and uh, takes them into uh, turn one and uh, brings it round. So uh, I told you he uh, wanted some bigger points. And Ayrton Ellison takes up the running then. Then it's Parliament from there from Gouldie. From uh, the uh, North Wales 16, Lee Dodd. Then Dumbo, oh, uh, Dodd's pushed out wide. Dumbo's come up the inside and said, cheers, thank you very much. Brendan Ellison there in York 219, a little bit further back. Massive roll at York earlier in the year, but it's great to see him back out. And Barleyman's having a right old battle with Sam Gould for that uh, second place. And Barleyman looks for a cut back up the inside there of Ayrton Ellison. Ellison says, no way, Jose, as he takes it down into turn one. Nice and tight. Don't leave that gap for Phil Barleyman, because if he sniffs it, he's going to go for it. And it is, Barleyman takes up the running now, up into that turn three, round turn three, and a start gate turn. So it's going to be Barleyman from Ellison, from Sam Gould, Dunmo there as well, as they uh, bring it up there and then to that uh, final one. Darren Adams has made a place up further down the pack, but it's checker flag at a ready. And it's going to go to Phil Barleyman, takes it in Pennine 23 from Ayrton Ellison in York 14. Sam Gould in North Shropshire 34. Oh, look at this for a fourth place. And it does go to the board account, who's at 26, then Martin Dunmo and uh, the uh, Brendan Ellison uh, machine across. And uh, we are finished on that one. So we got one done. Oh, black flag is the uh, Pennine 7-11. Tony Jones from the previous race, race four is excluded from that rerun. So here we go, race six. Oh, it brings out your uh, Bass uh, leader after two rounds, and what a flying machine he's uh, got this year. Cameron Mills, cum D9, coming out of lane five. He's 46 points clear uh, coming into this weekend. Uh, can he maintain it? And, uh, well, uh, who was uh, Holtby? Uh, Andy Holtby was running second. He didn't get the best of uh, starts that he wanted. What's going to happen? Liam Evans uh, coming out of lane eight is currently fifth on points as well. Evans has had got a great start as well. But uh, Cameron Mills looks to go with him. And Cameron Mills has got a bit of push on there. Uh, can he get that car back facing the right way? He does. But he's going to go do work to do from the back because he's running at the back as North Shropshire 120 takes that uh, running round out of that Stargate turn, down the opening straight. And, uh, oh, dear, a bit of contact there as well, uh, just in that third, fourth place position. But uh, there we go then, North Shropshire 120, then the 358. 383 uh, next to show as uh, well as uh, they uh, bring it uh, round. The 38358, uh, that's Jack Houlihan there, uh, Dan Johnson in the 383 from the Scunthorpe Club. But one more lap to go on this one. Liam Evans and North Shropshire, 120. West Waterford, uh, 358. Jack Houlihan running second, but so uh, that's uh, 383. Dan Johnson looking to try and get closer as he brings it down. Cameron Mills moves it up into that fourth place. He's done the same as Holby. Holby finished fourth in his, and this is what we're going to do. Liam Evans takes the win from Jack Houlihan. Oh, Johnson just from Mills, I think. Then the PhD 72, first mention for him, sorry Jake Roberts, but the action was happening right up at the front of the field and uh, work uh, to do for some of these lads. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, looking down onto that lineup, you were thinking that uh, Cameron Mills really had a great chance there. He knew that his competition was going to be Liam Evans. But, uh, yeah, Liam Evans took the maximum points. Uh, PAC 47, J. Rand Lewis, is the one that's just broken down, just going into turn one. So a bit of recovery for uh, J. Rand. But, uh, hey, that's mixed the points up a little bit, hasn't it? Hey, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, Cameron Mills, he, if he had picked up 55, he could have extended his uh, lead. But uh, he finished fourth, so it's, uh, it's status quo, as they say. Rocking all over the world. Oh, showing your age now, but no, all looking good, isn't it? So, yeah, you've got good odds on some of those Class 7 results, but that's what it's all about. So, uh, final race then. It's race seven uh, off uh, the Class 7s, and it brings out Anthony Booth, Ali Ashmore, Graham Blackburn, Neil Wright, Andy Graney, Alan Jenkins, and Damian Harris. And uh, all of these guys are also out of that top ten, so one of them is going to uh, have the honours of picking up 55 points and shoving it in their pocket. 
and uh, seeing what that does to him on that uh, that leaderboard uh, of the sevens. Here we go then. We have got liftoff. Ali Ashmore got a good start there in that Scunthorpe 514 as they uh, bring it down into there. Andy Graney has squeezed his way through and uh, can he hold on to it? Look at this. Graney then takes up the running from that uh, Harris machine in the Radford uh, 140. Scunthorpe uh, 121 also pushing through. Neil Wright writes up into uh, that uh, second uh, place. Radford 140 then Damien Harris uh, drops back down into uh, third but he says no, I'm coming back. And it is Harris up in that uh, second place. Then uh, the Ali Ashmore machine got a good start, but just dropped down a little bit uh, further down the pack. Alan Jenkins running in fifth place. But uh, round we go again. Another lap completed because we're picking up last lap flag already. So Andy Graney then from uh, the Harris machine popping a wheelie from that right, from Ashmore, from Jenkins, from Boo, from Graham Blackburn, who in that Yorkshire L71 running at the back of the pack. But uh, check a flag being prepared, round turn one, turn two. And uh, I must say, Andy Graney, 55 points for you. Who's coming through in that second place? Oh, it's uh, right from Ashmore, from Jenkins, from Booth, from uh, Blackburn. And then the Radford 140, Damien Harris, who was doing all right, has come in last. So uh, race clear, tick in the box. So uh, I've got four reruns, Steve, two in the sevens, Two in the fives. Yeah, but you haven't finished yet. Have you not looked at the running order? D did they not explain that to you? So there we go. <laughs> so, so, right, um, I, I'm not sure if I've actually got the paperwork. <laughs> well, there we go. So, look, nothing like a bit of communication is there, which is probably my fault. In oh, my defence, no, I was fine. commentating well, at the and, time. And do you know what? Um, this is going to be interesting. You know, because uh, open open wheel machinery. Um, although Callum is the youngest of the lads, who's now moved up in the class eight, um, uh, I, I'm uh, I, I generally leave that to uh, the experienced lads. But class nines um, are coming my way, and uh, oh, let's look at that. Um, five uh, grids of them. Yeah, am I OK? <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute, Steve, all right. But, uh, yeah, bear with me on, on this. Lawrence Blaber, Archie Ross, uh, Martin Jones, Lee Waldron, Matty Jones, Steve Lindsay, Andy Hornshaw, uh, Aidan Llewellyn. So uh, they're your, your runners and riders. Uh, York 78, Andy Hornshaw. I've seen him uh, fly around uh, the, uh, the Bass tracks uh, many times. Lee Waldron in that uh, Forrester Dean uh, four. Martin Jones in the uh, Hereford uh, 55. Archie uh, Rose in the Stroudon District uh, 22. Uh, Laura uh, Blaber there in the Athelstan 12. So, uh, yeah, uh, a mix. Uh, the girls uh, taking on the boys in, uh, in the nines. And uh, our Class 9 uh, sponsors uh, for x -Tracks are our series sponsors. And Pave Clear are our weekend sponsors for the uh, men's class nines. So, uh, yeah, pave clear. That's what, you know, when you've like, you've, after a, like, a, a bad winter and you look outside and you go, oh, I tell you what, we need to get the old patio clean, love. And uh, you all look at each other and go, well, I don't really want to do it. And, and then uh, I must say, right, uh, Jill doesn't mind using a pressure washer. But, but the only trouble is, Steve, right, she gets a bit carried away, a bit giddy, and all the pointing in between the flags pings out everywhere, you know. And then I have to get on my hands and knees and repoint. So uh, she's lucky that she is still the current Mrs. Barker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she counts her blessings every day. <laughs> more than more than once, Steve. More <laughs> than once. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's uh, have a look round. We've got a bit of grading going on, going down into turn one. We've got that double synchronised uh, watering uh, going round the track as well. And you could just see that in the last race where, especially coming into uh, turn three, the dust flicking up on the track and, uh, and, and, and I kind of lose sight of the cars. So obviously the lads driving um, uh, probably have a little bit of the same problem as well. So, uh, yep, um, water going down and uh, that will mean that we can keep the dust under control. 
but the track is fast. It does come with a reputation, the North Shropshire track, for being uh, uh, one of the quickest uh, around. And uh, it's not disappointing, is it? Um, plenty of uh, good action already uh, coming into uh, this one. And uh, the, the grader just coming uh, back round again. And uh, just uh, squeezing off uh, that little bit of top surface as well. But uh, these guys know what they're doing. Uh, it's their, their track. And... Uh, yeah, we're uh, just enjoying uh, the uh, the spectacle as uh, well. So um, again, it is dry out there as well. I mean, uh, I thought I thought my back garden was looking a little bit brown uh, with the greens disappeared, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, when you walk around here, it's the same everywhere, isn't it? So uh, just uh, be careful, everyone. With um, you know, if any uh, 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 if anyone's a smoker out there, just make sure you extinguish. I think there's a, you've confirmation there's no open fires for obvious reasons. Um, that's try and keep us all uh, safe and the surrounding areas as well. Obviously, on that far side, you look over there, you've got uh, the farm, and uh, we wanted to kind of protect uh, the uh, the uh, surrounding areas. So uh, round uh, a bit of cloud cover as well, which isn't uh, too bad. It's quite pleasant at the moment, um, and uh, it stays like this. I think we'd be quite happy. So uh, Bowser's making their way off the track. We've got yellow flags being held aloft. And here we go then. We are off and uh, running with uh, the Class 9's Hornshaws. Uh, went. Well, he was going to pop his nose out in front, and he is now because he's listened to me. He said, Mickey, I'm going to make it easier for you. So uh, York 78 Hornshaw, but coming around on our side, PhD uh, 9. That's uh, is Aidan Lewin. And it's uh, Aidan Lewin and uh, Hornshaw are having the battle. They pull away from uh, the pack as they uh, bring it down into uh, turn one again. This freshly watered track, is it going to create any problems? No, it's not. It's quick a help with the grip. So Hornshill from uh, Llewellyn, PhD 1, Hereford 55, Atherton 12, that's below and Clover. Then the, uh, the Swansea 8 uh, machine. Oh, Stroud and District 22 and the Forrester Dean 4. They're the ones that have got work to do. That's Lee Waldrum at the back of the pack. But coming round this time, one more to go on this one. It is Hornshaw uh, leads it from uh, Llewellyn from that PHFB uh, 1. Hereford 55, Athelston 12. So Laura's uh, Blaber there in uh, running in that fifth place. I think uh, Lee Waldron uh, made up a place there. Stroud and District 22, Archie uh, Rose uh, problems on board. But there you go, Hornshaw makes it look easy coming across from uh, that uh, Aidan Llewellyn machine. PhD 1, Steve Lindsay from Atherston 12, Swansea 8. Um, oh, Hereford uh, 55 is conserving fuel there, not putting the power down, but did cross the line from Waldron. And then that's uh, Stroud and District 22. Archie Rose. So, uh, one down, four to go. What's coming out next? Uh, race two, Jimmy Smith, Jenny Shepard, Jamie Dodge, Sean Power, Phil Cooper, Mark Barker, no relation, by the way, and Dave Palmer in ARC 31. So, uh, there we go, Phil Cooper. I'm trying to think, is he, um, what, is it about 13 national titles? Yeah, I'm, he's greedy. That's what I say. I have. I didn't even get anywhere near going to a nationals. By the way, the only chance I get now is to is to commentate. So maybe I could actually say that. At least I have been to a nationals. But here we go. We are looking for track clearance. Engines are a revving. Looking for that first marshal post. That's the all important one. He's still showing red. So uh, uh, maybe something on the uh, on the start line there. The uh, marshals are all uh, walking back across um, as we know it starts with the bungee sometimes the bungee do get uh, do get stuck at times but i think uh, marshall's now clearing that start line which means that we are going to go racing with the men's at class nines and off we go and uh, a good start out there from jimmy smith on that outside line cooper goes with them though and oh was there a little bit of contact there oh dear we got two facing the wrong way, and uh, we go red. So, uh, ah, dear. That's the only trouble with these open wheels, isn't it, is they all go down into that turn one, and you get a little bit of contact. Nothing deliberate, by the way, but, oh, it doesn't appear to be like that. Um, and you get cars that can quite easily spin round with a little bit of a, a tap and a nudge. 
And that's what happened there. I think it was uh, my namesake, I think Mark uh, Parker, um, was involved with that, was he? Uh, Ludlow 80 is just coming back across the line at Jimmy Smith. There's Phil Cooper just come round again. He, he wasn't involved in it, uh, I don't think, Phil uh, Cooper. But they have to go back and do it all again. So, uh, race three then. Uh, Reese Weatherick, IK99. Carl Dyke Whitfield in Hereford 150. Russ Adiman, York 6. Stuart Taylor, IK121. Lee Seagreaves in ARC3. Paul Harden in PhD3. And Morris Powell in Evesham 92. So uh, there are your runners and riders for this race three of the X-Track uh, series sponsored Class 9s. So uh, there we are. Let's get them all uh, sorted out as they uh, go uh, around. And is it going to be Seagreaves that's going to take up the running? We'll uh, wait and see. And it is Seagreaves then from IK21. Adam in there in the York 6. Uh, holding that to third place, but Stu Taylor looking to find a way past that Seagreaves. Seagreaves, an experienced lad in nines, isn't he? He's got clear track in front of him. Is he going to protect it as they come round? Hold, hold on a minute. Uh, that Taylor looks to close it down. Adam and there, IK99 uh, from uh, the uh, 56 99 of Reese uh, Weathering. Weatherick just leaves the door open there and that allows Paul Harden to uh, have a little nibble up the inside and make up a further place. Well, last lap coming up. Uh, one more to go on this one then. So ARC3 from uh, the... Uh ARC3 Elite Series from IK121 uh, Stu Taylor. These two have been one and two. Adam and there in the uh, York Six, still holding that third place. But check a flag and a good win there. ARC3, Lee Seagreaves takes the win from IK121 Stu Taylor, from Russ Adamant, IK99 Reese Weatherick, PhD3 from the Evesham 92 and Morris Powell. Um, so well done there. The uh, Hereford 150, Carl Dyke, Whitfield. So uh, race three has got a tick in the box. We are going for race four. So uh, uh, always great with some of these, uh, these first names, and I'm sure uh, Hereford 17, Elwyn Pitts, Phil Rogers, Alan Roberts, Sam Pinches, Thomas Lloyd, Adam Robinson and Chris Colgate. In uh, and Colgate coming out of uh, lane one in the North Wales uh, 19. Who's uh, Phil Rogers, PhD2, coming out of lane six? So I expect that uh, the uh, grid, outside grid there, to uh, have one pop out there. And it is uh, that uh, Phil Rogers machine that's had the uh, cracking start coming down into uh, turn one. Who's going with him? Uh, I think uh, one of the inside lines, and maybe Robinson, who got a good start as well. But it is uh, Phil Rogers from uh, Robinson from that Radford uh, 35. Sam Pinches who uh, into uh, that uh, third place. But uh, down they go then into uh, turn one. Another lap going to be completed. And that uh, Phil Rogers machine uh, has it. Oh, hold on a minute. Uh, someone's pushed out wide. Rogers still uh, leading this one then from Adam Robinson to come through. Hereford 17's got to work. That's Elwyn Pitt uh, from the back. But oh, dear me. Oh, we've, uh, we've broke something there, haven't we, my friend? Yes, we have. North Wales uh, 19, Chris Colgate um, is just pushing it around, and he's hoping for red flags, but it is Jenkins from the 88, North Wales 4, 35, the uh, Typhi 42, Thomas Lloyd, um, and Lloyd uh, looking to see him. Oh, we're over. Oh, dear me. So uh, Marshall's making their way over there as well. Uh, just slow them down, fellas. I think we were on that last lap as well, so uh, uh, likely to take the result. But um, just looking down there at the uh, at the number, and I think is it uh, at the uh, Rad Radford 35, Sam Pinches, um, who uh, contact with the wheel there, coming out just like the momentum of the car coming out of Startgate turn, and then uh, just lifted up and over and over and out. So we're just. Um, Wait to get hopefully a, a thumbs up that the driver is a okay. The, the one thing about our sport, as we know, is that uh, it is uh, super well uh, regulated with all the safety requirements for the car build. Um, obviously, the double tagging that goes on, um, and obviously, the safety equipment in the car for uh, the uh, five point harnesses 
uh, grip in all the places that you need it to to keep you uh, contained in the uh, in the seats that are uh, extremely well fixed down to the chassis so uh, Really, um, uh, although it's like a bit of a roller coaster ride um, when uh, people are going over and out, the um, uh, majority of the times every, everyone walks out of it and uh, is, uh, is okay. So, uh, yeah, we're just uh, looking over there. The medical crew is always uh, quick on scene just to go and check out the, uh, the drivers. And uh, in, this, in this instance, it's Sam Finch's Radford uh, 35 who's uh, just getting that, that treatment. Uh, the, obviously, the crew are just taking this opportunity to get a bit more water down onto the track as well, and also the uh, grader uh, as well that is uh, just coming out and doing a bit of grading work, as I say, while we've just got this short amount of uh, downtime down here at the third round of the, uh, the North Shropshire uh, British Series. And uh, again, a lovely part of uh, the country. Um, I had a little bit of a mare coming down, by the way. Uh, Tim Jones has uh, uh, come in to uh, commentary as well. And uh, um, I meant to come down the A38 at Derby. Um, and do you know what? When I pulled into the Leicester Forest service station, look with a confused look on my face, um, uh, I knew what was next. Yes, the uh, M69. <laughs> a little bit further down than what I thought, Steve. But, uh, hey, I tell you what, it was a nice scenic route. <laughs> Well, at least they weren't speaking to you in Glaswegian or something, so it could have been worse. <laughs> could have been worse. But you know what the funny thing is? Is that I'm still looking for the, the A38, right? And I know I've gone too far, but I've had that glimmer of hope that the next junction and... Uh, it just in the end, uh, I, flown, I phoned my personal sat-nav, uh, uh, Slim Appleton. Uh, Slim, I'm, uh, I'm down here. You've gone too far. I've been gone too far. I think I stuck about another 48 miles on the journey. And well, at, uh, you've obviously got far too much money. With, I know diesel's <laughs> come down a bit, but oh, don't blind me. <laughs> uh, and you, do you know what? The funny thing is, Stephen, like nowadays, you think, ah, oh, 48 miles, that's not too much. The motor run, I think, does around about, say, 22 to the gallon. So that's, that's a couple of gallon. And when you're thinking what a gallon is now, what the best part of nine quid, that's 18, 18 pounds, you know. <laughs> So I had one less cider at the bar last night. <laughs> uh, you've got this. You've got this economy down to a down to a tea, haven't you? Morning, yeah. Sam. So uh, yeah, we're uh, we've got Sam Pinch's car being lifted off. Sam is uh, is back off the track, so uh, he'll be in the ambulance now. They'll be doing. I in all my racing career, Steve. Obviously, as you know, I was one of the top class two racers in the country in my day. Um, uh, I, I only went then you, over. Then you woke up. No, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and I only went over once. But what an experience! Tim, have you been over? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah, twice. Twice. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Ooh. I, I've, I only did it once, really. And, uh, class uh, one, class six. Yeah, well, I was a uh, class two, um, but that was the day when you know you used to carry uh, your fire extinguisher in with you, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. And, and, it, it, and it popped out, and it was like putting a 50p in a washing machine, you know, like, <laughs> like pinging around. I'm sure it clonked me a few times, um, uh, and that's what I blame on my stupidity these days, really, uh, that, uh, that class two role. But... Um, since. I haven't been right since, no, and uh, and that was probably the beginning of the end, you know. Um, but everything went in slow motion. I don't know what happened with you, but uh, it just didn't seem. It was like, yeah, it wasn't like kind of like spinning over, and you're thinking it's all going to be a mad rush. It just seemed to go really calm and surreal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing was, it's like the ambulance when they say, "Okay, and uh, um, what's your date of birth?" Now, the, that is a taxing question. Well, I was going to say, at, at the best of <laughs> yeah. times, I have to say, yeah. Uh, I don't normally declare that, by the way, you know. So, what's your date of birth? Why? Well, you know, how old do you think I look? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't play that game, take it from me. <laughs> that, that depresses me every time, so no, that, that's never a question I ask. So, uh, it looks like we've got all the equipment off the track. I think we're going to be looking to go ready uh, to go racing again. Game. And uh, that is what we're going to do the because result, it brings out. Sorry, I believe the result of that one is going to stand. Oh, the result's going to stand. Yeah. So Alan Jenkins wins that uh, last uh, race. But here we go then. We are back out with uh, race uh, five. 
of uh, these uh, Class 9s. Extrax, our weekend sponsor, our series sponsor, and dig it uh, plant hire. Here we go then, and it is the uh, North Rockshire uh, 10 uh, machine. Joe Pike then is uh, showing them uh, around uh, this uh, track. Typhi 14, uh, the uh, Typhi 9 um, of Sam Middleton. Uh, got a little bit of work to do as, uh, as Sam as they uh, bring it out of that uh, turn two for uh, a lap under their belt. So, uh, Spalding at 10, and oh dear me, Tony Wilson, we're just getting splattered with mud. Oh no, we've got another big roll, big roll. Oh dear me, that's uh, not very good at all. And uh, that is Ian Stead in Border County's uh, 34. And that was um, at least five, five times over. And um, yeah, so for consecutive, uh, consecutive races, we are going to have the race stop and uh, medical crew are back on track. That one was a, a little bit more topsy-turvy um, than uh, that previous one of Sam Pinch's. But uh, just uh, keep an eye over. Um, hopefully, a driver will be OK. I mean, he's going to definitely be a bit of James Bond there, shaken and uh, no doubt stirred as well with that one. And, uh, yeah, medical crew uh, quickly on track and uh, to see... Uh, to that uh, driver as well, which uh, is uh, is a shame. You know, that's not what we're looking for to have uh, cars on their roof, but it does happen in uh, close, fast racing, especially with the open wheel uh, class as well. And uh, yeah, coming up into that uh, turn three, um, pretty much on uh, full power going in there, and uh, yeah, and over and out for uh, that instead uh, machine. So, uh, so yeah, the, uh, again, the, the crew have done exactly what they did last time, take the opportunity to come out, do a bit of grading, do a little bit of watering as, uh, as well. And, uh, again, give the marshals just a moment of, uh, of time to, uh, to recover as well. So a uh, couple of uh, you know, guys coming over onto the track as well, no doubt to come and uh, check, uh, check over. Um, uh, and make sure everything's okay with uh, with with driver. Okay, so uh, just a, an update. We are going to go quiet on uh, track for uh, for a while while this uh, uh, that incident there just gets uh, sorted out. So uh, just. Uh, bear with us on that for the people at home listening in on uh, our bass tv you can uh, still hear us i, I believe so uh, uh, you're gonna have to uh, kind of put up with uh, me and me and steve um, i know we've got uh, tim jones as well that is uh, going to be uh, joining he's, he's going to get ready for his commentary as well and uh, do you know what um, I, I know how well the uh, the sport is uh, is governed and regulated steve it's never nice to see um, a driver go over like that and um, you know and, and and again we've got to give the uh, medical uh, team their time to make sure that uh, he's okay and get him out of the car as well so no absolutely um i think when you sort of like break it down in terms of particularly the single seaters uh you know how small they are how close proximity the drivers are and the relatively high speed accidents uh that they can have when they go over like that then yeah i think it is a credit to the construction rules uh as to how good they are what we're hearing on this is because it is a special um then obviously it's very difficult uh, to actually get the driver out um so that i think they are looking at possibly cutting the roof off the car just to aid getting out and putting less strain on the back and everything which obviously is sort of like the important thing he's he's fully conscious um and is i say okay but yeah you know obviously he's he's, he's had sort of like quite a major role and uh, the medical team um will uh, take whatever is necessary and absolutely quite rightly take as long as necessary um, to actually extricate the driver from the car so that that is what is happening up there at the minute never nice to see but uh, the people that are best equipped to deal with it are dealing with it as, as you can rightly say you know we've gone quiet 
around the circuit whilst everybody does deal with it. But uh, so you people at home aren't uh, sitting in uh, in total silence. And we thought we'd bore you. I mean, we thought we'd <laughs> we'd carry on chatting to you. So. Uh, so I, just again, Steve, uh, fast forward in a, a couple of weeks, we've got the uh, the men's nationals uh, uh, coming up uh, down at uh, Yorkshire Dales. So uh, again, this year, I think first time uh, we the numbers are extended from 400 cars. So instead of 10 classes of the top 40 coming out to compete for that the coveted uh, national uh, title in the respective class, um, it is extended to 440 now, so with an extra class added. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, but I think it, numbers were extended before, but only the 10 classes. So it's the first ever nationals, I think, to have 11 classes at sort of thing. So, yeah, looking forward to it because I think the stock hatches, um, you know, they've been around for, for a few years. They've sort of like become a fully fledged NASA class now, which I think has been self perpetuating that whilst it was a pseudo class for want of better terminology no disrespect to them i think some people weren't as keen to take it up but now they know it's a proper class and you can race at the nationals i've certainly had conversations with more than one person that actually says you know we wouldn't erase the stock hatch because we want to race a class where we can go to the nationals which is still quite rightly the premier event now they can do that in a stock hatch they've taken a stock hatch so i think it's growing and snowballing and uh, yeah it does provide some some close I think we'll be diplomatic. Um, <laughs> some close, but certainly some entertaining racing, absolutely, from the stock hatches. So, yeah, very much looking forward uh, to seeing those um, at the Nationals. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Hayley, who I think is going to be uh, taking us through the stock hatches at the Nationals. So that'll be very nice to see and, indeed, listen to. Yeah, I mean, uh, for Hayley, by the way, Steve, uh, for those that uh, are watching us uh, uh, down on the Bass TV, uh, Hayley probably started commentating about, I think, probably about four years ago, and she was a Scarborough member. Um, and, um, you know, she wanted to kind of uh, give it a go. I probably encouraged her to do that because uh, for all you uh, fellow commentators out there that do uh, your club meetings as well, sometimes you can fly solo. Um, and uh, and I still fly solo now at, uh, at Scarborough. I mean, it's uh, they're long days, but, uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. But, yeah, Hayley um, uh, kind of joined me for a few years and, and she's gradually just kind of uh, picked it up. And, and I always say this, that, you know, people think that, do you know what, oh, I'll come and pick a mic up and I'll come and have a talk and, and, a, and a natter. Um, it's, it sounds easy, but do you know what? It's, it's not, you know, people do freeze, don't they? They have mic freeze, you know. It's like, what? What have I got to do now? You've got to talk. <laughs> Yeah, I just tell them, look, you, you haven't got to be, you can't be any worse than me sort of thing. Right, the good news is that um, the incident has been dealt with. They didn't have to take the roof off the car. I reckon, knowing Mr. Stead, as soon as I said, we're going to cut the roof off the car, he said, and there may have been a few extra words in here, I will get out myself. Um, so, no, that's good. So, he will go certainly for a checkup, um, but we are going to be back racing very, very shortly. Yes, yeah, so uh, that's great news there, and uh, well done. Well done to uh, Ian uh, Stead there um, for uh, getting out of it. He'll be a little bit sore, as I say, shaken there, but uh, thankfully the car um, didn't have to have some modifications done to get him, get him out. And as uh, Steve quite rightly said, he probably said, right, no, I'm getting out of my own steam. No one's cutting my roof off. But um, the, the, all these tracks are equipped to do that, by the way. Um, so if you ever needed to do it, we can. So looking up on the line... After uh, the, uh, the, uh, the class nines, um, we are going to go back to some uh, reruns. Right, yeah, I think Mickey's just been a little bit worried about the symbol I've just given him, because this is class one, <laughs> so it wasn't class two. So there we go, count your blessings. So, uh, yeah, right, we're going back again for uh, class one, race three, take three. So come on, we can get through it this time, lads. Absolutely. Lee Deegan is probably wondering what he's got to do to get 55 points, um, because he's led every time, and this one has been stopped. So we're down to six runners this time round. So fingers crossed we can get this one through to conclusion, and just to prove we've got seven runners, the last 
last one uh, quite slowly away from the line. But we are up and running. It's Jack Firth in Spalding 86 on the outside of Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48. It was Dave Chapman in 3F that was the one that was uh, slowly away. As down the far side, though, Lee Deegan is, leads the way from the Spalding car in that second place slot. On the inside, then, trying to uh, come through and get very much in the mix is the uh, North Wales machine. That's North Wales 52, Ryan Powell racing just ahead of the 49 car of Robert Hughes, Jonathan Jones in tie before Katie Hobbs in South Somerset 101 and the one playing catch up is Dave Chapman in 3F but your race Liga coming round once again it is uh, Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48 in that uh, second place slot still is Spalding 86 the last lap flag already going out North Wales 52 tie before North Wales 49 South Somerset 101 and 3F means they are now all on to their final circuit but down the far side Lee Deegan then uh, having a real good battle with the uh, Spalding 86 car of Jack Firth. But I think it is going to be the Cambridge man that is going to take it successfully this time. Lee Deegan wins. Jack Firth in second place, North Wales 52. Then comes Jonathan Jones in tie before, finishing just ahead of Robert Hughes in North Wales 49. And Katie Hobbs in South Somerset 101. And Dave Chapman in the 3F machine. So, finally, we can get a tick by Class 1 at Race 3 to say it's been successfully completed. Hopefully, we can do the same with Race 7, because that's what is on the line. Uh, not sure where we are with regards to exclusions or otherwise on this one, so we'll... Uh, pick them up I think as they come past us but if we can get this one successfully completed it will mean uh, class one first round of qualifying is all put to bed as we look round the track then uh, looking for uh, yellow flags on each of the marshals barriers that they're happy and they're happy it looks a very full grid as we get away from the line on the inside then Dylan Tyrrell it is in uh, North Wales six no, it isn't. It's the RK611, didn't it? Right on the outside. But coming back round then, it is the uh, IK611 car that actually is the uh, first one to show. Jake Hemsley in uh, that machine as he goes down the far side, pulled away a little bit from Carl Dyke Wickfield in Cambridge 295, who's in that second place slot, but uh, he's under very strong challenge as they from I think Jamie Hussey as they come back round towards us it is IK611 Cambridge 295 Scarborough 233 Spalding 14 and North Wales 44 then locked together Harry Witham in Spalding 14 Reese Edwards in North Wales 44 but there is no catch in the Invicta Kent man at the moment Jake Hemsley it is in IK611 that comes round for the penultimate time one circuit to go for 611 Cambridge 295 Scarborough 223 that's the 123 Bowling 14, now got ahead of North Wales 44, then Dylan Tyrrell in North Wales 6. So the field a little bit more spread out now as Jake takes them down the far side for the final time. IK611 comes round for the chequered flag. It's going to be 55 points for Jake Hemsley. Takes a good win. Carl Dyke Whitfield in second place. Scarborough 223 in third. Harry with them. Spalding 14, finishing just ahead of Reese Edwards in North Wales 44. Then Dylan Tyrrell comes across the line in North Wales 6. Successfully completes first round of qualifying of men's class one. Next time we see those will be the second round of qualifying. And North Shropshire 192 unfortunately uh, we're hearing Michael Eikin did pick up a black flag in that one that's why he uh, failed to complete right we've completed class one let's try and do the same with class three can we because on the line then we have a rerun of race two of the uh, class threes again not quite sure where we are if anywhere in terms of exclusions on this one we've got two reruns of the class threes to come ram developments your british autograph series sponsor and elite transmissions then a meeting sponsor here at north shropshire so uh, class three never fails to entertain and certainly didn't in uh, the first attempts at these as we uh, just wait for uh, track clearance and that uh, car to be removed on the teleporter back there into the pits. Not sure how to say this, but I'm going to anyway. Absolutely flying through. It's not even quarter past ten yet. Uh, and uh, yeah, OK, we've got a couple of three reruns, but 
no more than normal, I think it's fair to say. And uh, we're through to men's class nine. Could have had an extra hour in bed. So, or could have had an extra rasher of bacon or something. But there we go. No, it's nice to be ahead of the game, as I say. You're not quite sure what weather and various other things are going to throw at us. But they're going to throw Class 3 at us, and we'll always accept that. And it's Callum Allenson in Yorkshire's 34 that is the first one to show. Looks like we have got a slightly reduced lineup in this one as they come past us for the first time. Russ Tinker in the middle, York 4. Lee Alman on the outside in 27. North Shropshire 41 then also going through there. That's Stephen Goodwin. I think we've got no Bob Matthews in this in SR55 as they go down the far side. And no uh, John Price, I think, in P119. Right, North Wales 27. Unfortunately, we are here. Oh, sorry, 72. We are here in. Sorry, get it right, Steve. North Wales 27. I was right first time. Lee Almond. Uh, unfortunately, we are here and he's going to pick up a black flag. So keep your eye on the uh, race leader, Russ Tinker in uh, the York 4 in that second place on track but as uh, Lee Alman pulls to the outside York 4 takes up the running then from Scunthorpe 307 Yorkdale's 34 is uh, Callum Allenson then going through is the North Shropshire 41 car racing just ahead of Jeff Gibbs in Hereford 1 but down the far side then Russ Tinker it is as the chequered flag gets held aloft it's going to be a win for the man from York chequered flag good 55 points second place goes to oh, that was close between 34 and 307 Hereford 1 and North Shropshire 41 wouldn't like to call second place uh, we're not actually on the uh, finish line quite rightly so the uh, lap scoring ladies are on the finish line we're quite a way up actually from the finish line this time round so anything close ah, we're gonna have to make up or we make everything else up so why not right race three then on the line the rerun of class three race three we are here in all back in after camera review and uh, that means, other than, sorry, Pete Robinson, who was uh, stopped on the start line when the original race was stopped. But that should mean Simon Farrer in Yorkshire's 24, Trevor Cusack in CK25, Jamie Lee in North Wales 10, Keith Kelly in Mallow 247, Adam Saint in Cambridge 1, and Mick Sumners in Radford 169. Those are the seven cars we're expecting. Those, in fact, are the seven cars that we've got as uh, they come round then uh, and past us. That looks like uh, Keith Kelly trying to come through on the inside, but it's the North Wales 10 of Jamie Lee that is the uh, first one to show. But uh, coming through also, Adam Saint in Cambridge 1, and Keith Kelly slows right down the Yorkshire Dales car off. Simon Farrer in 24, then showing in that third place ahead of the uh, Kelly machine. Mick Summers looking to try and come through on the inside. We've got a bit to do at the minute. Your race leader, though, Jamie Lee in North Wales 10. Adam Saint, YD24, Keith Kelly, Mick Summers in 169. Rupert Lomax in 99 and completing all then Trevor Cusack in the Cork 25 machine. But our race leader slowly but surely just looking to try and pull away a little bit as Jamie Lee comes round to take that last lap flag. One to go for North Wales 10. Adam Saint, Cambridge 1 on the outside of Keith Kelly and Mallow 247. The Yorkshire 24, Simon Farrer. Mick Sumners are now winding up the Radford 169 car looking to try and improve a few positions as your race leader though goes down that far side for the final time that race leader is Jamie Lee in North Wales 10 he's going to come round he's going to take a good victory second place is going to go I think to Keith Kelly just ahead of Adam Saint Simon Farrer just ahead of Mick Sumners then comes the uh, North Wales 99 machine of Rupert Lomax finishing just ahead of Trevor Cusack in CK25 so, good stuff. That completes the Class 3s. So, uh, our start line watcher, were you, as to what's on the line now, uh, we sort of might be expecting... Ah, looks like a rerun. So, uh, it's going to be, I think, a rerun of Class 5 machine. I say the next scheduled class is Junior Saloons, but we do have some 5s and 7s reruns and uh, they certainly don't look like junior saloons coming up to the line so i think we've got the water tanker right in the middle of it so uh, i think it might be the class seven rerun that's uh, coming up there trying to identify a number so 
So it's race four, we think, of class sevens coming out for their rerun. But at the moment, it's class five, class seven, or this weekend. And this quarter by surprise, class nines. Either way, it's Mickey B. Yeah, thanks very much, Steve. Yeah, we're going back to uh, the Maxport uh, series sponsored uh, men's super saloons. Uh, DM Design and Fabrications, our uh, weekend uh, sponsor. So, yeah, looking up on the line, um, just to confuse who I was expecting, we've got one uh, Class 5 rerun to come. We've got two on the Class 7s and two on uh, Class 9. So, uh, looking up on the line, I can see uh, Ian Stevenson. So, White Rose 20 coming out of lane 7. He was leading it before it got uh, stopped uh, earlier. Matt Manning, each in 152. Mike Barrett in York 12. Mike McKenzie. Cambridge 12, uh, Clive Williams in Typhi 113, and Craig Bagley in Kumdi 2. So Craig uh, currently sat ninth on the points, Ian Stevenson eighth. So these uh, those guys in the top ten, and no doubt looking for uh, some big points this weekend to uh, elevate them up that uh, leaderboard, really. And it is all about getting to the uh, final uh, British round. Um, then everyone has to take the shoes and socks off, don't they? Because you got you drop certain your worst four, uh, you got your best uh, round double up, and then um, yeah, it all gets sorted out on that final one. I think we do provisional results on bass round five, but generally nothing really changes after that. I think it's just uh, you know buying us a bit of breathing space just to make sure everything is uh, is correct. So yeah, grading machine just uh, coming uh, down. A bit more water going down on the track as well. So uh, which they've done uh, really efficiently, by the way. Um, the two Bowsers uh, are doing uh, their work, and that grading uh, machine is definitely uh, out and trying to keep this track in uh, the good and uh, well excellent condition that it's in at the moment. Um, and as we've seen, it's fast, it's quick. You know, there's people that are able to get the grip down on this uh, on this surface and go, be brave enough as well, going uh, a little bit wider and going for that uh, moving the place up or going for the lead. Um, it's all uh, exciting stuff down here at North Shropshire as we wait for uh, the uh, first Bowser is looking like it may be making its way off. A uh, second one just finishing off doing watering up around the uh, the trade stand uh, bend three and out then uh, start gate turn as uh, the quad bike uh, back going back in position. We've got the uh, the silver little car going around. I think that's dishing out. Uh, oh, it's dishing out food. Ah, substance. If that means they're dishing out food, I'm going to have a quick look behind me and just see if the... Oh, dear. Oh, I can see some substance. So, uh, oh, I don't know if to, to call it, uh, Tim. Is it going to be a late breakfast or uh, an early lunch? What do you think? I don't care, as long as it's food. Yeah, as long as it's food, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, I'm... Uh, uh, I, I like I like my food, you know. Here you go. So here we go. Engines are a revving. We are looking to go racing with the Super Saloons, and it's a bit more of an even start down there as they uh, bring it into that one. Mackenzie in that uh, Cambridge well, but Bagley goes with it in that could be too. Where Stevenson Stevenson is popping out in the middle. Can he get through? Manning though. It's Matt Manning takes up the running. Eve should one five two. Oh, Stevenson goes for the cut back up the inside there. I don't think it's paid off. He's had to uh, still hold on to that uh, third place. Barrett in that fourth place as they bring it down into turn one. Already exiting that turn two. It is that Matt Manning machine. He's in 152, but Craig Bagley. Bagley looks like he could be on fire. We've got uh, flames coming out of the back of that Kundi two. So, so red flags, we're, uh, we've got him on fire. So get ready with that fire extinguisher. Slow him down. Bring him closer to the marshals. Uh, we've got uh, a car spun out the, uh, the other way, but... Uh, Yes, uh, flames on board. So uh, hopefully it will just pop out. It takes me back to uh, last week. I was joining the M62, looked across, it was slow moving traffic, and I thought, oh, it, has someone flicked a fag butt out? You know, where it, like the sparks come up. And then I looked down, I thought, that car in the middle lane's on fire. So I'm signaling to him to go, you're on fire, mate. And uh, he, he did pull across me, and by the time it got to the hard shoulder, the smoke and flames, Thankfully, he got out. And like a caring soul, I just carried on because <laughs> I knew my tea was on the table. 
Yeah, you're all heart, aren't you? So I'm thinking, yeah, you're all heart, aren't you? So yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, you're on fire, mate. Says, yeah, man. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you're hot stuff too. So <laughs> no, just joking apart. Hope everything was all right. Just remind me never to travel anywhere on a motorway or anything with you. It sounds like you're doomed. Do you actually sort of ever go anywhere and it all goes all right and it's all normal? Steve, just to let you know, I am not the fourth emergency service. I'm not even the fifth, so... <laughs> I did a quick risk assessment. I thought, no, uh, carry on, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, risk assessment is my shepherd's pie is going to burn. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm on the side of this, you never get asked me for directions for anywhere either. No, I don't... No. Well, actually, I think we're, we're slowly but surely across this, this year's British Autograph Series compiling a list of things not to ask Mickey. I think directions is one of them. Animal identification... Animal husbandry, I think, is another one. <laughs> yeah, that was quite the you, had, Wales, you had to be at South Wales to appreciate that one, but I'm not going to let it drop. I told you I wouldn't. So <laughs> that's going to see me through all season. Thank you very much, Steve. I had forgot about that myself. Uh, I have been uh, trying to get myself up to speed on the animal kingdom. Um, I reckon by uh, next season I should be an expert. I, I can uh, be able to look at a sheep and go, and I wouldn't Boo. be able to... <laughs> 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 Meow. <laughs> <coughs> So, so up on the line, we Mickey have got... Mickey Barker, hard of fun. <laughs> it couldn't roll off the tree. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go then. We are getting ready to go with the uh, men's class five rerun down here at North Shropshire. And we are off and running. Lorryinsurance.com, our series sponsor, and PTS Caravan Transport, our weekend sponsor. So uh, Jones just gets nudged out a little bit, but taken up in his tough go then from Whittle. From that Jones, then we go down into that Gloucester and District, number 12, Robert Bethany, and he's running in fourth place in this uh, depleted field. We're down to uh, five cars left running in this one. We had, uh, we've got uh, the uh, Baxter Park had, uh, had the black flag earlier. But here's Chris Tubgate from Chris Whittle from uh, that uh, good D3, Ryan Jones. Gloucester and District 12, PAC 98, there's uh, Liam Wallina is that final uh, position so coming around this time it is going to be last lap flag so uh, one more uh, lap to go on this one and that's uh, Wessex uh, 15 Chris Tubgate currently 10th on the points um, coming into this uh, round as Kundi 3 Ryan Jones uh, finds a gap up the inside of Widow and takes up that second place he's currently fifth on the points coming into this weekend and uh, second place 45 will do him no harm at all but Chris Dudgate Wessex 15 takes the win from Ryan Jones and Kundi 3 Chris Widow and Breen Neal 66 in third fourth is the Gloucester and District uh, 12 Robert Bethany and the PAC 98 of Liam Willina so uh, there we go. Well done to uh, the Class 5s. They're done. I've got uh, a couple of runs of Class 7s to do. And uh, up on the line for uh, just having a look. And I think it is one of my... Uh, it will be race two of the 7s, uh, the I think, up on there. Um, uh, this got excluded, uh, Kerry Pope, in the Spalding 82. Also, Matt Richards didn't get it off the line. So he's not back out in here. So, uh, again, that is, should bring us down to that uh, West Waterford 192, Aaron Long, the area is. He's out there in lane eight. Lewis Woodruff in White Rose 72, in lane six. Alfie Smith, Ludlow 23, out of lane five. He's six on points at the moment. Well done, Alfie. Paul Johnson had a flying start, didn't he, in that uh, first run. And hopefully he'll do the same again as they uh, set off from the, the line. Oh, and he's popping wheelies again as uh, Mr. Johnson. And uh, easing it round that uh, one and coming out of that turn two. So uh, Paul Johnson then uh, leading the way through from Alfie Smith, from Bill Bradford, from Aaron Long. There's your top four. Long looking for a gap up the inside of Bradford. Bradford keeps the power down there. Lewis Woodruff, White Rose 72. First season now in these super saloons, doing no, uh, uh, nothing wrong at all. He's doing, he's uh, learning his trade in these uh, super saloon class sevens. Paul Johnson then still uh, leading the way up into that trade turn, turn three. Out of that start gate turn, Ludlow three. Alfie Smith holding on to that second place. 
place. Alfie running in fifth on the uh, points, but coming uh, down to see if he can get an extra 10 and get past Paul Johnson. Johnson, I don't think, is going to give anything up as he picks up the last lap flag. Alfie Smith, Ludlow 23, Bill to count his 15, Bill Bradford. Aaron Long in the West Waterford, 192. And then it's Lewis Woodruff in White Rose, 72. That's how they're running down that opening straight for the final time. Slowing it down into turn one is that uh, Paul Johnson, Scumthorpe 41. Check a flag. Johnson takes maximum points. Alfie Smith second in Ludlow 23. From Border Counties 15, Bill Bradford third. Fourth is West Waterford 192, Aaron Long. Then White Rose 72, Lewis Woodruff. So uh, well done there. That is that uh, race two of the men's Super Saloons done. And uh, up on the line, we are going down to uh, the junior racing. And it's a great pleasure to welcome down into the commentary box this weekend. It is Mr. Russ Thompson. Thank you very much, Mickey. Hello, everybody out there in the world of spectators. And, and also, hello, everybody watching at home, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us here uh, at North Shropshire for round three of the uh, 2022 British Order Grass Series. We go junior racing. No time to mention who's out there in race one. Let's see if we remember how to do this for the Silver Lake Recycle Car Parts and Shropshire Design sponsored junior saloons. And away we go into uh, turn one and two onto the finish straight for the first time it is one of our Irish runners the West Waterford car Neil Tyvey 144 round two winner uh, the own, uh, the first ever junior I think to win both uh, saloons and specials at the same round uh, as he did last time and he's continuing that form on here second place early doors then goes to Tyvey 5 uh, running in that second position Jack Owens just ahead of the Yaris uh, the Cambridge car of Grace Williams Cambridge 142 then uh, we go back to Forest 10 if uh, Lily Chapman just ahead of the uh one of the minis there, so the minis still mixing it in with them, but it's Wyro's 21 in that next position, Lewis Middleton just ahead of a couple more, in fact three minis uh, following him at the back of the field, and it's one lap to go already and it's close up front, Neil Tyvey just fending off Jack Owens at the moment, Grace Williams sits there third ahead of Forrest 10 Lily Chapman, Wyro's 21 PhD 4 is one we're not mentioned, Jack Mosley ahead of uh, Emma O. Riordan in Mallow 37, and uh, PhD uh, just running at the back, Molly and Mosley in PhD 58. But it's Neil Tyvey then takes the victory over Grace Williams, who's moved up to second at the expense of Jack Owens. Then uh, Forest 10, Lily Chapman. Lewis Middleton with a fair dent in the uh, boot lid of uh, White Rose 21. That'll take some work to get back off. Uh, PhD 4 of Jack Mosley just ahead of Emma O'Riordan. And uh, rounding it out, Molly and Mosley. So... Uh, Race one of the juniors, quickly done then, the saloons. It's uh, a real pleasure to be back on the mic uh, at uh, a meeting like this. I've not done very much this year. The focus has been more on uh, doing the online stuff with Grass Chat and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll uh, get back into the swing of things here this weekend, covering on the juniors and junior specials and also stock catches later on. Uh, five races then uh, in the junior saloons category, outnumbered by the specials, six races to five as race two of the saloons get underway. Let's hope for a clean break. One just a little bit slow away, the Silver Yaris. I think that's William Hall in Seven Valley 29, much quicker away. We've got some minis at the four again in this one. They're not outdone in the juniors, uh, maybe a little bit more in the uh, senior categories, but the juniors, they're still very much at the sharp end. And it's breathing up 33, Bo Bennett, who leads away Alphaston 2-1-2, just slots into second place, then Hannah Lewis, uh, but Tyvee 15 looking up the inside, trying to take that Leston Jones, oh, and damage on board, the Alphaston car gets collected by Evesham 146, Molly Bob, and we get the first junior stoppage of the weekend, uh, with that bit of contact then just unsettling the Alphaston car, and uh, come to a halt, and so does the race. So, uh, one race done, one race stopped. We'll uh, try that one again when they get slotted back into the uh, meeting format. And, of course, uh, lots of racing and uh, classes to come your way throughout the course of the weekend. Three qualifying heats as per usual. Two rounds of qualifying today. One round of qualifying tomorrow. And then we go to semi-finals for the classes which require and uh, straight into the finals for everybody else. Well, the top eight, of course. Uh, okay, just the ambulance making its way out. Hopefully uh, nothing too serious out there. Um, she did get a little bit of a knock, so uh, 
Hopefully not too serious and all be a-okay uh, with the driver there. And uh, we'll be back underway with the next race very, very soon. So uh, we just uh, do have this bit of downtime. Hopefully the driver is A-OK -okay and uh, just needs a precautionary checkup. Um, while you've got uh, yourselves here for the weekend, uh, make sure you go pay a visit to one of the many, many trade stands that are located uh, to our left, uh, just on the uh, turn, f well, turn three, effectively. Um, just down there and then towards the start line, there's a lot of trade stands down there. Go pay them a visit. And uh, if there's anything that you require, I'm sure they'll gladly be of service. Uh, it's a beautiful day here at North Shropshire, my first time here. And, uh, yeah, very much uh, enjoying the experience. And uh, it's great to be back on the mic, as said. And uh, hopefully we don't do too bad for you. So uh, there we go. It's official. My name's on the TV. That's nice. And it's spelt correctly. Hello, everybody, again. If you're watching away with us, Tim's uh, taken over the uh, radio. So um, obviously, if any incidents or anything happens on track, then he will be able to pick up the messages and then we can relay them out to you as long as they're correct. And uh, they're just, I think, discussing that incident in that recent race. So hopefully... Uh, we can get you informed as soon as possible. And, uh, uh, okay. Okay, so the good news is uh, the driver, um, Hannah Lewis, Athelstan 212, took a little bit of a knock and a bang, a pinball effect, I think, as she bounced off one car then into another after some contact. And uh, the good thing is she's okay, so she's out of the car and everything, and then um, she'll get... Uh, just uh, the precautionary check over as mentioned and uh, they're just discussing I think still the marshals of what to do about that one whether all will go back whether they won't whether somebody will be out or who knows we're just waiting I think at the moment okay so word is that has come through is unfortunately Leston Jones Typhi 15 has been excluded from that uh, it's a bit difficult to see obviously from our point of view it looked like he went up the inside but then uh, there was obviously a bit more seen from uh, the marshals eyes they see it obviously much better than we do and uh, it was decided that there was contact and enough to uh, warrant an exclusion for Leston Jones and uh, Hannah Lewis then uh, you and your team get the tools and the hammers out because you've got time to repair so you'll be back in the rerun, but unfortunately no Typhi 15, who was looking uh, pretty racy in that one. Obviously a little bit too much. So um, we're going to go with race three in a moment. Let's try and give you a rundown of who is who and who is in this one. Uh, Gareth White in Cumdy 1 double three starts from the outside in lane eight. Uh, Reese Foles in Pennine 85, uh, junior specials racer, now racing in the saloons. In fact, both of the, the boys are out in this one. Uh, we'll mention in a moment, but first... Lexi Owen in Typhi 211 is out there in grid six. Jack Lewis, I think his first ever Baz round in North Shropshire 127, lines up in lane five. And Callum Foles is there in, or Fowles in Pennine 83. So both Reese and Callum racing each other in this next race. Uh, Paris Smith in PAC 52. Jay Jones from Invicta Kent in IK 430. And Bo Chamberlain in Forest 22. So that is the lineup. It looks like we're about ready to go again. Just waiting on that first marshal's post to uh, revolve around uh, with the yellow flag and drop that red. And then the bungee will lift pretty quickly. And uh, we go racing then with uh, Junior Saloons. And who's it going to be? A bit of a staggered start for some. Two of them slow away. Not for the micros in this one, though. Typey 211 just looks to edge them into that all-important first bend. There's bits of contact bumping and banging, as you expect. Bit of jostling for position. One of the minis running very well wide there but at the moment it's North Shropshire 127 leads the way Tyvee 211 and Forest 22 goes side by side through the turn oh 211's round and collected by uh, one of the Fowles boys 
And uh, they're both now facing uh, the wrong direction. And red flags come out. It started so, so well. And uh, we go 2-1 in favour of race stoppages. And as we know, we haven't really got time for all these stoppages. It does require uh, drivers getting through these races. And uh, all uh, downtime adds up. So uh, hopefully both drivers are OK in this one. Tyvee 211, uh, Lexi Owen. And uh, she's driving away, so uh, that's good to see. But a bit more damage on board of the Pennine uh, 83. So that's Callum uh, in that one. So unfortunately, a bit of damage there, meaning he is, uh, yeah, a uh, bit of damage and a bit of attention needed. Right, OK, so word from the marshals then. There are two exclusions out of this. Um, unfortunately, Lexi Owen is out in Typhi 211, but also Bo Chamberlain, Forest 22. So two of the front runners out of that one, both excluded out of uh, the rerun. So that'll be a depleted lineup when we get back round to that. So let's try race four, shall we? Pip Melly, the map champ, is there in Swansea 2. Harry Berryman, round one winner in Scarborough 1. Uh, they go uh, side by side in lanes 8 and then 7. Uh, Kieran Ross in Hereford 28. Um, I'm going to say Isabella, uh, but it's down here as the, the first letter of her name being Y, uh, Y-S, uh, Abella. So uh, we'll go Isabella Hitchcock. Uh, Shay Fuller in PAC 20. Amber Powell in North Wales 52. Hannah Hadley, Sem Valley 147. And Reese Davis in Typhi 9. So uh, that's the lineup. Uh, quite a strong Welsh um, challenge uh, amongst here. So uh, let's see how they get on. Uh, message from Lee Zamet through uh, today saying morning Russ and morning Tim as we were the only two in here as well I'm sure he'll say morning to Mickey as well uh, watching from home uh, before doing a, a night shift or a late shift uh, doing a great job well done great coverage well thank you very much Lee uh, good to hear from you and uh, everybody else so uh, if anybody does have a uh, message then if I can send it read it through then I will Jay, Jenny Jones has said, please say hello to Penny Smith, Gary Morris, and all Team Bradford. Hope they have a good weekend from Jenny and Dave. So there we go. Uh, Jenny Jones, that's that message read out for you. Sarah Jane, uh, I'd like to wish uh, Richard Jones, come D279, lots of luck. Uh, love from Sarah and Lola. So uh, there, that'll be uh, Richard. He'll be out later on. And Dean Morgan sent an hour ago. Can you please turn the tannoy down? Because <laughs> it's a bit loud. I think they have made some adjustments. So uh, apologies if we are a bit too uh, loud on the ears. Um, but obviously, you get a bit excited in here, don't you? You get, get a bit carried away and uh, the volume does increase. Uh, so... Uh, I, I do have a history of uh, breaking tannoy systems. Hopefully that won't happen this weekend. They've had enough issues with the uh, pit PA. Uh, we don't need to be breaking this one either. I remember going to uh, Seven Valley a few years ago and I was told by the PA man that it was the most reliable system he'd ever had. It never failed on him no matter who used it. I was on for literally a minute and it blew up. So, uh, <laughs> so there we go. But... Uh, Oh, we're back on telly. I'm not used to... Uh, well, I am really, I know I do all the internet stuff, but, uh, yeah, when you put on the spot and the camera suddenly gets uh, put in your face when you're not uh, expecting it. But uh, more water coming down, so a bit of a delay at the moment, so we'll try and keep you talking, keep you interested. But, yeah, don't forget, uh, pay a visit to trade stands. Uh, catering units are also on site, uh, ready to do business. But uh, please be sensible around the pit area and uh, the roadways of the cars. Um, obviously, there is a lot of traffic uh, from to and from the pits, and also, um, uh, obviously, the pits are a fair size as well. I, I was going to look around the pits last night, but it had been way dark before I got finished. So, uh, it is quite an impressive uh, venue, this, and uh, yeah, hopefully, we'll get a chance to have a little wander around later on and just see see people. It's great to, uh, to obviously catch up with uh, friends from. Uh, who we've not seen for a fair while. So, uh, yeah, it's always great these meetings, social side, but please be sensible 
And obviously, as the sun comes out, look after yourself as well. Keep yourself hydrated and keep yourself topped up on the sun cream. And uh, we don't want anybody turning into lobsters. Uh, we all want to obviously enjoy the, the weekend's activities, but remember to look after yourselves as well. So, tankers are just about done, I think, uh, doing their bits. <coughs> so, uh, we're going to get underway with this next uh, race in a moment of the Junior Saloons. Race four of the scheduled five. And uh, these are young stars then trying to make names for themselves in the autographs world. You get, now get a quite a lengthy junior career. Obviously, you can start at the age of 10. Uh, and uh, now you can get behind the wheel at, a, at that age and go racing. As away we go, and there's some young ones in here, some more experienced juniors as well, as uh, they make their way down. Fairly close break, this one, isn't it? Pit Melly was quick on the outside, but just up the inside is the Typhi 9, and that number has quite a bit of history. Uh, but it's now uh, Reese Davis, uh, the next generation at the wheel in the orange. Yaris leading the way from North Wales, 52 amp power. Pit Melly still on that wide line as uh, he tries to uh, cut in but is lost out to another uh, Welsh car oh Harry Berryman's round and just nudged then uh, by uh, I think Kieran Ross in Hereford 28 problems for Hannah Hadley in 7 Valley 147 oh no we're going to go reds again aren't we it's not going well and uh, there we go Pit Melly slow it down oh and contact there PhD 5 uh, Isabella Hitchcock was collected by Amber Powell. I don't think either saw the red flags or one did, but not the other. So uh, just keep an eye on those flags, drivers, and uh, slow it down uh, when you see them. But yeah, Harry Berriman pitched it round all on his own and uh, was just collected by the Hereford car of Kieran Ross, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, a bit of a, another stoppage there. So I would like to say I know who's going to be excluded if that's going to be the case. But uh, we have to wait for officialdom on uh, the marshals. So uh, it looks like we're getting those quickly uh, back to the pits. I think they all go back to the pits and then they'll be called up for their rerun. We'll still wait on official word. But we're going to try race five then. Let's see if we can get two done out of five. Race one went so well, it's gone downhill since for me. Uh, but away we go then with this next one. And uh, two, four, six, seven cars should leave the grid. And it's the little mini then just edging into turn one. That's Typhy seven, Will uh, Evans. At uh, the leadership of this one, then the Mini with the orange bonnet uh, leading the way. Tivy 7 it is. North Shropshire 101 slots into second place early going. I've got NS208 on my sheet, so uh, it might be a mistake there. But it's 101 on the track. If it is, it's Freddie Davis at the wheel of that one, just ahead of the Ludlow car. Meg Parsons in Ludlow 19. Tyfi 29, Stefan Davis uh, looking to challenge. He sits fourth at the moment, just ahead of the Pennine car. Elise Jones in Pennine 17. And uh, Elise is now under threat from Seven Valley 107. Will Hadley. So uh, the next generation of the Spadwick uh, team is uh, trying to make a presence, and he's gone through uh, ahead of Elise Jones. One left to mention, then, the PAC uh, 9 of Travis uh, Markilly, I think it's pronounced. So uh, apologies if that's incorrect. One lap to go, then Tyvee 7 sprinting away. North Shropshire 101 under pressure from Tyvee 29. And then we go to the Ludlow machine. Ludlow 19, Meg Parsons. And uh, Seven Valley 107 looking to put a challenge in on uh, board with that one. So uh, 107, Pennine 17, PAC uh, number 9. And uh, it's going to be checkered flag then. So Will Evans has led it pretty much from the get-go and takes the checkered flag. Tyvee 29 does take second place then. So Stefan Davis ahead of uh, Freddie Davis. Uh, no relation, just uh, same surnames. And then it was Ludlow uh, 19 ahead of uh, Seven Valley 107, Pennine 17. And uh, last but not least, PAC 9 of uh, Travis Markilly. 
Right, so uh, that's it for me for the moment. We've got two done, three reruns to go uh, for the Junior Saloons. I'll be back with those reruns and for Stock Action Junior Specials later. We've got Class 9s. It looks like it's the uh, Jimmy Smith uh, rerun, but Mickey B will let me know. Yeah, thanks very much, Russ. We are back racing. This is race two of the men's class nines as they uh, chase it down into uh, turn one. Uh, this is where Cooper was uh, up in uh, that kind of lead position before he got stopped. Um, but it is uh, Cooper that goes wide round the uh, turn three. Can he get uh, round that uh, ARC uh, 31 a day, Palmer? Palmer then uh, has to concede because Cooper's gone for it. Can he make it stick? Can he get it round there? Palmer looks for the cut back up on the inside, but Cooper's off with this one. Palmer then. Then we go down into that to Yorkshire Dells 97. Sean Power up into that to third place. And Power then looks up the inside. And Power now up into that second place. Cooper, though, still leading this one as they bring it round turn one and two for the penultimate time. One more lap to go on this one. ARC 5 then. Phil Cooper from uh, Sean Power. Yorkshire Dells 97 from that ARC 31. South Somerset 22, that's the Shepherd Machine. LM80, North Wales 8, and the Evesham 26. Uh, Mark Barker, the uh, work to do from the back of the pack, but check a flag. And a super win there, Phil Cooper. ARC 5 takes it from the Sean Power Yourselves 97. ARC uh, 31 across the, the line, Dave Palmer. Then we go down into uh, that uh, Shepherd machine. LM uh, 80 across the uh, Ludlow 80 of uh, Jimmy Smith as well. And uh, finishing off, we've got uh, Mark Barker and that North Wales 8, Jamie Dodd. So uh, well done there. They, after their second attempt, have managed to get it done and dusted. So uh, it should mean that we've got uh, race uh, five coming out. I think race four was a result that was taken, but this is where Ian Stead at Border Counties 34 went over and over and over. Um, but um, OK, I so say shaken but not stirred. Uh, Josh Morgan. Sam Middleton in that Trent Nine, Tony Wilson, Joe Pipe, Jason Richardson and Ridian Evans in the uh, Typhi 84. And they are off uh, that line and uh, flying out of that uh, turn two. So it is that uh, North Shropshire 10, Joe Pipe uh, taking that uh, running up and uh, off he goes up there. That Typhi uh, machine uh, looking to try and go with them as well in that Ridian Evans as they uh, bring it uh, back down into turn one. Still uh, looking at uh, that uh, machine of uh, the uh, North Shropshire 10, Sporting 10 of uh, Tony Wilson. Tony Wilson looking on that uh, inside line and cut back, but coming round on that uh, outside. We've got a challenge going on as we bring it into that last lap. One more lap to go on this one. And it is Joe Pipe still leading Sporting 10, then the Stroud and District machine coming around the Gloucester District. Can he hold on to it? Can he pick up that second place? Tony Wilson, Jason Richardson, Ridian Evans, they've got work to do, but check a flag at the ready. And it does go to uh, that uh, North Rocks 10, Shroud District 27, Spalding 10, Typhi 84, Pennine 55, uh, Middleton in that uh, Trent 9, the uh, final one across the line. So uh, that is your uh, men's uh, class uh, nines uh, done and dusted. Uh, looks like we've got some more water coming down on the track. And uh, looking up on the line, I've got uh, Mr. Tim Jones, who's just plonked himself down ready in the chair. And I think we are ready to go for our first time today with men's class twos. Yeah, thank you, Mickey. Yes, good uh, morning, everybody. And I uh, hope you're all well. And uh, nice to be back here in uh, North Shropshire for the uh, bus round number three of the 2022 season. Apologies if I uh, sound a little bit uh, nasally and a bit uh, a bit strange this morning. We've uh, got the uh, bit of a uh, bit of a cold, but we're all right. We're still uh, we're here. We're fighting. So uh, paracetamol at the ready and uh, plenty of water, and uh, we'll be okay. So class two then eight heats of class twos to come your way. So uh, again, one of the classes that are going to be looking for semi-finals a little bit uh, well later on today but it'll be obviously be tomorrow but uh, as I say one of the uh, top so we're looking for the top 16 then to go through 
and uh, to go through to two semi-finals. But uh, a lot of racing to get through yet, so uh, let's look at who's in heat one of uh, men's class two. Race one then brings a Aidan O'Neill in at Mallow 30, Andrew Wilde in North, North Wales 171, Ben Foster in IK 232, Gareth Stokes in Pennine 87, Ewan Twig in Typhi 202, Jack Hodgson in York, Yorkshire Dales 104, Sean, Sean Grocott in Seven Valley 21, and Nigel Bishop will uh, round it all out and starts in lane one towards the inside in Radford 80. So that's your lineup for the first heat of uh, men's class two. Say, so, uh, Fleet Care Services, your uh, British series sponsor, and uh, the meeting sponsor then will go to Mill Four Garage and Commercial Repairs. So, once again, big thanks to both. All the details, of course, in the programme, which uh, is uh, for the first time online. So, uh, if you want to have a look at that, go on the North Shropshire uh, All the Grass page and all the details are uh, in the uh, program so once again Bowser's on to the circuit track looking in uh, superb condition as ever and uh, say team doing an absolutely stunning stunning job we're getting through it quite well say so i didn't quite know how many cars there are actually here but um we'll uh, we'll have a look later on and give you a bit of an idea of who's uh, who's here and who isn't so also a bit more graining work going on around the uh, start gate turn as I say, just to keep the track in excellent condition. And those of you who are listening on the uh, Bass TV, then uh, good morning to you. And uh, I know I've had a couple of messages this morning. And uh, good morning to my old mate down there in uh, down there in Erifrith Mar Club, Ian Bennis. Good morning, mate. How are you? Hope you're all right. And uh, also uh, nice to see a message from uh, a good old mate of mine, or a mate of ours as well, Callum Commentary. And I know uh, not here this weekend. I hasn't been on the mic for a while, but uh, Callum, hope you're all right, mate. I hope everything's fine. And uh, as I say, nice to hear and uh, see you on the message. Right, OK, here we go then. Class two, heat one, race one. As they uh, leave the line on the inside line then, it's Jack Hodgson in 104 that leads them, but just getting, uh, just losing out to somebody as they uh, come by us then for the first time. Who's the race leader? That's going to be uh, the pen on machine of 87. Gareth Stokes leads then from uh, Jack Hodgson in Yorkshire now at 104. The challenge going on for that third place slot. That's uh, the North Wales machine. Andy Will then slotting into third as they go down the far side then. Bishop Round runs to fourth in Radford 80 as uh, they go into turn one once again and back around towards us to complete another circuit. Still uh, the uh, Yorkshire Dales machine leads them. Pennine 87, North Wales 171. Then comes uh, Nigel Bishop just uh, battling with uh, the Typhoon machine of Ewan Twig as uh, they go down the far side. And IK uh, machine, that's Ben Foster. And uh, Sean Grocott rounds it all out in Sem Valley 21. But the battle's still going on ahead of affairs between uh, the uh, North Wales machine and the, and the Pennine machine. It's the Pennine car on the inside line. Gareth Stokes with Andy Wilde in North, Shop, North Wales 171 with the, just losing out in that uh, third place dot as they go down that far side. And uh, Gareth Stokes it is, though, that leads into a turn one for the final time and pick up uh, 55 points on the ball because the check and flag then goes out. It's going to be a dash to line. I think it's uh, Pennine 70 that leads then. Uh, York Stiles 104, North Wales 171. Radford 80 from Nigel Bishop, IK231 from uh, the uh, Typhoon car of Ewan Twig. And completing it all then will be Sean Grocott in Seven Valley 21. So, race one done and dusted. Race two then that brings out Will Duggan in Cumdy 190. Simon Chadburn in White Rose 70. Carl Blackmore in PAC 76. Ash Rigglesworth in Scarborough Treble 2. Ian Harvey, long-time Class 2 racer in C63. Simon Overty in Scunthorpe 18. Graham Holmes racing on home soil in North Shropshire 93. And Michael Jordan in Radford 284. So that's your lineup for race two of men's class two. Quad bikes into the centre of the uh, North Shropshire Raceway. And uh, we're going to be looking for track clearance then very shortly. And uh, no sooner said, bungee lifts and we're already away racing. And uh, who makes the best start? That's Ian Harvey on the inside in C63. But uh, Carl Blackmore 
in PAC 76 then just slipping through into the lead as they all uh, bunch up coming out of turn two uh, but it's uh, the uh, Scarborough treble to Ash Wigglesworth that takes up the running down uh, past us for the first time and he leads round the start gate turn 76 then run second that's going to be the uh, Carl Blackmore machine in a second Simon Overty challenging on the inside his line for that third place slot as well as uh, Duggan on the outside line as once again they all uh, push and shove for positions but it's, it's treble two Ash Wigglesworth is just getting away from uh, the uh, Simon Overty machine who's now made some good ground in Scarborough 18 as uh, once again round the start gate turn Duggan now running third as Combs started flying Radford 284 also having a good run that's Michael Jordan he's up to uh, about that fourth place slot at the moment but already we're on to the last lap yellow flag the black cross goes out treble two then it takes up on to the last lap Scott Skinny 18 C119 then comes Graham Holmes in North, 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 nah, North Shropshire 93 Radford 283 and uh, Ian Harvey completes it all in C63 Board already coming back round towards us. Checkered flag then at the ready. 55 points on the board. Ash Ruggersworth takes the win from uh, Skun from Skunny 18. Then comes Will Duggan in C119. North Option 93. Radford 284. And completing it all then, Ian Harvey in C63. OK, lost Simon Chadburn in that one in a white row 70, who's uh, into the centre of the uh, of the track. So uh, quad bike really will be needed to uh, move him out of harm's way. And uh, we look down towards the line there. Race three. Race three then brings out Jack Bromley in IK 130. Sian Rowlands in North Wales 57. Dieter Tamal in Atherson 99. Ollie Stevens in Ludlow 15. Amber Powell in Ludlow 99. Will Alford in Pennine in Pennine 13, Shane Spratwell in North Shropshire 391, and Martin Bannerman in Pennine 187. That's your lineup then for race three. But uh, just the quad bike, just having a little bit of difficulty removing the uh, White Rose 70 machine. So uh, that's just going to take a minute or so to get that uh, off the circuit. As I say, Fleet Care Services, your very kind uh, the sponsor for the for the series, and Mail for Garage and Commercial Repairs is your meeting sponsor. Again, big thanks to them, and of course, all our sponsors this weekend. And of course, the overall British Series sponsor. Better give them a shout. Kent Cams and Simpson Race Exhaust. Again, uh, always been on board for many, many, many seasons. And uh, again, thanks to them for their kind sponsorship of the the British Series as uh, we head towards the sort of middle of the series so round four of course uh, in a few weeks time we're going uh, to uh, over to Stroud so Stroud and District Club hosting the, the round four so that's where we're going to be in a few weeks time but of course the uh, we've got that little meeting called the Nationals in uh, a couple of weeks time which of course everybody hopefully will be getting uh, geared up for and getting sorted so uh, lots of good stuff to come in the next few weeks on the autograph circuit but uh, we, uh, we're going with race three of men's class two. And uh, from the middle of the pack, Will Alford it is in Penau 13 that uh, leads into turn one. Somebody going deep into uh, the first turn. That's Jack Bromley in the IK at 130 machine as they come by us once again. But it's Alfred that leads. IK 130, then comes Tom Stevens, in, Ollie Stevens in Ludlow 15, slotted into that third place slot. As they go down that far side, North Wales 57. Sian Rollins then runs in that uh, fourth place slot. As once again back around towards us, still the battle going on for the lead though. Well, Alfred still got it at the moment. IK 130, Ludlow 15, North Wales 57. Then we go down to Amber Powell in Ludlow 99. And she races ahead of Martin Berryman in the Pennine in the Pennine 180 uh, 87. And uh, Dieter Tamal completes it all in Atherson, 99. But already, yellow flag with the black cross then goes out. Will Alford, one to go. Pen out 13, IK 130. Then it's Ollie Stevens, Ludlow 15, Northwell 57. Amber Powell in Ludlow 99. Then comes the uh, Martin Berryman in the Pen Pennine 187. And uh, Dieter Tamal in Atherson. 
99 but already into the last turn we go and the check is in at the ready it's going to be the win for Peno 13 Will Alford takes it from IK 130 of Jack Bromley Ludlow 15 Northwell 57 Ludlow 99 of Amber Powell Pen Pennine 187 and uh, completing it all then that will be Dieter Jamal in Atherston 99 Okay, that's race three done and dusted. I'm not saying anything at the moment, but uh, we're doing well. So race four then that brings out George Cresswell in Scunthorpe 127, Jay Albrighton in Scunthorpe 156, Mark Mosley in Radford 3, Adam Smith, PAC 29, Tom Stevens in Ludlow 55, Matt Sawyer in PAC 23, Samuel Dodridge in 515F, and Darren Eichen in North Wales number four. And already we're away and racing, and oh, paint swapping going into the first turn. Cars climbing, cars facing the wrong way. Uh, so they all keep it going now, but it's uh, Eichen that leads and passes for the first time with 127 of George Cresswell in that second place slot. And oh, we get the first stoppage of the day for class two I knew it was going too well so uh, oh, we're hearing there's a few flags being shown but uh, as soon as we know of course we will tell you <coughs> okay let's see who's in race five then Corey Paisley in uh, pen out number 10 Rich Owen in North Wales one Dan Heath will be there in pen nine 89 Je Jamie Lane in Radford, 9.41. Lee Kent in North Wales, 38. Ben Griffiths in Seven Valley, 8. Josh Woodward in Atherson, 182. And Darren Williams in Carmarthen, number 6. So that's your lineup for uh, race 5 of the men's class 2. So once again, quad bikes into the centre of the uh, raceway so uh, as I said I don't know any exclusions or anything or whatever but as I say as soon as we know we will uh, certainly uh, inform you so uh, we get the wind up signal then away we go race five of uh, men's uh, class two and uh, it's the North Wales 38 machine then Lee Kent that uh, Leads into the first turn, but uh, once again, more paint swapping as you expect in class two. But 38 leads then, 182 going through on that uh, inside line as uh, they go down that uh, far side and around Griffiths and looking to move through. He's up to uh, that uh, second place slot in Sem Valley, number eight. Somebody challenged on the outside. That's Rich Owen in North Wales, number one. Also, Darren Williams on the inside in command and six, but uh, your leader still, North Wales, 38 it is. Command and six now through into uh, second place slot then comes North Wales number one of oh, Rich Owen as uh, the battle really is on for that uh, third fourth fifth and sixth place slot 182 then moving through into that uh, fourth place slot just ahead of the uh, Pennine machine it must be Dan Heath in Pennine 89 but already last lap there North Wales 38 Lee Kent leads the way CM7, CM6 North Wales one Pennine 89 there comes Atherston 182 Jamie Lane looking to gain ground as well in the Radford machine as round the start gate turn we go Ben Griffiths now right at the back in Sem Valley number 8 but Paisley also gain, gaining ground in this one up to about 50 years in Pennine number 10 but uh, your leader and your race winner North Wales 38 it is North Wales winner from Carmarthen 6 then comes uh, Jamie Lane in Radford 1 uh, foot 941 Pennine 10 as the rest of the field then go through and Ben Griffiths will complete it all in Sem Valley 8 So, another race completed. So, race six then. Uh, this one will bring out uh, J.D. Farrah in Scarborough, 117. Uh, Dan Robbins in St. Nietzsche, 34. Callum Woodworth in Atherson, 83. Bradley Liston, the uh, last bass round winner down in Cumdy. He'll be out there in York, 16. Ricky Houlihan, all the way over from, from, from Ireland in Mallow, number two. Craig Conway who uh, sits second in the series at the minute in, Scar in Scunthorpe 126. And Stephen Heath will complete it all in Pennine 65. Already the bungee lifts and we're already away and uh, racing. 
And it is Stephen Heath, it is from the inside in lane number one that uh, leads in Penine at 65, but somebody going right round the outside and uh, challenging to take up the running, but Conway's found the gap and he's through. So all swap and change on the, the first lap in class two, but Conway it is that uh, leads the way in Scunthorpe, 126. Ellison chasing now in that second place slot, the uh, second, last pass round winner, of course, in York 16. As uh, these just are losing out to somebody, oh, just a bit more contact as well. For that third, fourth, and fifth. As Dan Robbins then finds a way through in uh, certainly it's 34. As uh, they go round the start gate turn, it's JD Fire it is that uh, was battling in that fourth place slot. Just Ellis Stephen Heath, first uh, first corner leader in Pennine at 65 with Ricky Hulahan in Mallow number two, but uh, Conway it is. Scunny 126, York 16, Sydney at 34 from um, uh, Scarborough 17, Stephen Heath, Ricky Houlihan. And uh, last of the runners and riders. And oh, we got one over. That's Atherson 83 of Callum Woodward. So uh, just caught the tyres and over he went. So uh, red flags on uh, that one. So gentle roll for uh, the uh, Atherson machine of Callum Woodward so of course medical crew on to uh, on to the track so I'm sure any for precautionary measures but uh, as I say safety of course absolutely paramount in uh, this uh, sport of uh, all the grass racing so, uh, race six. So, let's look who's in race seven. Our, uh, race seven then will or should bring out uh, Aaron Smith in SR 171. James Espley in North Wales 101. Dan Owen in uh, North Shropshire 15. Bradley Thomas in IK 55. Paul Morgan in Radford 22. Ashley Lington in South Somerset 38. And Kieran Griffiths in uh, Seven Valley 4. Right, well, I've got a little bit of downtime. We've uh, just had a message and uh, to wish a big, big happy birthday to one of the uh, long-time Evesham members, Pete Haynes. And he just wants to know everybody uh, how old he is, but uh, we can probably guess. But, <laughs> um, but no, a big happy birthday from everybody at Evesham Autograss Club and all uh, everybody really that knows you, Pete. And uh, it's a long-time uh, Class 3 racer, Pete Haynes. And let's say one of the stalwarts of uh, Asian Club, and uh, big, big happy birthday from from everybody. So uh, say Bors Bowser once again going down onto uh, water, going down round the start gate turn, and uh, as I say, track looking absolutely uh, superb. Oh God, it's a terrible sight on camera, isn't it? Hello to everybody. Hope you're all all right. And uh, as I say, everybody, uh, hope you are listening on Bass TV. Hope you're enjoying the coverage and uh, all the action and say certainly a lot of action this morning we've had a few over already but uh, i'm sure we'll uh, they'll get all the damage sorted and everybody will be back out in uh, the reruns and all that sort of thing so medical crew looking like they've uh, done their job and as i say i think uh, everything absolutely a okay which is always good to see and uh, as I say, race seven then will bring out Aaron Smith in SR 171, James Espley in North Wales 101, Dan Owen, long time class two racer in North Shropshire 15, Bradley Thomas in IK 55, Paul Morgan in Radford 22, Ashley Lillington in South Somerset 38, and Kieran Griffiths in Seven Valley 4. So, uh, Bios is, I think, just about finished. So, those of you are actually uh, trackside, then don't forget all the trade stands here this weekend to uh, get all your spares and bits and pieces for uh, 
for your car if you're building or think about building a new one for next year or uh, repairing the one you've got sat in the garage <laughs> like, like me um but uh, yeah they're all here so i know bp grass in here and uh, the very familiar uh, green and, uh, and yellow tents we got uh, Berriford chassis components bodyworks to name but a few so uh, that's on track, so uh, on track, we've got uh, race seven of men's class two already away from the line. And Ashley Lillington it is in South Somerset 38 that uh, leads into uh, turn one. Who's that goes on? I think Bradley Thomas in there somewhere as well. And IK 55, as it is indeed, right alongside as they come past us for the first time. And Kieran Griffiths also in there as well in Sem Valley 4. He's slots into third as all oh, contact with... Uh, Dano in North Shropshire 15, but they get it all sorted. But uh, that just allows the first two just to get away of uh, Bradley Thomas and Dano in and uh, Ashley Lillington, respectively. Thomas then picks up the running as uh, so once again another lap is completed. IK 55, South Somerset 38, 74. That's one, two, three from James Espley in North Wales at 101. Then comes the uh, 15 machine of Dano in and he races just ahead of Paul Morgan in Radford 22. And uh, Aaron Smith will complete it all in SR 171. One to go then for Thomas, IK 55. So Somerset 38, Kieran Griffiths in Seven Valley 4, Espley in 101. Then uh, it's the uh, North Shropshire 15 of Dan Owen from uh, Paul Morgan and Aaron Smith, respectively. So everybody safely on to the last lap, but with a fair old lead and a race win and 55 points on the board. We'll go to uh, Bradley Thomas, IK55 from Ashley Linton in South Somerset 38. Kieran Griffiths in Seven Valley 4, James S. Blee in North Wales 101. Dan Owen in North Shropshire 15. Paul Morgan in Radford 22 and Aaron Smith in SR 171. So, Rats race seven done and dusted. Race eight then uh, will bring out Jamie Lillington in South Somerset 45. Chris Hall in Scunthorpe 227. Ash Robinson, your current Bass Series leader in Spalding 43. Shane Jenkins in Radford 205. Ryan Smith in PhD 29. Clint Foles in Pennine 84. And Adam Pickerskill in Scunthorpe 109. So, that's your lineup for the last scheduled race of uh, class two and uh, already we're away and uh, racing and it is the uh, chris hall machine in 227 that leads into turn one oh we've got somebody facing the wrong way in uh, turn one but we carry on racing as uh, 227 and then leads the way from uh, jamie linton in the uh, south somerset 45 machine but it's coming right through the middle radford 205 then found the gap shane jenkins and it was the uh, Clint Falls machine in Pennine 84 that uh, was facing the wrong way, but he's got it going again. But uh, he's got some serious chasing to do. But uh, the one they've all got to chase is your race leader, Chris Hall, scunning 227 from 205, 45. Then comes the uh, the Scunthorpe 109 machine just going through Alan, Pick Alan Pickerskill with the, the Spalding 43. A current Bass Series leader down the pack in this one in Spalding 43. But uh, one lap to go then for uh, your uh, race leader. Scunthorpe 227, Radford 205. Then comes uh, the PhD 29, Spalding 43. Robinson just gaining ground, but of course, just got get yourself into the top 16. Of course, we've got semi finals in uh, class two. But uh, get book in his place, or start all uh, certainly uh, starting to book his place in the uh, fight in the semi finals. Scunthorpe 227, Chris Hall then takes it. Radford 205 from Ash Robinson is bowling 43. Scunny 109, PhD 27. Jamie Lewington in South Somerset 45. And uh, no finish this time for Clint Foles in Pennine 84. Right, class two's done and dusted. I don't think that's a bad, uh, that's a bad effort. Eight races done and only two reruns. So uh, 
Finally, it's about. As uh, Bruce Forsyth would have said, Tim, uh, didn't he do well? Eh? <laughs> two reruns in Class 2s when you've eight, got eight grids. That's, uh, that's top draw, that is, mate. Well done. I'll take that. I'll take that. So uh, this is uh, men's uh, Class 7, Super Saloons. This is race four, third time lucky. And uh, who's left in it? Well, Craig Bagley, Kundi uh, 2, was doing OK. Uh, Ian Stevenson as well, White Row 20. He's probably getting frustrated going... I've been leading it. Um, I thought I was going for maximum points, and they keep bringing these red flags out. But uh, who else is there? Matt Manning. Well, he was um, charging away, wouldn't he, um, on that last uh, run, and then it got red flagged. So what can he do? He's coming out of lane eight. Stevenson out of lane seven. Mike Barrett out of lane five. Mackenzie, lane four. Clive Williams, lane three. And I say Craig Bagley is coming out of lane two. Max Ball, our series sponsors, and DM Design and Fabrication are our weekend sponsors. So uh, thank you for that. Just being outside and just uh, getting a bit of fresh air and, uh, and the sun's come out, Tim. And you know what? It's extremely hot. So uh, if anyone uh, hasn't put any sun cream on or got one of the, uh, your baseball caps or whatever head of tie you like to wear, then uh, make sure you get it on because it's going to be a really hot afternoon down here at North Shropshire. The third round of the, the British series, you know, and uh, let's all go home uh, looking uh, really tanned and healthy and stuff like that. Looking at me and Tim, I think we've got that kind of skin, Tim, that we will go red um, and then flake like a leper. Here we go then. Oh, no, 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 I think... I'm not going to say anything, but there was one car that rolled a little bit forward. Ah, oh dear. We'll have a listen on the old uh, on on the radio and see what is going to be a decision that may be made on that. So uh, anticipation here. Um, cars are all back in line, so uh, we're looking to that first marshal post. Once we've got uh, all yellow flags. Then we will be going uh, racing. Uh, Marshall's a uh, little bit of activity on that line, isn't there? And I think they're just checking the, uh, the bungee. So uh, was there a little technical problem with that? Does it need a bit of WD-40? There are other products available for lubricating, by the way, but uh, um, that may be what the issue was. Oh, my. Oh, there's one uh, pulling off. So uh, um, I'm looking over at uh, my, my fellow colleague here. And uh, it is uh, it's Typhi 113, Clive Williams. <gasps> oh, dear. So uh, Clive Williams uh, excluded from uh, the rerun. So, and then there was a, one less. Here we go then. Bungie lifts. Oh, let's go racing with the Class 7s. And it's Stevenson gets the lead. White Rose 20 takes him into there. Bagley looks for the cut back up the inside. Coming out of turn two. Up cars commentary to come. It's Bagley then leading it from Stevenson. Then we go down into Cambridge 12. Mackenzie. Mackenzie's being swallowed up, though, as uh, we go down. Matt Manning now up into that third place. They're swapping and changing places on this rerun of the uh, Super Saloons as they come down. Mike Barrett, York 12, looking to find some gap, but he can't get there at the moment. So it's still Craig Beckley. Couldn't he, too? Leading it from White Rose 20, Ian Stevenson from Matt Manning, from uh, Mackenzie, from Barrett. That is how the five are running, and five quick lads down here on this North Shropshire track. Round we come again, one more to go on this one. Last lap, Kundi two then. It's Craig Bagley, takes them up into the trade stand, turn three, out of turn three, into Stargate, turn down the opening straight. Bagley then lifting up the front wheels from Stevenson, from Manning, from Mackenzie, from uh, Barrett, as we bring it into the final two now. Check and flag and ready. Come D2. Craig Bagley takes the win. White Rose 20 in Stevenson second. Third goes to Evesham 152. Matt Manning. Cambridge 12. Mike McKenzie in fourth. Fifth goes to York 12. Just a shout out to Andy Jefferson who sat at home. Uh, he's babysitting Freddie. They're watching a the Class 7 action. And uh, they're also looking forward to watching Auntie Emily in the Class 8 a little bit uh, later. So uh, water going down on the track. And again, it really is starting to, uh, to dry out as they uh, bring uh, just a single uh, bowser out, a little bit of grading going on. We've got some uh, 
rerun of the uh, junior saloons to do. So I think uh, uh, Russ is ready, we're ready. So over to Russ to take you through the rerun of the juniors. I wasn't ready about 10 seconds ago because I wasn't even here, but uh, I, was trying to get, I was trying to get a few pictures of the Class 7 uh, rerun. Uh, but yeah, the junior saloons, we've got three reruns, uh, hopefully going to come straight back out uh, any moment. Uh, Shropshire Designs, your uh, series sponsor, and um, Silver Lake Recycled Car Parts, your uh, sponsor this weekend. And also, uh, don't forget, the juniors are make up part of the Young Guns uh, Championships, which is sponsored by Power Maxed. So uh, thank you to everybody involved there. So let's see how we go. Uh, the, let's see if we can pick out which rerun it even is. Um, yeah, I know it had Reese Tipton, so this is race two. So Reese Tipton in Ludlow one comes out of the middle of the grid. This is where we lost Leston Jones for contact on Hannah Lewis. Hopefully the Afton 212 is back, but unfortunately uh, no Typhi 15. So we've managed to catch up with one or two people out there in spectator land. Uh, thank you very much for your kind comments. Uh, some saying it's nice to hear us back. Yeah, it's great to be back uh, on the mic doing what uh, we've enjoyed doing for a long time. Uh, when I realise that next year I, I'll have been doing this 20 years. Christ. So, uh, yeah, doesn't time fly? So water tankers just doing their little bit on the circuit and uh, the grader also as well trying to keep this North Shropshire Raceway in tip-top condition and uh, so far they're doing a grand job uh, out there. So I hope you're all enjoying the uh, the racing and the action so far provided. We've had a few frills and spills. Hopefully uh, everybody is okay uh, who has had their tumbles earlier on. Um, but uh, the track is certainly quick, which is why we're getting the racing we're getting. So out in this one then should be Molly Bubb, Evesham 146, Thomas Creed, Breenil 40, Miles Collins, PhD 48, uh, Reese Tipton, Ludlow 1, William Hall, Sen Valley 29, Bo Bennett, Breenil 33, and Hannah Lewis, Athelstan 212, and away we go, juniors on track, and it looks like the Athelstan car is not repaired, so uh, no Hannah Lewis in uh, this one. Uh, yes, I have got the right race, uh, because uh, it's... Uh, is it Breed Nil 40 leading the way then? Just going wide and the two minis slot up the inside. Reese Tipson it is taking it up the low one. Breed Nil 33 then of uh, Bo Bennett in second place. The uh, Breed Nil 40. Thomas Creed had a good start but has dropped back. Somebody's gone a bit of, a, of an uh, exploration route. Uh, the PhD 48 unfortunately across. Uh, the infield but rejoins and the battle between the two minis then up front uh, and it's side by side Bennett on the outside Tipton on the inside and Bennett looks to carry the momentum oh contact there in uh, to the turn and uh, 33 gets shuffled aside and uh, Ludlow 1 continues on his way uh, down the far side Evesham 146 then slots into third and uh, that's Molly Bubb ahead of Breed Nil 40 then uh, Thomas Creed down the order now PhD 48 Sem Valley uh, 20 nine I think it is and a green flag is going out to the race leader so uh, Tipton then is going to be docked back uh, for that contact I assume on the turn Ludlow one then will be first on track but not in the result as uh, Breenil 33 then uh, is going to be uh, taking this one through uh, by the time the flag comes down which is now Ludlow one crosses the line first uh, Breenil 33 then across the line in second uh, Evesham 146, Breeden Hill 40, PhD 48, Seven Valley 29. 
So, a uh, bit of discussion going on there over a couple of things which happened in that race, but let's uh, focus our attention to race three. Gareth White, Rees Foles, uh, no Lexi Owen, Jack Lewis, Callum Foles, Paris Smith, Jay Jones, and no Bo Chamberlain, as far as I believe. In fact, is that this race? Uh, yes, it is. Jack Lewis had a good start last time around. It's a depleted lineup, just five cars remain. And uh, somebody a bit slow away, but it's the Pennine Co. We've lost one of the fouls, boys. Uh, the other one is still here. So I think that's Pennine 85. Reese at the wheel of that one. He's under a little bit of pressure then from Jack Lewis in North Shops 127. Cundy 133. Gareth White making a better start this time around than a much better first lap. He uh, leads the two tail enders and uh, the one at the back of the field then, uh, PAC 52. Paris Smith got that uh, black uh, square with the black, uh, yellow square with a black cross on the back. That's not a last lap flag uh, marker for the car but it's a novice sticker which the new juniors have to have. Pennine 85 then it is, North Shops 127, it's IK 430 then uh, who's moved up a position up to third place and uh, that's Jay Jones at the expense of Gareth White who's in the Cum D car, C133 and then the PAC uh, machine just a little bit further back uh, last lap flag then this time around and uh, so far it's uh, going to uh, Pennine 85 who leads North Shopshire 127 in Victor Kent 430 Cum D 133 I uh, can't really see anything changing with the order now as PAC 52 is about to start her final lap uh, but although we say that it does close up for third and fourth and for the leaders a mistake from the leader then uh, Reese Fowles gathers it up nicely and he's going to take the win Pennine 85 North Shropshire 127 a change of third or is there and Vince Kent 430 just fends off C133 was a little bit disappointed there with a little tap on the steering wheel and finally PAC uh, 52 uh, I think it was Paris Smith will complete. So that's two of the races, uh, reruns completed. We've got one more to go. Race four then, Pip Melly, uh, Harry Berriman uh, spun. I'm not sure if he's allowed back or not. I think he is there actually. Uh, in uh, Scarborough one, uh, Kieran Ross, Hereford 28, Isabella Hitchcock, PhD five, uh, Shane Fuller, Amber Powell, Hannah Hadley, Reese Davis. Away we go, and it's a level break. Apart from, unfortunately, Hannah Hadley, who's make a slow getaway. <coughs> we go about three, four abreast into turn. Oh, big contact on the back of Typhi nine. But uh, does that give him momentum through the corner? Pip Melly looks to lead it in the micro. Swansea two, Typhi nine, PAC 20. The South Wales League then to the four in this one. North Wales 52 trying to break up that domination uh, and Scarborough 1 goes with her so uh, Harry Berryman looking to make up uh, a poor start uh, in Scarborough 1 then two tail enders just on their way but it's Pip Melly who leads Swansea 2 Typhi 9 Reese Davis uh, that's the 1 and the 2 Berryman's up to 3rd can he close up any more Scarborough 1 PAC 20 uh, Shane Fuller Shay Fuller sorry Apologies on that one, Shea. It is at the wheel ahead of North Wales 52. And uh, that is Amber Powell. Then it's Kieran Ross in Hereford 28. And uh, Hannah Hadley just at the back in Seven Valley 147. Is it closing up for the lead? Yes, it is. Swansea 2 on the wider line. Then Typhi 9 trying to reel him in. Looking for a gap, which is being shown to him. No way through this time around, but less than uh, a lap to go. Scarborough 1 looks to be secured in third. Could it change for the 1 and the 2? Well, it all depends on this final turn. Swansea 2 then into uh, the turn uh, for the last time and he's going to see the chequered flag he's drifted out wide Typhi 9 up the inside dash to the line and oh that's close very close we're just we're after the finish by several metres so uh, we'll wait on lap scorer's decision on that as uh, Typhi 9 and Swansea 2 was very close indeed Scarborough 1 at PAC 20 North Wales 52 Hereford 28 and Hannah Hadley in uh, Seven Valley 147. Anyway, that completes uh, Junior Saloons. Uh, Shropshire Designs, your series sponsor, Silver Lake Recycled Car Parts, your uh, sponsor this weekend. Uh, we go Class 4 machines now. I'll be back with the stock hatches a little bit uh, later. But, uh, Tim, it's back over to you. And uh, who's who in Class 4?
Okay, good stuff from uh, race uh, race one of uh, men's uh, class four. So uh, very quickly on to race two. Race two brings out Daniel Jones, Jamie Williams, Elan Lewis, Colin Natural, Annie Whittingham, Ashley Lukowicz, Clive Edwards and Darren Grasby. And it is Grasby that makes the best start in Evesham 2.20 into uh, turn one the other imp goes with him. that's going to be daniel jones in penau number four and this imps at the, at the ready 220 penau four then comes high natural in ik 272 as uh, the flag's been gone out to somebody as uh, we keep racing jamie williams ending martin 58 slotted into fourth as they go down the far side but it's still the uh, Grasby machine that's going to lead them round once again Colin natural still chasing on an ik 272 as uh, Jamie Williams now smooths through to 30, Martin 58, Daniel Jones in Panay 4. Then comes the two uh, mini pickups. That's going to be uh, Typhi 33 and SR 50. That's um, the Andy Whittingham and Clive Edwards. But uh, you're still going to catch your uh, race leader as uh, we uh, look towards the last lap flag. There's been a change. Clive Natural through 272, two, uh, 220, Martin 58, Panay 4, and Typhi 33. And then comes. Um, the PAC machine that's going through Elan Lewis and Andy Whittingham is uh, into the centre in SR50. His race is run this time around, but uh, it's a good win and uh, another uh, 55 points on the board. Coy Natural, Grasby takes second, Mountain 58, Typhoon 33, Penai 4, Penai C71, and uh, Ashley Littlewich in North Shropshire. 1 1 2. So Sutton Glass, your uh, meeting sponsor, and DM Design and Fabrication, of course, your uh, your uh, bass sponsor. So once again, big thanks to both. Okay, so uh, bouncers again on to the circuit, and we're moving onwards and ever upwards. Super saloons or the front wheel drive uh, variety. Men's class sixes are uh, are assembled on the line. Andy Johnson Commercial Vehicle Repairs is your meeting sponsor and elite racing transmissions of course your series sponsor so race one then race one brings out anthony conway in scunthorpe 91 paul bailey in hereford 99 richard jones in cumdy 279 michael keogh in cumdy 433 andy johnson your meeting sponsor in scarborough 16 craig conway in scunthorpe 122 andy russell in IK64, and last, but by absolutely certainly no means least, Mickey Manning in Eastern 5. And Mickey starts towards the outside in lane 8. So, quality lineup in the men's sixes as we're right the way through the uh, Class 6 machinery. Always fast, always furious. Six races to uh, come your way. So, plenty of action to, to come, but uh, not before. We uh, have some uh, say more water going down, a bit more graining work on the start gate turn. So, uh, who's doing the best of the bunch? So current current uh, bass leader, Dalt Thomas. He uh, Dalt will come out in race four. So, uh, uh, say the quality line it right the way through the uh, right the way through all six races. So, of course, Andy Johnson coming out in this one in Scarborough 16, as I say, your uh, your uh, meeting sponsor. Based on by uh, Anthony Conway in Scunny 91. Anthony, of course, had a big role a few weeks ago. Got car sorted. Paul Bailey. Paul's been uh, racing Class 6 for uh, forever. He was there in uh, race in lane to Richard Jones. Always uh, always fast, of course, with the, the big alpha in uh, Cumbie 279. Michael Keogh, also another one uh, there or thereabouts. Also in the other ex school machine in 433. Andy Johnson in uh, his new machine and getting to grips with it in Scarborough 16. Craig Conway. Uh, Craig, another one, uh, builds uh, quite a lot of chassis also. Doesn't cover the best of luck at times, but Craig will also be there, always fast in the uh, Scunny 122 machine. Andy Russell in the, uh, in the polo. 
He will be there, Andy, always at the forefront of classic machinery. And talking of classics, is then uh, it's not classics like Mickey Manning in uh, Eastern Five. Mickey, of course, been uh, in class six and, of course, former champ a few years ago. But uh, he'll be there in lane number eight. So, once again, the uh, Bowser's, is, I think, just about finished as uh, they uh, make their way, or one of them certainly makes their way off the, uh, off the track. So those here are our track side. Then, as I say, don't forget, it's uh, it starting to get quite warm out there. So uh, get your hat on, get your sun cream on, keep yourself hydrated. And uh, there's plenty of catering facilities around the, around the site to get yourself fed and watered. And let's say, don't want anybody uh, going down with any uh, sunstroke or anything like that here. So I uh, say, no excuse, put your hat on, plenty of sun cream, get, the, uh, get under the gazebo, and uh, as I say, watch some cracking racing, which, uh, as I say, we've had some good stuff already, and uh, I say, a lot of racing to get through, but uh, no doubt we'll uh, provide you all the action. So I think the last of the bows is about done. So uh, they move off the uh, North Shropshire Waceway. We're going to be looking for track clearance then very, very shortly on Marshall's post number one. And uh, we go racing then with uh, Heat 1, Race 1, Men's Class Sixes. Away from the line, and it's Conway from the inside that makes the best start with Russell going with him in IK64. But uh, Richard Jones finds a gap through and puts the power down, takes up the running. 279 it is that uh, leads away. Conway on the outside, Polo, the, uh, the uh, Andy Russell also in there as well. Craig Conway in 122, all swap and change at the front, but uh, the race leader. Richard Jones, 279 at least. Johnson, your meeting sponsor in Scarborough at 16, just slotting into second as once again back round towards us for another lap completed. 279, 16. Then comes Andy Russell in 64. Scunny, 91, 122. Mickey Manning in Eastern 5. Paul Bailey in 899. And then comes Michael Keogh in Cum D at 433. But uh, at the front, it's still the big alpha that leads the way. The X Pen Gold Machine, of course. Cum D at 279 with one more lap to go. Who's going to be in uh, second place? Well, it's uh, Scunny at 91 of Anthony Conway. Then comes Andy Johnson in Scarborough 16. Craig Conway slotting into fourth in Scarborough 122 as they go down the far side. Manning also in there as well in Eastern 5. Paul Bailey in Hereford 99 and Michael Keogh in Cum D 433. But here's your first race winner in Class 6. Richard Jones 2 C 279. Andy Johnson in Scarborough 16. Scarborough 91. Scarborough Scunny 122. Eastern 5, Cum D 433. And Paul Bailey in Hereford 99. OK, race one done and dusted. Also, we're hearing that uh, it is all clear. So, uh, race two then. Race two brings out Marlene Janes in Yorkshire Dales 10. Stephen Parsonage, North Wales 146. Paul Melly, a good run third in the standings in the Swansea number one. Also, your map champion. He is joined by Adrian Lewis in PAC 7. Simon Morgan in Sem Valley 62. James Armstrong in Scarborough 76. Glyn Bailey in Scunny 33. And Ted Preedy in Radford 190. So that's your lineup for race two. We get clearance already and we're already racing. And Parsonage makes the best start in North Wales 146. But uh, James, he goes with him in Yorkshire Dales number 10. As uh, round turn one we go, watch out. For PAC7, the diesel, Adrian Lewis slotted into second, into third as they go past for the first time. James Armstrong in Scarborough at 76, but James, he then comes out of turn uh, number four and down the start straight as your race leader. Yorkshire Dallas 10, North Wales 146, PAC7. That's your one, two, and the three as uh, they come by us once again. It's still James e in Yorkshire Dallas 10, but he's been challenged by Parsons in 146. There goes PAC7 with Glyn Bailey also in there as well in Scunthorpe 33. He's racing just ahead of Paul Melly in Swansea. Number one as Lewis N goes wide. Bailey looking up that inside line for that tough fourth place slot. But uh, still, Jane Z it is with one to go. Yorkshire Dale 10, North Wales 146. Parsons is still chasing hard with uh, Armstrong in 76. Glyn Bailey and Adrian Lewis in uh, the uh, Scunthorpe 33 and PC7 respectively. Then comes Ted Preedy in Radford 190 with Paul Melly not having a good run this time in Swansea 1 and uh, Simon Morgan in Sem Valley 62 but uh, he has 55 points on the board goes to Jamesy Yorkshire Dales 10 North Wales 146 from James Armstrong in 76 Scunthorpe 33 Adrian Lewis in PAC 7 10 Preedy 
Paul Malley in Swansea 1. And then completes an all. That is going to be Simon Morgan in Sem Valley 62. Yeah, well done, Tim. That's uh, cracking racing there from uh, from sixes. And uh, that's what you expected it. Close, fast racing. And with the sun beating down on this track, it's getting hotter. Yes, it is uh, it is always fast, always furious. It's class sixes. Love it. It's got to be the best class in the world. Right, race three then. Race three brings out Stephen Wilson, Ben Gasby, Oli Sol, Matthew Schofield, Joe Grayson, Andy Lewis and Neil Reid as uh, they uh, already leave the line but it's Gasby in penalty seven that uh, leads into turn one but it's the mini of uh, Neil Reid that's going to bring him round once again but uh, just slotting into second racing with uh, Schofield in YS22 it's all swap and change at the front but Gasby has, uh, takes up the running down the far side penalty seven to eight two two one from Manny Schofield in YS22 these three already pulled away with uh, problems with Ollie Sol somewhere in Sydney it's 668 but uh, Gasby it is no problems at all Pen 97 type 221 of Neil Reed Manny Schofield in YS22 then comes PhD 85 of Andy Lewis he races just ahead of the uh, Joe Grayson machine in Scarborough 96 but uh, Gasby it is then in Pen 97 that motors on type 221 YS22 that's the one two and the three PhD 85 Andy Lewis having a good run he goes through in that uh, fourth place slot ahead of uh, Scarborough at 96 and Ollie Sol in Sydney at 668. We are hearing that uh, Scarborough at 96 will pick up the uh, green flag, but no flags. It is the checkered one for uh, Gasby. Penline 7, Typhi 221, Matty Schofield in YS22. Then uh, Andy Lewis in the PhD 85, Scarborough 96, but of course picks up the green flag and Ollie Sol. It will complete it all instantly at 668. So, halfway through then, on we go to race four. And uh, race four brings out Aaron Murray, Muzzer in uh, Cumdi 80, Darren Reese in Typhi 95. The current Bass Series leader then, Dalt Thomas in uh, Commander number eight, Dane Copeland in, Scun in, Scun in Scunthorpe 36. Tom Pipe in North Shropshire 5, Jordan Copeland in uh, Scunthorpe 15, and the last Bass Round winner, of course, in Downing Cum D, and a good final as well, that was Jay Colgate in uh, North Wales 20. So, he, that's your lineup for race four, as Typhi 15 moves into the centre of the raceway. We uh, get up and running and away we go bit of an even Stephen break has all oh, got a couple of cars contact from somewhere but uh, Aaron Murray's out of it in Cumdy 80 as uh, they come back round towards his pipe it is out North Shropshire 5 that uh, leads away can't get all on two wheels but uh, how did he save that as uh, it comes down on uh, thankfully the right side and uh, we got cars there I think that may bring out red flags and indeed it does So we've got uh, Mickey listening on the radio. As soon as we know anything, we will tell you. But uh, so, so lucky for Jay Colgate. Nearly went over, but uh, fair play. Managed to keep it uh, the right way up. Right, so uh, so we're just uh, waiting. Just, they're still discussing the uh, race four. So while we're doing that, let's see who uh, comes out in race five. So race five brings out Jordan Tinker in York 35, Aaron Smith in SR 71, James Sinnett, who uh, they're always very, very quick wherever he goes, a second in the series in the uh, CW 174, Liam Morris in Border Counties 37, Darren Thomas in Typhi 66. Tomo Sue Thompson in White Rose 3. And uh, your uh, current champ for uh, your current national champion, well, for a couple more weeks anyway, is uh, Darren Bryan. And uh, he already, he's sitting fourth in the series. So uh, high up 
already in uh, the series. That's Dan Bryan in Scarborough at 41. So that's your lineup for race five. So still uh, discussing, I think, uh, the uh, race four. So Andy Johnson, son, commercial vehicle repair, of course, your sponsor or meeting sponsor. And of course, Elite Racing Transmissions, your uh, bus sponsor. So lengthy discussions going on. Mickey got his ear absolutely glued to the radio. So he uh, always tends, sometimes tends to happen when you get uh, eight super quick class class sixes. Sometimes things do go, uh, don't go according to plan. Uh, bounces, I think, already all decided to come on to uh, onto the circuit. So uh, we're going to a bit more downtime with a bit more uh, dust settling solution. Right, we are here in, uh, and I think they've decided on the uh, radio, uh, the marshal's radio, that. Uh, Dane Copeland, Scarborough and Scunthorpe 36 will or does get the black flag. So Dane excluded from the rerun. Everybody else we hear will go. So I'll tell you what I was doing last weekend, Tim, while we've got a moment uh, of time, while the Bowsers are coming out. Um, down in where I live, we had uh, the annual Barnby Feast weekend and they had the, uh, the Northern Truck Pool Championship. So uh, 2022, so they had a big tractor unit there, like seven and a half tonne it was, and uh, teams of six to, uh, to pull it down uh, a length of track. It was about 30 metre uh, distance. And uh, some people managed to, uh, to do it, others didn't. Um, the winning team, by the way, were a team called uh, 1079 Gym. Well, I'm telling you, mate, um, uh, they, they want an ounce of fat on them, right? They had muscles everywhere. They were just like, like protruding out everywhere. And, and they managed to successfully pull the truck um, every time that they took it down there. And they, they ended up winning with uh, a 250 pound cash first prize. Um, second place went to, well, this is the story, right? And this is where I'm going with it because it has got an autograss theme to this is that the uh, uh, team two and three, both in their two runs, pulled it 40 metres, uh, 19 metres and then 11, um, uh, 21 metres. Uh, and Scarborough Autograss had put a team in for Northern Truck Pool. Um, and they were on e equal um, distant pulled, but it was all on time. And, the, and a, a company called Holborn Fabrications uh, managed to get into the final top two. But there was a third and fourth place pull-off and, uh, and Scarborough Autograss came third. They came third in the 2022 Northern Truck Pool Championship, picked up 50 quid for their efforts. Um, I'm sure they've got some of it here, spending it over the bar this weekend, by the way. But yeah, and then I was on the mic. So uh, not commentating on autographs, I was, I was actually uh, bringing them home in a truck pool competition. So, so yeah, that's what I was doing last weekend. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a glorious weekend as well, last weekend as well. It was... Uh, really hot brought out record numbers um and we smashed our previous uh, fundraising efforts because like the uh, the playing fields is a registered charity so and like most of these charities out there that they all operate via volunteers and uh, and it's all fundraising that keeps uh, keeps them going it's a community um uh, you know kind of facility and they need to raise about eight thousand pound a year to keep it going with insurances and all of that good stuff um, but yeah, that one event uh, made sure that it's got enough money to keep running next year and a little bit more as well. So, uh, so really good. Uh, so yeah, lo what were you up to, Tim? Were you still doing uh, some of the work on the on the house? I know you've uh, you've been doing uh, lots of DIY. Yeah, still still loads of boxes and stuff to sort out. So, but um, no, we're, we're getting there. We'd, uh, so we've um, managed to put some uh, sort of 
decking down at the back and sort of uh, we've uh, what you have you been doing that yeah have yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. all right I hope uh, the, the can I come round and snag because like I'd love to come and snag your patio I go right hold on is that is that cut nice and square have you got all the equipment though have you got like the proper all the well, I wouldn't say all the equipment it's sort of done you know sort of reasonably but uh, no, uh, I've, I've, to be fair we've had some help we've had yeah. some help with it so, uh, oh now yeah. now you dig a bit deeper <laughs> Russ right you start here have you done all that yeah I've done it all myself and then all the sudden I've got a bit of help that kind of gets in there now yeah Any, anything else that you've been doing no that's it really we've, we've um, say just been mainly trying to sort stuff out and uh, you know just get get it so it's uh, you know, a bit more uh, livable and stuff but we're, we're getting there we're getting there I'll tell you what, we've got uh, Russ has just uh, come back into commentary and hats off to Russ. Um, I think I, I think everyone who says it is that where you get all of that kind of knowledge from um, for all of the stats that you have, it's brilliant. But back to racing. OK, back on with the racing then. We're going on with race five of men's class sixes. And once again, it is the Irish machine, James Sinnott, that uh, leads into turn one in CW1. Somebody, oh, somebody over and over and over. So uh, that's uh, Aaron Smith in SR71, so red flags. So slow it down, boys. So once again, medical crew onto, uh, onto, uh, onto the scene. Surely uh, only uh, provisional. It's uh, Aaron's uh, tough... Uh, so cookie in the SR seventy one machine. So uh, as they all uh, drive away under their own steam, James Sinnott in uh, CW one seventy four didn't have the best uh, the best final last time out down in Cum D. I think mechanical problems on board, but uh, did finish the final. But uh, he'll make his way back to the uh, rerun lane. So race, uh, that was race five. So uh, let's see who's in race six. So race six then brings out Simon Mills in LM46. Jack Brown in Mallow 182. Adrian Brown in PAC 37. Phil Olsen in Carmarthen 47. Kai Williams in Typhi 121. Jordan Hampson in at Pennine 70 and uh, Martin Cannon in Evesham to 91. So that's your lineup for race six. So of course safety paramount in uh, in all the grass racing as uh, as ever. So uh, but uh, course, all these cars are obviously built to. Uh, a pretty, a pretty high standard. Obviously, they're all going to be uh, checked and tagged and all that sort of thing to make sure they're nice and safe. So uh, they may look spectacular. Nine times out of ten, it is. Uh, everything is obviously a okay. So the uh, SR71 machine is back on its wheels. So hopefully everything is uh, a okay. So I think um, last uh, Bass Tim, we had uh, semi finals in in men's class ones, class twos, class sevens, class eights. Um, what do we think um, for this third round down here at North Shropshire? Well, we've definitely got, definitely got um, semi-finals in twos. Um, I think there's definitely semi-finals in ones. I think I think Steve had a, a whole list of ones. What about uh, your sevens? Yeah, let's, have, let's just have a quick uh, quick look at the uh, the sevens. 
Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think um, we're probably going to be semi-finals in sevens. Uh, eights, yes. <laughs> I think there's there's ten grids of eights, so that goes without that goes without saying. Um, nines, no, we're not on nines. I think fives, no. So yeah, I think it's pretty pretty the same um, same as last time with those uh, those semi-finals. And I think what kind of killed us a bit last time, wasn't it? You know, we had that 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 bad spell of wet weather on the Saturday afternoon. You know, and um, yeah, those races that went out um, and raced in it at Softia, um, you still went out there and went for your points. And uh, um, yeah, I, I remember looking at Callum's uh, Class Eight afterwards after he went out that second heat. He'd come round turn two, got filled in with a load of wet, sloppy mud, um, reversed into the Armco, and then his goggles had packed up. So he, he raced the last few laps without goggles, which I think most racers did, did by the way. Um, and then managed to cut home and get a few points uh, under under his belt. But uh, but then on the uh, the Sunday, I think we were all a bit the trepidation of uh, are we going to get through the racing? You know, are we going to hit with more wet weather? But it was great, wasn't it? We had a really good Sunday and finished in reasonably good time. Yeah, the fore forecast was obviously better for the Sunday, but you know we had to get through the the Saturday to start with. Um, but yeah, it just to be honest, I think the rain just certainly help the track um, and certainly help the organisers and get through it all. But um, no, there were some cracking finals on the Sunday. And uh, yeah, hats off to everybody. And yeah, it was a good meeting. Definitely. And it looks like uh, we've got the track uh, cleared. The machinery coming back into the middle. Marshall's coming back to the post. So, Tim, I think we're ready for you to take us through the next grid of cars. Yeah, let's uh, race six then of uh, men's class sixes already assembled on the line so uh, just to remind you simon mills jack brown adrian brown phil olsen kai williams jordan hampson and martin cannon are the ones that are assembled on the line so quad bikes into the center of the uh, north shropshire raceway and uh, we're going to be looking for track clearance very very shortly just as the red flag flutters on Marshall's post. Number one, that will change to yellow. The one limp signal. Bungie lefts. Let's go racing. Men's sixes. Race six is away from the line. And uh, straight into uh, the lead. I think that may be uh, Kai Williams in type V 121. But uh, as they all uh, push round turn one and uh, turn two. But it's, uh, it is the Mallow machine. Mallow 182. Jack Brown. That's... Uh, Leads him down past us for the first time, but smoke pouring out of the bonnet. Well, he's got problems on board, but uh, still uh, leads away from uh, the uh, Adrian Brown machine, PAC 37. Now through into uh, second place, Don, who's adding third. That's going to be uh, Jordan Hampson in pen line 70. Another one had a good run at uh, the second round, but he's just losing out to Phil Olsen in command at 47. As uh, well as getting more smoke pours out of the Jack Brown machine in Mallow, 182, but he carries on regardless. Hampson then looking up that inside of Phil Olsen in command and 47, and he moves through into that second place slot on already. We're on to the last lap. This time, Mallow, 182. Penalty 70, command and 47. PAC at 37. Then comes Martin Cannon, Eastern 291. And Simon Mills in LM46. And at last, but by no means, this Kai Williams in Typhi 121. But it's Jack Brown, it is in Mallow, 182. That's going to bring him round and uh, take the win. Mallow, 182 it is, that takes it from uh, Phil Olsen in command in 47. Pennine 70, PAC 37. Simon Mills in LM 46. Kai Williams in Typhi 121. And uh, Martin Cannon will finish in uh, Evesham 291. So that's class six is nearly done and dusted. We have got a couple of reruns to come, but so we're going back down 
to uh, men's class two. So I don't quite know its way run this is. It's either race four or race six. So this is uh, race four of the men's class two. So we've got the binos out and we can spot Mark Mosley. So uh, that's going to be race four. So say, so don't know any exclusions or anything. It looks like there's a slight gap on the grid. So we'll pick them up though as they uh, already leave the line. And uh, from the inside, it's uh, Darren Eichen in uh, North Shropshire four that uh, leads into the first turn, but uh, the uh, J.L. Brighton in, in uh, Scunny 156 it is that comes through that takes up the running from uh, the other Scunny machine, George Craswell in 127. Darren Eichen now switching to the inside line in North Shropshire, number four, as he moves through to that second place slot as they go down the far side. Then we go to Matt Sawyer in PAC at 23, with Mark Mosey in Radford. Number three, but to race leader still, Scunny 126 from 127, North Shropshire 4, PAC 23, Radford number three, as all we get, uh, George Cresswell gets it all wrong in uh, 127, but uh, rejoins at the tail of the field, but your clear race leader now still uh, is Jay Albrighton in the uh, Scunthorpe 156. Uh, so once again, back around towards us, one lap to go with uh, PAC 23, North Shropshire 4, as so we get red flags. So, once again, they go back to the uh, rear run lane. And looking, at looking, looking down towards the line, we're moving away from class twos for the moment. And I think we're going through to the stock hatches. So, to take you through them, it's back over to Russ. Right, OK. Uh, thanks, Tim. Yeah, away we go. Stock hatches then. First time out this weekend here at uh, round three of the 2022 British Autograss Series. Let's see how they behave. As uh, we go into turn one, Paul Lickley looks to make a good start through the middle in uh, Fabulous McQueen. Yorkshire Nails 95 it is as they start to hit the limiters down the straight. Going into uh, second place and looking up the inside is James Holmes in that North Shropshire 931. Then uh, we go to John Petrie in uh, Radford 59. John O'Crosby who won the second round uh, in Melton 4 is down the order this time in fourth position just ahead of uh, Martin Murray and come D88 uh, but it's uh, Yorkshire Nails 95 NS 931 Radford 59 under pressure as Melton 4 goes up the inside then it's come D88 two left to mention we've got the South Somerset car uh, Justin Hardy in South Somerset 8 and finally Archie Lewis in come D241 one lap to go already then for Paul Lickley in the stock hatches as uh, SGS Gas is your sponsor uh, of uh, stock hatches for the series. Uh, not sure who's actually the uh, weekend sponsor though, but uh, Yorkshire Nails 95 it is. Paul Lickley on his way. John O'Crosby making inroads late on as uh, he looks up the inside of James Holmes. Door closed on him. Is there any way through in the final turn? No. Paul Lickley's your winner though. Yorkshire Nails 95, North Shropshire 9 everyone just fends off Melton 4, Radford 59, South Somerset 8. Come 88 and 241 uh, pretty much neck and neck over the finish so uh, 
That was that one for the stock arches. We're going to go with race two uh, now then. Alan Hawkins, Stuart Powell, Jordan Regan, Leon Cook, Bryn Jones and Chris Patterson are in this one. Uh, Chris Patterson uh, took the first round of the series, unbeaten then. It's not gone his way since. So uh, can he get back on form here today in Scarborough 64? But he's got uh, a few challengers uh, along the way first, uh, including the ones in this race. So, uh, first race cleanly done. Will race two follow? Away we go then. And who's going to make the best of the starts? It's the Black Machine out the middle of the grid. But Patterson then uh, makes the ground and takes it up. Scarborough 64 ahead of his club mate. Then Scarborough 65, Leon Cook. A lot of Black Machines in this one. But it's the one with the blue bumper which leads the way. Scarborough 64, a little bit of smoke out of the exhaust. Scarborough 65, come D95 then. Looking to challenge Stuart Powell. Uh, looking on the outside of uh, Leon Cook. And then we go back to uh, the Breed and Hill car Jordan Regan then Swansea 36 is uh not, uh, it is, it's Bryn Jones, he's there, and uh, Forrest 20, Alan Hawkins, the last one through. Scarborough 64, Scarborough 65, under pressure, contact from C95, a black flag has gone out, I think, to Jordan Regan in Breen Hill 25, he leaves the field, well, the circuit anyway, Swansea 36, Forrest 20, uh, there's uh, one lap to go this time for the trio up front, it's anyone of these three who's going to win it, the others uh, are out of the running, really, and just for minor places, 64, 65, 95, the challenge is really really second and third as 95 sweeps to the outside Stuart Powell looking outside Leon Cook Leon defends him this time around half a lap to go uh, before the checkers who's going to take second it looks like Chris Patterson though he's going to take the win in Scarborough 64 Leon Cook I think has done enough in Scarborough 65 and that's how it stays come D95 Stuart Powell is third then we go to Swansea 36 of Bryn Jones and last but not least Forrest 20 Alan Hawkins with sadly Jordan Regan getting next excluded although I'm not sure what for so uh, that completes uh, that short stint for me I'll be back with uh, junior specials uh, after the tens and uh, we're making progress aren't we uh, with uh, this weekend's activities so um, a lot of water tankers coming out then. Even the graders got a tanker on the back now, ready for the uh, Class 8s. There's millions of them ready to go racing. And uh, I had a chat earlier with Mickey. We're trying to figure out who's uh, been commentating the longest out of us all. I know Steve's the winner, hands down, uh, out of us. He's been doing it uh, forever more. I think 1991 Steve started. He might not want reminding. Uh, I say uh, Mickey reckons he's been doing it about 16 years, although um, because he's, he's a bit more senior, the memory's going, so he can't quite quite remember exactly but he thinks it was around uh, 16 years ago uh, somehow we found himself in a commentary box and uh, hasn't really stepped out of one since he's uh, enjoying it that much and I think uh, yeah as I say 20 years for me next year uh, I don't know if that's worth celebrating or not and uh, yeah so, but we we always enjoy it and uh, hopefully uh, we've improved along the way uh, not always, though. <laughs> but uh, So uh, we're going to uh, go over to uh, the uh, open wheelers with Class 8 and 10s. And uh, to take you through those two classes, uh, first time on the mic this weekend, we'll hand you over to uh, Liam Williams to take you through uh, 10 races of 8s and however many of 10s. Yeah, thank you very much, Ross. Good afternoon, is it? Yeah, there we go. 10 minutes past 12. So good afternoon to uh, everybody trackside. And of course, those of you watching on uh, Bass TV, we are on telly. So there you go. Hello to everyone. That is uh, wherever you are, whether you're sat in your garden enjoying the sunshine or sat inside your house keeping yourself cool or even sat in your camper trackside, then uh, hopefully you're enjoying the coverage. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying some of the brilliant racing that we've seen so far, because I'll tell you what, for those of you that were here last year for the Bass Round, you know what to expect, and uh, they're carrying on from that. And we're going to see it with Class 8. Class 8's ready to go racing. And uh, Beresford Chassis and Components, your sponsors for the series. DM Racing, your sponsors for the weekend. Ten races scheduled as we get away from the line with race one. No time to read out who's in it, because they're already coming past us. And it's going to be Aaron Cavagin that leads them round in your 
Yorkshire's number five who takes up the running, but Hathaway's at the inside. In Breed Nail number one goes down the far side for the second time and leads them round Cavagan, relegated into third. And looking on the outside line, these class eights pulling up some serious speed as they go into that bottom corner and come out past us once again. It's Hathaway from 40, YD5, Mumford in 158, Connor Jones then running in 115 in about midfield with the uh, South Somerset 24 machine looking to make a challenge. I think Bayard it is on the outside and Barker at the tail end in the uh, Evesham 25. But at the front, where's halfway it is with one more to go in Breed Nail number one. Justin Thomas still running second. Third is still Aaron Cabergan. The race can be on for fourth though as Bayard and Jones are battling it out and looking to try and catch up with Mike Mumford. But Mumford motors on as he rounds out that fourth place position. But it's going to be checkered flag for the first time for the Class 8 this weekend. Wes Hathaway takes the first win. Justin Thomas, Aaron Cabergan, Mumford. Then we go to Tyler Heath Bayard, Connor Jones, South Somerset 24 of Reese Candy. And uh, it looks like Barker was the final one across in Evesham 25. So what did I say? Expect good racing. That's exactly what you're going to get with men's Class 8. Whether we're going to get clean racing from Class 8 is uh, remaining to be seen, but uh, certainly when they go through, we're going to be seeing some brilliant stuff. So race two down there on the line. Dan Smith, Ludlow 44, Harry Liversidge, YD 90, Dan Barnard, Scunny 181, Kate Lockwood, Andrew Sharp, Ron Garrett, Dave Watkins and Thomas Browning are the ones that are scheduled to come out as they get off the line and into turn one and uh, cruise through someone's shooting right through on the inside line and it's going to be Watkins in 282 that leads them round for the first time oh it looks like Barnard's climbing cards but gets it back down to earth in 181 it's done him no good though as uh, Kate Lockwood goes up the inside in Scunny 191 but at the front Watkins it is that's going to lead them round pushing on though just a little bit as he uh, drifts out wide and someone trying to come through on the inside Harry Livesey it is in YD90 he's got the tight to line but hasn't quite got the speed keep your eyes on Kate Lockwood as she runs fourth Dan Smith though just in front of her in the Ludlow 44 Barnard running just behind in 181 but we're going to keep our attention at the front it's last lap flag Dave Watkins it is that leads him around once more Harry Liversidge with just about three quarters of a lap to try and make a challenge on the race leader Dan Smith Kate Lockwood third and fourth Barnard's going out very wide Thomas Browning tucked in just behind with Solway number three of Andrew Sharp and Ron Garrett at the tail end of of the field but he's led from that first corner he's gonna hold it on all the way Dave Watkins it is that takes it Harry Liversidge I think Kate Lockwood just taken third from Daniel Smith Dan Barnard Thomas Browning then Solway three of Andrew Sharp and Ron Garrett in Breeden Hill 169 comes across to complete race two so I'm just looking for a pen I don't think we got one anywhere just so I can uh, tick off these class eights yes that's right tick them off Mickey no two R's next to them we want ticks for the whole weekend so uh, we did it we did it at the last bus at, um, at North Shropshire here last year we had uh, I think eight grids and they all went through in one I'm not going to be that optimistic again because uh, now that I've said it, this is going to end up being red flagged. But we're going to try. Race three down there on the line. Sam Matthews, Cambridge 427. Peter Bilbley in York, treble eight. Dan McKenzie, Cambridge 44. Emily Gill, Scunthorpe number 20. Jim Pinches in Radford 53. Chris Pope in Spalding eight. Ash Howard in PhD 21. And Paul Lockwood in Scunny 92. What a lineup that is then of your man's class eights. And of course, the lady mixing it in. Emily Gill as well. Keep your eyes on her but Matthews it is that gets the best of the breaks from the inside grid in 427 as he takes him into turn one someone going right round the outside but Matthews lifting the wheels and oh what did I say what did I say we was doing so well red flags on race three of your man's class eights I'm not too sure why because I didn't personally see anything wrong with it, but my eyesight isn't the best in the world. Mickey is uh, sat with the radio next to him, so I'm sure once uh, we get the word through to us about what it was, then uh, we will obviously let you know. Sam Matthews, I'm sure, will be absolutely gutted with that because he made a storming start, lifted the front wheels up going into turn one, and unfortunately the red flags come out. So as I said, I'm not too sure why. I didn't really see anything, but we have got two... Uh, trucks coming out on the field so uh, like I said we'll wait and see and uh, once we get confirmation 
then we will let you know. So, race four is uh, down there on the line then. Race four, another strong liner. Reese Wyeth in Wessex at 19, coming out of lane one. Owen Lloydor, Victor Kent 28, lane two. Jordan Candy, Strider District 17, is in lane three. Matt Middleton, South Somerset 88, in lane four. Phil Taplin, Leewood 51, lane five. Matt Bishop in lane six, in Yate and Sobbery 73. Liam Nichols in lane seven, in YD7. And last, by no means least, Zoe Leyland, another lady mixing it in with the men in Leeward 47 is coming out of the uh, outside grid. So just hearing then that uh, we think it was due to a jump start. Not too sure who, but uh, that is word on the streets, as the kids say nowadays. So uh, that's what we think. We're not too sure, who. We're going to make you wait a little bit longer until we find out. But uh, I'll tell you what, they must have jumped it well because uh, I totally missed it if that was the case. But uh, as I said, my eyesight is going. It's uh, 26 next month. That's enough now, I think. So uh, we'll wait and see what they say. But uh, I'm sure race four won't let us down, will it? Hopefully not. So uh, race four, as I said, down there on the line. Strong lineup. Every lineup of class eights is a strong lineup. We say this week in, week out. And uh, it is obviously being proven from the uh, the two races we have completed we've seen it so yellow flag bungee class eights off the line let's go racing as they get away who's going to be the first one to show middleton looked fairly quick but i think it's the nichols machine that's going to take them right round the outside middleton on the inside we let turn one sort them out they're side by side there's no splitting them and i'll tell you what matt bishop is uh, in the mix he come from absolutely nowhere right around the outside gets himself into second but hasn't quite got the power down the far side nichols it is then that leads them round of two youngsters heading things at the front in one and two Middleton is there in third but getting a bit of oversteer as is Matt Middleton as is uh, Matt Bishop rather so uh, Reese Wyeth now shoots up into third but it's Liam Nichols that leads him round once more Yorkshire's number seven and uh, Bishop still runs there in second and I think Wyeth runs third Middleton runs fourth as he leads out your uh, quartet at the head of affairs it's going to be last lap flag number seven it is in number one position Yates Sobri 73 Wessex 19 South Somerset 88, Jordan Candy it is running fifth with the uh, two Leewood machines, Phil Taplin and Zoe Leyland and Owen Lloydle in Evict Kent 28, mixing it up as well. But Liam Nichols storming to victory. Yorkshire's number seven it is. That takes a very convincing win from uh, Matt Bishop in Yate and Sobbery 73. Third was Middleton, fourth was Candy from nowhere. YF got fifth, Phil Taplin sixth, Zoe Leyland takes seventh and Owen Lloydle, your final finisher in Invicta Kent 28. So good stuff once again from the uh, Mayor's Class 8. So that's race four done and dusted. As I said, Barry's for Chassis and Components, your sponsors for the uh, British Autograph Series and DM Racing, your sponsors for the weekend. So a big thank you to them and, of course, all of the sponsors. Not forgetting, of course, Kent Cams and Simpson, your main sponsors for the British Autograph Series. Right, race five, James Hesselton, Callum Barker, Phil Tolbert, Mike Holroyd, Craig Pyle, Dave Williams, Zach Yeardley and Gethin Lewis. We're off the line. Who's the first one to show as they get away Hesse I think it was that looked quick out of the gate but they go into turn one it's absolutely anyone's it's Lewis is it it is it's the Border Counties machine that leads them round for the first time as uh, second place is uh, Zach Yeardley he's on the inside but Hesse's on the outside side by side they go in second and third but Hesse just gets his nose in front Yeardley fights back on that inside line and uh, looking to make it stick who's running fourth as uh, someone goes out wide someone coming through Holroyd it is Callum Barker in the Scarborough fifth Dee Tolbert in Solway number two is a bit down the order as well as Callum Barker gets himself up into fourth but Hesse fights back round the outside in York 75 at the front though it's going to be last lap flag already as Geth and Lewis it is that motors on to another lap his final one of that Zach Yearly runs second in the uh, Stirring machine with 199 uh, just tucking in just behind him but Holroyd hasn't got an answer Hesse runs fourth Callum Barker runs fifth Tolbert runs sixth and uh, problems for someone at the back but at the front no problems for Gethin Lewis 55 points in heat one second is Zach Yeardley just I think from Holroyd then we go to James Hesselton Callum Barker Tolbert in Solway number two is the next one across Craig Pyle in Wessex treble six and uh, finishing it all off is the North Shropshire 60 machine of Dave Williams. So, Tim is over my shoulder. He's got a pen in his hand, which means he's got news coming your way. And what's it going to be? 
So uh, all eagerly waiting. Right, race four then is uh, going to be rerun after being completed. And it's going to be rerun without Jordan Candy in Stroud and District 17. So uh, totally disregard race four from your mind. Uh, Liam Nichols, it was who won it, but that means absolutely nothing because it is going to be rerun minus Jordan Candy in Stroud and District 17. So. Uh, we got another rerun then to come your way. Race six, though, is on and off the line. And uh, this one, a cracking lineup, but we're going to have to pick them up as they get away because they're already in turn one. Rossi and Mills, it is the first two to show as they go into that turn. But uh, someone coming through on the inside, Rossi on the outside, 77 from number 10. That's the way it runs then as they come past us. Someone sneaking through in the uh, 71. I think it's Sean Wright, but uh, it's done him no good because he's dropping back as he ends up in about sixth position, but fights through again on the inside line through the two of them but no red flags all oh, right round after the red flags they've all avoided him but class eight come to a stop once again as race six goes to join race three and race four in the rerun lanes so Right, so uh, just before we go racing, we have got a bit of downtime because Sean Wright is uh, square wheeled. So we just had a, uh, a phone handed into us here in commentary. And uh, we can tell you what phone it is because it's got a passcode. So unless it's your phone, you ain't going to get into it. So it's a black iPhone and... Uh, the screen's certainly seen better days, put it that way. There's uh, a few dents, a few cracks all over it. The back end of it's all right, though. So uh, if you have uh, lost your phone, put your hands in your pockets and just check around. It's been handed into commentary. As I said, it has got a passcode. So uh, you will have to put that in if you want to get into the phone. So uh, there will be no stealing it. So as I said, if you've lost it, then uh, pop yourself into commentary. We're in the big green bus, which is uh, just next to the scaffolding of West Country Videos, are, of course, providing the, uh, the live action for us this weekend. So, uh, uh, yeah, your phone is here. For once, it's not mine, which is surprising. Mine's in Spain somewhere. I lost it last week. But uh, we've got uh, news on race six then. So, of course, a rerun's come your way. Minus Daniel Stead, unfortunately, in Border County's number six, who uh, finds himself excluded from the rerun. Right. Race seven, we got time to go through them. Race seven brings out Chris Dance, Radford 62, Daz Mullen, YD 37, Jeff Beresford in North Shropshire 55, Ross Shepherd, oh God, South Somerset 3, Jake Herdman, Typhi 57, Paul Sharp in Solway 8, Kevin McBride, Solway 4, Tyler Priest in Quamdy 27. So I was going to say red flags then just to get the practice in because uh, with a lineup like that, I'll tell you what, of course, Class 8's looking for semi finals this weekend, so we are looking for the top 16. And uh, I think it's fair to say all eight of those drivers that go in this race could quite easily end up in the, uh, the semis tomorrow because, uh, as I said, you look at some of the names in that. And uh, top superstar racing in Class 8. Ross Shepard, I think, is uh, your current series leader in the uh, Class 8. So uh, my phone's dead, so I can't check the points. But if I'm going off memory, then I believe that uh, Ross Shepard is your uh, series leader. So, well, of course, he'll be looking to put some uh, big points on the board. Jake Herdman, he's in the mix, isn't he, this year in the bus? I think he's about third or fourth overall. So, uh, Jake will be looking to stay consistent and uh, keep those points coming. Jeff Beresford, North Shropshire 55, of course, can never be ruled out. Likewise with Daz Mullen in Yorkshire's 37. So, some big names coming up in this, and hopefully it's going to be a big race as we get uh, the anticipation building. Look over to Marshall's post number one, see the yellow flag and the bungee, and we go race in with your men's class eight and who's going to be the first one to show someone storming out of the gate as they go into turn one but Mullins coming through on the inside line in 37 and they all move out of his way as he comes through Shepard though it was that made the best of the breaks relegated to second and relegated onto the outside line Jerdman runs in third in Typhi 57 where's Beresford he's about fifth he's got work to do but look at the race at the front Shepard and Mullen it is you're one and two as Shepard takes the outside line and makes Makes it stick. Number three it is. That leads around, kicking up the dust as they go into that top turn. It's number three from 37 as uh, Beresford working his way through the field into third. Jordan Buck to fourth in Typhi 57. But going out wide, I think, is the uh, 
dance machine that's in the mix is Last Lap Flag, Ross Shepard, Daz Mullen and Jeff Beresford. There you want two and three. Tyler Priest from Jake Herman, Chris Dance. Then we go to Solway 8 and Solway 4 at the tail end of the field. But brilliant stuff. And I tell you what, this man really does look unbeatable this year, especially when he puts on a show like this. Ross Shepard takes the win in South Somerset 3. Daz Mullen takes second, Beresford third, Tyler Priest fourth, Jake Herdman takes fifth, Chris Dance sixth, Solway number eight then is going to be the next one across of Paul Sharp and Kevin McBride in Solway 4 comes across the line at two, finished it all off. But I'll tell you what, Rush Shepard looking frighteningly quick in South Somerset number three, used every inch of this track to his advantage and uh, certainly made it work. We've seen, uh, certainly in the slower classes, in the uh, the ones, the twos, and uh, some of the other classes as well, the inside line has been the most favourable one to take, especially going into turn one and out of turn two. But uh, with the class eights, it certainly seems to be the outside line. I think uh, throw the car in as hard as you can and just send it completely and hope for the best. And uh, it seems to be working, but uh, obviously these class eight boys not really known for uh, keeping tight to the tyres and driving sensibly. And uh, if you think they're bad, we still got class 10s to come your way. So uh, class 8 certainly putting on a show. And uh, for the majority so far, it's been fairly clean. We've still got three more races to come your way. Ten races uh, scheduled to come, of course. And uh, once again, the biggest turnout in the, uh, the classes over the course of the weekend, as it so often is in the, uh, the British Autograph Series. So as I said earlier, looking for the top 16 point scorers throughout the course of the weekend to make semi-finals. I think it was 124 points or something you needed at the last pass, which uh, really says it all. Normally, that's enough to get you into a final. But, uh, I mean, to get you into a semi is uh, hard enough. So uh, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at least 100. 120 points, I think, to get yourself into the semi-finals, of course, tomorrow afternoon. But there's plenty of racing still to come your way. Of course, two heats run today uh, and then a third and final heat tomorrow. Uh, then the semis and then, of course, the, uh, the top eight into the final tomorrow afternoon. So uh, we've got plenty of racing to come your way and uh, plenty of action still as well. And uh, race eight then is down now on the line and uh, sure they'll be delighted to see the water barriers as out although to be fair on this track it doesn't really do much harm it's uh, certainly not one of these tracks where you put the water down and they're slipping and sliding everywhere and of course in this heat as well then it dries in ever so quick so it is more uh, a safety thing really i think more to keep the dust down and uh, keep the stones down as well and uh, just keep these drivers in check as much as they possibly can. So race eight is down now on the line. Who's it bringing out? We haven't told you yet. So lane one then, Rob Morgan in central Scotland, number 12. So uh, here we open for a good run, of course, after the long journey over. Lane two, Chris Juggins, gun for 50. Chris made the final, I think, at the last pass. So here we open to... Uh, keep up with that and uh, try and do the same again this weekend. James Bow, Pennine number nine in uh, lane number three. Stuart McLean, Central Scotland 17. So another Scottish driver then making the trip over and uh, mixing it in with the class H. James Dorset, North Shropshire 292. Didn't travel quite as far as the Scottish. So uh, the local man then running out of lane five. Dan Ray, Yorkshire Dales 52. He's coming out of lane six. Gaz Edwards, North Wales 55 in lane seven. And Graham Moss in White Rose number one is coming out of lane eight. So once again, a very strong grid of your man's class eight. Three more races still to come. And uh, just looking at the lineup for the next two, then uh, <laughs> it's not getting any better, trust me, because uh, they're equally, if not more competitive than the, uh, the previous seven that we've had so far. So uh, race eight then, as I said, down on the line. We're getting ready. We're getting closer, certainly, because we've got a couple of yellow flags flying, but we're going to look over that far side. Marshall's post number one, there it is. And there's class eight coming off the line as they storm down the straight and uh, head for turn one. Juggins it is. That's got the best of the brakes, but just drifts out wide, someone's shooting through, the water might just have caught a few of them out as they get tangled up, but it certainly hasn't caught out Dan Ray in Yorkshire 52, he's the one who emerges as your race leader, but not for long, because James Bowe's gone right round the outside, in Pennine number 9, takes up the running, Juggins slots into third, in Scunthorpe number 50, Dawson I think running fourth, but someone going up his inside, Mossy runs in about sixth in White Rose number 1, but at the front, James Bowe it is, getting grips with this car and with this track, and leading 
lead of the round for another time as uh, Dan Ray still runs second but Chris Juggins looking menacing in Scunthorpe 50 40 find an inside line but couldn't quite make it stick Gaz Edwards runs just behind him fourth Dorset runs fifth Graham Moss is still there in sixth but it's last lap flag as Pennine number nine it is James Bow with one more to go Dan Ray is uh, still there in second Juggins third Gaz Edwards though is on a charge he don't want to finish fourth and he knows he needs to improve as Dorset goes out wide in fifth and Graham Moss looks to come through but hasn't quite got the speed to make it stick but his checkered flag is going to be a very good win James Bow in Pennine number nine Dan Ray takes second Gaz Edwards I think snatched third from Chris Juggins then we go to Leon Dorset Graham Moss and unfortunately the two drivers that travelled the furthest Rob Morgan in Central Scotland 12 and Stuart McLean in Central Scotland 17 are the ones who finish at the tail end of the field but nevertheless good stuff once again from your Beresford chassis and components and DM Racing sponsored men's class eights. Right, race nine brings out your uh, bus two winner, Mitch Wells, in Evict Kent 356. Here be open to continue his form. Matt Stratton, Craig Dogg, Jamie Meehan, Jake Harden, Michael Tinkle Abbott, Colin Linen, and Graham Bennett. So what a lineup that is. Graham Bennett then back in a class eight and uh, mixing it in with the best of them. I'm sure he's going to be near the front, but uh, Mitch Wells is going to take some catching, isn't he? He's the one that leads in 3.56 as he emerges as a race leader, three abreast for uh, third, fourth and fifth as a spanner it is that goes out wide but just cutting into contact with someone as your uh, race leader it is then Mitch Wells pulls away, Colin Line and I think the Mallow Machine is running there in second, Michael Tinkle Abbott facing the wrong way but gets the car out of harm's way oh someone's round and Harden's collected them on that uh, bottom turn can he get it going again because he is parked right on the racing line as we continue for the time being but it's not going to be for much longer as red flags come out on race nine of men's class eight as uh, well it all went a bit wrong didn't it michael tinkle abbott got it round he managed to get it going again before uh, the red flags come out then someone else spun jake harden collected them and uh, unfortunately that means a red flag Right then, so just aside from the racing, we have got a, a very important announcement. We need three vehicles moving. You are blocking an important entrance slash exit at the back of the catering vans. We don't know what the cars are, but the registration MV13VLN, uh, NL14BH0 and LR21DKU. So uh, if you are the owner <clears throat> of any of those cars, then we do need a moved ASAP. As I said, I think it's around the back of the catering van. You're blocking an entrance. So go and move your car as soon as possible. So that's MV13VLN, NL14BHO. LR21DKV, so uh, we need those moved as soon as possible. Right, so just on the uh, subject of important information, I'm sure most of you did see on Facebook, on the North Shropshire Roads Grass page, about uh, the weather, about the grass. Of course, it is very dry. So uh, with barbecues and everything, if you have got the disposable barbecues, then they're not permitted to be placed on the ground. Open fires are not permitted. Only purpose-built barbecues with built-in legs are permitted. And of course, if you are smoking around the circuit, then please do put your cigarettes out. Don't drop them on the floor. Make sure they are fully extinguished. This grass is very very dry. Right, we're back and we're racing then with men's class eights and uh, Tom Lewis it is that leads the way in BC 55. Second in the bass at the moment but it's to do him no harm. He's seen Ross Shepard win. He knows he's got to match it uh, as he uh, leads the way. 55 it is. Jones he's coming up the inside in the second in BC 69 but Chadwick's on his outside. Cooper's there as well and Bryn Powell another strong lineup of men's class eights but none of them are touching Tom Lewis at the moment. Jones he leads the challenge in BC 69 Chadwick from Cooper from Powell are tucked in just behind as Tom Lewis it is gets the car very sideways lifts the front wheels and moves on to his final circuit as he uh, leads him round once more Adam Jones went second Chadwick still there in third but he is coming under strong challenge from Rich Cooper in Evesham number two as they go down the far side for the final time his checkered flag already and it's going to be Tom Lewis BC 55 puts 55 points on his tally Jonesy second oh Chadwick just from 
Rich Cooper, Bryn Powell, C115 is the next one across then of uh, Matt Owen, then Carl Burns in Breednell 18 comes across to finish it all. So that rounds out class eight for the time being. Just hearing from race nine, it will be rerun minus Jake Harden in PhD 25. So a very big thank you to Beresford Chassis and Components and DM Racing for their sponsors. We've got one, two, three, four reruns to come your way. And on the subject of reruns, we've got class sixes on the line and they're off and it's over to Tim. Yes, thank you, Liam. So yeah, we'll go back to class sixes. And this is the rerun of race four. And uh, we're going without Dane Copeland in uh, Scunny 36. But uh, we'll not go without Tom Pipe because he's your race leader. North Shops are five years from uh, second round winner. Then Jay Colgate in North Wales 20 as he tries right round the outside in North Wales 20 as Pipey on the inside and Colgate on the outside as they go down the far side Jordan Copeland also in there as well in Scunthorpe uh, 15 and uh, your pass leader then Dalt Thomas running about fourth in command at number eight but Colgate it is and Pipey still absolutely locked side by side as round the Stargate turn we go but Colgate it is at just about got his nose in front North Wales 20 from North Shropshire 5 then comes the 15 machine of Jordan Copeland Problems on board for Aaron Murray in Cumbie 80 and T95. The other car we got out there, that's Darren Reese. But uh, one to go then for Colgate. North Wales 20, North Shropshire 5 from Scunthorpe 15. Dalt Thomas still running fourth in Carmarthen at number eight. As once again, down the far side we go with about a half a lap to go then. Looking to uh, carry on where he left off in Bass Round at number two. 55 points on the board. Colgate takes it. North Wales 20 from North Shropshire 5, Scunthorpe 15. Dot Thomas in Kamal and eight. Darren Reese in Typhoon 95. And uh, not to be this time for Aaron Murray in Cum D80. So that's one of the outstanding reruns in uh, men's class sixes. We've got another rerun to come in uh, men's, in uh, yeah, one of race five. I think we might have be having a little tiny, tiny bit of a, uh, a break as I think the word is they are going to try and grade and uh, scrape the start line. So there's nothing actually on the line at the moment. So uh, say more, wa more water on to uh, the track and uh, rollers and graders and all that sort of thing. So there is going to be a minute or so's delay or a few minutes delay while they get that sorted. So, uh, as I say, I think they're having one or two problems with the start line, especially with these uh, more powerful machines. I just think the uh, start line just starting to cut out a bit. So the team, absolutely right thing to do. Get on it, get it sorted and uh, to try and make it fair for everybody and as, and as uh, smooth as possible. So I say, I think there may be a minute or so's delay while they get that sorted. And uh, as I say, I don't quite know what we're going to go on with the uh, men's sixes or uh, men's eights or whatever. So again, while you are trackside, get yourself fed and watered. Plenty of uh, catering facilities to be uh, enjoyed uh, throughout the uh, weekend. And those of you who are, well, those of us that stay in, then uh, no doubt the uh, bar possibly, and I suspect it is open. So uh, if you're not racing, then a, uh, a beer or two or even a shandy will uh, probably just do the job. And obviously just to mention, uh, as it is at most uh, big meetings these days, then after your second heat, I know we're not quite there yet, but uh, after your second heat, then you must sign on tonight. There is no sign on tomorrow as uh, the as it has been throughout the other bass rounds. You know the score by now. Go and get yourself signed on. Get yourself sorted. You don't have to worry about it. And uh, you can go racing in the morning. So, say so track work still going on. Bowser putting uh, some dust settling solution onto the circuit. It's say the uh, track looking absolutely in superb condition and uh, always big, always fast. So we are cracking bass around here last last year. The one, the people that uh, were actually here, and uh, of course this year we've got the added uh, 
anything of the Bass TV, although Nick, uh, Nick Apps very, very kindly done a lot of work last year. And as I say, a lot of uh, the uh, groundwork and stuff was done by Nick. And it just proved that it was possible to stream live autographs racing run, uh, right the way through the, uh, through the internet and all that sort of thing. So I say a big thanks to Nick. And uh, Nick, if you're listening, I hope you're all right, mate. And uh, I say hope to catch up soon. So uh, I say if you are here, don't forget the uh, trade, trade stands are here. Keep your, uh, get, your, uh, get your spare bits and pieces. So you haven't had a quite look who is actually here, but uh, we know, uh, so I can certainly see John Gay's uh, XC Works lorry down there. We've got Bereford Chassis Components, Body Works, BP Grassing. Uh, we've got uh, DH Alley Works. I know Damien's here with a few bits and pieces. And uh, Barnard Motorsport are here. So uh, get yourself uh, trackside, and get yourself some bits and pieces to get the car sorted. And uh, so get your, uh, get your bits ready for, for next year.
So, ladies and gentlemen, just while we've got a, a little bit of downtime there, while they're doing a bit of uh, track maintenance, get a bit of water down, um, uh, just a message out, really. If uh, anyone has a spare uh, coil pack for a Class 3, um, that would be really helpful. It's for the Cusack family. Um, and, uh, yeah, without, without one of those, uh, we won't be able to get them uh, back racing uh, this weekend. So if anyone's got a coil pack for a class three then go and see the cusack family and uh, and i'm sure they'll be most grateful and you'll get one back in return so uh, yeah um just a, another announcement as well obviously i know we've got pets um on the field so if uh, make sure that they're also well lubricated as well uh, plenty of water for them um, because it is getting uh, really uh, hot uh, down here at north shropshire so uh, we'll let the uh, the track team uh, do the work um, all you guys listening and watching on bass tv you can see on your screen that we'll be back shortly um, that means that you can go and top up your pims or go and get your shandy or cider or, or just have a tea and a coffee and back with the racing very soon
So there we go. We can uh, see up on the uh, start line that they're doing a little bit of grading and rolling. So uh, the start line's getting some work. You get some hammer, doesn't it? Especially in these dry conditions, it will uh, start to dig it up. So a uh, little bit of work going on there. And uh, and we can afford that bit of time, can't we? Because it's, uh, it's a nice bit of manana time now. We can uh, enjoy the sunshine. Uh, oh, somebody. I've actually had Factor 50 put on my neck. Um, it's a bit late because I've got it. It was red this morning because I, 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 last night, well, yesterday afternoon, I was thinking, oh, it's not that hot, it's fine. And then, uh, yeah, that dreaded, like, oh, oh, my, oh, it comes out of nowhere, definitely so. And when you've got skin like me, you're all right because you've got a, like olivey skin, haven't you, Mr. Liam Williams? Yeah, that's it, yeah. You look like you've been in a spray booth, mahogany tan, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, yeah, unlike me, it looks like I've got pillar box red on me. But, uh, yep, um, still uh, that track work going on. So we'll uh, let you enjoy uh, a few moments uh, more of uh, uh, silence around the track for those listening and watching on uh, Bass uh, TV. Yeah, just enjoy your break. You've got time to get up. Um, uh, anyone who fancies running the Uber around for a five minutes, then uh, get yourself the uh, you know, little Henry out and uh, and, and get him. Oh, there are other Hoovers and manufacturers available for... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, apparently... Yeah. You know, I, did I tell you, like, I, I, I thought my missus was having an affair once, right? Because, like, I, all I kept hearing about was Henry. And I thought, who's, who's this Henry? Hey? Hey? And, you know, she said that she had him out every day. And I was like, oh, my life, what's going on? And then, yeah, apparently it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's over, yes. Yeah. So uh, there we go. A few more minutes and we'll be back racing with you down here at... Oh, yeah. were you thinking about ice creams, are you? I did see a little ice cream van just a little bit up the way there. And, and donuts, yeah. We always think that if we mention food enough, then uh, we might get uh, a few bits and pieces brought in. But uh, if not, we'll come round and support you. Right, just so whilst we have got a bit of downtime, oh, you just don't want to know what's going on here in commentary, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, uh, right, it's all right. Uh, my wife decided she wasn't going to come this weekend because of the weather, because of the dog and all of that sort of thing. And uh, I mean, due to various messages that have been going on all week, then I'm in instructions to send some certain photos home. But there's one that I'm certainly not go not going to do, which is Mickey B and his budgie smugglers, which we've just had the 
and I use the word loosely, pleasure of here in commentary. So he has got his Watford FC speedos on. So <laughs> there we go. That just is wrong on every level, isn't it, really? So, but never mind. Right, whilst we have got a little bit of downtime um, on all of this, I've got a couple of very important birthdays to do. We can't promise and guarantee to do birthdays, but if we get an opportunity and a little bit of downtime, then more than happy to do birthdays, especially when they're special birthdays. So, uh, a couple of people from my part of the world. Eric Canning from the Evesham Club reached a milestone in the week. It's all over Facebook, so there we go. I'm not giving anything away, and you would never believe this looking at him. 65 is Eric. Um, so... Uh, if you want to blame anybody as to why you have to listen to me waffle at major meetings, probably Eric is high up on the list because uh, going back many, many years, and if it's more than either of us would probably want to care to remember, um, it was Eric that used to pick me up on a Sunday morning and uh, take me racing when I was a little boy and uh, just got me push bike and stuff. And so it was Eric that got me into what was jalopy racing then. And, uh, yeah, things lead on. And as I say, you've had to listen to me for more years than probably you care to remember. So thank you to Eric for introducing me to it. And happy birthday, belated birthday for the middle of the week. He reached the grand old age of 65. Another important birthday from the Evesham Club. And again, somebody that, like Eric, very, very well known around the autograph racing circuit all around the country, without a doubt. And it is his birthday today, Peter Haynes. Uh, ex Evesham, well still Evesham 16 don't see him out on the racetrack now anymore but I tell you what, he would certainly more than hold his own if we did, I'm sure but uh, Pete Haynes, Evesham 16 ex national champion of course and still does so much for the Evesham club it's Pete's birthday today so happy birthday to Pete I'm sure from everybody that knows him now I'm not sure whether to give his age away or not I don't think I ought to but all I will say is before this weekend he's had 77 birthdays you can work it out for yourself so there we go but joking apart pete and eric to both of you from me and i'm sure everybody that knows you then uh, very very happy birthday um right if you are here on site then hopefully don't need to say this and we haven't had any issues so that's good but just a reminder the heat now is uh, picking up fairly considerably so look after yourselves and look after anything that you might have brought with you, particularly if it's got paws, a tail, or a waggy tail, i.e. a dog. I say we haven't, had of, haven't heard of any issues, so that's excellent, and let's keep it that way. But uh, for yourselves, then, plenty of sun cream. Keep in the shade where you can, etc., etc., particularly uh, the smaller people amongst us, and if you're fair-skinned, etc., etc., and your dogs, then make sure that they've got plenty of shade. Don't please leave them in the car and that sort of thing, which, as I say, no reports of, so uh, fair play on that one. As I say, let's keep it that way. Let's enjoy the meeting here. Let's enjoy the glorious sunshine. Let's uh, just enjoy the absolutely cracking racing that is coming your way or has been coming your way. We've... Uh, or about 25 past eight this morning, I think, I sat here and uh, promised you some uh, cracking autograph racing. I reckon... Uh, we've lived up to my word so uh, there we go we have seen some really superb fast racing out there and this is only heat one so uh, normally through a british autograph series round obviously as it gets nearer and nearer to the uh, finals and stuff then it just gets a little bit more frenetic because most classes not all but most classes you can get away with a not such a good run in one run but once you've had that in heat one then it is all or nothing in heat two. Mickey's got all the stats here of numbers of cars in each class. So I'll tell you what, we shall uh, go through that one for you. So um, I'd say semi-finals in classes one, two, seven and eight. Class one, 59 drivers here to uh, contend and get towards those eight places in tomorrow's final via the uh, semi-finals. So top 16, we'll be looking for for that. Class two, we have 61 signed on for uh, class two. So once again, semi-finals. Class three, 39 drivers in class three. So again, healthy turnout for class three. Class four, historically uh, over recent years, not being the highest supported class. Uh, we've got two full grids here this weekend, which is nice to see. So 16 of them. So 50% success rate of getting through to today's final in class four. Class five, 
for the men going to have to battle a little bit harder because there's uh, 37 of you chasing those top eight places in class five and from what we've seen earlier on boy are you chasing them quickly so 37 class fives class six resurgence in class six again it's another class that historically over the recent years um, has perhaps struggled in numbers just a little bit but uh, yeah coming back and 44 class sixes so we were only five away from needing semi-finals in class six well, they'd have been frantic, wouldn't they? So, 44 Class 6s. Uh, class 7s have just tipped the semi-final scale because needing 49 or more for semi-finals. Class 7, 50 of you have signed on and turned up. So, Class 7, you are just after the top 16. Class 8, oh, if we could do quarter-finals, and we don't, then uh, just wondering whether Class 8. But certainly you're in for semi-finals. 79 class eights so uh, 79 has got to go down to 16 that's bad enough so uh, again we're going to be seeing some fast furious qualifying through the class eights i know we've got a few reruns still outstanding in run one but as we move through it class nine there's a class that's come back with a bang is uh, class nine of the single seater classes then that was uh, potentially quite low on numbers over uh, previous seasons but uh, a lot of the top names have uh, decided to move into class nine for this year i don't know whether there's some technical reason for it i don't do technical as you know but uh, whatever it's certainly uh, brought life back to uh, class nine and uh, 36 so uh, class nine signed on and uh, the lowest number of the specials is the un unlimited cc specials class class 10 with 26 of them still so that's four heats in each of the rounds of qualifying so eight out of 26 isn't bad at all uh, for the ladies then uh, class one 24 so very healthy signing on for ladies class one three heats in each of those uh, class two then uh, we've got 18 drivers in ladies class two so once again going to have to battle uh, through to get into that top eight class three again sometimes we haven't seen that many class threes but we've got two heats so you're going to have to qualify for the final you class three ladies we want eight out of the 11 of you that are signed on class four one of the few classes where you will all go through to the final but obviously still battling for british autograph series points and the right for a choice of grid position on the grid six of you else in ladies class fours class five then 11 signed on for uh, ladies class five so again qualifying absolutely necessary as in class six we've got 13 class six ladies there so we've got to whittle that down to eight class seven we'll be seeing three heats in each of the rounds of qualifying for the class sevens 19 ladies class seven drivers signed on and the uh, top class in terms of numbers for the ladies probably no great surprise mirroring that of the men i.e class 8 26 ladies are doing battle in class 8 here this weekend so once again we'll be seeing four heats looking to try and get that top eight through into the uh, final tomorrow ladies class nines full grid but uh, you will all go through to the final, eight of you being signed on. And ladies class 10, we have the four, which uh, of the four that are signed on, they are four very, very competitive ladies class 10s, that much I can tell you. Um, haven't got the breakdown of junior specials and stock hatches, just get them as one number because they're actually on a slightly different computer program. But I know they don't um, actually have any semi-finals, so... Uh, it's, we've got 61 in total across uh, the stock hatches and the junior specials. I think, once again, working from memory and seeing the numbers, I think we might have slightly more junior specials than we did junior saloons. Don't know. But uh, we've certainly got under 49. But very, very healthy signing on of the uh, junior specials. So that's a breakdown of this weekend's numbers. All of that totaling up to 689 drivers. Hey, we're racing. And what are we racing with is the question. We're racing with class sixes. So uh, Tim springs into action. So we'll try and get a microphone to him and uh, see how we go for this rerun of class sixes. Right, yeah, thank you, Steve. So doing a mad dash, but we got back here. So uh, rerun, or the outstanding rerun of race five. And it's uh, Tom O'Reilly and White Rose 3. 
that uh, leads them down the far side. James Simmett running second in the uh, CW174 machine, and he's been chased by uh, Darren Bryan in uh, York in uh, Scarborough 41. But Sinet it is, it takes up the running. 174, White Rose 3, Scarborough 41, then comes Jordan Tinker in uh, York 35, and uh, Border County 37. Then that's going to be Liam Morris in the uh, Border County 37 machine, the one that's playing catch up, but not playing catch up. The one you've got to catch, that's going to be James Sinnett. CW174 already, last lap flag. This time Tomo running in the second White Rose 3. Down in the, comes Darren Bryan in Scarborough 41 with. Uh, the uh, Tinker Machine, John Tinker in York 35. But once again, down that far side we go. And into turn one for the final time. Checker flag then at the ready. It's going to be a win for James Sinner. So CW 174 takes it. Tom runs second, White Rose 3 from Darren Bryan in Scarborough 41. York 35 of Jordan Tinker. And I think that's all we're going to have for this because uh, I think Liam might just go back to the pits in uh, Border Counties 37. So good stuff from men's class sixes. So uh, looking at down towards the line, we're going back to uh, class uh, class two. And I think this is the rerun of the rerun of race four. So uh, second time or oh, third time of asking as away uh, from the line we go. And uh, from the uh, inside grid, I think that's going to be Samuel Doddridge in Forest 515 that uh, leads away. I don't know of any exclusions or anything, but we're seeing a little bit of a depleted lineup. But uh, 515 leads in from PAC at 29, Adam Smith in that uh, second place lot, just being chased by uh, one of the Scunny cars. That's Scunny 27. That's going to be George Cresswell in 127 to go down that far side. But uh, still, Samuel Doddridge is uh, still your ra race leader from Forest 515, from uh, Matt Sawyer, PAC 23, 127, 29, then comes uh, the uh, Jay Albrighton machine in the uh, Scunny 156, and uh, Mark Mosley completes it all in Radford number three, but still out front with one more lap to go because the yellow flag of the Black Cross is held aloft, and the one to go for... Uh, Samuel Doddridge, 515, PAC 23, 127. Then comes PAC at 29 of uh, Adam Smith. And he races just ahead of the, uh, of the Scunny machine. That's going to be J.L. Brighton in Scunny 156. And uh, Mark Mosley will complete it all in Radford at number three. But uh, check a flag then at the ready. And a race win, Samuel Doddridge, 515, PAC 23, Scunny 127. Then comes Jay Albrighton in Scarborough in, in Scunny 156. PAC 29 and completing all then will be Mark Mosley in Radford 3. Right, I think there's still one outstanding rerun of men's class two, but we're going back to open wheelers. And uh, we're going up to uh, the uh, Super Specials. Men's Class 10, back of the Liam. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. So, uh, Men's Class 10 then, the big boys down there on the line for the uh, first time this weekend. ProLink's your series sponsor, Pave and Clean, your weekend sponsor. Race one of the four races scheduled is on and off the line. I'll tell you what, they're pulling some speed off that start line, aren't they? As they go into turn one, Tinker it is. That leads, but Vinny's going with him and Seagraze is right at the inside in ARC number one. So uh, look out, as uh, this is going to be a brilliant 
brilliant race. It's Tinker, though, that leads around. York number 40, it is, that leads. As Seagrave slots in the second. Burbage, I think, running in third. Rinny just trying too hard as he lifts the wheels and gets it all out of shape and uh, gets it all wrong. So uh, someone going right around the outside. Fratwell it is with uh, Ben Herdman tucked in behind him and Barry Seal. But at the front, Wes Tinker using every inch of this track. And he's uh, certainly using it to his advantage as he throws the car sideways once again. Three wheels on the ground as the uh, front one lifts up his last lap flag. It's going to be Lee Seagraves in second. Burbage runs fourth, uh, third rather. And then it's uh, Vinny who runs fourth. Ben Herdman, Alex Fretwell and Barry Seal. The ones that all trail at the uh, tail end. But at the front, Wes Tinker. This could be a contender for drive of the day as he lifts the wheels, takes the checkered flag and takes a very convincing win. Lee Seagraves takes second. Stern 43rd. Leewood 170, Vinny Gibbons. Ben Herdman in Radford 207. Alex Fretwell in Pennine 152. And Barry Seal in the uh, Hereford 254 comes across and completes it all. So good stuff from your end's class 10s. I'll tell you what, this track's so, so quick, isn't it? And uh, when you look around the track, you might think, oh, it seems a bit too small to be pulling speeds like this. But I'll tell you what, these drivers have uh, certainly figured out the best lines around this track. And uh, Wes Tinker just showed, right, race two, Nigel Beard, George Young, Chester Payne, Leon Parnell, Liam Evans, Luke Bennett, and Kerwin Thomas are the ones that are scheduled. Liam Evans gets the best of the breaks in North Shropshire number three. Here be the one to watch. Oh, I say that, he's got it all wrong as he goes into turn one and somehow still emerges as your race leader, but Beard goes right round the outside in Gloucester and District 87 as Liam Evans fights back up the inside in the North Shropshire machine. It's all bunching up for third, fourth and fifth as it's the uh, Yorkshire Dales machine of Chester Payne that occupies third, but at the front, Liam Evans is under strong challenge as Nigel Beard looking round him. Chester Payne, Luke Bennett slots in just behind. Alston 21, Alston 9 and Kerwin Thomas in the Carmarthen Sheen is uh, flying it right round the outside, but not making it work at the moment as the last lap flag gets made ready at the head of affairs Nigel Beard isn't out of this one just yet but Liam Evans has got this car running smoothly now as he's on home circuit, he knows this track better than anyone else out there and he's showing it as he leads the way, the race is on for third as Bennett looks up the inside but Chester Payne fights back in Yorkshire Dales 31, down the far side they go Liam Evans slowing it right down as he goes into that final corner but emerges victorious, North Shropshire 3 it is, Nigel Beard, Chester Payne, Luke Bennett in second, third and fourth. Arthurston 21 is the next one across of George Young. Then we go to the uh, Leon Parnell machine in Afton 9 and Kerwin Thomas in Carmarthen 29. So another good race of uh, men's class 10s. As I said, Prolinks, your series sponsor. Pave Clean, your sponsors for the weekend. So a very big thank you to both of those. We're halfway there. Living on a prayer. Right, four races scheduled. We've done two. So race three is down there. And uh, I was going to say ready to go. That water bowser just snuck forward, but he's reversing. So uh, keep it away because uh, we don't need anything hindering it at the moment. Because uh, as I said, we're doing well. So race three down there on the line. Phil Peak, Yorkshire Dale 63. Lee Dodd, North Wales 18. Andy Hornshaw, York 7. Phil Young in Evesham 23. Gary Morris, Quam 28. And Tony Jones in Pennine at one one seven. That's a very experienced lineup of a men's class 10. So uh, only six of them, but I'm sure the six we've got are going to put on a show. Hornshaw, very quick out of the gate in York number seven. Who's going with him? Tony Jones, I think it is, who runs there in second, but drifting the car out wide. Hornshaw it is, that leads. Phil Young coming through on the inside into third. Gary Morris runs fourth. Phil Peak and Lee Dodd is there at the tail end in the uh, North Wales machine, but down the far side they go for another time. It's going to be Andy Hornshaw that leads them round. Tony Jones with no answer. To Gary Morris on a mission now in third in Quam D28, taking a very wide line. And Phil Young it is. That's keeping it on the, uh, well, I was going to say tight, but certainly keep it on the inside line. I wouldn't say he's keeping it too tight, though, as Gary Morris is uh, still throwing that car around in Quam D28, but uh, making it work as he gets back to third. It's the last lap flag. Andy Hornshaw, with uh, all his experience, just cruising the car around. With Tony Jones there in
behind second. The race still on for third between Phil Young and Gary Morris. Phil Peak and Lee Dodd are the ones off the pace at the back of the pack, but down the far side, Andy Hornshaw pulling away now, and he's going to take the chequered flag if he can navigate his way around this corner safely, which he does. York 7 it is. That takes the win. Second, oh, Tony Jones just from Phil Young. Gary Morris had to slam on the brakes in fourth, then Phil Peak takes fifth, and Lee Dodd, oh, oh he was lucky there as he uh, flew past the finish line, late on the brakes, made contact, but managed to keep the car on four wheels, unfortunately not facing the right way, but uh, he does unfortunately find himself square wheel, but after the chequered flag as he collects his points. Right, race three done, one more race scheduled to come your way, but we are gonna have a bit of water go down this time before we get to see race four. And uh, race four then, going to bring out uh, two S600s with the class 10s. Uh, unfortunately then for the S600 boys, numbers are down this weekend. Only the two of them to uh, come out, but uh, they will be coming out with the, uh, the class 10s. And uh, that gives us a perfect time because uh, we've got a bit of downtime. So, of course, uh, as I said, the S600 is coming out. Trevor Frost, then, we're so used to seeing him come out in the S600s. Unfortunately, for those of you that don't know, Trevor uh, didn't have the best of weeks and uh, has unfortunately found himself in hospital. But uh, I understand that he is watching or uh, watching as much as he can on uh, Bus TV. So, uh, Trevor, if you are watching, and uh, a speedy recovery is uh, wished you by, I'm sure, everyone that knows you, and, of course, those of you that even don't know him, then uh, hopefully you make a speedy recovery, and uh, hopefully you are enjoying the footage. Of course, we'd know you'd much rather be here mixing it in with the S600s, maybe not mixing it in with the Class 10s as much. That might not be as enjoyable, but, uh, as I said, hopefully you are enjoying the coverage and uh, wish you a speedy recovery as well. So, uh, we got the two S600s coming out, but the Class 10s that are scheduled down there on the line, how many have we got? Six again. So Thomas Reese is coming from the inside then in PAC 39. Marcus Lewis in Quamdi 100. Lance Bowen in Radford 202. So Lance Bowen then taking out Reese Griffiths' car by the looks of things this weekend. Matt Barnbrook, Scunny 45. Matt, of course, had a, uh, a fairly hefty roll at the last pass round in your man's class 10. So I'm sure he'd be hoping for the complete opposite of that. I'm sure many of you would have seen the car on uh, Facebook. It's all been prepared. It's all nice and shiny now and uh, it's straight. So hopefully it stays that way over the course of the week. Mark Pascal in Hereford 250 is going to be down there as well. And Andy Bishop in Yates and Sobbery 37 is going to be completing the lineup. So, uh, once again, a strong lineup. Class 10s, of course, don't pull in the numbers that the Class 8s do. And I think uh, I think Steve said that we've actually got more Class 9s than Class 10s. But I'll tell you what, Class 10s so competitive. You don't need masses amount of numbers to have uh, good, clean, competitive racing. And Class 10s show that. Four grids. I think is normally the standard. You're always looking at about three or four grids of class 10s. And like I said, when you listen and uh, see some of the names that are on the sheet and uh, some of the races that are coming out, then as I said, you don't need massive amounts because the ones that we've got certainly put on a show. And uh, we've obviously seen Wes Tinker take a win in race one. Race two was obviously won by Liam Evans in North Shropshire three. And race three was won by Andy Hornshaw in York seven. Of course, all the... Uh, all the grids are uh, randomly computer generated for uh, the three rounds of qualifying. I've actually got heat two in front of me and I'm just looking at the moment the uh, race winners that we have seen have avoided each other in heat two. But of course, we have got one more race scheduled. There will be one more winner. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. As I said, it's all random. Then, uh, of course, you do your three heats and then the semi-finals, if you got them, or straight into the final for the top eight. That's when uh, the drivers do get to choose their grids and things like that. But uh, more on that tomorrow, because we've got a long way to go until we get to that. Plenty of racing to come your way. It is, what is it? Just gone quarter past one. And uh, we're nearing the end of the men's classes. I've got four reruns in class eights, but uh, still plenty of action to come your way. And class tens are going to certainly provide some of it now, aren't they, as they get away from the line. Who is going to be the first one to show? Andy Bishop, close in that uh, first place position, but I think he's just got his nose in front in the eight and sobbery 37. Indeed, the answer is Bishop then. That leads the way. Everyone taking wide, different lines here. Someone getting forced out, and uh, Bishop it is 
that still emerges. Barnbrook runs in second, but Lance Bowen is at the inside. The guest driver in the Radford machine. Oh, Barnbrook's round. Bowen's made contact. They're both pushing on. That's allowed Bishop to pull away. Pascal now runs into second in Hereford 250 as he gets a bit between his teeth. Third is absolutely anyone's, but at the moment, I think it's Bowen. But Barnbrook's at the inside in the 45 machine. Can he make it stick? Bishop has slowed it down at the front. Has he got problems? As uh, Pascal made up a lot of ground, Andy Bishop has got issues there as he was uh, clear in the path, but now getting mixed in. And look at this for a race. It's virtually four abreast as Pascal now takes up the running in Hereford 250. Lance Bowen is on a mission, though, in 202. Barnbrook's run his challenge. It's checkered flag. Who's it going to be? Oh, 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 I'm not splitting them. Barnbrook took third. Oh, then the rest was still close. I think Andy Bishop just about took it from Thomas Reese. Then uh, the two F600 machines are the ones that finished. But who won that? I'm going to guess and say it was Lance Bowen in 202. Mickey agrees with me. So uh, we're going to say then that uh, Lance Bowen did take the win. The checkered flag is literally to the right of us. We're just a few yards short of being directly in line with it. And uh, it, it was hard, it, well, I mean, it was hard to see, even if it was directly in front of us, it would have been impossible to split the pair of them. So uh, who'd want to be a lap scorer? <laughs> That's the real question. Certainly not me. They've got a lot more patience than I have, and they do a much better job than I do. So uh, we'll let them sort that out. We're going back, are we, to class eight racing? So big thank you to ProLinks and Pave and Clean for their sponsors of tens. We're going Beresford Chassis and Components and DM Racing sponsored men's class eight and we're going with a rerun then as they get away from the line race three it is that's uh, on and off Matthews quick out of the gate as he was the first attempt no it's not it's Ash Howard sorry in the uh, PhD 21 machine that's going to lead them round Chris Pope then is there in second is Spalding number eight as he goes down the far side Paul Lockwood runs third where's McKenzie he's in about sixth in CA 44 he's got a lot of work to do but Ash Howard lifting the wheels up as he comes across in 21 Lockwood and Pope he's battling it out Emily Gill runs four, Peter Bilby, Dan McKenzie, Jim Pinches in Radford 53 is the one that's off the pace. But I'll tell you what, Ash Howard took a tumble at the last bath, still made the final, and he's uh, looking to start his weekend off here with maximum points in heat one. 21 it is with one more to go. Chris Pope runs second. Third is now Emily Gill as she passes her Scunthorpe club mate as Lockwood gets it all wrong. But Gill's now under challenge from McKenzie in CA 44. Down the far side they go for the final time. The race is done at the front. It's Ash Howard who's going to win it. PhD 21 takes the win. Chris Polk takes second. Third is Emily Gill. Fourth is Dan McKenzie. Peter Bildley takes fifth. Jim Pinches in Radford 53 is the next one across and it just went all wrong, didn't it, for Paul Lockwood. Scunny 92 was running second at one point and unfortunately finished at the back. So uh, good stuff from race three. That one unfortunately went without Sam Matthews. Not too sure why, but uh, he wasn't out there. So uh, disappointment for him. Right, theoretically speaking, we should be moving on to a rerun of race four. I can't see the start line from here, but we're going to wing it and guess. So we are away with the uh, next race of your man's class eights. It's the one with Matt Bishop in, so it is going to be race four as they uh, go into turn one. Is Bishop going to emerge at the front? No, he's not. He emerges in second because it's Liam Nichols that leads in Yorkshire's number seven. This one did, of course, run to completion first time, and Nichols did win it, but now he's got to do it all over again in Yorkshire's number seven. He leads the way. Bishop runs there in second, looking to try and gain the advantage, close the gap and make a move, but he's not going to do it yet. As seven it is from 73. Third is the Amit Ken 28. Leewood 47. Reese Wyeth in Wessex 19. And Middleton off the pace in South Somerset 88. Wyeth looking to make a move now. Up into fourth. There's contact as uh, someone gets it all wrong. But at the front, last lap flag. Liam Nichols it is with one more to go. Yorkshire's number seven. Bishop still there in second is carnage at the tail end as we got cars with wheels off it's all going wrong third then is Invicta Kent 28 but no we got red flags once again on man's class eight just as your race leader is about to take the checkered flag so Liam Nichols took the checkered flag and Matt Bishop finished second but that was after the red flag so I'm just gonna have a little listen to the radio and see what they say
So uh, Mickey then is going to listen on the radio. They had all taken their final lap. They took the last lap flag. But whether there was an issue prior to that, like I said, it all did get a little bit scrappy at the tail end of the field. So hopefully then, uh, well, I say hopefully, hopefully for Liam Nichols at least, then uh, they do take a result. But uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he'll be hoping for it because he won it the first time. He's basically just won it again. I'm sure he doesn't want to go and do it for the, uh, the third time. I know these drivers want as many laps as they can, but uh, he don't want to try and prove it three times in a row. So we will wait and see what is said on race four. We've got two more reruns of Class 8 scheduled to come your way. And looking down to the line, we're going to see if we can uh, see anyone down there. But uh, as I said, it is fairly hard to see the start line from here. But uh, I'm sure we'll uh, see once they get going. We're expecting one with uh, Anthony Ross and Steve Mills, but I can't see neither Anthony Ross or Steve Mills on the line. In fact, I think I see Anthony Ross creeping in at the back. So uh, we will just wait and see which one comes out with your man's class eights they like to confuse us but uh, i'd imagine as i said race six should be the next one as we uh, unfortunately look at the zoe leyland machine leeward 47 being uh, carried back into the pits i'm sure that's not the way she would have wanted to end her first heat but uh, as i said class eight racing so competitive unfortunately these things do happen Right, so just here and then, race four. Well, Liam Nichols, if you're hearing this, then I do apologise. You got it all to do again. A rerun of race four to come your way once again. So, uh, as I said, Liam Nichols has basically won it twice, but uh, he's going to have to do it a third time. Or will it be third time lucky for someone else? We will have to wait and see, because we will be seeing them uh, a little bit later on. So whether that means then Zoe Leyland is going to get repair time, and remains to be seen but uh, apparently the incident just occurred just before the uh, last lap flag meaning that uh, they are going to rerun the race so race four then will make its way back into the rerun lane we got a rerun of race six and race nine still to come your way if you can hear some rattling over the uh, the commentary then they are cleaning the toilets just behind us so uh, apologies if you can hear it but uh, hey it keeps the uh, keeps the toilets clean which is what we want so uh, the north shropshire club of course on hand to uh, take care of every aspect in this field this weekend and uh, staying on top of things and doing a wonderful job so hats off to everyone i'll tell you what big shout out to the marshals that are out there in the middle of the track because uh, it is absolutely roasting hot and uh, they're out there doing their job so uh, hats off to them right rerun it is race six then that's off the line as we get away who's going to be the first one to show rossi was quick as the first time oh we got a rollover going into turn one so red flags are out straight away on your man's class eight Thankfully, it wasn't the uh, biggest role we've seen, not even today, but uh, unfortunately, someone ended up going on their roof, going into turn one, and uh, I didn't actually see the number on it, but uh, we will look at the camera as we uh, hope to see. I think it's the Carlo car, indeed it is. So, uh, Anthony Coyne then, unfortunately, in Carlo number 80, has uh, found himself going over and out in turn one on uh, that one. So I uh, think just made contact with Anthony Ross in turn 77 and sent him flying. Anthony, being the, uh, the sportsman that he is, did uh, drive back over there to see if he was OK. He's Irish, I'm sure he'd be absolutely fine. So uh, it does look like then the, uh, the marshals were very quickly out there in attendance to uh, make sure that he is all right. And, uh, just like we were saying with Zoe Leyland a minute ago, unfortunately, these things do happen in Class 8 racing, especially when it's uh, as tight and as competitive as it so often is, then uh, we do unfortunately see things like this. I do think, though, judging from where I'm sat, Anthony is out of the car and uh, giving it a checkup. So uh, hopefully, as I said, here be a OK. The ambulance is, of course, going out there to uh, give him the mandatory precautionary checkup. So, uh, as I said, just looking down, and I think the driver is out of the car. He will have to go into the ambulance for the uh, mandatory precautionary checkup. And unfortunately, race six 
will uh, go into the rerun lane. I was going to say it's going to join race four, but we've just had more news. Breaking news then, exclusive. So <laughs> race four is uh, now the result is going to stand. So uh, they have taken a result. They've looked at the cameras and they've decided, nope, enough laps were completed for them to take the result. So uh, Liam Nichols then in YD number seven will take the win in that. And Matt Bishop was second in the 8th of Sovereign 37. The uh, bad news is that, unfortunately, they're taking a the result without Reese Wyeth in Wessex 19 as he was deemed to be the cause of the incident that did occur. So uh, race four won't be rerun, but uh, will stand, unfortunately, without Reese Wyeth in Wessex 19. So race six, obviously, still a rerun to uh, come your way after the uh, the decent sized tumble from the uh, the Carlo machine there of Anthony Coyne. But uh, as I said, the main thing is the driver's safety and uh, he is in the ambulance now. He is, as I said, gonna have that precautionary checkup and I'm sure he will be absolutely fine. He was out of the car very quickly and the marshals were very quick over there as well. So uh, just a shame, obviously, on a personal note for him, traveling all this way and uh, unfortunately, ending his first race on his roof in the uh, first corner. But uh, as I said, these things happen. We've seen it already a few times today, haven't we? With uh, different classes. Well, we had, I think, two class nines, a class two, a class six, and uh, now a class eight. So uh, to be fair, for once, it wasn't me getting them all. I think at Cum D, I had every single one. So uh, bonus on me. Right, so just here and then, more uh, news coming out of race six. It's not all bad for Anthony Coyne because he is going to be given repair time to uh, get that car back out in the rerun. So uh, if hopefully there's not too much damage on the car, if they can get it all sorted out in the pits, I'm sure that uh, him and the team will all pull together and get as much done as they possibly can. If he can get it repaired, then he is allowed back out in the rerun a little bit later on. There is... Uh, what is there, a wheel or two hanging off the car? But as I said, with the right team and with uh, the help of some friends, then uh, hopefully you can get it back out. The bad news is Anthony Ross, Sturton 77, isn't going to be allowed back out as he was the one that uh, made contact in the first place of Anthony Coyne. So unfortunately, Rossi is out of it in Sturton 77. So not the way he would have wanted to have started his racing weekend. But uh, that is the news then coming out of race six as the uh, Carla machine being taken into the center of the track, whether they're going to take it back into the pitch straight away. Uh, I'd imagine they would have if they've given him time to repair and if there's water going down on the track. So uh, whilst we have this bit of downtime, it does give the club a chance to do a bit of track work. Once again, the water going down, trying to keep this track in the, uh, the phenomenal condition that it is in and that it's always been in since I've ever seen it. Anyway, as I said, the bass round they had here last year was uh, absolutely brilliant. And I know I'm not the only person who feels that way. I know there was a lot of positive comments coming out and uh, people were calling for more bass rounds to be held here. People were calling for nationals to be held here. Obviously, they got their wish because they got this round this weekend. And uh, what a weekend it is turning out to be. It's uh, absolutely fantastic. Of course, the weather is on our side this weekend. Yes, it might be a bit too hot for some of you. Make sure you do obviously keep on topping up the sun cream and uh, keeping your dogs and uh, making sure that they're not out in the heat. And of course, children as well and, uh, and grandparents. So uh, make sure you all do obviously stay safe. It is going to get a little bit warmer tomorrow, I think. But uh, we'd rather it be too hot and too warm than too wet because uh, we've had too many experiences with uh, the rain at Bass Rounds over the years. So it's nice for a change to be worrying about the sun. So, uh, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't affect this track, does it? As I said, a lot of tracks, if they were racing in these conditions, would, uh, would certainly go black and polish within like the first few races, I think. By the time you get to class fives, class sevens, then it would have. Whereas this track just doesn't seem to do it. It might do at some course over the weekend, but uh, for the most most part is staying in brilliant condition and it is a proper racing track isn't it there's so many lines to take and uh, we've seen that over the course of the first heats right my final rerun then is scheduled on the line what a race this is graham bennett forest dean number seven colin lynham mallon 13 michael tinkle abbott york 45 jamie me and west waterford 132 craig dog north wales number nine matt stratton and mitch wells are the ones that are scheduled to come out spanners quick in the forest of dean number seven wells is going with him the winner of the last bus but look at that someone shooting right through but mitch wells it is that takes up the running colin lynham it was a shot from nowhere 
and made his move. Someone's getting it all out of shape, but gets it going again. But Mitch Wells looking to continue his form from bus two as he leads the way down the far side, but not for much longer because red flags are out once again on men's class eight as they slow it right down. Well, they've got it all to do again, haven't they? And uh, like I said, the scheduled race for race nine, the drivers we got in it, it is going to be a brilliant race when we do eventually get through it. But unfortunately, no, uh, no luck this time. So uh, hopefully third time lucky a little bit later on. So race nine joins race six in the rerun lane. Right then, so uh, just hearing from that race, then uh, unfortunately Jamie Meehan, West Waterford 132, is excluded from the rerun. And going back to race six, it's all changed once again. Anthony Ross is now allowed back in. So that concludes class eight for the time being. It's junior specials, they're off the line, and it's over to Ross Thompson. Right, OK, thank you very much. Yeah, away we go then, junior specials, and already a little incident on the run-up to turn one. Uh, race one of six it is then on track, and uh, we wait and see who comes through to lead past for the first time. We go three abreast, look at that, as close as you like, into the turn. I think it was Harvey Donovan who just uh, nipped out in front in Invicta Kent 71, just ahead of the Border Counties machine. That is Owen Bradford in BC 116, and the one who uh, just sitting in third now is Brandon uh, Young in Evesham 223. So... Uh, lap completed on the way is Donovan then from Bradford and Young. The rest come through. Lewis Farrer in Yorkshire's 42. Uh, just ahead of uh, the sideways machine there. Didn't quite see who it was, but we'll pick him up next time around uh, as uh, the tail enders chase through. But it's 1, 2 and 3, still fairly close. And at the moment, Harvey Donovan it is with the initiative, leading the way over Owen Bradford and uh, Brandon Young. Then it's Lewis Farrer. TA6 is next, that's uh, Igo Evans. And then um, the uh, Evesham car just going through. Uh, 218 of Macy Carl in Grasby. And then uh, we missed a couple more, which we'll get. Uh, there's Riley Lindsay in there in PhD8. Uh, amongst the pack and Sky Pascal in Hereford 50. But uh, already the checkers out and the top uh, five, uh, no change at all. In fact, no changes in the final plate since on the final lap at all. And uh, that one was a good race then, and taken by Harvey Donovan uh, from the Invicta Kent Club, uh, picking up the win. So, uh, Junior Specials, sponsored by Diggit Plant Tire for the uh, British Autograss Series, and SC Autos this uh, weekend. So, thank you very much, everybody. And once again, the Junior is part of the Max Power, uh, uh, Power Max sorry, uh, Young Guns Championships. And uh, it's an extra prize to be won for the young drivers. Some of the seat in the adult classes also qualify for that. It's uh, by the age. I'm not sure what the age is, actually. But, uh, yeah, they uh, still uh, participate in that. So we go race two then. We've got uh, Jesse Jones in Swansea 6, Harvey Evans in North Shropshire 16, uh, Twim uh, Williams in Tyvee 44, Troy Holtby in uh, Scumbolt 161, Lewis Middleton, White Rose 37, Liam Grasby, Evesham 121, and Lily Rose Pratt in York 76. So, bungees up and away we go then. Eight cars leave the line. Who's it going to be? Uh, making the best of the starts. It's a bit difficult to see from this uh, vantage point. But uh, it might have been Tom Cosgrove in ARC 25. Somebody on his outside. I think it's the North Shropshire 16 or Harvey Evans. But it's Cosgrove who leads the way then from Swansea 6, Jesse Jones. Somebody moving through the pack. I think it was uh, Holtby in Scumball 161 looking to the outside. So not the best of starts for T-Roy, but he's looking for a way through now. In uh, third position ahead of Lewis Middleton. He goes up the inside of uh, Jesse Jones. So Jones going to lose a position there. Possibly more than one as uh, Middleton looks to fight through in White Rose uh, 37. Then it's Tyvee 44. And uh, the rest of them uh, streaming through North Shropshire 16. And then the two tail enders, Lily Rose Pratt, the one at the back behind Liam Grasby. But it's already one lap to go. And Tom Crosgrove has led pretty much from the word go. And uh, now Holtby up into second place from Middleton. Can they chase him down? It's a lot to ask in one lap. 
But they'll be trying hard. Oh, there's contact there and on two wheels went uh, the Swansea six after contact with Tyvee 44. So a bit of a scary moment then, but they've all got through. And here's the checker then. ARC 25 is your winner. Scumball 161, White Rose 37. Then uh, Swansea 6, a uh, bit of damage on board there. North Shropshire 16, Evesham 121, York 76, Tyfee 44. So uh, let's uh, quickly focus on race three then, getting through the junior specials. Six races to come your way in total, and we're on race three. Finley Emerson, Scumball 197, Harry Russell in Victor Kent 65, Ellie Brown, Carmarvin 49, Dylan Grasby, Evesham 120, Archie Bennett, North Wales 162, Max Holtby, Scumball 6, Kirsten Bartlett, South Somerset 2, and Alex Hines in Breeden Hill uh, number five. OK, away we go then with this next one. And who's it going to be? Harry Russell looks quick out of the blocks along with uh, Max Holtby and a shove in the back from somebody there. And it's come up 197 looking to the outside line, but it's Harry Russell who leads. And uh, we nearly go uh, side by side with the two scunny cars. But uh, Holtby just holding on then from uh, Emerson. Kirsten Bartlett looking her way through in South Somerset too. Up the inside she goes of the 197, takes away third position. Can't quite tell who's next. We'll pick them up in a moment. I know it's Breedenell 5 who sits in about sixth position. Uh, just missing one of them at the moment. It's 65 6. Uh, it's North Wales 162 looking to challenge up the inside of Emerson. Oh, there's contact. Bartlett loses out in South Somerset 2. And uh, Carmarvin 49 just going through. And uh, last but not least, I think is uh, Evesham 120, Dylan Grasby. But one to go for Harry Russell, your defending British Autograph Series Junior Specials champion. Max Holtby still chasing in second. A green flag goes out to uh, Archie Bennett in North Wales 162. So uh, Finlay Emerson will move up along with Kirsten Barlett, gaining a place each if they stay where they are. Breeding up five, and then the rest of them come through, but it's checkered flag, and Harry Russell starts his weekend off in good style with a win. Max Holtby's second, Archie Bennett will be relegated to uh, fifth from his third place finish, so Finley Emerson and Kirsten Bowler will move up. Then it's uh, uh, Alex Hines in uh, Breeding Hill five, Carmarvin 49, Ellie Brown, and Evesham 120 of Dylan Grasby. Right, we're going to try uh, race uh, number four now then. And it's uh, Archie Carter who leads the way. He's come up 17 and he's uh, a young man on form at the moment. And he leads the way in that 17 over Corey Mumford, Forrest 161. Then it's down order grass 27. Uh, Dare Thomas uh, just going through. As uh, uh, somebody looking up the inside for a challenge uh, for that fourth position. They seem to have separated just that little bit. But uh, it remains with Carter over Mumford. And then uh, we have that uh, DA machine just in third. Who's next? It's uh, BC39, uh, Kian Lewis going through. And uh, then the rest of them, Lucy Hines in there somewhere, Breeding Hill 2. And uh, Athelstan 2 1 3. Just a little bit steady, then Cara Blaber uh, at the moment in time. So, uh, scum up 17 it is. Who leads the way? Forest 161, DA 27, BC 39, North Wales 78 is one we haven't mentioned. Just going through. Uh, that's Millie Lane uh, in that position ahead of uh, Rosie Russell in, uh, in Victor Kent 165. And uh, one left to start their final circuit. Cara Blaber in Athelstan 213. But leading this one all the way through is uh, Arch Carter. Scum up 17. Corey Mumford takes second there. Uh, Thomas is third over BC39. Kieran Lewis. Then it's North Wales 78 of uh, Millie Lane ahead of Rosie Russell in Victor Kent 165. And uh, Breeden Hill 2, uh, Lucy Hines. And uh, last but not least will be Cara Blaber in Athelstan 213.
Yeah, just a quick message, uh, Russ. Um, Eamon Crosby, if you're listening, if you want to come and see us in commentary, uh, we've got something for you. So, Eamon Crosby, come and see us in commentary. Cheers, Russ. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Mick. Uh, we'll uh, get on to our next one then. Five races. Uh, well, this will be race five out of the scheduled six. Uh, Let's see what happens in this one. Uh, so the bunch is up already, and away we go. Seven Valley 22, PAC 44, North Wales 21, and PAC 21. Breedenhill 10, BC 115, and York 23 are the numbers. We'll give some names uh, when they come past the first time round. It's the black and orange machine which leads the way. And uh, coming through, who is that one? It's BC 115 then. So that's Will Bradford who leads the way into the turn. Goes uh, PAC 21, Tier Reese slotted into second position. Somebody getting uh, a bit out of shape and losing ground. I think it's North Wales 21. Uh, Harry Wild, yes, it is. So uh, Harry rejoins at the back of the order just behind. I think it's the Seven Valley 22. Harry Hawkins uh, will be sure of that in a moment. It's 115 and 21. Breeden Hill 10. Uh, looking good. Joshua Mason in third. And uh, then uh, somebody just getting out of shape. I think it's York 23. Uh, of uh, Tom Ayres at the wheel of that one. He's just on the outside of the uh, PAC 44 of Rio Sheehan. So one lap to go already for these junior specials on their way and it's closing up for the leaders. Reese looks to the outside of Bradford. Can uh, she find a way past? Looking to carry momentum and look at that. Nicely done. Sweeps through. PAC 21 uh, takes up the leadership on the final half lap. BC 115 and Breeden Hill 10. Those three broken away. But what a good move then for the lead. And PAC 21, Tier Reese is going to be a winner. Crosses the line first. BC 115 then of uh, Will Bradford. Breeden Hill 10 of Joshua Mason. PAC 44, Rio Sheehan. And uh, the rest of them come through. Seven Valley 22 just edging out North Wales 21. So Harry Hawkins ahead of Harry Wilde. And uh, the one which we didn't mention in the middle of the pack there was York 23, Tom Ayres. OK, so we move on. The last of the scheduled junior special race. And this one looks tight down the start straight, doesn't it? Look at them bunched up as they go into turn one. Somebody sweeping around the outside, trying to make the daring move. Have they pushed on too wide? Who's it going to be? That's leading out the turn. We'll pick them up. North Wales 199, Sturton 717 and Radford 210 are the one, two and the three. So uh, Alfie Ross in the Sturton car in second position behind uh, Sid Lomax in uh, North Wales 199 and into third Radford 210 Tilly Clark and uh, looking to the outside of Tilly is that uh, Neil Tavi no oh we've got one what's happened there we've got uh, an incident on the far side and uh, missed that one unfortunately have we had one over has it been over or just an incident didn't see it was, was focusing on the uh, the lead group but, uh, unfortunately then an incident uh, further back Okay, so that one's going to go back to Raymond Lane. We was doing really well. Uh, we had five races completed, and the last one just uh, a little bit tricky there and uh, brought the red flags out. Okay, well, we've got this time. Oh, we've got uh, the Pennine one of Aaron Richardson in trouble, uh, getting carried away. And also, then, uh, is it Sion, Sion Bradford in BC 117 also 
in a spot above her there on the back of the quad bike. Right, two vehicles, very importantly, they need moving. They've been shouted out once. This is your last chance. Otherwise, uh, we will have to annoy everybody by stopping the racing to shift your vehicles for you. A Vauxhall Astra, registration MV13ULN, and a Ford Transit nl 14 BHO. So a Ford Transit and a Vauxhall Astra, you're parked in uh, areas where you shouldn't be. Can you please move those vehicles immediately? Otherwise, we'll have to stop racing and send uh, machinery to move them for you. So please do that. That would be appreciated. Okay, so at the moment, I think that apart from the one rerun for the Junior Specials, uh, we've got... Um, we're on to ladies now, I think, aren't we? Ladies racing. So uh, just a message from Mickey over the radio. A black flag then, unfortunately, Pennine 1 is excluded. So Aaron Richardson is uh, not going to be allowed in the rerun. So damage and an exclusion. That's not exactly the best way to start your racing weekend, is it? So uh, we're going to leave Junior Specials for the time being. Thank you to uh, sponsors SC Autos for the weekend sponsor and Digit Plant Tire, your uh, season uh, series sponsor as well. We're going to go ladies racing then. So uh, to take you through that, uh, Steve Langley. Hello again. Hope you're all right. Hello. Thank you, Ross. Then, yeah, you'll be very pleased here. I'm not taking through all of it. You've just got to put up with me through ones and threes. And uh, class one then, the Kent Cam's British Autograph Series associate sponsor, TBR Race Engine. So big thank you to Tom and everybody at TBR. And also a big thank you to everybody at Elite Mechanical Engineering. They are your meeting sponsors here at North Shropshire. So, uh, yeah, not even two o'clock and we're starting the ladies. So, hey, that's good for a buzz round. So it's all looking uh, OK time-wise. And certainly the uh, early start this morning very much paying dividends. As uh, we said, you know, we knew we were going to be losing time through nobody's fault at all, track watering, etc., etc. Right, race one then brings out Jade Dyke Whitfield in Cambridge 295, Sandbox in 3F, Victoria Tilson in St. Neots 296, Emily Lodge in Scunthorpe 213, Claire Compton in North Shropshire 951, Kerry Bennett in Cambridge 48, Rachel Hadley in Seven Valley 147, and Tia Morgan in Swansea 10. Those are the cars we're expecting. Those are the cars it looks very much like we've got because we are up and racing. On the inside then, it is uh, Kerry Bennett in Cambridge 48. That is the first one to show. Claire Compton, your current British Autograph Series leader in North Shropshire 951. And you can see why she looks to motor right round the outside of everybody and takes up the running. NS 951 then, it is your new race leader, Cambridge 48. The Cambridge 295 car then of Jade Dyke Whitfield runs in that uh, third place slot. Then anybody's battle for fourth just uh, coming through, I think, on the inside then. Uh as they go uh, down that far side, Tia Morgan looking to try and make a move, but she's uh, back there in about sixth place at the moment. But it is Claire Compton in North Shropshire, 951, the race leader as they take the last lap flag from Kerry Bennett in 48, 295, Scunthorpe 213 then. Emily Lodge racing on the inside of Rachel Hadley in Seven Valley 147. That's the very hard-fought battle for fourth. Also Swansea 10, Tia Morgan looking to get involved in that Sam Boxer back marker in 3F. But there's no holding Claire Compton at the moment. Uh, she comes round once again. North Shropshire, 951 it is, comes round. Takes a good win. Another 55 points for Claire. Jay Dyke Whitfield in second. Kerry Bennett, Cambridge 48 in third. Swansea 10. Then comes the Scunthorpe 213 of uh, Emily Lodge as the rest of them come across the uh, across the line and we get a completion on that first race of what will be three races there right Cambridge 295 unfortunately Jade Dyke Whitfield we're hearing has picked up a green flag so uh, that means that she will go back two places from her on track finishing position and everybody else will move up accordingly Race two then brings out Emily Polly in Cambridge 136, Rebecca Rowan in North Wales 397, Lucy Wickham in Penhow 27, Charlotte Hart in WS20, Rachel Compton in NS159, Imogen Morris in C1, Nicole Kingsley in IK90, and Emily Grayson in Scarborough 95. So Emily uh, very well placed at the moment, sitting joint third in the British Autogast Series standing, and that's after she didn't have a good round at all at South Wales in round one, bearing in mind that the drivers can drop 
their four worst scores. So it's everything to play for right throughout the season on this one. Imogen Morris in C1 finishes a bit sideways on turn one, but gets it all going again as uh, Lucy Wickham comes past us as the race leader in Penhow 27 as they go into that start line turn for the uh, first time. Emily Polly drops into second place in Cambridge 136. Uh, Emily Grayson in Scarborough 95 in that third. Then a little bit of a gap back to the fourth place. And that's where we find Nicole Kingsley in, in Victor Kent 90. But your race leader still, it is Lucy Wickham in Penhow 27, 136. 95, IK90. Then comes the WS20 car of Charlotte Hart. Imogen Morris with it all to do after those first lap problems in Cum D1. Tracking Imogen through is Rebecca Rowan in North Wales at 397. And completing all is Rachel Compton in North Shropshire 159. But last lap flag already going out to Lucy Wickham in Penhow 27. Cambridge 136 though, where Emily Polly getting within striking distance without a doubt as they go round start line turn for the final time. Emily Grayson's also winding up the Scarborough 95 for a challenge right round the outside, certainly for second place and possibly even for the lead as we look at the leading trio going into that top bend for the final time. But your race leader is going to be your race winner, Lucy Wickham in Penhow 27, Cambridge 136. Emily Grayson in Scarborough 95 and Victor Kent 90 comes next then Charlotte Hart in WS20 not to be that time round for Imogen Morris in Cum D1 finishing just ahead of North Wales 397 Rebecca Owen and completing it all Rachel Compton in North Shropshire 159 now I don't know this and I should but this is a bit of commentator intuition coming to bear here I reckon there may be some family relationship between NS951 Claire Compton and NS159 Rachel Compton what do we reckon team yeah, we're getting we're getting nods of approval from uh, certainly from Mickey B. Russell, I think, has gone to sleep. But uh, there we go. As uh, race three, then the final race in this first round of qualifying for the ladies' class ones comes to the line. Larry Davis in TA2, Stacey Mills in Leewood 147, Naya Jones in TA352, Larry Fion Jones in North Wales 6, Taylor Jade Pascal in Scunthorpe 1, Maddie Tilson in St. Neer at 16, Sophie Lewis in Athelston 2, and Fiona Thomas in Tyvee 16. So those are the cards, and we've got uh, some people out here certainly looking well placed at the moment. Larry Davis in Tyvee 2, currently second place in the overall standings of the British Autograph Series, and you can see why as that mini comes flying off the line. Joint third is Sophie Lewis in Athelston 2, so we've got some real hard charges out in this one, but it is the Tyvee 2 car that is the first one to show around that... Uh, Top bend once again as they come back round towards us. In that second place then is Athelston 2, but looking to come through on the inside is the Leewood 146. That's uh, Stacey Mills and also Nia Jones trying to get in the act. Well, she is in the action in TA352. Just behind her comes Maddie Tilson in St. Neer at 16. Taylor Jade Pascal looks to make a move around the outside in Scunthorpe 1. Last lap flag already, be already being made ready for Larry Davis in TA2. Then comes Athelston 2, Leeward 146, Tidy 3-5-2, Scunthorpe 1, and St. Neer at 16. Little bit of a gap then back to Larry Fionn Jones in North Wales 6. But oh, a little bit of a coming together coming out of that start line turn over there on the far side the cars get it all going again but it does spread the field out a little bit and it means Larry Davis is going to come home reasonably unchallenged now Tyvee 2 takes the win second place Sophie Lewis in Athelston 2 Taylor J Pascal in Scunthorpe 1 so near 16 is Maddie Tilson Nia Jones in TA352 then comes Stacey Mills in the uh, Leewood 146 finishing just ahead of uh, Larry Fionn Jones in North Wales 6. So uh, good stuff from ladies class 1s. Next time we see those it will be in the second round of qualifying. We've got single seaters there on the on the line so don't tell me Liam it's a rerun. What gave it away Steve? Would you expect anything less from me? So uh, class 8 rerun then. Get used to hearing that because you might hear it a few times this weekend. We've not done too bad by my standards or by their standards, one or the other. Blame the drivers. So uh, we got a rerun on the line. This looks like the rerun of race nine because I can see Mitch Wells coming out of the outside grid. He's joined by Matt Strutton, Craig Dodd, Michael Tinkle Abbott, Colin Linen, and Graham Bennett. That's the lineup that we're expecting. Is that the lineup we get? It's certainly.
certainly looks like it as they get away from the line. Spanner was quick again, but once again, Mitch Wells it is. That's going to lead them into turn one, trying to continue his form from the last bus and certainly looking successful, but Bennett's at the inside in the Forest of D number seven. Wells taking the outer line in 3.56, but Graham Bennett not giving up as Spanner moves through into number one, but Wells fights back right round the outside. Side by side they go as they go into that bomb turn four another time. Someone else trying to mix it up, but Spanner cutting it through and Wells comes back. What a race we have on our hands here at the head of affairs. Colin Lynham runs third in Mallow 13 and is by no means out of this race yet as Wells looks to leave the door open and Spanner looks for a way through. Can't make his move this time as they go into the top bottom turn. His last lap flag already. It's Mitch Wells and Graham Bennett. We're going to run with the front two as they get to pull away. Colin Lynham, though, is mixing it in with the best of them in the Mallow 13 machine and as he does that, it just allows Mitch Wells to pull away a little bit more and this is probably the first time in this race he's actually felt comfortable because he's away and he's taking the win 3.56 it is, Graham Bennett fought hard but settles for second Colin Lynham third, Michael Tinkle Abbott fourth, Matt Stratton comes across in fifth in Evesham at 15 and completing the door is Craig Dodd in North Wales number nine unfortunately not able to stay on the same pace as the rest of them but I'll tell you what it was a short race it flew by but what a race it was Graham Bennett and Mitch Wells having a brilliant battle with each other for that uh, top spot and that does conclude race nine of your Beresford chassis and components and DM racing sponsored at men's class eight a rerun of race six still to come your way a little bit later on but uh, we are moving away from the men's racing once again because we've got more ladies down there on the line and seeing as Sally isn't here this weekend we can call him a ladies man it's over to Steve. Thank you very much then Liam. So yes, Ram Developments our uh, Kent Cams and Simpson Racing Source, British Autograph Series sponsor, MGM Group our uh, meeting sponsor here at North Shropshire. Two heats in this first round of qualifying of the ladies class threes coming your way Heat 1, Gemma Fullard in Radford 70 Catherine Bynan in Carmarthen 3, Nicola McKenzie in Invicta Kent 13 Claire Horner in Yorkshire Dales at 24, Leanne Hushka in North Wales 10, and Becky Shaw in Border Counties Treble 1. So those are the cars for the first heat. A little bit of water going on. Right. See Leanne Hushka's now. This is this is now going to upset people, I will tell you. So there we go. Right, seeing Leanne Hushka's name out there, then yesterday afternoon. There was a, a very panicked gentleman on site. Somebody handed in sort of like what we all thought was a car key and put an announcement out and, uh, and nobody came or whatever sort of thing. So for this car key, so I thought, ah, somebody will claim it. And then, well, then an hour or so later, very panicked gentleman lost his key to his camper. And quite a lot of people, my good self included, we spent a bit of time scouring the area where he'd been. So, well, where would you been? Or oh, around the bar area, and then ran over here, etc., etc. And then suddenly it happens to mention that it's a Renault camper. So I said, oh, one key, and yeah, and actually it finds out that it was the key after all of this. So, in a right state and everything, it has to be said. Now, you know what they say, and this is where we start to upset people like blondes. Just happens that this gentleman has had his hair bleached blonde during the week following a comment from uh, the second round of the Baz. So, Jonesy, put your hair back to your normal colour if you're going to play tricks like that. So, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, he's nothing like Kajagoogan, I can assure you. So, there we go. But no, he was a bit worried. So, yeah, so. Um, Jonesy and his bleached hair. So fair play to him for having it done. But look after your camper key. Right, here we go then. As the first heat, sec uh, first round of qualifying of the ladies class threes gets away from the line. And it is Claire Horner in Yorkshire Dales 24 that was the first one to show. But coming through on the inside then is the Invicta Kent 13 car of Nicola McKenzie coming right round the outside. It is Becky Shaw in Border Counties treble one. That's the one, two, three. A little bit of a gap then back to Leanne Hushka in North Wales 10, then comes Catherine Bynan in Carmarthen 3 and Gemma Fullard completes it all in Radford 70 but Becky Shaw it is in Border Counties, all the ones, it comes past us, a couple of laps down, a couple of laps to go, YD24 and IK13 wouldn't like to try and split those at the moment, Claire Horner on the inside but Nicola McKenzie looking for the cutback on the top turn, that might pay 
dividends I don't know these three now pulling away a little bit from Catherine Bynan still racing just ahead of Leanne Hushka in North Wales 10 but last lap flag goes out there one to go for Becky Shaw in uh, Border Counties at Treble 1 IK 13 at Yorkstowes 24 that's the two and the three Catherine Bynan in command and three Leanne Hushka in North Wales 10 and Radford 70 Gemma Fullard all the cars then on to their final circuit but I think this one is looking a fairly sure thing as Border Counties Treble 1 comes round for the final time takes a checkered flag takes a good win Nicola McKenzie is going to hold on to a hard fought second in IK 13 Yorkstowes 24 in third place Carmarthen 3 is Catherine Bynan Radford 70 Gemma Fullard then gets home just ahead of Leanne Hushka everybody's saying to me don't understand Leanne Hushka to Adam Jones how did that sort of like one follow along well it was Leanne's mum that handed the key in didn't get around to being able to say that bit so that was the very tenuous link there on that story so there we go that completes race one race two on the line uh, Jade Russell in Yorksdale's 86 Arena Almond in North Wales 27 Becky Smith North Shropshire 343 Naomi Davis in Tyvee 1 and Donna Brown in Carmarthen 4 those are the five cars that we're looking to get away from the line and it's a very very level break on the outside it is Jade Russell in the Yorksdale's 86 machine on the inside then it's Becky Smith in North Shropshire 343 and it's uh, absolutely neck and neck between those two as they come past us I think the extra momentum that Jade is carrying round the outside may just pay dividends though Yorksdale's 86 takes up the running from North Shropshire 343 running in that third place slot is Donna Brown in Carmarthen 4 then comes Arena Almond in North Wales 27 Naomi Davis completes it all in Tyvee 1 but Jade Russell it is that comes past us uh, pulled away three four car lengths up on Becky Smith in North Shropshire 343 then comes Carmarthen 4 the North Wales 27 is Arena Almond and TA1 Naomi Davis so those are the five cars as that last lap flag gets made ready one circuit to go for Jade Russell in Yorkdale's 86 Becky Smith still there in a good second place from Donna Brown in third in Carmarthen 4 closest battle is for fourth at the minute with the North Wales 27 car then of Arena Almond battling with Naomi Davis in Tyvee 1. All the cars onto their final circuit, but it is going to be Jade Russell that's going to come round and uh, take this fairly convincingly when all said and done. Yorkstale's 86 takes the win. Second goes to Becky Smith in North Shropshire 343. Carmarthen 4 is Donna Brown in third. Arena Almond holds on to fourth in North Wales 27. And Jade Russell, uh, Jade Russell, Naomi Davis in fifth in TA1. So that completes the first round of qualifying for the Class 3. So Class 1 went through uh, not a rerun. Class 3 went through not a rerun. Just going to leave that one hanging there a little bit, Mickey B. Yeah, thanks very much, Steve. Uh, bragging rights there. Let's see what I can do with the uh, ladies at uh, Class 5s. LorryInsurance.com, our series sponsor, King Sport Tires, our weekend sponsors. Here we go, then. Uh, got a right old lineup in this one. And it is going to be Sarah Gilbert's Yorkshire Dells, 46 from that uh, Cambridge 10. Kirsty Godfrey machine. Kirsty looking for the cutback on that inside. Uh, Michelle Ellis goes wide on the outside in the Stratton District. 33, Sandra Jones currently leading the bass by 35 points on the ladies class five she's down in fourth place at the moment and needs to do some work but it's Sarah Chilworth takes them up in the trade stand Ben and out of that out of that Stargate turn the daughter of the man who had the touch which I've got to make himself look younger is pulling away from uh, Shell Ellis now who gets up in front of Kirsty Godfrey from that uh, Sandra Jones machine in cum 31 the uh, Ludlow uh, 24 Jess Bradley in uh, fifth place last that flag already also we've got a, a, a struggler at the back haven't we oh dear what's going on there we'll have to wait and see Mike Athelstan 13 Becca Joyce is that going to create any problems as say uh, the two lead cars come down into turn one and two for the final time we're going to switch it from last lap to check and flag and it is Sarah Chilvers takes the win from Michelle Ellis second third goes to Kirsty Godfrey Cambridge 10 Sandra Jones fourth in Cum D 31 and Ludlow 24 that's uh, Jess Bradley the final car coming round Athelstan 13 Becca Joyce so uh, yeah may have a problem on board that wasn't going at full tilt and uh, she'll make her way round to finish off 
this heat one race one of ladies class fives so uh, up on the line uh, looking uh, we can see lynn olsen there the yellow colors coming out of grid eight rhiannon smith in south somerset 36 currently second in the bass coming out of lane four donna forest phd 20 lane three nicola jesse running third in the bass in york 44 and breeding hill 11 amanda mason out of lane one so uh, there we are, we've got track clearance, we're going to pirouette round, point to the sky, bungee lifts, uh, let's go racing then, and uh, who's got the best of the start, Nicola Jessie's going up on the inside, can she keep it nice and tight and exit that... Uh, Turn two in the lead. She does as well, but coming round the outside. Rhiannon Smith, South Somerset, 36. Donna Forest, PhD 20. Lynn Olsen. And then Amanda Mason in that breed nil 11. That's how they're running. All a little bit of push on there from uh, Donna Forest. She's gone from uh, third to the uh, back of the pack, and she's going to have to get herself uh, back in shape if she's going to pick up some bigger points than where she is at the moment. But York 44, Nicola Jesse then into turn three. Uh, that's uh, Rhiannon Smith there, South Somerset, 36 all over the back of her as well exits that Stargate turn pushing it down that opening straight down into turn one Lynn Olsen in that third place then Amanda Mason and then Donna Forrest how they run coming round that turn two for the panel mid time one more lap to go Nicola Jesse in the orange tangle machine into turn three and again Rhiannon Smith is not leaving her own as she uh, is within the touching distance coming down into turn one for the final time Nicola Jesse on the brakes there just keeps it tight to the cones brings it out of turn, puts the power down York 44, Nicola Jesse takes the win from Rhiannon Smith, South Somerset 36 second, Lynn Olsen, Breeden Hill 27 third, fourth goes to Amanda Mason in Breeden Hill 11 and then that final place goes to PhD 20 Donna Forrest so uh, there we are, that's your lorryinsurance.com Kingspin tyres sponsored class 5 ladies, done and dusted and uh, our next uh, set up on the line. Oh, we go to Ladies Class 7 Super Saloons. Max Sport, our series sponsor, and Adam, Alan Miles, our sponsor for this weekend. So, who does uh, Race 1 bring out, Mike? Well, it brings out the, uh, the Bass uh, leader at the moment. That is Julie Hawthorne Ferniho in that uh, coming out of lane three. She's had uh, two consecutive 210-point uh, accumulations. Uh, so that's consistency for you. And that means that she is leading uh, the pack in the uh, ladies at sevens. Pam Blackburn coming out of lane eight in Yorkshire 71. Sue Harris, Radford 140 out of lane seven. Nicola Gibbs, Hereford 44, lane six. Ella John, PhD six, lane five. Michelle Barrett, fourth on the bass points after two rounds. She is coming out of lane two. And then Emily McKenzie in uh, Cambridge uh, 12. So uh, there we are, I've got a young lady next to me eating a blue lolly. Do you realize your tongue's blue, your lips are blue? Hey. <laughs> Hey, I tell you what, all those E numbers in there, you'd be hyper for the rest of the weekend. A bit, a bit like me, really, but uh, there we go. We have got uh, synchronised watering going on again, and more water going down on this track, and uh, it really is a warm afternoon, isn't it? They forecast hot weather for the weekend, and they're not disappointing. Um, for those that think it's hot today, I'll just let you know, it's even hotter tomorrow. So uh, make sure that you've got, uh, you know, uh, your T-shirts on. Yeah. Like me today, I'm wearing me Watford FC Speedos. And I tell you, it's quite a comfortable fit, actually, Russ. I just uh, thought I'd let you know that, me budgie smugglers. And uh, uh, if, um, if you're listening, Gorgeous George, um, uh, Gorgeous George always used to like uh, his, uh, his Speedos as well on a hot day. Um, so, yeah, big shout out to, uh, yeah, yeah, he's my uh, me mentor for a while of getting me into this uh, autograss commentary malarkey. And, uh, yeah, we uh, we miss you, George. Uh, we wish you well as well. And, uh, and also Queen Liz, if you're watching on the telly as well. Uh, oh, Liz, you're OK. If you want to give us a shout out, just send us a message on Messenger. Well, if anyone wants any messages shouting out, as long as they're clean, obviously, then, uh, yeah, uh, find me on. Uh, on Facebook, send me a, a message and uh, I'll give you a shout out. Uh, as did uh, Andy Jefferson this morning, obviously uh, uh, obviously added uh, to the population of the world and, uh, and currently looking after little Freddy, you know, who's a few weeks old now, but uh, I'm sure we'll see Andy uh, back uh, racing very soon 
and uh, they're watching on uh, the Bass TV. So if you're looking, I'll give you a wave. And uh, there's uh, Russ there as well for everyone that's seen him. He's a, he's a fine-looking chap in the... Oh, yeah. there. Well, that's it. I get I get paid a fiver every time I say that. So uh, I've got enough. Hey, I've got... Oh, look at that. And the missus has turned up as well. So, hey, uh, Bex, you all right, darling? Yeah. I uh, know he's moaning that he's hot. He's got his full overalls on. I think it's a way of losing weight myself. You know, like you kind of sweat. And uh, yeah, you'll be a size 10 before you know it, Russ. So uh, there we go. Bowsers are off. That means that we're going to get ready to go racing. And we have with bungees lifted and off we go. Sue Harris had a good start, by the way. But no mistaking, it is your uh, leading car, your Bass. First place, it's Julie Hawthorne Ferniho who uh, takes them out of turn two, leading this way. Up at past commentary. Then we go down to Michelle Barrett, then Pam Blackburn. And guess what? It's red flags. Red for, what are the red flags for, Mickey? I don't know. Let's have a listen on the radio. We might be able to find out, but uh, yes, as I always say, I know uh, the old ones are the best, uh, like the missus, short and sweet. That goes back to uh, rerun lane, and uh, we uh, move our eyes up onto uh, the second grid of Ladies Class 7, CK8, uh, Lee Wynn out of lane 8, Kim Jenkins, Breedner 106, lane 7, Kesney Adams, lane six, out of Border Counties, 26. Scunthorpe, 121. Charlie Wright, out of lane five. Kelly Murray in Cumdee, 22. And Shamel uh, Clayton in Spalding, 31, out of lane one. And Shamel is the uh, leading uh, lady here. She's currently third in the Bass Points. And can she add to that as we get lift off from uh, the line? And down they go into that uh, turn uh, one. Uh, they kind of sort themselves out. Shamel Clayton, that's uh, spooled in at 31. That's the one to look out for. But it is Charlie Wright who uh, takes it up there. Border County is uh, 26, having a look up the inside. Kesney Adams, and it is Adams that is in that uh, second place for the time being as the uh, look for the next charge. Shamel Clayton has spooled in 31, moves herself up into that uh, third place, just protects that third place as well. But wow, look at this. Charlie Wright away with this one, and it is is now Shamel Clayton alongside that border count is 26 CK8 Lee Wynn the uh, Kumdi 22 Kelly Murray a little further back as they bring down and that's a uh, final place is Kim Jenkins in Breeden Hill 106 last lap flag being shown and wow what a race this is for Charlie Wright Scunthorpe 121 absolutely nailing it from uh, Border County 26 Kesnias and from Shamel Clayton from Lee Wynn then we go Kumdi 22 Kelly Murray and Breedenhill 106 still of that uh, Kim Jenkins but check a flag already she's coming out of that turn two for the final time as the rest of them come into turn one Charlie Wright has absolutely nailed it Scunthorpe 121 takes the win and maximum points Border count is uh, 26, Kesney Adams second, Shamel Clayton third in Spalding, 31, CK8, Lee Wynn in fourth. Fifth, I think I went to uh, Spalding, no, sorry, Breeden Hill 106, which meant that come D22, Kelly Murray in that final place. So uh, there we go. Max Sport Series sponsor, Alan Miles weekend sponsor of the ladies, Class 7. That's going to race three then. And it brings out uh, Samantha Graney, Sue Erdman, Kate Thomas, Tracy Bainbridge, Alice Bevans, PAC 53, currently second in the bass. And Lindsay Allen, fifth in the bass. They're coming out of lanes at one and at four. So uh, it is PAC 53. Alice Bevans then takes them uh, down into turn one as they uh, slow it down. Sue Erdman's going with them as well currently six on the points in bass but it is alice bevan from sue erdman from that uh, lindsay allen machine then uh, samantha graney yorkshire dales 41 tracy bainbridge and uh, it's bainbridge looking to try and get up close to graney as they exit that start gate turn oh herdman's got to, oh we're reds and uh, well we've got a wheel hanging off on uh, one of them there as uh, we come through and, uh, ah, dear me. So uh, the ladies uh, class uh, sevens uh, not too, uh, too well. And DA26, Kate Thomas, as, uh, yeah, she's resting the front of the car on the, on the ground with one wheel uh, turned in. And uh, unfortunately, I think she is going to be... Uh, uh, probably uh, the cause of the stoppage and excluded unless there was any uh, skullduggery going on in uh, in that one. We'll uh, we'll wait and see. So uh, 
There we go. Uh, we've got uh, Russ with the youngest addition into the family uh, there as well. We're looking uh, all uh, all around. Have you, have you had an ice cream today? Have you? You had an ice cream, have you? That's, if anyone wants to know, I'm actually talking to Russ. <laughs> it's, uh, no, hey, hey, and and how are you? All right. Can you can you say something? Are you going to be a commentator when you're older? Yes, I am. Well, that's very good of you. Well, well spoken as well. And uh, and we'll try and get. Oh, there we go. Look, we can see we're having a wave again. At the uh, people on Bass uh, TV, Russ, they're doing uh, fatherly duties as well. Multitasking, which uh, Russ does uh, when he comes racing. It's either in behind the mic, uh, a bit of uh, child minding, and a bit of photography as well uh, to boot. So uh, yeah, as we say, multitasking and those that. Uh, uh, no, you're not. But you're, uh, you know, we, we always take our hats off to, uh, obviously, the work and effort you put into the sport, Russ, both with, uh, with Grass Chat and uh, everything you do with all of the stats and your videos. And obviously, we're building up uh, towards the, uh, the men's uh, nationals as well. So that is going to be uh, a big, big occasion. And we always look forward to your predictions. Yeah, well, we've got this bit of downtown. We might as well waffle on it, haven't we? So, uh, yeah, and um, in a couple of weeks, Mickey, me and you are sharing the stage. <laughs> That's going to be uh, interesting, isn't it? Isn't it? As um, we're, we've been given the the task of uh, announcing this year's pairings at the Nationals. I know, and uh, I'll tell you what, it was a, a surprising kind of uh, invite through, but I, I, I grasped it with both hands because its uh, I've never done it before. I know that you have uh, you did it um, uh, last year. Um, um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, when they said, do you want to be on the stage on the uh, the Men's Nationals, I thought it was going to be Magic Mike, you know, with me Speedos on, but apparently no. Uh, um, uh, do we pull, uh, pull balls out out of a hat or out of a numbers or is it a, how, do, how do they do it I, I, I'm not actually sure I think it is uh, I'm not sure if it's like tickets uh, everybody's numbered or, or what, uh, how it works but I'm sure we'll find out at the time won't we yeah uh, we will do I'm <laughs> sure we'll have some fun doing it as well and yeah the uh, the pairings for for the nationals in all of the 11 classes so uh, yeah I think uh, I think the time they're looking to start the live pairings about 7 o'clock on the Thursday Thursday night so uh, we'll see you in the in the beer tent if you're on track I think Russ, you're looking to uh, to kind of get um, um, probably live streaming as well. So, um, ladies, uh, nines uh, off and uh, running. And I tell you what, Russ, you can take through the nines because you are an open wheel special. Well, they're, they're not even nines, Mickey. They're junior specials no, for their rerun. No, they haven't. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've snuck the junior specials rerun out there, so we can cover this. Uh, we had a bit of an incident. I missed it last time, but Aaron Richardson was excluded. So uh, Sid Lomax leads the way. He led it last time, but Neil Tyvey, who uh, again has that distinction to be in the uh, only junior to ever win both saloons and specials at the same Baz round leads the way in West Waterford 142. Uh, Sid Lomax sits there second. Alfie Ross in third in Sturton 717 ahead of uh, Tilly Clark in Radford 210. And then uh, we go back to the border count is 117 Sion uh, Bradford and uh, York 22 Ben Ayres is the one with it all to do. Uh, Ross has just lost a little bit of ground there. The top two's broken away, and it's Tyvee who continues to lead. Already one lap to go. Well, we cut these laps down. Uh, we're already onto the final circuit. West Waterford, 142. Uh, North Wales, 199. And then um, we go uh, Sturton, 717. Radford, 210. Border County is double 17. York, 22. That is uh, the order all onto their final circuit. And after a little battle early doors, it's all settled down, hasn't it? And uh, Neil Tyvey uh, is going to uh, lead this one home and takes the win. Uh, North Wales 199 is second. And then uh, Sturton 717. Border County is 117. Radford 210 losing out a little bit towards the end. And York 22. So that completes uh, all my stints for the first round of qualifying. I'll be back for the second runs. But... Um, it looks like we've got Class 8 reruns uh, ready to go. So we'll break from the ladies' proceedings and we go back to the men's. But, yeah, just while they're doing that, I don't know if we've got time. But, yeah, the plan is, Mickey, uh, we'll be doing the live draw. I'm hoping if I can get it set up to live stream it as well on uh, Grass Chat. And over the weekend, we'll be doing everything we usually do, photos, uh, pit walk videos, interviews, if we can. And uh, I have been given the grace. Hopefully, I will be live streaming all of the finals as well. So it uh, means a busy weekend. And uh, we'll try and fit in... Uh, 
the family as well, <laughs> which we always try to. But uh, you know, Bex is uh, very forgiving and lets me go off and do so. I think she it's more of a benefit to her. Uh, yeah, clear off, get out of the way for a few hours, and uh, I'll enjoy the peace. But yeah, that's what we're looking to do at the Nationals. Uh, we'll keep you informed uh, on the Grass Chat page when we can. But yeah, Class A reruns. So uh, back to Liam to see how many times uh, we get through it or not this time. Yeah, cheers, Russ. Probably won't get through it, but uh, we'll give it a go. So uh, men's Class 8 then rerun of race six down there on the line. We have been waiting for it. Of course, this is where the uh, Carlo machine took a tumble in turn one. So uh, we're going to look, see if he's back down there. I think he is, but we've had a dreadful start once again. And Rossi's climbing cars, and guess what that's going to bring out? Yep. Red flags once again on men's class eight. So I think we made it about 30 odd foot off the line. And uh, I think Tolbert was involved in climbing cars. Rossi was climbing over someone as well. Thankfully, they've all come back down onto four wheels. And uh, yeah, that's it. So there we go. So uh, that's a challenge for my fellow commentators to beat this weekend. That's got to be the shortest race so far that, uh, that one of us has gone through. I think I just about made it past the ambulance bay over on the far side, and then it was red flags. So uh, I, 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 I'm sure I'm sure if anyone is going to beat it, it's going to be Mickey because he struggled in his first heats. And looking to the line, I think we should be expecting ladies class nines. So uh, I don't want to make the same mistake Mickey did, but I think they are ladies class nines because I can see uh, the ARC car on the outside. So to take you through it, it's back over to Mickey. Yeah, thanks very much. We are off and racing with the ladies uh, class uh, nines. Uh, so come down there. We've got Kate Yadaman, uh, Kelly Weatherick, uh, Georgia Garnet are all out in this one. But as they come round uh, this time, York 6 then from the ARC3, uh, the IK uh, machine has uh, well come in that through into there. That's uh, Kelly Weatherick was running in third. But uh, here's Kate Yadaman that uh, takes them back round into uh, turn one and turn two in the this extremely hot, dry track now. So Adam and then uh, leads it from the ARC uh, number uh, three. Heidi Dealey Seagraves and uh, Seagraves there uh, round that start gate turn. A little bit of a battle going on uh, for that uh, third place as they uh, bring it down into uh, turn one again. Penultimate time because we're already on that last lap. So Kate Adam and then from Heidi Dealey uh, Seagraves. Then we go down into IK99 from the Pennine 5, PhD 1, uh, the Hereford uh, 150 of Jane Dyke. Whitfield. Uh, we've got uh, one of Paul. Oh, it's still running on the grass and coming out. But check a flag, and it is going to be uh, Katie Adaman that takes the uh, the win from uh, Highly Dealey Seagreaves. IK99 in third from the Pennine Five. Hereford 150. PhD uh, one of uh, Sadie uh, Lindsay across, and uh, that Pennine Five, by the way, was Clay Richardson, and that final car across the line. It is uh, Trent Nine, uh, that's Georgia uh, Garnet. So uh, there we go, that is uh, my uh, ladies uh, done for the time being. Um, we've got, uh, what have I got to do? I've got a rerun in, uh, well, two reruns in ladies class sevens to come. Um, but looking up on the line and, uh, and Tim Jones has made his way uh, back in. Uh, on in his, uh, his shades and his, and his hat, so he's been out uh, mooching around, and I think it is going to be taking you through um, the uh, the ladies, and I think we're going to be going through ladies uh, twos, I think you've got, and may have some stock hatches as well, but uh, uh, three grids of ladies class two, so it's over to Mr Tim Jones. Thank you, Mickey. So, yeah, here we go then, ladies class two, heat one, Race one already assembled on to the line. Bowser's then already on to the circuit. Fleet Care Services, of course, your British series sponsor. And uh, CC Fabrications is your sponsor. So CC Fabrications, of course, is of course, Craig Conway. So uh, our big thanks to both. Race one then brings out uh, Linda Thomas in PAC 91. Jenny Booten in Radford 80. Valerie Harrington in Radford 205. Chloe Ankers in North Shropshire 391. Missy Mosley in Radford 3. Rachel Fowles in Pennine 84. And last but by no means least, Pamela Hogan in Mallow number 2. 
So that's your lineup for race one of the uh, Heat One Ladies Class Two here at uh, round three of the British Autograph Series here at North Shropshire. So uh, more uh, grading and uh, watering going on down that uh, far side. So I uh, won't be a minute or so while they get that sorted. So I hope you're enjoying all the action. Those, those of you are trackside and those of you are actually listening and watching on Bass FM, there, or Bass TV rather, then uh, a big uh, hello to you. And uh, just a quick shout out to uh, somebody, Rachel, uh, Rachel Walker. I did have a message from Rachel earlier on to say, uh, give us a shout. So uh, there you go. Hi, Rachel. Hope you're all right. And uh, everything is uh, all good with you and uh, Steve. So that's uh, the watering, grading and everything done. Uh, so we get then underway with the first race of uh, the second, first round of qualifying. Ladies class two and uh, straight out in the front it's the Pennine machine that's uh, Rachel Foles in uh, Pennine 84 but uh, just being chased on by I think that's Missy Mosley in Radford 3 but it's uh, PAC 91 Linda Thomas that uh, takes up the running from Jenny Booten in Radford 8 as they all uh, slide round the start gate turn for the first time of asking Radford 3 then Missy Mosley just slotting into third as they go down that far side but uh, into uh, turn one once again Linda Thomas still uh, Holds the lead in PAC 91 as they come by us once again with Radford 80. Jenny Booten still running second. Radford 3, Missy Mosley. Then comes Rachel Foles in Pennine 84. And uh, the other one we've got out there, that's Valerie Harrington in Radford 205. Problems for uh, Pamela in Mallow number two, stopped uh, by the Marshalls Post. And uh, indeed, that does bring out the uh, red flags. So they'll go back to the uh, rerun lane or the rerun area and uh, do that all again. So uh, down towards the line, I think we're uh, momentarily leaving uh, ladies class two and uh, we're going open wheelers. So uh, I think this possibly is uh, a class eight rerun. So uh, not quite sure, but if it is, then it's back of the Liam. Yeah, thank you, Tim. So uh, I think this is the rerun of the race that we've just had, which just got red flagged. So they've obviously sent them virtually right back round because we've only had one race in between. So uh, this then should be the rerun of race six for your man's class eight. It's Beresford Chassis and Components, your series sponsor, and uh, DM Racing, your uh, very kind sponsors for the weekend so uh, a very big thank you to both of them so indeed it is then the rerun of the class eights minus anthony ross by the looks of things in sturton 77 so uh, we are running then we've got five cars left in it one of them steve mills and he's the one who leads goes out wide who's coming through no one because he's going to lead them round once again in c10 sean wright's on the inside in scunthorpe 71 your map champion then is running through tolbert makes his move up the inside but wright fights back in white row 71 so steve mills is the one at the moment unchallenged at the front in C10 oh I say that and uh, Wright made a move up the inside they made contact Mills gets up on two wheels Tolbert comes through and takes up the running so it's all changed at the head of affairs as Solway 6 it is but Mills he fights back in come D number 10 as they go down the far side what a race we have on our hands here as they go into that bottom turn Tolbert's overcooked it as he as he tries to take an inside line but Mills has got the speed last lap flag C10 Solway 6 Right in 71, Drew Butters in North Shropshire 14. Here's the one dropping off the pace as the uh, Carlo car looks to go right round the outside after his earlier tumble in the uh, first attempt at this race. But Steve Mills, I'll tell you what, he's had to battle hard for it, but he is going to win it. C10 it is. That takes the win. Oh, right, I think, just from Tolbert for second and third. Then we go to Carlo number 80, North Shropshire 14, and Drew Butters comes across to complete it all. Well, we had to wait for it. But it was certainly worth the wait, wasn't it? As uh, we only had five cars left, but what a show they put on. And uh, Steve Mills, 
had to uh, fight hard to stay on four wheels as he went into that bottom turn, but uh, managed to fight back and take a very good win in come D number 10. So class eight providing the action. That does conclude class eight for the first round of qualifying. As I said, Beresford chassis and components and DM racing at your very kind sponsors. We got there in the end. I got the ladies to go through soon. So uh, we are gonna go back to the ladies. Is ladies class twos and it's back over to Tim. Yes, uh, thank you, Liam. So uh, no time to uh, mention who's uh, going out there and who isn't, but oh, we got cars facing the wrong way and uh, that's going to bring out red flags. So not quite beating your uh, record, mate, but uh, we weren't far off. We weren't far off. So back to the rerun lane, then they will go. And uh, while they get themselves sorted out, just had a message come through from uh, Steve Howells sat there um, watching Bass TV with, uh, with his dad. And uh, nice, nice to hear from you, Steve. Hope everything's going well. And uh, give a shout out. And uh, as I say, hope everything's okay. And you're all well. So, uh, right, sticking with uh, ladies class two. Then uh, race three, I think, is already assembled on the line. Laura, Laura Jones in Typhi 17 should uh, be uh, down there then. Should be Gracie Coles in... Uh, Pen out number 10, Lucy Wickham in pen out 13. Jess Roberts, their uh, last uh, bass winner in Scunthorpe 126. Vicky Robbins in St. Neots 34. And uh, Amory Chabburn in White Rose 13. So that's your lineup for uh, race three of the uh, ladies' uh, class twos. So Telly Porter into the centre of the raceway and uh, just the one car to be uh, moved out of harm's way as soon as we know of any uh, mickey once again the uh, radio glued to his ear so when we know of any exclusions then uh, as i say we will let you know so looks like we're nearly ready to go chief trap marshal then the glues at the uh, all clear wind up signal goes bungee brakes or bungee lifts and uh, away we go with the last seat of uh, ladies class two and uh, it's your last round winner then jess roberts in scunny 126 that's uh, first one to show with uh, lara jones in type 17 as uh, they come by us in once again but uh, finding the gap and taking up the running vicky robbins in the s 34 then takes up it as they go round the, uh, the start gate turn for uh, the first time of asking Amri Chabron also in there as well battling with Jess Roberts in that uh, second place lot with uh, Lucy Wickham in Penau at 13 just uh, just giving uh, Amri Chabron a little bit of a nudge just to let her know she's there but uh, Roberts it is that's uh, once again your race leader around the start gate turn Jess Roberts in Scunthorpe 126 then comes Wickham in 13 Amri Chabron still there in White Rose 13 then we go back to Lara Jones in Taifi uh, Time for 17 and uh, Gracie Coles rounds it all out in Pano. Number 10 already. Our last lap we go. Sitting here 34, 126. Then comes uh, White Rose 13. Then comes uh, Wickham in Pano at 13. Lara Jones still there in Time 17. And Gracie Coles in Pano at number 10. But Roy's are back to the front. Ricky Roberts it is. That's going to bring him round once again. Jess Roberts still holding second in 126. It's a dash to the line, but uh, Sydney S34 gets it. Then Scunthorpe 126. White Rose 13. Penai 13. Lara Jones in Typhi 17. And Gracie Coles in Penai number 10. So, just hearing from that last one, then Lucy Wickham in Penau 13 picks up a green flag. And from the race before that didn't really go anywhere, Beth Richards in Penau 65 will pick, will picks up the black flag. So, we'll take no further part in the rerun. Okay, onwards and upwards we go then. Shepton Plan Hire, your uh, meeting sponsor. Ladies Class 4 is away uh, from the line. And uh, Gwen Reeves, it is very... Uh, quickly and swiftly out of the gate and into uh, into the lead command the seven it is 
from uh, Claire Compton in North Shropshire. 4 3 4, though, fighting back on the inside line, going round the start gate turn for the first time. Compton and uh, the work Graham Reeves side by side once again down that far side. And Kelly Weatherick now running in that third place, IK272. Just the one here, the ladies' class four, so uh, everybody should get into uh, the final, but uh, going through hopefully, and uh, hopefully adding more points to the uh, her, uh, Bass Tally and Gwen Reeves in commander number seven from Claire Compton, North Shropshire 434 from Kelly Weatherick still holding third, IK272. Then we go to Claire Herman in Radford 47. And uh, on the one lone stock hatch we got out there, that's going to be Mel Mich Michelle Petrie in Radford at 59. But uh, once again, we get red flags. So you don't quite know why, but. Uh... Ah, Bethan Davis it is that's facing the wrong way, so that may be. Uh, may have something to do with it, perhaps. So Shevden Plantire, your kind sponsor, and no doubt supplying a lot of the kit this weekend for uh, the British Series round. Muck Junkie, of course, your uh, very kind series sponsor. As uh, uh, again, big thanks to both. So uh, while we got a uh, few minutes, as the uh, Bowser goes on to the circuit, more water then is applied, and uh, Class Six is is uh, what's assembled on the line. Two heats of the Class six, Ladies Class 6 machinery is to come your way. JCM Vehicle Transport, your very kind uh, meeting sponsor, and Elite Racing Transmissions is your uh, series sponsor. <coughs> so, race one then brings out Emma Cannon. Hopefully, if they've got the old car all fixed, did sit in the Welding Bay earlier, so hopefully that's all back together. So if it is, then she'll take her place in lane one in Evesham 291. Kerry Thomas, which should be down there in Typhi 66. Leanne Hushka in North Wales 20 also should be there in lane four. Come out of lane five then, that's going to be Jenny Brown in PAC 37. Leanne Lewis in Swansea 1. Chloe Hampson in Pennine 70. And starting towards the outside of the grid, Angela Evans in North Shropshire 219. So that's your uh, current lineup for race one of ladies uh, class sixes. But going back to uh, class four, then unfortunately the one lone stock hatch, that's Radford 59, that picks up the black flag. So Michelle Petrie picks up the green flag and uh, will not be eligible for the rerun. Everybody else then goes as per the list, but uh, we will uh, go back to ladies class four a little bit later on because we as I say we're on with ladies class sixes so again already assembled on the line to say two heats to come your way as uh, we uh, get towards the end of the first round of qualifying for the ladies once again sun absolutely beating down here it is really really warm outside so uh, again can't uh, can't infiltrate this enough keep your uh, keep your hat on keep your sun cream on get yourself uh, hydrated and uh, as I say stay uh, under British shade and uh, as I say watch some cracking cracking racing so I think the bows are just about finished as they uh, go round the start gate turn just watering on the inside of the cones Uh, more graining work once again going uh, around the uh, bottom corner. So, any more messages, Mickey? Anybody uh, giving us a shout out? Yeah, we've got uh, we've got one here, Tim. Uh, good luck to Auntie M and Mike McKenzie this weekend from Darcy and Kirsty Empsom. So, uh, well done uh, uh, there. I think also I had one earlier. It was something about someone who lost a Peppa Pig hat. So if anyone finds a Peppa Pig hat, then come and uh, uh, bring it to commentary. I must say, we've already reunited three people with the phones today. So we're doing well. Lovely. And we only charge a very small commission as well. So there you go. Right, ladies' class sixes, heat one already underway. And uh, it's uh, Leanne Huska in North Wales 20 that uh, leads into uh, 
the first turn. Somebody looking up that inside, though, to take up the running. That's uh, Chloe Hampson in at Penine at 70, but uh, she just slots into second ahead of uh, Jenny Brown in PAC 37. Angela Evans in uh, North Shropshire 219. Well, she's up to that fourth place slot as they go down that far side. And Emma Cannon, they've got it repaired, and she's uh, in that fifth place slot in Evesham 219. But back round towards us in first position is North Wales at 20. That's going to be Leanne Huska from uh, Chloe Hampson in Penine at 70. Jenny Brown in PAC 37. Angela Evans in North Shropshire 219. And Emma Cannon in uh, Isham 291 and Keris Thomas in Typhi 66. So, field fairly well spread out and no challenge on your uh, clear race leader, Leanne Huska in North Wales 20. On to the final lap, then she goes from Chloe Hampson in Pennine 70. Then Angela Evans, North Shropshire 219 from Jenny Brown, PAC 37, and Emma Cannon in uh, Isham 291, just gaining ground in the late stages of this one and uh, Karis Thomas in Typhi 66 but uh, clear race leader clear race winner Leanne Huska North Wales 20 takes it from Chloe Hampson in Penline 70 and it's going to be third will be Andrew Evans North Shropshire 219 from I think uh, Emma Cannon just ahead of uh, Jenny Brown in PAC 37 and uh, I think that's all we're going to finish is Karis Thomas as uh, Come to grief in the middle of the circuit in Typhi 66. So, uh, looking down towards the line, I think we're leaving class sixes for the moment and uh, we're going sticking with the ladies but we're going to ladies class seven so the ladies man himself mickey b yeah thanks very much there uh, tim uh, and yes th this brings out uh, race one so we take two on that max sport series sponsor alan miles our weekend sponsor and uh, i can see uh, sue harris there radford uh, 140 coming out of lane seven pam blackburn alongside her in yorkshire Dale 71 out of lane eight um, then there's a little bit of a, a, a gap. So is that uh, Nicola Gibbs not there? Ella John in PhD6. Julie Hawthorne, Fernie Ho in Radford 176. She had a flying start as well, didn't she? Uh, and it uh, was leading it before it got stopped. Michelle Barrett, York 12. And Emily McKenzie in Cambridge 12. So here we go. We are off and running. And a bit of deja vu because uh, Radford 176, Julie Hawthorne, Fernie Ho is... Uh, back in the front and exit that turn two Pam Blackburn has gone with it a better start for Pam in Yorkshire 71 uh, Michelle Barrett York 12 in third then we go down to the Cambridge 12 Emily McKenzie and uh, they've got the uh, back uh, lot Ella Johns up the, in that fight and as well in that uh, PhD 6 but uh, eyes back front and Julie Hawthorne Fernio leading the bass 210 points uh, on round one 210 points accumulated on round two. What can she do on round three? And she's already making a statement as she brings it down that opening straight in a turn one. But the battle's going on for that second. Pam Blackburn still holding and defending that uh, line, slowing it down. Michelle Barrett tucked into that uh, third place as uh, the last lap flag being shown. One more lap to go. So uh, Radford 176, Julie Hawthorne, Fernio from Pam Blackburn, from Michelle Barrett, from uh, that uh, Emily McKenzie, Cambridge 12, PhD uh, number six. Ella John uh, running down there as well as we go right to the front and it's going to be Julie Hawthorne Fernio Radford 176 takes the win wow what a race I think Michelle Barrett just got Pam Blackburn from Emily McKenzie PhD 6 of uh, Ella John and then Sue Harris Radford 140 in that final position so uh, that was uh, race one rerun run so uh, a uh, little like kind of rhyme in slang. Well, that's what you get from my part of the town. Um, up on the line, I think we're switching back over. I think we're doing the okey cokey on commentary, and it's now knees in, arms out for Tim Jones. It's right, Jim out, Nicky. Mickey is getting him back into problem. <laughs> right, class six is in race two, already uh, underway, and uh, it's Zoe Copeland. In Scunthorpe 36, it was the first one to show, but to Hannah Thomas also in there as well. And she dressed wine in Scarborough 16. Olsen also looking to come through in Kwanan at 47, but uh, 
It's all uh, changed at the front with Scania 36. Zoe Copeland still holding the race leader though. Olsen looking up that inside line of Hannah Thomas as they go down that far side ahead of the uh, Jess Roberts machine in Scunthorpe 122 and Ellie Bailey in Scunny 33 but uh, it's uh, Scunthorpe that leads the way though 36 it is that's uh, Zoe Copeland from Nicola Olsen in Marlon 47 Anna Thomas still holding third in Scarborough 16 running just ahead of Jess Roberts in uh, Scunthorpe 122 and Ella Bailey in uh, Scunthorpe 33 but back round towards us already one lap to go then Scunny 36 it is Command 47 Scarborough 16 that's still the one, two, three. Jess Roberts still holding third, uh, fourth rather, in Scunthorpe, uh, 122, ahead of uh, the other Scunny machine. That's Ella Bailey in uh, Scunthorpe, 33. But it's coming out of the final turn. Checkers at the ready. It's a race win and 55 points. Zoe Copeland from Nicola Olsen in command of 47. Hannah Thomas in Scarborough, 16 from Jess Roberts in uh, Scunny, 122. And Ella Bailey in uh, Scunthorpe, 33. So just, uh, we've had another mobile phone handed in. So uh, we're up to number four today, I think. So see if we can reunite this. It's a, it's a nice, fancy done flash thing. Um, so if anyone's uh, lost it, I think it might be uh, a ladies uh, one. And uh, whether or not, if someone knows Kim Jenkins, maybe ask her to check her pockets. That's what all I'm saying. So thanks very much. Um, up on the line then. We're looking, is this my, oh, this is my final run of the Ladies Seven. This is race three, take two. So got Samantha Graney, Sue Erdman, Tracy Bainbridge, Alice Bevans, and Lindsay Allen. Ah, oh, and the, and the phone's ringing, hold on. Hello, Mark, I'm just commentating at the moment. So uh, if you want to come and see us in commentary, you're more than welcome. So there you go, multitasking, answering mobile phones and doing the racing because it is Lindsay Allen then, Penhine 37 that takes up the running. Currently running fifth on the points, but coming back at her, PAC 53, Alice Bevans side by side as they bring it down into turn one. Alice Bevans currently running second in the Bass points, round and cuts it tight. Can she pop out in front as they come past commentary? It is Alice Bevans then. There's a car crawling round the outside, out of harm's way though. But Bevans from uh, the Allen, then Samantha Grain is there as well. The uh, down machine has got it. So uh, that's uh, Kate Thomas has got the car fixed and going in the right uh, direction. Tracy Bainbridge, Yorkshire Dales 41 in that uh, fifth place. But it is last lap flag, PAC 3. 53, Alice Bevins. Alice, you know who Alice is, and she takes it down, the only straight down into turn one. Pennine 37, Lindsay Allen still running that second place. Samantha Graney in third, Pennine 8. Then we go down to the down 26, Kate Thomas, and then Tracy Bainbridge. But uh, here we go, check a flag, and 55 points. Alice Bevins, PAC 53. Second is Lindsay Allen, Pennine 37. Pennine 8 is Samantha Graney in fourth. Fifth, fourth is the uh, down 26, Kate uh, Thomas, Tracy Bainbridge, Yorkshire Dales 41, and York 57, Sue Erdman. So uh, there we are, and uh, I've got a young gentleman coming here, and uh, are, you, are you Mark? I know, you, I've just spoke to you on the phone while commentating. <laughs> so uh, uh, over to Mr Tim Jones. Yeah, thank you, Mickey. So uh, while we... Uh at the moment also then uh, just had another message come through a shout out from uh, to Sally Ann Hammond she says good luck to everybody and see you tomorrow so uh, yeah hope uh, you're going to enjoy it tomorrow so you uh, just bring plenty of sun cream and uh, plenty of uh, plenty of water and uh, say enjoy a good day tomorrow so I think we're going uh, with uh, open wheelers so back over to Liam yeah, thank you very much, Tim. So, ladies class eight then for the first time this weekend are uh, on and off the line as we get going into turn one. We go four races scheduled to come your way. We're away with race one. Claire Horner is not in it. It's the uh, run for the 71 machine. That's going to lead them round for the first time. Sophie Morgan as uh, second place is up for battle. Kelly Matthews slots in there as uh, Sandra Jones relegated to third. In come D number 10 with work to do. Ellie Hines running in fourth, but I think it's Cassie Gunn on her outside. 
but at the front it's going to be the 71 Sophie Morgan that still leads the way the race really on for second as uh, Sandra Jones holding off the challenge but Kelly Matthews will not give up as they go down the far side Ellie Hines still runs there in fourth Cassie Gunn in the Pennine number nine machine Yorkdale's number seven Sue Nichols well down the order oh we've lost one as they uh, get it all out of shape but uh, at the front is last lap flag and it's Sophie Morgan that's going to lead them round are we going to keep this running I don't think so and indeed we're not as red flags come out once for well I say once again on class eight but for the first time on ladies class eight as uh, they slow it right down after uh, early contact going in to that bottom corner I think Kelly Matthews was the one that unfortunately got taken out in the uh, Cambridge 427 machine so uh, we will wait and see what uh, the verdict is on the radio and uh, whether there will be any exclusions again it's uh, a tricky one because all of the drivers were onto their final circuit but the incident did occur before the last lap flag come out so uh So uh, we're just here, and then Kelly Matthews, unfortunately, has, uh, as feared, will uh, be excluded from the rerun as uh, she was deemed to be the cause of the race stoppage. I think just trying too hard. She was having a good battle at the uh, front end of the field and got it all out of shape and unfortunately finds herself square wheeled. And uh, even more unfortunate, no points accumulated at the end of heat one in your ladies' class eight. So race one then will... Uh, Go into the rerun lane. So, well, I say into the rerun lane. We will wait and see, as I said, because the last lap flag was out. So we will just wait and see what the marshals say. And um, as... Oh, well, there you go. So they are taking a the result then from race one. So uh, race one is done. And uh, unfortunately, Kelly Matthews excluded from the result. So Sophie Morgan then taking her maximum points in heat one. I'll tell you what, making a comeback to uh, Bass Racing in ladies class eights and uh, coming back with a bang, isn't she? She's absolutely flying this year. And 55 more points onto her tally. So that is race one done and dusted with. Race two then should be down there on the line. We're going to have a bit of wall to go down on the track just whilst we have uh, a little bit of downtime getting Kelly Matthews sore today. And I'll tell you what, you get used to seeing this, don't you? Because every single uh, second of downtime that they've had uh, during the course of this weekend, they have been out there working on the track, either watering it or grading it, whatever they need to do. And uh, I'll tell you what, whatever they're doing is working, isn't it? Because this track is holding up absolutely superbly with the, uh, the sun beaming down on it. For those of you that are at home, or uh, whether you're abroad or whether you're on holiday, wherever you might be in the world, if you are watching on Bass TV, then uh, as I said earlier, hopefully you are all enjoying the coverage. You should all be here because uh, I tell you what, don't want to seem biased, but this is shaping up to be one of the best Bass rounds in uh, recent years. And I'm pretty sure I said the same thing last year when they had it. But uh, hats off to the North Shropshire Club for uh, pulling it out of the bag. It's, what is it, coming up to three o'clock, so maybe a little bit behind schedule. But I tell you what, that doesn't take away from the, uh, the brilliant racing that we've seen. Of course, we have had numerous incidents and uh, accidents, which is expected, especially at uh, a Bass, especially at this time of year. Of course, the third round of the Kent Cams and Simpson sponsored British Autograph Series. It's uh, getting towards the business end of the season. We're over halfway, well, we're just at the halfway point, I think, for the, uh, for the Bass. So obviously these drivers, They've had their first two rounds. They know where they stand in the points. They know what they've got to do. They know what they need. And uh, obviously, if they're down the order and they need the points, they're going to be trying extra hard to uh, get up there. And we've already seen, I'll tell you what, this weekend, we've already seen a lot of uh, surprising results. I mean, people that are at the top of the bus, especially in Class 7, I think the, uh, the leading two is Cameron Mills and Andy Holtby. And I think both of them had fourths. We've seen uh, Dalton Thomas, I think, in the Class 6. I think he's your Class 6 series leader. I don't think he had the best results in his first heat. So it has sprung up a few surprises over the course of the day so far. And we're still only in the first heat. So uh, it is certainly all to play for because, of course, not just racing for points this weekend. They are racing for British Autograph Series points over the course of five rounds. And as Steve said, you do get four races to drop. And I'll tell you what, that's not a lot because if you do five rounds and you 
you do three heats in your final at every round. That's 20 races. So to only drop four is uh, not a lot. So there's not a lot of room for mistakes. These ladies class eights know that more than anyone because they are the most competitive class in ladies racing. And they're on the line. Race two, Lindsay Weir, Sharon Barker, Beth Tompkinson, Alice Bevins, Ellie Lockwood, Terry Mumford, and Jody Glover. What a lineup that is of ladies class eights. It's a great lineup, but it's not the right race because we're going with race three by the looks of things. So race two's disappeared. Race three it is then that gets off the line because Abby J Bennett's out in it in Forrester D number eight, but she's not leading because it's the West Waterford machine, Jenny Houlihan, that leads the Southern Irish car, takes them down the far side for another time. Abby J Bennett slots in the second. Third is going to be Cordine Barnett. In come D115, and uh, who's running behind her? Claire Horner, uncharacteristically down the order, being forced out wide as Ruby Emerson looks to push her way through. In Scunthorpe 199, but can't quite make it stick. And Vicky Appleton in a uh, brand new machine after a terrible roll at the first round of the bus, get into grips with the car, not running on form, but it's good to see her back out there in Scarborough number two. It's last lap flag already at the front, and it's Jenny Houlihan that leads them round. Abby J Bennett still runs there in second. She's seen her dad take second. I'm sure she'll want to go one better, but she's got work to do. As uh, the front two pull away from the rest, Cordine Barnett holding off the challenge of Claire Horner, who runs there in fourth in Mountain 62. Claire won't be happy with fourth. She knows she needs to move up, but it's checkered flag. It's Jenny Houlihan from West Waterford that takes the win. Second is Abby J Bennett. Third, I think Claire Horner snatches it from Cordine Barnett, and then I think Vicky Appleton manages to get it on the line from Ruby Emerson as well in Scunthorpe 199. So good stuff from your ladies class eights. I told you they're competitive and uh, they're certainly showing it. So Jenny Houlihan with a very good win in that one. So race two has momentarily disappeared. Not too sure where, but it's certainly not on the line because that is race four. That is down there, judging by the cars that are on the line. Jess Browning, Lindsay Mullen, Kerr Cockrell, Josie Tompkinson, Charlene Hankey and Rosemary Glover are the ones. And I tell you what, Lindsay Mullen storms out of the gate and into turn one in Yorkshire's 37. She didn't uh, have the best of bus rounds at the last round after winning the first one, but uh, leading the way this time. Josie Tompkinson then runs second in Scunthorpe 52 and running out wide, but got the speed. Rosemary Glover's up to third as uh, she runs down the far side but Charlene Hankey goes right around the outside your national champion of Claire Cockrell is the one at the back which is very uncharacteristic but it's youth and experience at the front it's Lindsay Mullen that leads the way in Yorkshire 37 certainly looking to improve on Daz's result I think he had a second in the machine but she's going one better Josie Tompkinson though isn't finished yet she's going to mount a last ditch challenge she's got just over a lap to try and make a move but she's at the inside as the last lap flag goes out it's so Side by side racing as they come past us. Lindsay Mullen, though, just about holding on as Josie looks up the inside. These two pulling away. Charlene Hankey alone and in third place with uh, no one close to her in that uh, fourth. It's Rosemary Glover and Claire Cockrell. But at the front, it's going to be checkered flag. Josie's going for it one last time. It's side by side across the line. Who won that as they come past? Charlene Hankey, Rosemary Glover, and Claire Cockrell were the next ones across, but. I am not even going to attempt to try and split those first two. I will turn to my right and ask Mickey if he... He's going to go find out. There we go. So, uh, like I said, I'm not even going to attempt to guess because uh, that was as close as it gets in uh, ladies' class eight racing. Josie Tompkinson and Lindsay Mullen side by side as they went across the line and uh, absolute fantastic stuff. So, uh, Mickey is run off to get a result. We will let you know. But for the meantime, we'll go with the uh, forgotten race two, which is on and off the line as they get away. Who's going to be the first one to show? Ellie Lockwood, I think, was the quickest and she's certainly the tightest as she goes on the inside line in Scunny 191. Alice Bevan's looking to come through, but it's not going to work. Terry Mumford then in the mix as well. In Forrester Dean 158, Alice Bevan's makes a move in PAC number two. Ellie Lockwood fights back round the outside as they go side by side into this bottom corner. Can they avoid contact? Hopefully, because they're shaping up to be a brilliant race. Terry Mumford is still in the mix. Lindsay Weir runs fourth in Breed Nil number one. Beth Tompkinson in 51. Jody Glover in 71. Oh! Oh no! Ellie Lockwood, Scunthorpe 191, gets it upside down on this top turn. And that's, well, that's just very disappointing, isn't it? I said 
as they went into the bottom turn. Can they avoid contact? They did, but unfortunately couldn't do it as they went into this uh, top turn. Ellie Lockwood, unfortunately, is the one who found herself upside down in Scunthorpe 191. And uh, the marshals very quickly out there in attendance. It's uh, not the first time that uh, Ellie has unfortunately ended up on a roof, I don't think. I think uh, the last one she took was a little bit bigger than that as well. So hopefully Ellie is uh, A-OK. -okay and uh, as I said, hopefully she's OK. Driver safety, of course, is the, uh, the paramount thing. It was uh, a decent sized roll. Wasn't the biggest, but certainly wasn't the smallest either as she uh, went over on that top turn. I do think that uh, the marshals are uh, looking to push the car back over onto its wheels, which uh, gives us some indication that uh, the driver is fine. So uh, I highly doubt the marshals would be pushing the car back over if uh, there was any significant pain or anything like that from uh, Ellie Lockwood. They've pushed it over gently. As I said, we will just look to see if she uh, makes her way out of the car. I'm sure uh, probably a little bit shaken up after a roll like that. And uh, luck obviously not on her side this weekend. I'm sure uh, Kate will be watching eagerly as well. I'm sure Kate will... Uh, certainly care more about if Ellie's okay than she will the car and uh, as I said the driver safety is certainly the paramount thing but uh, not the kind of thing we need to be seeing it was uh, shaping out to be such a good race it's been brilliant for uh, the last three races in the ladies class eight they were really putting on a show for us and uh, unfortunately not finishing the way they wanted it to in uh, race two so uh, Marshall's then still still around the car. So uh, we are just going to go quiet just for a second while we wait. And uh, we have got a result just before we do go. We've got a result from race four. And the verdict is in. Lindsay Mullen, it was, in Yorkshire's 37. That managed to cling on to victory and uh, take 55 points. So Lindsay Mullen then, the winner of race four. I tell you what, one more lap, that could have been different. Well, I could have watched that race for another 10 laps because it was absolutely fantastic. But uh, well done to Lindsay for taking a very good win and uh, kicking her weekend off in uh, true style. So that's the verdict from race four. Race two, obviously, we will wait and see if uh, there are going to be any exclusions, etc., after the uh, role that Ellie Lockwood unfortunately took. And uh, just getting a, uh, another note from Mickey. There we go. Always on hand. That's the good thing about having Mickey being commentary. Look, I didn't even have to ask him, and he's already given me the, uh, the car that's excluded. So, unfortunately, Terry Mumford in the Forest of Dean 158 is the one that uh, won't be partaking in the rerun, which uh, I'm sure will be coming up fairly shortly because uh, there's not a lot left. I think, what well, we got a ladies' 10 race, and then we got couple of reruns. It looks like a ladies' class four rerun. Is that Tim? To uh, come your way? I think it's ladies' class four, full stop. Oh, just ladies' class four. There we go. So, uh, ladies' class four, I can see them just coming into the, uh, the holding lanes. Uh, Ellie Lockwood being taken off, I think, in the ambulance just for the uh, precautionary checkup to make sure everything is all right. Then, obviously, the uh, 191 machine will be taken into the pits. And uh, once that is all done, then we will be ready to move on to your ladies' class 10s. But before we do, big thank you to our sponsors for ladies' class 8s. They haven't had a mention yet because we were getting all caught up in the excitement of the racing that uh, we didn't get a chance. But a very big thank you to D&D &D Transport for their sponsorship over the course of the weekend for ladies' class 8s. And I'm sure they'll be happy so far with the action that they've seen. Probably not so much in the last race, but certainly in the first three that we've seen then uh, I'm sure they'll be uh, happy that they sponsored such a fast and competitive class to, uh, to go. So... Just to, um... So... Uh... So, uh, also then, a uh, big thank you to uh, the S600 sponsors. Of course, uh, like I said earlier, not enough of them this weekend to be racing on their own, which is uh, unfortunate, but uh, they are, of course, still racing for their series points uh, separately, even though they are going out with Class 10. So, uh, it is obviously still all to play for with them. So, a big thank you to SGS sponsors for uh, their sponsorship of the S600s and their sponsorship of the Stock Hatches as well. So, uh, there you go. 
two for one. So uh, you buy one, you get one free and all that. So a big thank you to SGS for uh, their sponsorship. And as I said, in uh, regards to S600, Trevor Frost, if you're watching at home or uh, in the hospital, and uh, you've got Bass TV on. Hopefully you are uh, enjoying the action. I'll tell you what, I bet you're cooler than we are because uh, it is absolutely roasting here and uh, certainly warm in this commentary box. But what would you expect with three hot guys like me, Mickey B and Tim Jones in here? It's, uh, it's inevitable. So uh, back to the serious stuff. We're going, oh, I say that, three hot guys and they decide to turn the camera on us. So they've done us dirty there, haven't they? So. Uh, I tell you what, hopefully most of you watching online are either blind in one eye or partially blind in both. So uh, then you might believe me. But we are going to go back racing. Ladies class 10s it is that are on the line. So Peacock Garage Motor Services, your sponsors for the weekend of ladies class 10s. Only five of them coming out, but I'm sure they're going to put on a show as they slow it down going into turn one. And Jill Grasby it is, the lady to beat in class 10s this year. That leads the way from the Hereford 250 of Jody Pascal. Then we're going to go to Jodie Faulkner in North Shropshire number six running there at third she's on home turf so uh, she's got to improve and speaking of improving Jodie Pascal moves up the inside of Jill Grasby to uh, take up the running as uh, she uh, slots into that first place position slowing it down through that turn once again but coming up strong 250 from 122 from number six then we go to the S600 running in fourth of Hereford 16 and uh, Kamarvin 29 of Catherine Jones at the tail end but it's all change at the front again because Jill Grasby gets her back but Jodie Pascal is going to fight back. Becky Faulkner certainly not out of it in North Shropshire number six. It's last lap flag and any one of these three could take this win as Becky moves up to second on the outside line as Pascal looks back through but doesn't make it stick. Becky's got the speed around the outside but not enough speed to go past Jill Grasby in Eastern 122 or as she she's going to make a last ditch move for it as it's checkered flag Grasby through the middle and as uh, Becky Faulkner makes it stick, North Shropshire six, it is that takes the win. Jill Grasby takes second. Jody Pascal comes across in third. Hereford 16 in fourth in the S600. And Catherine Jones in Carmarthen 29 that comes across to round out your ladies class 10 and ladies S600. Peacock Garage Motor Services, your sponsors of 10. And SGS, your sponsors of F600. So good stuff from them. Becky Faulkner leaving it last minute, but uh, snatching a very good victory in the end. So that does conclude them. We have got ladies class four machinery down there on the line. Tim's got his paperwork all ready to go. So to tell you who's there, it's over to Tim Jones. Yes, thank you, Liam. So, uh, OK, away we go. Ladies uh, class four is uh, already away uh, from the line. So uh, they'll sort themselves out round turn one. And uh, turn two, each of 220 it is that uh, leads the way. So uh, paper of course sorted, Claire Compton, North Shopshire 434 it is that uh, Goes wide, Gwen Reeves also in there as well. So it's uh, the uh, Eastern 220 machine, Lisa Cooper, as uh, they all go round the start gate turn for another time of Aston Cooper on the inside. It's Compton on the outside. Gwen Reeves also in there as well. And Kamala number seven as they go down the far side. Don't discount Kelly Weatherick either in IK 272 as the last lap flag then goes out. It's a one lap dash to the finish. Compton it is from uh, CM7, Eastern 220. And Kelly Weatherick in IK 272. Typhoon 155, Bethan Davis and Claire Herman in Radford 47. Complete the order, but down the far side, though. Compton on the outside. Gwen Reeves looking on that inside line in Carmarthen, number seven, as they come out of the final turn. It's a dash to the line. It's going to be Compton that takes it. 4 3 4 from Carmarthen, seven. IK 272 from uh, the Esham 220 of Lisa Cooper. Bethan Davis in Typhoon 155. And uh, completing it all then, that's uh, Claire Herbman in Radford, 47. Uh, so that completes uh, ladies class four so uh, as I say just the one heat so we'll, uh, every, uh, everyone will go through to the final so sticking with ladies so we're going with I think with ladies class two so this is obviously the uh, rerun or one of the uh, reruns 
So uh, it is the rerun of race two. And it's Radford 92, Nicola Bettany. That's uh, the first one to show from uh, the uh, North Shropshire 15. Jess Brown in, in second, C60. Donna Howells in this slot and into third as uh, round the start gate turn we go for the first time. Donna Beer been challenged on that uh, inside line by uh, Beth Riches in Pennine, in uh, Faith Stevenson rather, in Pennine 89. But uh, still uh, no real challenge on your race leader as uh, she combines once again. Nicola Bettany, Radford 92, North Shropshire 15. C60 from Pennine 89 and uh, the other uh, the other car we got, that's SR 171, Zara Sutton-Smith. So uh, everybody safely uh, about on to, well, nearly on to the final circuit because the yellow flag of the Black Cross is now being shown to uh, Radford 92. Nicola Bettany from uh, Jess Brown in North Shropshire 15, from Faith Stevenson in Pennine 89, Donna Howells in C60. And to complete it all then, Zara Sutton-Smith in SR171. So, no change anywhere on the uh, race circuit as uh, the checker flag then goes out. It's a win and a race win for Nicola Bettany. Radford 92, North Shropshire 15 from uh, Pennine 89. Donna Howells in C60 and Zara Sutton-Smith in SR171. Right, OK, so uh, just a very, very quick announcement. We need the drivers of Ladies Class 2, Heat 1. That is originally, apparently it wasn't a rerun, but now apparently it is. So we need the drivers of Missy Mosley, Chloe Ankers, Valerie Harrington, Jenny Boone, Linda Thomas and Pamela Hogan. So if you're in spectator land, then we need you back down to the pits ASAP, if not sooner. So uh, the drivers in Heat 1, Race 1, Ladies Class 2, we need you back to uh, the pits because uh, that is going to be a rerun. So, uh, away from the line we go. Not quite sure what uh, this is. It might be the second heat of the uh, men's class one. So, uh, Steve uh, does uh, swiftly get himself into commentary. It is uh, men's class one, but uh, thankfully, we're on red flags. So, uh, while well, he gets himself sorted, and uh, they all go back to the pits. Then uh, gives him a chance to draw breath and uh, to take you through race two of men's class, uh, men's class one. It's over to Steve Langley. Thank you very much then, Tim. So, sorry, catching me out on that. Uh, right, so yeah, we've come full circle and we're starting the second round of qualifying with, as Tim quite rightly says, the men's class one. So race one goes back into the rerun lane and uh, race two will uh, hopefully make its way out. Race two should be Kyle McDonough in Evesham 177, Tom Herbert in Stroud 31, Ian Ullathorne in Scunthorpe 25, Rich Parks in WS 20, Paul Boland in Mallow 196, Hugh Davis in Tyvee 9, Dave Owen in North Wales 97, and Katie Hobbs in South Somerset 101. But I'm wondering whether they're bringing them out in a slightly different order. Uh, at the moment because that's not the race that's out there so race that's out there is actually race three so uh, there we go I think there may be a problem with race one but 
We'll pick these up. Scarborough 49 then. It is Jim Bob Johnson that brings the field past us in, as I say, what is race three. But coming through on the inside then, Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48. Lee, one of the heat winners last time round. So he's looking to end the day on two wins out of two in the Cambridge 48 machine as uh, it's all a little bit out of shape on that bottom bend. But Lee Deegan comes through as the race leader. Scarborough 49 then. Jim Bob Johnson in that second place slot. On the inside is Chris Dyer in the Evesham 28 machine. Tom Hawthorne comes next in Radford 76. He runs in that fourth place slot. A little bit of a gap then back to James Slater in PAC 35. But here comes your race leader. That race leader is still Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48, Scarborough 49. Then Evesham 28, Radford 76 racing together. PAC 35 and 3F. Carl Dyke Whitfield parked up in the middle. And problems also then going round very slowly. Luke Fairhurst in ARC 304. But your race leader coming round then, it is Lee Deegan in Cambridge 48. Takes the checker flag, his second win of the day. Jim Bob Johnson second in Scarborough 49, Eastern 28. Tom Hawthorne then in Radford 76, PAC 35. Then the 3F car of Dave Chapman is the next one across the line. Cardike Whitfield, unfortunately, I think is going to be a non-finisher in Cambridge 295. And Luke Fairhurst is going to uh, limp what is obviously a poorly ARC 304 across the line and pick up what could be valuable points. As I say, class one, we are looking for the top 16 to go through to uh, semi-finals. So, uh, yeah, all might not be lost. TBR Race Engines are our series sponsor and uh, Albany Fabrications uh, meeting sponsor here at North Shropshire. So uh, we're just going to uh, wait. I'm just wondering whether it's going to be race four coming out, but uh, we're just going to have to identify them, I think, as they uh, come off the line almost. So we've got to uh, get the Carl Dyke Whitfield car then, Cambridge 295 in the middle out of harm's way and as soon as that has been sorted then we shall look for track clearance and we've got yellow flags flying i think on all of the barriers so uh, yeah looking uh, for the wind-up signal and we're away racing then let's see if we can identify any one of the cars as they get away from that line it is race four then that's uh, come away because we can see the Jonathan Jones TA4 car that's going to bring the field past us for the first time tucked into that second place slot is the Swansea 10 that's Chandon Watkins on the outside trying to make a move Toby Chamberlain in 21F Robert Hughes riding there as well in North Wales 49 and we get red flags with problems on the start line turn so uh, class one proving a little bit problematical today uh, we had some issues last time round So uh, we will uh, await a word from the marshals on that one, uh, but they will go back to the rerun lane. That much I can guarantee you. So we are hearing that uh, Luke Fairhurst, I think, picked up a green flag in race three, which uh, is a little bit unique at the moment because it's the only one that only one that's uh, got completed and I think we're also hearing unfortunately that Robert Hughes in North Wales 49 is going to be excluded from the rerun of race four so on the line it's either race five or race one I think so uh, let's see as I say when they come away but once again we're looking around yellow flags are all flying and we're up and running and going down that far side, we can see the SR1 car of Wayne Price. So that gives us uh, the idea that uh, it is uh, race five that's off the line. And as they come round then, it is the North Wales 52 car that's the first one past us. That's uh, Ryan Powell at the wheel of uh, North Wales 52. Then Wayne Price tucks into that second place in the SR1 machine. Daffy Jones runs third in Tyvee 18. That's the one, two, and three. So coming round then, North Wales 52, SR1. 
Tyvee 18, Tyvee 98 and North Wales 92. So it's Reese Phillips and Carl Lloyd at the wheel of those. But going down that far side then, Carl Lloyd it is that uh, looking to battle through that field. But your race leader as they come round, Ryan Powell in North Wales 52 takes the last lap flag as the race leader from Wayne Price in SR1 Tyvee 18 10F then raced on the inside of North Wales 92 that's Riley Diaper at the wheel of the 10F machine but down that far side and Ryan Powell in North Wales 52 got quite a convincing lead at the moment has a third in heat one so follow that up with a victory will do nicely thank you very much second place then is the SR1 Tyvee 18 comes across in third 10F TA98, then uh, Reese Phillips finishes uh, just ahead of the uh, North Wales car. So, race five successfully completed. So, once again, uh, can't quite see because of air positioning uh, and the marshals' barriers what race is on the line. So, we're going to have to pick them up as they come off. But, oh, I'm sneaky feeling it might be uh, race six. So eight races in this second round of qualifying of the uh, men's class ones. So just waiting once again for, uh, we have a problem with the car over there on the far side. I haven't picked up, so just looking for uh, that one to be uh, moved. So yeah, I wonder where he was. Michael Eikin in North Shropshire, 192. Unfortunately, I think uh, got as far as halfway down the first straight in that heat of the Class 1s because I don't remember him coming past us here in the uh, finish line. So uh, not been his day, I think it's fair to say, in North Shropshire, 192. So... Uh, but excluded from the first run, non-finisher in the second run. When he looks out, he looks out, I think, basically. So this is race six. And one of the heat winners from last time round, uh, Josh Fowler out in this one in North Shropshire 2. But it's the Evesham 82 that's another race winner was uh, Tom Powell. So uh, one of those is going to have to give this time round. It doesn't look like it's going to be the Evesham man in the early stages. Running in that second place is Jamie Hussey in Scarborough 2-2-3. Jamie had a third last time round, so he's currently looking to improve one on that. But Evesham 82 it is. Jamie Hussey runs second. On the inside then is the Cum Deco, another heat winner. That's Craig Bagley in C1. So this one has thrown together some of the strong contenders from the first round of qualifying. As I say, all randomly computer drawn, but uh, Tom Powell looks in good form this weekend in Evesham 82 as he comes out of that bend with one lap to go then for Evesham 82. Scarborough 2 2 1 uh, in that second place slot as they go uh, down that far side, but your race leader pulling away without a doubt. It is uh, Tom Powell in Evesham 82. Come around for the final time, his second win of the weekend. Scarborough 2 2 1 then in that second place slot. Craig Bagley runs third, Josh Fowler in fourth, TA 211, then 223. The Tyvee 23 car of Gwyn Reeves is the next one across the line and indeed does complete race six. Race seven is going to be Reese Edwards in North Wales 44, Dylan Tyrrell in North Wales 6, Damien Goodman in Stroud 66, Ollie Hall in Scunthorpe 1, Charlie Williams in Cambridge 42, William Henry in SR19, Alex Hill in St Neots 164. So that is the uh, race lineup for race seven. I say the penultimate race in theory of these class ones as they get away from the line. Then it is Alex Hill in St Neots 164 out of trap one. That is the uh, first one to show Ollie Hall in Scunthorpe one. Then your series leader at the start of this weekend had a second in the first round of qualifying. So he'll certainly uh, be looking to finish nearer the front than the back and uh, get towards a place in that semi-final and the chance of adding more points in the final to his overall British Autograph Series total. Alex Hill had a second in run one, currently leading this one in St Neots 164 as he comes round 
once again as that race leader took now into second place is the Shropshire and Talford car that's uh, William Henry in SR19 in that uh, second place slot as they go down that far side Ollie Hall still runs third in Scunthorpe 1 then a little bit of a gap back to Charlie Williams in Cambridge 42 but your race leader it is St Neots 164 but under strong challenge from Will Henry in SR19 Scunthorpe 1 Cambridge 42 then comes the two North Wales cars racing together Reese Edwards in 44 just ahead of Dylan Tyrrell in North Wales 6 is down that far side goes St Neots 164 Alex Hill he's going to have a second and a first and that's a good day out of British Autograph Series round as he takes the win Will Henry in second Ollie Hall Scunthorpe 1 in third for my money North Wales 44 just then ahead of Cambridge 42 and Dylan Tyrrell in North Wales 6 and completing it all Damien Goodman in the Stroud 66 machine that was race seven race eight then will be Jack Firth in Spalding 86 Harry Parker in Ludlow 85 Phil Owen in North Shropshire 8 Connor Griffiths in Tyvee 16 Jordan Robinson in Spalding 26 Harry Witham in Spalding 14 Tristan Daniels in Athelstan 2 so that's the uh, expected lineup for race eight once again, just looking for uh, track clearance. And quads getting themselves back there into the middle of the track. The tractor makes its way off. And I think we've got yellow flags on all of the corners. So uh, we should be ready to go with more Class 1 racing. And it is uh, Tristan Daniels in Athelstan 2 on the inside that is just about the first one to show. But Tyvee 16, then Connor Griffiths, another heat winner from last time round. He uh, wants to double up in this without a doubt as he comes past us for the first time. It is Tyvee 16, just on the inside though, is the uh, Athelstan 2 machine of Tristan Daniels. But getting the better of that start line turn. Connor Griffiths, it is going down that far side. Jack Firth then, Spalding 86, second last time, but runs in second again this time round as he uh, looks to come through on the inside. But uh, Connor Griffiths having none of it. TA 16, it is. Spalding 26, North Shropshire 8, then Phil Owen in that third place slot. Jack Firth now runs fourth in Spalding 86, dropping back down the field a little bit. Tristan Daniels in the Athelstan 2 machine. Harry Parker, the one with it all to do in Ludlow 85 but the one they're chasing is Connor Griffiths in TA 16 onto his last lap he goes from Spalding 26 North Shropshire 8 Athelstan 2 Spalding 86 the Spalding 14 car that's Harry Witham at the wheel of that one all of the cars onto their final circuit but it's going to be the second win of the weekend maximum points at the end of day one for Connor Griffiths in TA 16 as he comes round for the final time takes the checker flag Second place will go to Spalding uh, 26, Jordan Robinson, North Shropshire 8. Then comes the Spalding uh, 86 car of uh, Jack Firth. And the rest of them coming across the line to complete that heat of the men's class ones. And looking to see what's coming up to the line, whether we are going to be moving on to uh, class threes. We do have some... Uh, Class 1 reruns, of course, still to come. It uh, looks like we're going to have uh, a good douse of water and a bit of track work there on the uh, start line area. So, as I say, can't quite see from where I am. And I'm all on my own again as well. So, uh, can't quite see from where I am what's uh, going to be coming up to the line. As soon as we can identify it, obviously, we will uh, let you know. So, the uh, water tanker driver's uh, doing a uh, really good job, as indeed as uh, everybody in these conditions. Marshall's uh, been out there since about half eight this morning. With a, I know they've got a little bit of shade, but it is emphasis on the little bit of shade. So uh, fair play and big thank you to them for all of uh, their efforts and everybody else that's working uh, so hard behind the scenes, the holding lanes, pitch control. Ah, those of you that put a race meeting on will know how many people there are working uh, very hard behind the scenes to keep this meeting 
flowing. So uh, fair play to all of you. So a good dose of water going on. Ah, there we go. Could have done with somebody coming up with a word for... We came up with tandem for two, didn't know what the word is for three. We need to know even more now because we've got three water carts out there. So uh, there we go. North Shropshire can do no more. I think it's absolutely fair to say it's uh, very, very rare that you will see three water carts out there. So just to uh, minimise the downtime that uh, we have got through the very, very necessary watering of the track. So uh, trying to look up to the line and uh, now I've got sort of like one of the official vehicles in eyesight but I think that official vehicle is delivering water to the marshals barrier so absolutely more important than they do that than me just being able to see the start line but as I say as soon as it looks like sort of like class is it class three machinery that's up there I think it's going to be moving on to class three or is there some class two because I thought I saw some class two cars have, have we got a class two rerun then Tim to come so we've got Tim on binocular duty. Just trying to see what is up there. So there's abs absolutely no excuse for getting it wrong. If you're looking at the start line and looking at the start line through binoculars, we need to get this one right, Mr. Jones, as I'm sure we will between us. So, yeah, you grab a mic, get ready for class two. I'll grab a mic, get ready for class three, and we'll pretend we know what we're doing. Sounds a plan to me, Steve, but uh, I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but uh, there we go. Right, Boy News on, EyeSight uh, tuned in, and uh, I think with a fair bit of uh, guesstimation and, uh, I want to say certainty, but uh, the, uh, it's more probable than not, we'll say. It's uh, the rerun of uh, Heat 1 Ladies Class 2. So I think we're going without uh, Rachel Falls in Pennine uh, 84, but... Uh, we shall see who else is excluded as uh, they uh, make their way uh, on to the line. We certainly can see uh, Missy, Missy Mosley's car in Radford 3. She starts at about lane 7 as the rest of the men leave the line. And it is indeed the uh, rerun of Ladies Class 1. So uh, PAC 91 it is. Hannah Thomas, or Linda Thomas rather, that uh, leads into uh, the uh, first turn from uh, Missy Mosley in Radford uh, number three then uh, comes uh, Jenny Booten in Radford 80 and Valerie Hallington in Radford 205 so just down to uh, the four cars so uh, no uh, Rachel Falls, Chloe Ankers or uh, Pamela Hogan in this one but we have got uh, Linda Thomas in PAC 91 and she's uh, just starting to pull away in the uh, PAC 91 machine Radford 3 Oh, but Missy Mosley, then comes Jenny Booten in Radford 80 and Radford 205 are oh, Valerie Harrington then uh, rounds it all out. Challenge then going on for that second place slot with uh, Radford 80. Jenny Booten uh, alongside uh, Missy Mosley in the uh, Radford uh, 3 machine. But uh, no challenge from your race leader and uh, just ever so slightly extending her lead with one lap to go. PAC 91, Radford 80, Radford 3 and Radford 205. So all the ladies safely on to their final circuit as they go down that far side for the final time. Linda Thomas it is in PAC 91 that uh, goes uh, into the top part of the circuit for the final time. Check and flag, race win. PAC 91 then takes it from Jenny Booten in Radford 80. Missy Mosley in Radford 3 and Valerie Harrington will complete it all in Radford 205. Right, that it does complete all the ladies' class twos. So uh, next time we'll see them is uh, for their second round of qualifying. But we're going back to the programme and back to class one, back to Steve Langley. Thank you very much then, Tim. So uh, we're going to, as I say, we have got a few reruns. So we're going to wait with a little bit of bated breath to see what's going to uh, come out here and what we can identify as they go uh, down that far side. This, I think, is the elusive race one that caught me out last time round. As they come round, then, it is the North Shropshire 159 is the early race leader, Zach Bowers, from uh, Jake Hemsley in IK611. 
in that uh, second place slot, but everything to play for down that far side. Cross also coming through the field is the North Wales 397 car, Andrew Owen at the wheel of that one and it's the North Wales car that just shows as the race leader as they come out of that bottom bend and past us two laps down two laps to go but IK611 sneaks back through on the inside the Yorks does 100 car of Phil McMahon also we're going to have plenty to say in the closing stages of this race but Andrew Owen it is in North Wales 397 that uh, goes through Kieran McKenzie uh, out, right out of luck in run one having a much better run this time round but he's in fifth place even though he's right on the pace he is at the back of this leading group North Wales 397 IK 611 North Shropshire 159 YD 100 in the Cambridge car a little bit of a gap then back to the Invicta Kent 430 car Dan Jones at the wheel of that one and uh, completing it all is Timothy Gardner in PAC 209 but it's going to be North Wales 397 that's going to I think come round and take this one, Andrew Owen at the wheel of that one. Jake Hemsley on the inside, for my money, just from the Bowers machine, 159. Then comes McKenzie in 403. Yorksdale's 100, IK 430. Uh, Mitchell Collins, it is in PHD 48. Coming across the line as well. So, uh, two, as we had last time, two reruns, I think, out of the uh, eight runs of Class 1. So, uh, we will see those, hopefully before too long don't forget drivers then once you've completed your second round of qualifying you need to sign on for racing tomorrow signing on is the same place as it was before that's the white tent down here by the finish line right we're going back to one of our reruns this looks like it could be race four away from the line as we can see Jonathan Jones there in the Tyvee 4 car on the outside. I think Ollie Tilson's there in St Neots, 196. That's the one and the two as they come past us and into that start line turn already. Tucked into that third place slot is the Swansea 10 machine. That's Chandon Watkins at the wheel of that one. Ryan Kemp in North Wales, 147. Then comes Toby Chamberlain in 21F. But your race leader, it is Jonathan Jones in Tyvee 4 just from St Neots, 196, 110, 147. 21F and then just at the back of the pack at the moment Ryan Morehouse in North Shropshire 172 but down that far side Jonathan Jones under very strong challenge as he has been all race from Ollie Tilson in St Neots 196 this one could go all the way to the flag and they've got one lap to go to sort it out bit of a gap then back to Chandon Watkins in 2010 still racing just ahead of the North Wales 147 machine and then a gap back to Toby Chamberlain in 21F. All cars onto their last lap. So it's Jonathan Jones against Ollie Tilson down that far side. Tyvee Four has just got to hold on for the last quarter of a lap. And I think he's going to do it as they come across the line. It is just Tyvee Four from Ollie Tilson. Certainly it's 196, Swansea 10, North Wales 147. Then comes the 21F car of Toby Chamberlain. And completing it all, Ryan Morehouse in North Shropshire 172. So we've just got race two uh, outstanding on the uh, rerun list. So uh, not quite sure when that's going because that looks like single seaters up there on the line. So I think we've got a class eight ladies rerun. And in that case, it's back over to Liam. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. So uh, a rerun then of race two of your ladies class eights where Ellie Lockwood unfortunately took a tumble. So hopefully we can have uh, more success this time as we get away from the line. Alice Bevins it is, that's quick out of the gate, but Beth Tompkinson's going with her and she's up the inside and she's made it work in Scuddy 51. So Tonky it is, that leads them round into that Stargate turn and down the far side for the first time. 51 from number two, Lindsay Weir runs third in Breed Nail number one. Some uh, steam coming out of the back of Scuddy 71 then for Jody Glover as uh, she runs in fourth, Sharon Barker fifth in Evesham 25. She's the one with all the work to do at the tail end of the field, but Beth Tompkinson it is. That leads them round. Alice Bevins will not give up, though. If there's one thing we know about the Bevins family is that they're serious competitive racers, and second doesn't mean a lot to them as she uh, looks to make a move but doesn't quite make it work. She's dropping back, if anything, as uh, Beth Tompkinson it is. That just motors on onto her final circuit and down the far side. Problems for Jody Glover. We did see steam coming out of the back and it's obviously done no good as Scunny 71 slows it right down so Scunthorpe at the back but Scunthorpe at the front it's 51 Beth Tompkinson takes the win 
Uh, she uh, fist pumps across the line. Alice Bevins takes second. Lindsay Weir takes third in breed nail number one. Sharon Barker managed to gain a place up into fourth as uh, she takes 28 points in Evesham at 25. But unfortunately, that did come at the uh, cost of Jodie Glover in Scunthorpe 71, who uh, picked up fairly uh, mid-race problems after uh, seeing some steam and some smoke coming out of the back of the car. It did unfortunately mean that she has to just limp round, but she does come around and take fifth place points. So what's that, 21 to add on to her bass tally? And of course, as I said, not just racing for points this weekend, it does all count over the five rounds of the bass. And I'll tell you what, 21 points could make a very big difference at the end of the season. So that concludes then ladies class eight. Beresford Chassis and Components, your series sponsor, and a very big thank you to D&D Transport for their sponsorship over the weekend. That is me done until the uh, class eight men come out a little bit later on. So uh, to see them a little bit later on, we're gonna require clean racing and good racing from the rest of the men that we've got. And uh, we've got men's class ones on the line. Hopefully, they're gonna provide that clean racing. So uh, I'm hoping they do. Someone who's hoping they do even more so is Steve Langley, because it's over to him to take you through them. Thank you very much then, Liam. So yeah, indeed, they've got a second opportunity to do exactly that, because this is a rerun of race two. Kyle McDonough in Evesham 177, Tom Herbert in Stroud 31, Ian Ullathorne in Scunthorpe 25, Rich Parks in WS20, Paul Boland in Mallow 196, Hugh Davis in Tyvee 9, Dave Owen in North Wales 97, and Katie Hobbs in South Somerset 101. They are the cars that we're expecting. Uh, Tom Herbert, a heat winner last time round in Stroud 31. Ian Ullathorne was a heat winner in Scunthorpe 25, so absolutely everything to play for in this one. So once again, we are already up and running and the North Wales 397 showing uh, to the fore in the early stages. So North Wales 97, South Somerset 101, Katie Hobbs having a much better run this time round, but it is the 97 machine of Dave Owen that leads down that far side, Ian Ullathorne, working his way through the field. He's worked his way up into that second place position in Scunthorpe 25. Evesham 177, Carl McDonough currently at the back of the field. Your race leader though, 97 it is, 25, 101. On the outside then, WS20, Rich Parks, just racing on his inside, and neck and neck is Paul Boland in the Mallow 196. So everything to play for between those cars and Kyle McDonough, the one with it all to do in Evesham 177. But North Wales 97, Dave Owen, it is, that takes that last lap flag as the race leader from Ian Ullathorne in Scunthorpe 25, WS20 and South Somerset 101. So the two Southern League cars there having a good battle. Rich Parks just getting the better of Katie Hobbs as they go uh, down that far side. So race leader is Dave Owen in North Wales 97, Ian Ullathorne in Scunthorpe 25. Third place is WS20, Mallow 196, South Somerset 101, and Evesham 177, Kyle McDonough. So that does complete the second round of qualifying for the men's class ones. As I say, don't forget, once you've completed your second run today, please go and sign on straight away at the signing on tent down here by the uh, finish line same place as you signed on either last night or first thing this morning there is no signing on just to remind you if you haven't raced at a buzz round before there is no signing on on the sunday morning for the uh, british autograph series heat permutations are calculated on the saturday night so uh, you need to make sure if you want to be included in that heat permutation you've got to be signed on so we will delete anybody that hasn't signed on when we work out those heats and they don't get reworked so there we go right men's class three it is uh, coming your way ram developments are our uh, british autograph series associate sponsor elite transmissions uh, meeting sponsor big big thank you to both of those five races so we have five heat winners from the first time round they are Russ Tinker in York 4 Phil Holloway in Evesham 34 Ryan Power in Yorksdale's 98 Jamie Lee in North Wales 10 and Martin Gould in North Shropshire 343 
Well, we're going to be seeing one of those uh, this time out because the first name on my sheet for race one is Phil Holloway in Eastham at 34. He's joined by Trevor Cusack in Cork number 25, Mick Sumners in Radford 169, Gary Wickham in IK 13, John Price in Penhow 119, Adrian Davis, who is actually the uh, Associate Series sponsor because he is the man behind Ram Developments in Ty V1, Callum Allenson should be there in Yorkshire's 34, and Jeff Gibbs in Hereford 1 completes a very competitive, they're all competitive though, aren't they, at British Autograph Series round, completes a very competitive lineup for race one. Second round of qualifying of the men's class threes. They're going to be greeted with uh, a freshly watered track, as indeed, to be fair, are most races now, as the sun does uh, really start to uh, beat down a little bit uh, in this uh, late afternoon, but probably the strongest it's been all day out there. So we'll see what the Class 3 drivers make of it as they get away from the line. And it is the uh, Yorkshire Dales car of Callum Allenson in 34, one of the first ones to show. Phil Holloway then on the outside in Eastern 34. Mick Summers took through on the inside in Radford 169. That is the uh, one, two, three as they come past us for the first time with then back four in a row. Jeff Gibbs in Hereford 1, just racing on the inside of Trevor Cusack in CK25. Mick Summers looks to challenge for the lead as they go down that far side. Problems for Phil Holloway in Evesham at 34 on that start, or going into that start line turn. So now he finds himself at the back of the pack as the uh, Yorkshire Dales machine comes round. YD34 it is, then uh, Mick Summers in Radford at 169 in that uh, second place slot. So Mick having a much better run. This time running in that uh, third place slot is Gary Wickham in Invicta Kent 13. Problems then. Oh no, we got red flags out there. So um, I'm sort of here on my own. So uh, trying to listen to the radio, but the problem is the microphone picks up the radio. So um, it's a bit difficult without you getting everything. And believe me, you wouldn't want to listen to everything that comes over the radio. So uh, we might have to just pick that one up as they come out next time round. So uh, they make their way off the track, not wishing to cast aspersions on this or anything in any shape or form, but YD34 has got a bit of a crumpy bonnet, but uh, we will uh, see, and the marshals will absolutely sort anything out that they need to. So what we can tell you with a degree of certainty, though, is that we are going to be moving on to race two, which will bring out Richard Northway in Scunthorpe 306, Neil Corbett in Evesham 56, Ocean Hughes in TA22, Rich Lee in Scunthorpe 700, Cash Yardley in Sturton 96, Warren Beatty in North Wales 40, Adam Saint in Cambridge 1, and Dean Guy in Radford 70. So those are the cars that hopefully are going to be uh, out in this one. So no heat winners from the first round in qualifying, but some very competitive cars and every opportunity for uh, people to add a decent set of points towards uh, making their way into the top eight at the end of round three. And that's what the aim of the game is. Right, we've got a vehicle coming out on track which looks suspiciously like a track repair vehicle. Uh, so I presume that's actually connected with the incident down there, the Adrian Davis machine in Tyv1. So I don't know whether we have picked up some fence damage over there as well. So the marshals and everybody in attendance, and they will certainly uh, sort out whatever is necessary over there on the far side of the track from where we are over here in a uh, getting warm commentary position but I'm sure you all are actually out there so once again just to remind you just keep in the shade and just uh, look after yourselves but now good news whilst I'm sure they're very nice people in the track repair vehicle it's excellent that we haven't seen you and you're driving straight back off again so that's good so uh fence doing its job and uh, holding up over there on the far side and uh, just uh, sort of oh, the uh, Eastern 34 car also involved over there as I say uh, haven't got radio communication at the moment so uh, we'll uh, pick it up unfortunately uh, when it comes back out next time round and we'll see who's missing is the long and short, but uh, the Eastern 34 car going off on the uh, front of the teleporter, and uh, also looks like the Tyvee 1 car may need something uh, very similar 
on that. So uh, don't forget round four of the uh, British Autograph Series in August will uh, see us heading down to uh, Gossington Bridge, home, of course, of Stroud. We've been there for uh, a couple of times for uh, British Autograph Series rounds. And, uh, yeah, always, always good racing. A bit of banked track down there at Gossington Bridge. So an extra dimension for the drivers to think about and does always provide some excellent close racing. And uh, when you get to round four of the British Autograph Series, it is getting towards the sharp end of everything in terms of points. Not many, but some titles can be decided on round four because uh, under the rules where sort of like basically you it's not your best four rounds that count, um, but it, it's your best 16 races, which can amount to the same thing, but doesn't have to. So you don't have to drop a whole round. You can, uh, well, the computer works it all out for you. You can drop poor races at individual meetings, but it does mean that it takes the series in most cases through to uh, being decided at round five. But in some circumstances, if somebody's actually had a storming performance over the first four rounds, then possibly can't be caught. So it may be some titles that are going to be decided at Gossington Bridge, but probably not many, but uh, well, it will be uh, definitely a need to get loads of points down there. So uh, once again, if you can't make it to Gossington Bridge and very, very strongly recommend and suggest that you do, then we will be streaming on Baz TV, we are, we are uh, streaming the whole of the uh, 2022 British Autograph Series uh, via YouTube and Baz TV, and uh, just uh, looking for uh, feedback and everything as to how it goes and uh, if that continues after this year. But certainly, we will be doing all five rounds of the uh, 2022 series. And I say a lot of uh, feedback is certainly uh, very, very positive at the moment. So we uh, take that on board. We had uh, somewhere in the region, I think, of 50,000 views of round two of the British Autograph series. So uh, we shall see. But here we go then. This is race two away from the line. And it is the Cambridge one car of Adam Saint that uh, comes back round towards or it did because coming through on the inside Rich Lee in Scunthorpe 700 he's a man on a mission this weekend he throws it into that top bend as indeed does the Cash Yardley in Sturton 96 problems for Warren Beatty in North Wales 40 as they go uh, down that far side Scunthorpe 70 it is that's the uh, race leader coming round that so Scunthorpe 700 even that's the race leader Rich Lee from uh, Neil Corbett getting right in the mix in Evesham 56 as he challenges through on the inside of Adam Saint in Cambridge 1. He now has Rich Lee in his sights as they go down that far side. That's the battle for the lead, SC700 Evesham 56. But I tell you what, don't discount the Cambridge 1 car at all as the last lap flag goes out. It is Rich Lee in 700. It is Evesham 56 though who's got the inside line advantage going to that start line turn. Adam Saint in Cambridge 1, they're looking to come through on the inside of the Evesham car. Scunthorpe 306, Richard Northway the one at the back of the pack at the moment, but down that far side, Rich Lee battles back, Scunthorpe 700 through on the inside, Neil Corbett now battles back, so change and change about, it is Corbett that takes it from Rich Lee in 700, certain 96, Adam Saint in Cambridge 1, then comes Dean Guy in Radford 70 and uh, Richard Northway completes it in uh, the 306 car. Warren Beatty, unfortunately, a non-finisher, as indeed was Ocean Hughes in TA22, came to a halt on that uh, top part there of the circuit. Right, race three brings out another heat winner last time round, Martin Gould in uh, North Shropshire 343. Bob Matthews, Good to see Bob back out there, but uh, didn't have the rub of the green, I think it's fair to say, first time round. So hopefully uh, he can do a bit better this time round. Also out there should be Lee Almond in North Wales 27. Another heat winner was Ryan Power in Yorkshire Dales 98. Leon Dorset picked up a second in North Shropshire 293. Jamie Lee, another heat winner in North Wales 10. Hey, this one's uh, shaping up a bit, isn't it? White Rose 71 is Steve Woodruff and Jody Faulkner in S. R6. So that's the lineup for race three, the middle race 
of the five heats of this second round of qualifying of the uh, men's class threes. So uh, three people looking for a uh, double up of two wins out of two. Two of them are going to be disappointed at least. But with the calibre of this, all three of them could be disappointed as they get away from the line there. So it is one of those first time race winners there. Ryan Power in 98. Powering right round the outside, but coming up through is Jamie Lee in North Wales 10. Leon Dorsey on the inside in North Shropshire 2, 93. Gould has got plenty to do at the minute in the North Shropshire 343 car as they go uh, down that far side. He runs in about fifth at this point as the North Wales machine of uh, Jamie Lee has taken up the running back round towards of power on the outside in 98 Leon Dorsey in 293 on the inside Lee Almond in North Wales 27 Martin Gould then comes Steve Woodruff in White Rose 71 then a bit of a gap back to Jody Faulkner in SR6 no Bob Matthews unfortunately in SR55 but just look at this scrap going on for the lead in this class 3 heat as they come past us it is Ryan Power from Jamie Lee from Leon Dorset as oh, they get sort of like all a little bit tangled Jamie Lee is the one that finishes up facing the wrong direction and we get red flags on that one so uh, once again we'll uh, we've got Mickey B now back in here listening to the radio so hopefully we can give you a bit of information on that with regards to uh, where we're at so again not looking at all to influence or preempt any marshal's decisions but uh, they had completed enough laps i think to take a race result if we need to but we'll uh, leave it to the marshals very much on that one well that's a shame because that was just a cracking class three heat and that's all it is is uh, like second round of qualifying heat and that would have done justice to the final at any bas at any major meeting at all would that one so we'll await information but when we have it we'll let you know but in the meantime race four should be assembling up there Vernon McKenzie in Cambridge 442 Vernon looked quick in run one in the Cambridge 442 machine picked up a second at the end of it but uh, yeah looking in good form Tony Goodsir in Scunthorpe 307 also picked up a second in run one Tom Hall in the St Neots 12 machine. Tom uh, not having, again, the rub of the green first time round in St Neots 12, but he's more than capable of being right there in the mix, as indeed is Rupert Lomax in North Wales 99. He could do with some points, as, as could Vince Fuchia in North Wales 3. Heat winner, Russ Tinker, is out in this one in York 4. Flying the local North Shropshire flag is Paul Evans, in North Shropshire 50 and last but by no means least Aaron McKenzie in Cambridge 401 those are the uh, eight cars that hopefully we have there on the line for race four of this second round of qualifying of the Ram Developments and Elite Racing Transmission sponsored men's class threes and once again as we say uh, like a lot of the heats they are going to be greeted with a freshly watered track so uh, but again once again the whole of the track being watered so uh, there can be no complaints from that point of view so there's uh, certainly been no uh, watering of either an inside or an outside line or anything like that it is uh, freshly watered for everybody so the drivers will be watching, I'm sure, and fully appreciating what uh, goes on over there. So uh, just got, I think, the last of the water carts is uh, doing around the outside of the last bend. And then once that's been successfully completed, I think it will be making its way off. I've got Mickey B complete with the radio and complete with a pen now as well so there we go so uh, the uh, decision is unfortunately on race three leon dorset in north shropshire 293 is going to be excluded from the results and uh, just checking i believe they've done enough laps yeah that's been confirmed so the result of that one is going to stand but unfortunately excluding leon dorset 
in North Shropshire, 2.93. So, uh, race three was good. Didn't end the way Leon Dorset would have wanted it to. It didn't end the way we wanted it to, because you never like to see anybody excluded. But, yeah, cracking race whilst it was out there. So, race four, you've got something to live up to. And I have a feeling you could well do that, looking at the lineup as we read it out to you. So, the teleporter just making its way into the middle of the track. And uh, hopefully to sit there for a long, long time and uh, not to be used. Don't mind you sitting there, teleporter, at all, as uh, the wind-up signal gets made ready for the Class 3. So here we go then, and from the outside, it is Vernon McKenzie in Cambridge 442. From the middle of the grid, though, Rupert Lomax in North Wales 99, Russ Tinker right in the mix, as always, in York 4. As they come round, though, it stays North Wales 99, and Cambridge 442, that's the one and the two. Russ Tinker in York 4 in that third place position. Then Aaron McKenty in Cambridge 401 looks to come through as well as they go down that far side though it is right round the outside Vernon McKenzie trying to make a move on Rupert Lomax and it's a tactic that's going to pay off I think it might you know 442 your race leader North Wales 99 but also looking to come right round the outside is Russ Tinker in North Wales 99 problems for Vernon McKenzie oh black flag for Cambridge 442 and we've got red flags on that so, oh, that is rotten luck on Vernon McKenzie. I can only assume it was for some start line infringement. Uh, but no, that's a shame. So, uh, yeah, I think it was a uh, start line problem. And on that basis, that's going to be uh, a rerun excluding Vernon McKenzie. And also, I think, excluding Vince Futia, who was... Uh, not running when the race was stopped. So that one goes to the rerun lane, and we try again with race five. So race five then, Pete Robinson in North Wales at 72, one of the top class three cars and drives the course on a national basis. Didn't pick any points up though first time round, so he needs a good run. Nigel Edwards in Tybee 11, Simon Farrer, Yorkshire's 24, Stephen Goodwin in North Shropshire 41, Keith Kelly in Mallow 247, Jed Power in Yorkshire's 99, and Viv Cole in Carmarthen 4. Those are the cars that we're expecting. A little bit of a reduced lineup, we've only got five of them 24, 99, 247, 11, and 4. So I think uh, Pete Robinson might have gone and broke North Wales 72, and we've also got no Stephen Goodwin in North Shropshire 41 but very much we have got Simon Farrer in Yorkdale's 24 as he comes round as the race leader or he does because coming through on his inside is Keith Kelly in the Mallow 247 machine so he now takes up the running from Simon Farrer Jed Power in Yorkdale's 99 also battling now for that uh, second place slot as they go down the far side oh there's North Shropshire 41 so we have got Stephen Goodwin but right at the back of the pack as the last lap flag goes out and goes out to Keith Kelly in Mallow 247 as he throws it into that start line turn for the final time. Yorkdale's 24 and 99 still having that super battle for second place as they go down that far side but there's no catching Keith Kelly second first time round first second time round problems then for the power machine I think it was as 247 comes across the line Yorkdale's 24 in second Tybee 11 in third Carmarthen 4 it is in fourth and all sorts of problems then for Jed Power in Yorkshire's 99. He comes to a halt on the uh, bottom side of the circuit as uh, Stephen Goodwin comes across the line in North Shropshire 41. So ah, there we go. Right, Simon Farrer in Yorkshire's 24, we're hearing, has picked up a black flag in that one so uh, let me go hot off the press Simon Farrer picks up a black flag gonna be excluded and I believe we are going to go back a lap to take a result on that class three so poof never fails to disappoint in terms of action sometimes disappoints individual drivers in terms of results and decisions but class three poof, there we go that's good and I'm sure that's very much going to continue with class fives because that's what's coming to the line and uh, taking his seat, ready to take you through it. So, loads of deep breaths, Mickey. It's over to you.
Yeah, thanks very much, Steve. We are off and racing with your men's class five, lorryinsurance.com, our series sponsor, PTS Caravan Transport Weekend sponsors. Jaber Smith then exits that turn two, leads them up that back straight. Blue's gone with him. It's Colin Chilvers, the man who had the touch with Shane Donnie, made himself look younger. Takes him out of three, though. Down a start gate turn. So it's Chilvers from uh, Jaber Smith as they bring it down into turn one again. Uh, can Chilvers pick up maximum points this time? Can uh, Jaber Smith come back at him? And he's trying his hardest. So Chilvers from Jaber Smith, from uh, Lodgy, from Brown, as they come through there as well. South Somerset, 36. That's Matt Thompson. He had a third in his first race, but their lies back front as we go down to Chilvers. Chilvers had a third. If he adds a first onto this, that'll be 91 points. But oh, has he had a little bit of a bump? Has that cost him? They're getting up close and personal. So here we go. Chilvers then from uh, Lodge, from Jaber Smith. Jaber Smith looks for the cut back there. Lodge goes with him, and that's come from 2 1 2. And he make it two wins out of two, Lodgy, or is he going to let Chilvers come through and take it? Brown has contact there. He spun himself out. Jaber Smith comes through. Oh, my life. I think it's Lodge from uh, Chilvers, from Jaber Smith. Then we go to Phil Olsen from the South Somerset 36, Matt Thompson. Kundi 31, Ian Jones across the line as well. Phil, uh, say, uh, PAC 22, Daryl Sheen and and uh, that uh, final one, Adam Brown, after spinning out. Wow, well, I'll tell you what, that was uh, an eventful race. And uh, we kick off our men's class fives, heat two, race one, with a completion and a win there for Colin Chilvers. Race two then brings out uh, Chris Tudgay, Wessex 15, had a win. Ian Thorndike also had a win. Thorndike out of lane one, Tudgay out of lane five. James Mason, Mark Ucker, Dan Godfrey, Liam Weona, Neil Jones and Barry Miles. There your runners and riders, bungee lifts. Uh, let's go racing then. And we've got a fly in there from uh, that uh, Thorndike uh, machine. Can he turn it in? He's got company around him and he exits it's turn two. Thorndike then leads the way from uh, that uh, Chris Tudgay machine. Then it's Godfrey. Then the PhD uh, 20 of Mark Ucker then. Ucker going out wide as he left it too much. He's got the grip though. He's going to hold on to that fourth place as they bring it down the opening straight. Slowing it down into turn one around the crown of the bend. Still that Thorndike machine. Ian Thorndike, IK22 then from uh, the second place. Now, oh, Godfrey's made it up there. Tudgay third. Then we go down to PhD uh, 20. Breeden Hill 11. James Mason up in the mix. He's into that fifth place then we drop back down to the Scumthorpe 94 Barry Miles and uh, the final place is that PAC uh, machine but round we pick up the last lap flag one lap to go on this one Ian Thorndike from uh, the Cambridge 10 Godfrey from uh, Tudgate from the PhD uh, 20 machine Mark Ucker Ucker still trying to find a way plus Tudgate he's gone for it he's got it Ucker up the inside there and Tudgate Tudgate gets forced through it drops back down into that uh, fourth place but check a flag Thorndike takes the win IK22 Cambridge 10 over the uh, line. Godfrey from uh, Tudgay, from Ucker, from uh, the Mason machine. Scunthorpe 94 across it. And the PAC 98, Liam Willina. So uh, well done there. Excellent stuff from there. And, uh, oh, Cambridge 10 uh, on a green flag. So Dan Godfrey going to get docked two places. But race uh, clear. And also looking up onto that uh, first race as well. Um, got a confirmation that Colin Chilvers, the man with the tash but shaved off to make himself look younger, takes the win. And it was Lodgy who got second place. So uh, race three then brings out another race uh, winner from the first heat. And it's Jason Saunders, Wessex 1. Brian Neal, PAC 16, had a second. And Jordan Bloor, York 44, also had a second. Uh, who else is in it? Robert Bethany, Jordan Powell, Yvonne Griffiths and John Wilde. They are your runners and riders. It is getting hotter and hotter as well as the racing. And Jordan Bloor's got a good start there as well. Also coming off there in that, that uh, Wessex one, Jason Saunders. Saunders then looking to cut back and uh, pop out in that first place. Jordan Bloor goes for it though. Bloor up the inside. York 44 from Jason Saunders. Then it's John Wild. PAC Neil is up there as well. Can he uh, do anything as he comes around? Brian Neil, PAC 16. Right on the outside. He's moved up from 
from fourth up into that third. He's going to take Saunders off on the outside as they bring in round turn one and two. Still leading in one. York 44. Shimon. It's a Jordan Powell. Jordan Bloor leading it from Jason Saunders from that to Brian Neal. PAC 16. There's your three. John Wall in the CY7 uh, having a look as well. He's in that fourth place. Ludlow 24. Jordan Powell in that fifth place. Then we uh, drop back down into Robert Bethany uh, machine as well. But last lap flag. One lap to go on this one. Jordan Bloor still from Jason Saunders. Then Brian Neal from John Wild from the Ludlow 24. Gloucester and District uh, 21. Also uh, tried his hardest. Robert Bethany in the Typhi 19. Uh, so Ethan Griffiths uh, back of the pack. But eyes back to the front. And it's going to be York 44. Jordan Bloor takes maximum points. Jason Saunders, Wessons 1, second. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Brian Neal and John Wild side by side. Ludlow uh, 24. Across there as well, Jordan Powell from uh, the uh, Robert Bethany machine in Gloucester and District 21 and Effion uh, Griffiths in Typhi 19. <laughs> Excellent, well done and a good win there for Jordan Bloor and uh, driving the uh, Les Grice uh, machine. Les still recovering from uh, his pole dancing expedition where he uh, unfortunately slipped down the pole and cracked his ankle. So uh, I think he's going to be uh, making a comeback and uh, fingers crossed in a couple of weeks time we may see him down at uh, Yorkshire Dales. So a bit of water going down on the track and quite rightly so as well. Um, I'm sat in here and it is uh, the hottest part of the day for sure as it's absolutely roasting in here no real air movement at all but uh, we moan when it's hot we moan when it's cold we moan when it's wet um, sound like my missus then moaning but uh, there we are that's going to race four while we've got a time and take you through no winners from uh, the first heats in this one but we've got two lads that got seconds and that's Tom Ellis in Stroud and District 33 he's going to come out of lane one alongside him is Colin Hadley in the Seven Valley 247. He's coming out of lane two. Then we go, ding pong, North Shropshire one, John Gaffney out of lane three. He had a third in his first run. And then we go to Lee Cox, Forrester Dean two, lane four. Riley Diaper in the Wessex 255 out of lane five. Baxter Pargetter, Nottingham 45. Well, Baxter picked up a black in his first heat. So he'll be desperate to improve on that. He's coming out of lane six. And uh, Lawrence Blaber in the uh, lane seven in the Athelstan 13. So uh, they're looking around here and going, oh, my goodness gracious me. We've got three of uh, the uh, water bowsers out there. So you're once, twice, three times a wet in the track. And uh, we love it, really. So uh, I'm not sure if the uh, class five boys will uh, love it with all this water going down. But to be fair, um, I think the, uh, the track team have done a sterling job. I mean, a proper sterling job, keeping on top of the watering, trying to keep the grading going. And yes, you know, uh, you can't buy back that time, but it's essential that uh, we do get that water down on the track and we can uh, make sure that, uh, one, the drivers can drive in safe conditions so there's not a heavy dust flicking up. Um, there's another positive as well, is that it stops the dust flicking across into you good spectators. Definitely over on commentary side, um, it does uh, where the wind is a light, light, very light, light breeze. Um, it comes over in this direction. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you're all going to have a good shower tonight. Well, hopefully you are, otherwise you're going to smell tomorrow. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, you'll be getting the dust out your ears for a little bit. Not, not as bad as what we have seen uh, uh, over the season so far. We have been reasonably well blessed, by the way. You know, we always say our prayers leading up to a British round or a, a UK round or even a club meeting. Please, Lord, bless me with good weather. We don't want none of that wet stuff coming out of the sky. And sometimes your prayers are answered, and sometimes you're just unlucky. But uh, I, I think, I'm trying to think how many, how many seasons ago. We had one season where pretty much the whole, probably first few months, was decimated by cancellations through bad weather. Um, I mean, I've been at a, a race meeting at Scarborough in April where we've had snow, hailstones. Um, and that's just a normal normal day, really. Um, but it saves uh, going down to the seaside to fill the bowser up. And, uh, yeah. 
can I say that's a normal day in Scarborough and it's, no, from my experience so. <laughs> it is yeah and, and funny enough I did get into trouble once at a men's nationals for uh, for sort of one of my comments I may tell you about that a little bit later in the meeting at some point but uh, um, uh, it, it was it was it was meant in uh, in in a good way, but I always chuckle about it still to this day. So, and that was back in 2010. So, uh, good grief, 12 years ago. Um, so, uh, come on then, are we uh, ready ready to go? Yeah, the Bowsers have gone back in. We look to that first Marshall post, and we pirouette round, point to the sky. Bungee lifts. Uh, let's go racing, and no surprise, Ellis and Hadley go at it. They've had uh, the two seconds in their first run. They want to add 55 points, but only one of them can get it. Oh, we've got a donut. We've got a spinner, but it's Colin Hadley from uh, John Gaffney who uh, takes up the first two uh, places, backs the bar getter, goes for a wider line, keeps the power down there, exit that start uh, gate turn into that third place. Lee Cox in Forrester Dean 2. Oh, it's Tom Ellis. Oh, Tom Ellis was the one that spun out, and he's now got serious work to do from the back. Colin Adley says happy days. I'm leaving it. Gaffney there goes through. Packs the bar getter into uh, third place still as they go around. Cox is going there. Lawrence Blyber in the Atherson 13 as well as they bring it uh, right back down into that first place. Riley Diver there in the Wessex 255. Ellis has given up the ghost I think on this and realise he's not going to win big points on it. But last lap flag and oh god John Gaffney. Bing bong. He's getting closer. Gaffney looks for the cut back up the inside. North Shropshire one a little bit of contact there with Hadley but they keep on running there backs the park getter smells blood as he goes into turn one can he go up the inside there at John Gaffney can John Gaffney close the door it's going to be a chase for the line who's got it Gaffney's got it North Shropshire one from backs the park getter 1945 Connie Lattis 747 Lee Cox uh, Lawrence Blabber uh, Wessex 255 Riley Diaper and then coming round after that spin out Tom Ellis Stroud and District 33 so uh, that's mixed the points up a little bit, Mickey. Yeah, that's what I thought. LorryInsurance.com, our serious sponsor, PTS Caravan Transport, our weekend sponsor. All right, race five then. <clears throat> I'm not mentioning anything. That's all I'm saying. Um, Steve's looking at me with uh, envious eyes at the moment, but let's try it. We've got Ryan Jones. Cum D3 was uh, at a second coming out of lane four. Charlie Holloway, Patrick Daly, Chris Winnell at a third coming out of lane seven. Penny Smith and the Italian Stallion, Typhi 451, Lewis Richards. Here we go then. We are off and running. And it is that cum D3. Ryan Jones says, right, I want to go for uh, me points. Charlie Holloway, Evesham 9, looking to cut back up the inside. And Holloway's going for it as well. He picks up a good win down in fast three. He's looking to do another one there. Jones goes round on the outside there. Chris Winnell, 3 0 66, looks for the cut back up the inside of Holloway. Moves up to that second place, down into that turn one they go. Slowing it down, cum D3. Ryan Jones, uh, round he goes. And oh, a bit of understeer there. That means that Holloway. He's going to come back up in the second place, or is he? No, he's not. Winnell's up in that close. Then we go the Italian staff and 4 5 1 in 4. Breed Nil uh, 44. That's Adrian Hathaway. Then we go down to Penny Smith in the Gloucester and District uh, 1 1 9. So, uh, where are we going to go with this one? It's going to be last lap flag. One more lap to go on this one. And it's still uh, leading the way. It's that Jones machine from Winnell, from Holloway, from uh, Lewis Richards in that Typhi 4 5 1. Glosser and District 19, that is a Penny Smith machine. And the West Waterford 188, Patrick Daly. Oh, we've got one parked up, turning into uh, turn one and two, but check a flag at the ready. And it goes to Jones takes it from Winnell, from Holloway, from the Italian stallion, Lewis Richards. Fifth is going to go to Penny Smith in the Glosser and District 119. Six is West Waterford 188, Patrick Daly. And we need uh, recovery down onto uh, that uh, far side. And by process of elimination, it will be Adrian Hathaway in Breeden Hill 44. So uh, there we are, men's class fives. All five done and dusted. Got a big smile on my face like a Cheshire cat. Smug is the word you're looking for. <laughs> it's only, I've only learned from you because you were like that earlier. <laughs> you know, but you went yeah, through okay. two classes. Now, can I, do, can I do it with the sevens? 
Oh, well, that's fine. Try and find out. Here we go, then. This is Max Sport, our series sponsor, DM Design and Fabrication, our weekend sponsor. And it brings out a winner. It's Phil Barliman, Pennine uh, 23, coming out of lane six. He, he had a win in this first run. Jack Hoolihan, West Waterford's 358, had a second. Matt Manning had a third, coming out of grid eight. So uh, here we go. It's going to be a pretty even start as uh, I think the Hoolihan machine is looking to find a way through if he can as they try and sort themselves out. Where's Barliman? Barliman's in about fifth or sixth at the moment. But here we go then, it's Matt Manning from uh, Jake Roberts in that PhD 72. Jake didn't have the best of, I'm going to say best of runs, he was about fourth or fifth. But the youngest Class 7 national champion is back out in the sevens and he's plying his trade because he's going to come out of turn one and turn two and lead it up the um, opening the back straight there. Oh, Manning's cut back up the inside there. We go down to Mike Barrett there, York 12 going wide as well as they go through to West Water for 358. Jack Julian's trying to keep his nose in there as well. Barleyman looks to be trying to come back on the charge as he's in that uh, fifth place. Round they come, it's last lap flag and it's PhD 72. Jake Roberts for Manning's nearly putting the pressure on there as we go down Hoolihan then and then we go down to Barrett and then Barleyman comes through as well. Oh, Hoolihan's got it all out of shape and all wrong but let's go back to the top four cars. It's Roberts still leading that but Manning's going to look for the cutback. Can he come round through? And then Roberts closes the door and Roberts takes it from Manning, from Barleyman, from uh, that uh, Mike Barrett machine. The 7-Eleven, then Dunmo, Hoolihan, and the uh, North Shropshire 243, Wayne Farrington. So uh, brilliant stuff there from uh, the Super Saloons. Brilliant racing as well. And well done to Jake Roberts for uh, protecting his line and taking maximum points. Right, let's go to race two then. That brings out uh, Barry Ashmore, spooled in 5-1-4, had a second in his first run. Tom Page, Scunthorpe 19, had a third. Cameron Mills, surprisingly, is leading the bass, but only got a fourth in his first uh, run. And he's coming out of lane one. But uh, don't forget, the, the man who was closest to him in the bass points was... Uh, uh, Mr Holtby and he only got a fourth as well so it's status quo let's see how we get on and wow Cameron Mills has absolutely got a slingshot out of that uh, start line into turn one he goes and round and pushing round he's lifting up the front wheels there's a little bit of nudging and tapping going from behind but we go down to the border county it's a 26 machine as well and uh, 26 coming through of Darren Adams Adams there but under pressure as they uh, look uh, round up into that uh, oh no oh no 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 what was that I think there was a little bit of nudging going on coming out of turn two but they all keep running um, and slowing it all down so that means that uh, unfortunately uh, that one goes red and we go back to the rerun uh, lane so uh, managed to get six races under my belt without problem but then that, uh, that seventh race, so race two of the men's uh, class sevens, uh, was a problem. So we'll just listen out for, uh, for what the issue was. But I'm telling you, looking at this next race, here we go. Archie Bentley, Border County 7, out of lane 8, had a win. Andy Graney, Pennine 8, had a win. Coming out of lane 3, Gareth Roberts, Northwell 76, he had a second. Jake Lee, Scunthorpe 12, had a third. Ali Ashmore had a third. And Bill Bradford had a third. My life, this could be a final in itself. As uh, we wait for that all-important uh, track uh, clearance. Here we go then, we are off and running. And Ashmore had a good start, but he's being uh, swallowed up now as they uh, bring it round into uh, turn one. Graney looks to cut his nose in. Is Andy Graney going to bring him out of it in that pen iron eight? He is. Bonded by Archie Bentley. Then we go down into that Jake Lee Scunthorpe at 12. The dust flicking up on this drying track already. It's had uh, plenty of water down, but they're still not uh, getting anywhere. Boothy there, ARC 99, running in that uh, fourth place as they bring it uh, round again. Another lap under their belt. 
out, still Brainy leading it from Bentley, from Jake Lee, from Boot. Then it's Ashmore. Border County is at 15. Bill Bradford is uh, r- running down in sixth place at the moment. He's looking to try and get past Ashmore, but he can't find any uh, way past at the moment. But last lap flag, one more lap to go on this one. Who's still got it? It's Jake Lee now from Archie Bentley, from Anthony Boot, from Grainy, from Ashmore, from Bradford. Then the Northwell 76, Gareth Roberts. And look at this down there. Bentley's going for it. Border County is a seven. He's coming round the outside of Scunthorpe 12. Drake, Jake Lee, check and flag and ready. It's going to be Bentley. Two wins out of two from uh, Jake Lee. Anthony Booth third, Andy Grainy fourth, Bill Bradford fifth, uh, Matt Ashmore in uh, the sixth place. Northwell 76, Gareth Roberts finishing off those super saloons. I'll tell you what, for a young lad, he has taken a Class 7 absolutely brilliantly. Well done, Archie. 110 points. Well, I think that near enough books your place in the semi-final. Don't forget, top 16 are coming through on this one. Just a confirmation that uh, the previous down 120 from race 2 is being a black flagged. So he's out of this one. Right, race four, Andy Holtby, Paul Johnson with a win. Daniel uh, Johnson as well. Uh, what can Holtby do? Is he going to come back and try and storm this one? Is he going to go for the big points? Holtby then out of lane eight, takes him down into uh, that uh, turn one. There's a popping and a wheeling going on. Johnson's going with him. Johnson had a win earlier. Can he uh, get the grip down as there? So Holtby then from uh, Johnson, from that uh, turn. Scunthorpe 303 and the Dan Johnson. So we've got a couple of Johnsons there and they're chasing down the gold machine of Holby down into that uh, turn one they go a day on. And that uh, Graham Blackburn up in the fourth place. That's a better run, Graham, than where you were earlier this morning. So here we go. Holby then from Johnson, from Johnson, from Blackburn, Simon Hawthorne, then the Breeden Hill 106 machine of Mark Jenkins. And then uh, a little bit further back, it is the uh, Mark Jenkins. Uh, uh, PAC 47, J Rand uh, Lewis, but last lap flag. One more to go on this one. Andy Oldball's come from 61, leads it from come from 41. Paul Johnson's come from 383, and that is Dan Johnson. So the Johnson boys are doing hard, and it is that 383. Dan Johnson up the inside of Paul Johnson. Paul Johnson's are going to come back in. Coming round that turn two, it's the gold machine of Andy Oldby. He's back on form. He takes maximum points. Second's going to go to 383. Dan Johnson from Paul Johnson's come from 41. Graham Blackburn, he also knows 41. Simon Hawthorne, Red for 176. Breed Neil, 106. Mark Jenkins. And, uh, oh, we've got a curb crawler. He's uh, coming round the outside. And uh, there we go. He's just flicking his wheel this way and that. Jay Rand Lewis uh, finishing off uh, race four of the uh, men's super saloons. Right, here we go. This is race five. We've got Craig Bagley, Cum D2, had a win. Liam Evans, North Shropshire, had a win. And guess where they are? Side by side, out the middle of the pack in uh, lane three and four. Sam Gould, North Shropshire 34, coming out of lane two. He had a third as well, and Sam's doing all right on the uh, on the bass points as well. He's in the top ten, uh, but I'm sure he'll be looking to see if we can get um, as, as big a points as he can. But he's got the capability to uh, to win it as well as all of these guys have neil wright had a second in his first run scunthorpe 121 so what can he do neil coming out of lane one Gordy out of two evans out of three bagley out of four so who's coming out of lane six it's howard thomas in down 26 Lane seven is uh, Radford 140, the blue machine of Damien Harris. And then the uh, last place is lane eight, and it goes to Alan Green. And uh, that is your lineup for uh, these uh, seven. Seven in on the grid, seven names read out, and uh, anticipation's growing. Can uh, Craig Bagley uh, make it two out of two? Can Liam Evans make it two out of two? Well, they're two uh, top racers, aren't they? Um, and I think looking at the pace that they had in their first uh, run, um, yeah, they can definitely do it. Neil Wright, um, again, you know, he's, he's running uh, second 45 points from this morning. I tell you what, you know, when you're looking at semi-finals, top 16, um, you probably do need a, uh, you know, three seconds definitely gets you there. Two seconds and a third would get you there. Um, yeah, let's have a look at that. 72 and so two thirds and a second. 
117 points. Well, that's right on the cusp. I think last time, uh, uh, the uh, the last bass for the semi-finals for the seven, I think the, the last 16th place was on 116 points. So it just shows you how, uh, how competitive the Super Saloons are. Um, but anything can happen. We've seen that already. You know, that first run of Andy Holtby only getting a fourth. But fair play to him. He came from the back to get a fourth. So uh, he's now had um, 28 points on to his, uh, his 55. So 83 points. Um, yeah, uh, anywhere top three tomorrow. And, uh, and you book yourself a place in the semi-final. Then you've got it all to do again, haven't you? And... Uh, and then you've got to get your top four in your semi-final to get into the final. And then, fingers crossed, you've got the pace, the luck, the good fortune, the, the grid position. You know, have they watered it? Is there any bumps on the track that may just catch you out? All of these things come to test these drivers. But uh, they are all uh, little stars in their own rights, aren't they, on the way that they whiz around this track. So uh, race five then of the Max Sport Series sponsored Super Saloons, DM Design and Fabrication, our weekend sponsor. And the heat is already burning this water off the track as we go racing. And uh, down we go. And uh, it's a good start coming out of uh, that Neil Wright. Scunthorpe 121. He's slowed it down, though. Has he got a bit of understeer? He has got understeer. Can he get it back round? I think he's going to drop down into about fifth place. But it's Liam Evans then from uh, the Harris machine from uh, down 26. Howard Thomas then. Uh, Thomas all the way across the water, running in that third place, flicking up that loose uh, dirt already. And it looks to have dried out quickly. That's how hot it is down there. But Liam Evans uh, lifting up the front wheels and uh, says, I want maximum points, Mickey. And uh, here's that Damien Harris from the down. The, uh, Charlie Wright there coming through. And then Sam Gould. Gould looks for the cut back up the inside of Wright. Gouldy then alongside Wright. He says, right, I am going to have fourth place and moves it up. He could do with a little another place up if he can. Last lap flag. One lap to go on this one. And here's that Liam Evans machine coming up past. Oh, yes. As I get in by mud in commentary, which was a great shot, by the way, as they come down. Radford 69 is the car right at the back of the pad, Alan Green. But wow, what a win that is. He's coming across to take two wins out of two. It's Liam Evans in uh, North Shropshire uh, 120. Damien Harris second from uh, the down 26. Howard Thomas from Charlie Wright uh, um, over. Neil Wright, sorry, in the Scunthorpe 121. I've just changed sex for him there. Um, then we go Goldie. And Alan Green in the Radford 69. So, uh, well done there. Where was Bagley? Huh? I don't know. Where was Bagley? He wasn't out there. He wasn't out there. Oh, he, was he, he wasn't still having an ice cream, was he, and missed the call up? Well, hey, that's a point. Where was he? Oh, dear. Maybe car problems. He's not stuck on the line, is he? I can't. I mean, there's an umbrella that uh, uh, the uh, marshal down there has got up, but no. No, I think we're getting ready for race six, and already we're off the line. This brings out Colin Reid. OK, Dinu, and on cue, he takes him into turn one. He had a win in his first race. Ian Stevenson, right rows 20. Stevenson looks to go wide and cut back across. So it's going to be Stevenson taking up the running from uh, the uh, Central Scotland 21. Colin Reid, Cambridge 12, also looking to get up there. Mike McKenzie. McKenzie just has to drop back down into third and get a face full of dirt as they come down that open straight back down into turn one they go round again they come through and it's still leading away Steve Oden in north uh, in the white row 20 from Colin Reed from McKenzie from uh, the Lewis Woodruff Typhi 32 that's Alan Jenkins Jenkins running in that uh, fifth place and then the Stroud and District 103 Daryl Heath Bayard in that uh, final place but checkered uh, checkered flags will be after this one because it's last lap flag and it's white row 20 Stevenson then from Colin Reed okay from uh, the uh, Central Scotland Club told in that second place but he's under pressure because Cambridge 12 is coming at him Mackenzie down that back uh, opening straight into turn one as they slow it down it's going to be Stevenson that's going to come out White Rose 20 then it's going to take the maximum points from Colin Reid in Central Scotland 21 from Mackenzie in Cambridge 12 from Lewis Woodruff in White Rose uh, 72 Alan Jenkins Typhi 32 and then that final place is going to go to Stroudon District 103. And that's Daryl Heath Bayard. 
So uh, well done. Not coming out that time. North Wales 16, Lee Dodd. So, uh, bringing up race seven of the sevens. And it brings out uh, Alfie Smith and, er and Ellison. Both had seconds in their first run, coming out of lane seven and eight. Aaron Long, Alistair Griffiths, Brendan Ellison. Oh, it's the father and son duo in this. Oh, keep away. Um, uh, Matt Richards in the Evesham triple five. And Sean Williams in that Swansea 20. They are your runners and riders on these uh, Class 7 Super Saloons. Engines are revving, and we've got track clearance, bungee lifts, and we are away racing, and that uh, an Ellison machine, York 14, takes them into there. Is Alfie Smith going to follow him? I think he is, and uh, Ellison just pushes out wide. Has that left the door open? Alfie Smith then from Ellison. From uh, the Evesham Triple Five uh, machine as they uh, bring it around. Matt Richards from uh, Aaron Long in the West Waterford 192 just flicks his back end out there to protect his uh, third place as the rest of them uh, slow it down into uh, turn one. Already the leaders are out. Alfie Smith then, Ludlow 23 from Ed Ellison, York 14 from Aaron Long from uh, the Richards machine. Then we go uh, Radford uh, 34, Alistair Griffiths, Brendan Ellison there in the York 219 in that uh, final uh, oh we've got one uh, crawling round at the back as well hopefully he gets out of uh, the race line as they come through that's the Swansea 20 but one more lap to go and it is Alfie Smith Ludlow 23 uh, and Ellison goes with him from the Richard machine Aaron Long looks for a cutback up on the inside there but can that Matthew Richards machine he can he's up into that uh, third place the Kurt Krulber of Sean uh, Swansea 20 Sean Williams out of the way always oh, he's, he's spun himself round Ludlow 23 Alfie Smith takes a win from Ayrton Ellison from uh, Matt Richards oh Aaron Long spun it out oh no Radford 34 Alistair Griffiths across the line in fourth place then we go Brendan Ellison come on Aaron get the engine started come on come and get your points you know what points make yeah prizes as he comes across the line Swansea 20 Sean Williams um, didn't finish. He's uh, driving off the track uh, through the middle of the track. So out of uh, seven races, only one went to a rerun. Do you know what? I'm pretty happy about that. And, uh, you know, you, you can get pleasures from little things, can't you? No, I'm not even going to go there, Mickey. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, rerun so, for here, Steve. Here we go then. Class three, uh, race one away from the line and it is uh, Callum Allenton in Yorksdale's 34 that's the uh, first one to show but Mick Sumner's in Radford at 169 having a much better run this time round comes up through on the inside but on the inside of both of them or trying to be is Gary Wickham and in Victor Kent 13 Trevor Cusack then comes next in CK25 Jeff Gibbs in Hereford 1 so unfortunately no John Price or Adrian Davis or Phil Holloway in this one but we've certainly got Callum Allenton as the uh, Yorkshire Dales 34 car comes out of that to bottom bend once again Gary Wickham still runs in second place Mick Summers now battling for third with Trevor Cusack on his outside and Jeff Gibbs in Hereford won so very close battle for this uh, class three heat as they go down that far side Callum Allenson still your race leader but under strong challenge from Gary Wickham in in Victor Kent 13 as the last lap flag goes out it's the Yorksdale's car on the outside it's the Victor Kent car on the inside Trevor Cusack now then Jeff Gibbs in Hereford won problems for Mick Summers in Radford 169 as he slows right down and cruises round the outside but Callum Allenson I think has got this one just about sorted as it comes round so Mick Sumner's picks up a black flag that's why he did the decent thing and slowed down 34 takes the win 13 in second place Jeff Gibbs Hereford won in that third place slot CK at 25 then Trevor Cusack I think could be the last of our finishers. I say, unfortunately, Mick Sumner's there uh, picking up a black flag in Radford 169 for being a little bit keen on the start line, or in good old phraseology, jump start. So there we go. Bad luck there on the uh, Radford man, but that does complete race one. So looking to the line, have we got class three machinery once again? I think we have. So this will complete the second round of qualifying for the men's class three. Race four, running without Vernon McKenzie or Vince Fuchia. So we should have Tony Goodsir in Scunthorpe 307, Tom Hall in St. Neots 12, Rupert Lomax in North Wales 99, Russ Tinker in York 4, Paul Evans in North Shropshire 15, Aaron McKenzie.
Kenzie in Cambridge 401. So six cars we're expecting and six cars we've got one of them a little bit slowly away but we have got six as our race leader then comes round that race leader is North Wales uh, 99 Rupert Lomax throws it uh, sideways almost overcooked it into that start line bend but corrected it up very nicely as they go uh, down that uh, far side so Russ Tinker back there in third place in the York 4 machine as uh, Lomax comes past us once again North Wales 99 York 4 on the inside the Cambridge 401 car then of Aaron McKenzie on the outside in that uh, battle Tony Goodsir then right there in the mix it's near it's 12 it's not been Tom Hall's weekend I think it's uh, fair to say but Rupert Lomax in North Wales 99 looking to pick up maximum points from this one. Oh, Russ Tinker has overcooked it down there and uh, unfortunately Tony Goodsir nowhere to go in Scunthorpe 307. We didn't think Vince Fuchia was going to be out there in this one in North Wales 3 but he is but he's a spinner down there and the red flags come out on that one. We shall await a decision with regards to uh, if we can uh, take a result on it or not and any exclusions or not so uh, good stuff from the class of threes and whilst that little melee is sorted out and already the breakdown quads are there on site doing exactly that we look to the line we can see some single seaters so i think that's class nine so uh, yeah mickey's sort of inherited class nine today right we're hearing on that uh, last class three unfortunately uh, york four is going to be excluded so uh, russ tinker excluded from the results but they will be taking the results so we won't be seeing it as a rerun so it does complete class threes but unfortunately uh, 55 points in the first round no points in the second round for york for russ tinker so uh, single seater class nines it is as i say for their uh, second round of qualifying and uh, shuffled around a little bit in terms of uh, commentary so mickey b very kindly picking up the class nines this weekend doing a cracking job with them as always so to take you through what run two it is over to the man himself mr mike barker yeah thanks very much steve uh, we are with men's uh, class nine heat two x-track our series sponsor and dig it plant hire our sponsors for the weekend so uh, race one then let's have a look down across this line lee seagreaves in arc3 coming out of lane five he's the uh, the man who's uh, coming in here with uh, a win under his belt already adam robinson north wales 88 had a second in his first run and then we've got a couple of lads who had thirds so russ adiman york six now, if i remember rightly uh, russ actually got his nose in front in the end, had to settle for uh, third. And Ridian Evans in Typhi 84 also had a third. Uh, who else is coming out? Paul Harden in PhD 3. Uh, Border County 34. Ian Stead. Well, if you remember, Ian was um, over and out coming into uh, turn three, the trade stand turn. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'll just have a look here. Where is he? It's lane uh, seven. No, he's, uh, as I thought, Ian Stead. Uh, not uh, back out. I think he was um, a, a bit definitely shaken up um, uh, by uh, going over. I don't know how many times. I reckon it was probably at least five where he, he went over. But uh, the good thing is, is that he was able to get out of the car eventually, uh, avoided having the roof cut off. I think that was an encouragement for him to get out of the car, by the way. Um, who else is out there? Ludlow 80, Jimmy Smith. Um, so he's coming out of lane two. Alan Roberts, North Wales four, out of lane four. So, uh, yeah, I think we've picked them all up. Um, uh, so uh, class nine machinery. Oh, hold on a minute. Was that a little bit of cloud cover coming across? Or was that uh, you coming in and blocking the sun? All oh, right. Thanks for that, because... Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, I think I've lost weight uh, today, by the way. Do I look like I've lost weight? No, all right, then, OK. The, uh, don't, you don't have to tell the truth. You can always, like, uh, humour me by going, Mickey, you look like you've got your six-pack back. <laughs> that was a few years ago. I think I had one when I was born, um, I think. After that, it went downhill. Wine, women and song. That's been the downfall. Not in that order. Uh, not in that order, no. But, uh, well, wine at the moment. Uh, Jilly, my wife's a professional wine drinker. She's got me into it. 
So here we are then. Uh, I'm going to do my best with these open wheel uh, class nines. And uh, here we go then. We are off and running. And who's got the best of the starts? And I think Robinson there, flying start out of uh, lane one. Uh, did uh, Jimmy Smith go with him? That is the question. Where's Adiman? Oh, dear, there's a bit of cut touch in the wheel. It's Seagreaves that takes it up from uh, this Smith machine. Then it's Adam Robinson in North Wales, 88, uh, coming round. That's an outside turn. The uh, rest got to the sort themselves out as they uh, bring it down. But what a machine this is. ARC3, Lee Seagreaves, coming out of the middle of the grid. He's had a win under his belt. He's going to look to make it two out of two from uh, that Ludlow 80 machine. Jimmy Smith from North Wales, 99, PhD. D3, Paul Harden making a show in that uh, fourth place as well. And uh, Alan uh, Roberts in North Wales 4, just a little bit further back. But they come round this time. Oh, a little bit of out of shape there, Lee Seagreaves. But he's got enough lead in front of him from that uh, Smith machine. From uh, Roberts from the PhD3, North Wales 4. And then it is Adiman there in York 6, who's running at the back of the pack. And that's not the best of uh, runs you wanted, was it? But uh, no mistake, two wins out of two. ARC3, Lee Seagreaves takes the win. Oh, hold on a minute, who's coming over in second? It's Jimmy Smith takes it from uh, Adam Robinson. Oh, PhD3 across the line. Uh, hey, that's a nice way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, Paul Harden, if you can hear me in your car. Hey, you crossed the line. And uh, I thought you might have been going in the arm coat, but you said, no, Mickey, I'm fine, mate. I can do that. Alan Roberts uh, across, and then Russ Adiman in the uh, York 6. So it looks like the uh, uh, engines uh, may have uh, conked out, or uh, have they managed to get it going? Oh, no, they're going to need a little bit of towing off. It's a one way to conserve petrol, by the way, isn't it? It's uh, two pound a litre. You know, I'm going to feign that my engines won't start. Yeah, tow me, but tow me back into the uh, into the pits. I did that many years ago. I broke down in uh, in Victor Kemp with the coach, um, and it had, in, honestly, it had broke down. But thinking about it, they towed me all the way from in Victor Kent back to York. <laughs> it didn't cost me a penny. Hey, it's brilliant. The th only trouble was the next year when I wanted roadside recovery. That, no, they wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> That's it. I've been black flagged. There we go then. Race two, Jenny Shepherd, Lindsay, Steve, Steve, Lindsay, Dave Palmer. Phil Cooper's out in this one as well. Cooper coming out of lane four. And, oh, it is Cooper that's going to pop his nose out in that, that uh, front uh, place. Uh, but uh, can he get it round? He does, yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. Who brought the red flags out? Ooh, ooh. Dear me. Radford 35 uh, slows it. Sam pinches. I tell you what, well done, Sam. You was over earlier. Um, and he's back out. So, uh, well done to Sam. I'm not sure what the... Uh, the red flag was for um, uh, we I think uh, old uh, Timmy boys on the uh, on the radio so uh, he'll uh, try and let me know but uh, race two will go back to uh, the uh, rerun right here we go hold on to your seats race three Joe Pipe Phil Rogers both on wins Aidan Llewellyn and Stu Taylor both on seconds then it brings out Sam Middleton Laura, Laura Blaber and Lee Waldron my life what a lineup this is here we go then and who's got the best of the starts I think Rogers that had the best of it but I'm not sure if he's going to come out into uh, the lead as they uh, bring it round one and two. Oh, there's contact We've got one face in the wrong way, one in the side. I think we're going to go red again um, for the second time. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, no, no, you're wrong, Michael, because those two cars have got themselves going. Um, and there we go. Oh, PhD2. I think that is uh, Rogers who uh, was uh, out in that one. But it means that it is PhD9, OK, uh, one, two, one. So uh, that PhD... Nine, Aidan Llewellyn is saying, oh, this is all right, Mickey. IK121, Stu Taylor says, uh, well, I'm running uh, second, so uh, that's not too bad, is it? As uh, the two back markers after their spin out. The last lap flag, PhD9. Oh, for it to need for one, two, one. Athelstan, uh, 12. Lawrence uh, Blaber there up into that uh, fourth place as PhD2, Phil Rogers. He had a win this morning. He'll be kicking himself now with this one as he picks up last lap flag alongside that North Shropshire tenor, Joe Pipe. But taking a win, PhD9 takes it, Aidan Llewellyn.
from uh, the uh, Forrester Dean for Lee Waldron, then Stu Taylor. Um, we've got uh, coming across here PhD to Phil Rogers and Joe Pike. Do you know what? Those two lads both had wins this morning and they finished down at the bottom of the pack. They both effectively took, took each other out, I would think. Um, that's mixed the points up. Uh, we, uh, we'll see what happens uh, when that, that uh, all gets played out for the third eats. We're going back to race four already. We are off and running. Andy Hornshaw out in this one in York 78. He had a win earlier this morning. Sean Power, Yorkshire Dales 97. And uh, Tony Wilson is spalled in 10. All on uh, seconds. What can they do this time? And it is Power that takes up the running then from spalled in 10. Of uh, Tony Wilson and then that Hereford uh, machine. That's Martin Jones in Hereford 55. As the dust is flicking up, a little bit of uh, contact coming out of that Stargate turn with the back markers. But no mistake, Sean Power then. Yorkshire Dales 97. Second this morning. Can he add a first to it as they come round? Spalled in 10 there as well. Tony Wilson, Hereford uh, 55. Evesham 92. Morris Powell and uh, Powell there uh, has uh, a little bit of uh, company for him as we uh, look back down. Uh, Ewan Pitt is struggling at the back, but last lap flag, one more lap to go. Yorkshire Dolls 97, Sean Powell then from that uh, Spalding uh, 10 machine. Tony Wilson, Hereford 55, Evesham at 92, Hereford 55. Martin uh, Jones still uh, defending that uh, third place, but can uh, he get uh, caught up? Round we go, though. Turn two for the final time. Sean Power, Yorkshire Dales 97, takes the win. Spooled in 10, Tony Wilson second. Two out of two for you, my friend. Hereford 55, Martin uh, Jones. Evesham uh, 92, Morris Powell. And then uh, we go Hereford 17. And that's uh, Ewan Pitt. So uh, just uh, looking at that, we didn't have uh, Thomas Lloyd out in that one. Or uh, where was Andy Ornshaw? That's another one. He had a win uh, this morning, so uh, ah, we'll uh, wait and see. Race five, then, of uh, the uh, class signs. Oh, there's Typhy 42, Thomas Lloyd. He was hiding. He was hiding from me. Um, so uh, where we go, then? Mark Barker, Clow Dyke Whitfield, Jamie Dodd, Jason Richardson, Reese Weatherick, Chris Colgate, and Archie Rose. These lads didn't have the best of runs and, uh, in their first one. So uh, one of them is going to pick up maximum points. Which one's it going to be? Um, we will wait and see as uh, we get a flying start there from that inside uh, grid positions uh, of uh, Weatherick, Colgate and Rose. They uh, had the inside grid, but can they? Oh, no. Red flags, red flags. And it was Eastern 26, Mark Barker that was leading them coming past me so we'll have a listen on the radio to see if there is any uh, decisions that are being uh, taken on that so out of the class nines out of five we managed to get three done to go back to rerun right uh, sorry to bump in mickey now a bit of a uh, important announcement then uh, there will be no ladies second heat tonight but you must must sign on tonight so uh, your uh, run will be in the morning but you've got to sign on tonight and also um, there's been a change or there will be a change to the race order we're going to be running men's twos eights fours six tens and junior specials back to mickey yeah so there we go then uh, they brought out the uh, rerun of uh, men's uh, class sevens and that is uh, race uh, two. This is the one where Millsy was leading. Oh, and he's leading again. Uh, the Spalding uh, 5 uh, one, uh, four is uh, next to show down. And that's uh, Barry Ashmore then. Ashmore running in that uh, second place as he brings it down into uh, turn one. Where did Darren Adams go? Oh, no. Come on, guys. Do you realise we've got to get the racing done at some point over these two days? I think it's the heat getting to them, by the way, Tim. I don't know what you think. Yeah, it could be right, mate, I think. But uh, as I say, just to uh, reiterate what uh, I said a few minutes ago, 
There's ladies, no second runs tonight. They'll be in the morning, but you must still sign on tonight. There will be no signing on in the morning. So uh, go and sign on. And if you're not sure where that is, it's just to the uh, right, to the uh, the white tent, just to uh, behind us in commentary. But uh, you must must sign on tonight because there's no signing on in the morning and uh, say the organizers have just uh, changed the uh, format slightly we're going to be running at class two class eight class four six ten and junior specials so as i say get yourself signed on tonight because there is no signing on in the morning back to mickey yeah, thanks very much, Tim. And uh, just while we got the uh, track work, a bit more water going down. If Jeff Beresford can hear me, um, he thinks that I've done a moonlight, by the way. Uh, and uh, I'm, we'll be over to pay you a bit later. Uh, just, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's thinking, do you know what? He had a couple of bits off me uh, yesterday and he's, uh, he's gone walkabouts. But uh, I did instruct the wife to go down and pay, but, um, oh, no. She's, she's one of those, you know, short arms, long pockets. You know what I mean, Timmy boy? It hey, hey, looks like Mickey's going to have to cough up today. I know exactly what you mean, mate. Yeah, you say no more, mate. Say no more. Yeah, that's it. Um, uh, but there again, I think she's been uh, merrily sat out and watching the racing with... Uh, Joe Appleton and uh, Shirley Grice. I think uh, they've been sampling Pims, and uh, I think when I went, Morgan Spice Rum uh, was in the jug. So uh, there we go. I'm not sure if I'm having tea tonight. <laughs> I might have to cook it myself. I'll tell you what. Um, about the food outlets, by the way. The, uh, the food outlets, there's a cracking array, isn't there, from fish and chips. There's a curry place. Have you seen the curry place? Oh, a couple of onion barges. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, we had, that, now. we had that last night. I'll tell you what, they were, that was absolutely stunning. It's got to be said, yeah, well worth doing. So uh, up on the line, I think uh, we've got Russ who's come back in and uh, he's just uh, getting himself all uh, geared up for that and uh, to take you through uh, the next grid. I think uh, we've got a slight change in the, the race format, Russ. I don't know if you heard that over the uh, over the mic. Um, obviously, as they think about semi-finals tomorrow as well. So make sure that they get those second heats done and uh, and dusted. No ladies racing uh, um, left for today. So uh, that, that means, but you do need to go and sign on, which is uh, really important. If you don't sign on, you don't race tomorrow. Um, but that, that's fine. But for the second time uh, today, and to take you through the uh, mama's little darlings, as uh, Mr. Cappy used to say, it is uh, Junior's Heat 2 over to Russ Thompson. Yeah, thank you very much, Mickey. Uh, let's see how we go with the Juniors. We didn't do too bad in the first runs, uh, but uh, let's uh, hope the second uh, runs go better than uh, what some previous races have done. So Junior Saloons, then Shropshire Design, your... Uh, Series sponsor and Silver Lake Recycled Car Parts, your weekend sponsor. And uh, don't forget all the juniors contesting not just their class championships, but they also make up the Young Guns Championships, sponsored by Power Max here, of course. The uh, Kent Cam Simpson Race Exhaust British Autograph Series uh, for 2022. So we thank all our sponsors. Away we go then. Who's it going to be this time? Typhi 15, then Leston Jones leads the way and uh, Leston uh, picked up uh, a black flag in the first run and uh, in Typhi 15. And uh, this is not race one, this is race two. So race two's come out first. Typhi 15 leads the way, then PhD 4 and Forest 22 side by side. The Forest car, another one excluded in the first runs. So uh, two drivers here desperately need the points if they're going to have any chance of making the final. We've got one stranded on the start straight. Uh, that's the Hereford 28 of Kieran Ross, but no problems at the moment for Typhi 15. So uh, Leston Jones, it is, leads the way. Uh, second place, oh, we've got uh, Forest 22 all out of shape uh, gathers it up and rejoins down in third now behind the Pennine 85 of Reese Falls so Reese is there up into second position it's all squabbling further back the Seven Valley uh, car was it 107 Will Hadley also uh, putting in a challenge uh, the PhD 4 relegated down to fourth or fifth is it no fifth place it is for the little mini Jack Mosley uh, 
and uh, the rest of them come through. Elise Jones is the one at the back in Pennine 17, behind the Breeden Hill 40 of Thomas Creed. So uh, that is the uh, running order, and uh, the leader's away and gone, but uh, it's all changing further back as Falls has come to grief and loses places and ground, and uh, it's going to be Leston Jones then, a black flag and a win. So both ends of the scale for that youngster takes the victory here, though. Hadley is second in 7 Valley 107, Chamberlain third in Forest 22, then it's PhD 4, Pennine 85, Pennine 17, and uh, finally... Uh, Breeden Hill, number 40. So, uh, junior saloons then, uh, five races to come your way. We've had one, but that was race two. Uh, let's hope we've got race one this time. Uh, no, I think we've got race... Oh, we're all shuffled up, aren't we? Who's in this one? The other Pennine car. Oh, no, this one is race one. So race one's coming next uh, because Callum Falls is there in Pennine 83. So uh, Mickey B's just showing me his phone. He's had a message. There's quite a few people watching from uh, the other side uh, of the autographs world at the moment because uh, York Autographs, of course, hosting the UK Autographs Championships, but uh, the Vanderbar is uh, sharing the uh, footage on their TV screen and a few people just watching away, keeping in on the know of uh, what's going on. Um, it was Jed uh, who, who messaged. Um, <coughs> had a few messages early on. Uh, here we got James Holmes saying uh, happy birthday to Dawn Peach. So, Dawn, happy birthday, however old. Uh, oh, what's this? Roger Jefferson, will you hurry them up a bit? It's going to be past my OAP bedtime before Emily gets out in heat too. And, of course, I've got church in the morning. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> of course, uh, Wiggy, I uh, hope you're doing all right, mate. Uh, and uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. Anyway, we go back racing uh, with Cambridge 142 leading the way. Grace uh, Williams, but she's gone wide and up the inside goes Typhi 9 of Reese Davies. Uh, Ludlow 19 under pressure. These Welsh cars are very rapid round here as uh, the PhD 20, uh, was it? Uh, PAC 20, sorry, Shea Fuller looking for a way through past Ludlow 19. That's Meg Parsons. So, uh, uh, Meg and Shea just uh, squabbling it out for third and fourth, but uh, the lead two getting away from him as they battle. And uh, further back, then we go to the Cum D1 double three of Gareth White. Uh, Seven Valley 147 is Hannah Hadley, and she's just lost a place as uh, Callum Foles goes through in uh, Pennine 83. So um, uh, moving through, it is still remaining with Typhi 9 then leading the way. One lap to go. No. So Typhi 9, Cambridge 142, Grace Williams looking to reel back in and make a last lap challenge. Ludlow 19 still fending off PAC 20. C1 double three is looking to cash in as well uh, with a few pence and try and make a move uh, points of course mean a lot uh, not just for the weekend but for the series as a whole but Typhi 9 then is looking good and I think uh, Reese Davis then will take the win, Grace Williams will take second in Cambridge 142 third is going to go to Ludlow uh, 19 Meg Parsons then it's uh, Shea Fuller in PAC 20 come D1 double 3 of Gareth White and uh, then uh, Pennine 83 Callum Falls and last but by no means least Hannah Hadley in 7 Valley 147. <clears throat> so we should move straight into uh, race three in a moment. Uh, there was a, another little message earlier. Dave Holroyd saying happy birthday to Olivia Holroyd, 11 today. And good luck to big brother Mike. Uh, Mike was out earlier on. I think took a third or something in his first run. So uh, a couple of messages there. But away we go then with this next one. And somebody getting a little out of shape down the start straight. Uh, Lewis Middleton looks to lead the way there. Wyrus 21, more contact as the yellow micro goes sideways. That's Miles Collins in PhD 48. The uh, Minis looking to attack in this one. Wyrus 21, PhD 48, PhD 58 
also looking for a way through. Uh, and the PhD one is Molly Ann Mosley. Uh, and that and problems for the PhD 48, the Yellow Micra, come to a stop uh, near the circuit exit. And that's their race done. So, oh, where's Pitt Melly been? Swansea too. Has Pitt Bunny just got going? So... Uh, didn't see him. Lewis Middleton was leading and still looks to be. I hope that's correct. Harry Berryman in second place in Scarborough 1. Then we go to Mallow 37. And uh, that is at the wheel uh, for that one. We'll get it in a moment. Uh, Emma O'Riord and PAC 52 also going slowly round Paris Smith so a real strange one this one Swansea 2 goes through as well one lap to go White Rose 21 Scarborough 1 it is they're the 1 and the 2 then it's Mallow 37 one we haven't mentioned yet North Shropshire 127 uh, and that's Jack Lewis PhD 58 just goes through of Molly Ann Mosley and then we've got Pip Melly in Swansea 2 uh, a long way down uh, and uh, PAC 52 struggling. So Wyrus 21 then takes the checkered flag and the victory. Scarborough 1 is second. Mallow 37. North Shropshire 127. And then uh, PHD 58. Uh, coming through. And then Swansea 2 and PAC 52. Dave uh, Laverack sent me a message early on today. Didn't quite pick it up, I'm afraid, but uh, was saying good luck to Team Rossi and Team Holtby and the rest of the CGTRO crew having a, have a great weekend. Well, the results have been a little bit mixed. Uh, so uh, um, let's see how they pick it up in some of these later races. So uh, we'll try, hopefully, race four, which should be on the line. Just waiting for uh, clearance. We seem to have yellow flags, but we're not going just yet. So hopefully we will in a moment's time. Right away we go then with this next one. Neil Tyvey looks to lead them out of the way. Tyvey 5, uh, Jack Owens goes with him. Uh, and then somebody around the outside of Inca Tampa Powell in North Wales 52. But we go Tyvey and uh, Tyvey. So uh, Neil Tyvey and Tyvey 5. But Tyvey 5 it is who goes through into the leadership. Then Jack Owens in the micro. Neil Tyvey a bit out of shape there and losing ground over the race leader. And Amber Powell looks to go up the inside in the Yaris in North Wales 52. The door is opened. Oh, what's happened there? She's got it all out of shape and is going to lose more ground. Molly Bubb looks to cash in and gain a position and uh, move through into third place. Then we go to PAC 9, PhD 5, and Typhi 211. The three Welsh cars at the back then uh, not enjoying this one as much. Lexio in the one at the back in Typhi 211. Not a good day for her. She picked up a black flag in the first run as well. Uh, PhD 5 is uh, Isabella Hitchcock and Travis Markilly Mar in uh, PAC 9. But Typhi 5 it is leading the way. Jack Owens and clear. Over West Waterford, one double four, Evesham one forty six, and North Wales fifty two, and then uh, the rest of them come through. Tyvee two eleven, still completing. I think the car sounded a little off then as she went through. But uh, check as it is this time, and Jack Owens, a good day for that young man. He's going to take the win. Tyvee five it is. West Waterford one double four will be second. Evesham one forty six, North Wales fifty two, PAC nine, PHD five, and uh, finally Tyvee two eleven. I'm not sure what's happened with the lineups here because race two went before race one and race five had just gone before race four. So uh, we'll try race four next, but so far so good. And uh, Will Evans, Jay Jones, Stefan Davis, Reese Tipton, 
William Hall, Bo Bennett, Lily Chapman and Freddie Davis should be the runners and riders in uh, Heat 2 Race 4. Away we go then, up there they start straight for the first time and the Minis edging it this time around. Breeding Hill 33 looks to uh, lead into the turn. Tyvee 7, little out of shape but gathers it up nicely and continues on. Uh, Forest 10 looking to make a challenge ahead of Ludlow 1, North Shropshire 101. Uh, I think the number is incorrect on the sheet. Uh, saying 208, but it's uh, I think it's 101 on the car. Ludlow 1 though, looking up the inside. Reese Tipton... Uh, for that fourth place, but the door closed on him. Now it opens again and he goes through. But it's uh, Breeding Hill 33, Tyvee 7, Forest 10, uh, Ludlow 1, North Shropshire 101, Tyvee 29, and at 7 Valley 29 uh, is the last one, William Hall. But uh, the 1, 2, and 3 looking still fairly close, although the leader's starting to edge away now. We've just over a lap to go. Breeding Hill uh, 33, Tyvee 7. And uh, Forest 10, then uh, back to Ludlow, one tip to Nova, Tyvee 29, uh, Stefan Davis, then it's North Shropshire 101, and uh, still 7 Valley uh, 29, William Hall uh, continues on his way, but here comes the checkers, any changes, it could be for second and third, but not for the leader, because uh, Breeden Hill 33, Bo Bennett's going to be a winner, Tyvee 7, Will Evans is second from Forest 10, Lily Chapman, then it's Reese Tipton and Ludlow one, and uh, the rest of them come through to uh, complete. So there we go. And I think that is all uh, five junior races done. So uh, well done, uh, young'uns. You, you was told, obviously, that uh, your bedtime curfew was coming up, so you made sure you got through your racing. So well done, juniors. And... Uh, yeah, a bit more water going down, so maybe time for a couple more messages which came through earlier today. Um, Sam Graney uh, message saying, would, uh, would love you to say hello to my uh, granddad and grandma if you could, Russ. They're, they should have been here this weekend for their first ever Bazaar, but unfortunately a couple of weeks ago, uh, granddad was taken into hospital and they're now watching online uh, from uh, the hospital and uh, <coughs> sending uh, love from Andrew and Sam Graney and hope they get better soon. That's uh, Bernard and Doreen Smith watching away in the hospital so i hope uh, all uh, goes well and recovery is a speedy one and uh, a message has also come through another birthday gracie coles uh, happy birthday to you from josh holden and all the family that message actually came through from uh, sarah jane so uh, thank you very much for your message there kirsty ruddock uh, shout out to paul paul ruddock from pr photography i've been chatting to paul a lot today and uh, we finally managed to get out on the track for some photos. Uh, but yeah, Paul out there doing what he can. And uh, I think uh, Gav Kemp, who's a f f common uh, follower of Grass Chat, uh, sending a message saying, can you say hi to Sean Kemp? So hi, Sean Kemp. Hope you're all right. Thank you, Graham Moss, uh, for, for the, your message, an urgent call to uh, Donna Bailey to find out where the White Rose Scunny Cocktails are. So, uh, Donna Bailey, um, you are slipping in your duties. So, can you make sure that the White Rose and Scunny members are well topped up with uh, their cocktails, please? Woo-woo. Yeah, that's, that's what a, a cocktail, a jug is. Like uh, okay. It sounds like something else, but... <laughs> <laughs> Dorian Davis, then uh, Shoney has sent me a message. Uh, he's watching away at home, the former owner of the fastest Class 4 Mini in the world. And uh, then he sold it and is now uh, pending retirement. But I uh, hope you're all right, uh, Dorian. Thanks for sending the message as well. So I hope everybody's enjoying themselves. Obviously, it is a warm one now, isn't it? Uh, all out there. Um, Kirsty Louise Frost has just messaged in saying best of luck to the Pennine drivers. Uh, there again, mixed uh, fortunes for some, but not doing too bad. Right, okay, so water is nearly done. So what are we on now? Are we going twos? Uh, what's the running order, Tim? Just remind us once again uh, for how it's going to run for the remainder of the day. 
Yeah, thank you, Russ. Uh, yeah, we're going back uh, or going on to uh, men's class two. I say there's no uh, ladies uh, racing tonight, but again, you must still sign on. So uh, if you haven't signed on, then uh, please do so. Otherwise, there is no uh, racing for you in the morning. Okay, more uh, bit, a bit more bounds of work going on as uh, we move onwards and ever upwards. Men's class two, heat two, race one is uh, what's assembled on the line. And uh, that then all being well, should bring out Simon Overty in Scunthorpe 18, Paul Morgan in Radford 22, Simon Chadburn in White Rose 70, Ash Woodward in Atherston 182, Aaron Smith in SR 171, Will Duggan in Cumney 190, Shane Sproul in North Shropshire 3, 1, uh, 391, and Ricky Hulan in Mallow number two. So that's your lineup for the uh, second heat. Uh, of uh, men's class two fleet care services of course your pretty serious sponsor and mill for garage and commercial vehicle repairs is your meeting sponsor again big thanks to both okay let's go racing then with the first run of the men's uh, class uh, class two and uh, it's the uh, i think they've actually altered the order here so this certainly isn't race one so uh, OK, 55. So that's race two then that they brought out first. So catching us uh, all uh, on the hop. Bradley Thomas is then first round winner in IK 55. He uh, leads the way as they go down that uh, far side with uh, IK 30. Jack Bromley in uh, that second place slot. Somebody challenge on the inside. Ben Griffiths in at seven valley eight then and just slides through into that uh, second place slot. And also uh, Ash Wigglesworth. Another uh, first uh, heat winner in uh, the uh, Scarborough Treble 2, also looking to challenge as well as they go uh, down that far side up to third place. He goes with uh, the Scunthorpe 160, 156 of Jay Albrighton, the one that's playing catch up at the moment already. Last lap flag then, this time. And uh, one to go, Bradley Thomas, IK 55, then uh, Scarborough Treble, Treble 2, IK 30. Then uh, Ben Griffiths in Seven Valley, number eight, uh, Ludlow 99, Amber Powell going through as well, just ahead of the Pennine car. That's Dan Heath in Pennine 89 with uh, the Radford 3 machine of Mark Mosley and Jay Albrighton completing all in Scar in Scunny 156. But here's your winner, Bradley Thomas then takes the win from IK 130, Scarborough Treble 2. 7 Valley 8 of Ben Griffiths, Pennine 89 from Amber Powell in Ludlow 99, and Mark Mosley in Radford number 3. And completing it all then will be uh, the uh, Scunthorpe 156 of Jay Albrighton. So looking down towards the line, I think this is actually race one that uh, comes out. So uh, if it is, then uh, Ricky Hulan in Mallow number two, Shane Spratwell in uh, North Shropshire 391, Will Duggan in Cumdy 190, Aaron Smith in SR 171, Josh Woodward in Atherson 182, Simon Chadburn in White Rose 70, Paul Morgan in Radford 22, and Simon Overty in uh, Scunny 18. So uh, that's the lineup for uh, race one, which is effectively race two. So, Bowser then just a quick sprinkling round the uh, start gate turn and quad bikes nearly done so into the center of the uh, north shropshire raceway they will go and that will leave it clear then for uh, race one to get underway no first uh, heat winners in uh, this one but uh, somebody will certainly take the spoils as we uh, leave the line 
and it's over to that's quick in, in Scunny 18 and he leads into uh, the first turn Hulan goes with him on the inside in Mallow at number two somebody on the outside I think that may be Paul Morgan in Radford at 22 but it's uh, over to that takes up the running 18 Mallow 2 can be 190 then in that third place that's uh, Will Duggan in uh, that uh, 190 machine just ahead of the Atherson car that's Josh Woodward in Atherson 182 and Paul Morgan in Radford 22 problems early doors for uh, Simon Chadburn in Radford in uh, White Rose 70 he's pulled into the centre of the raceway no problems though for your race leader that's uh, Simon Overty in, uh, in Scunny 18 from Ricky Houlihan in Mallow number two Duggan still running third in C190 just ahead of Josh Woodward in Atherston 182 and Paul Morgan in Radford 22 once again, back round towards us already. Yellow flag will back cross then goes out. One to go. Simon Overty in Scunny 18. Ricky Ulan coming in a strong challenge from Will Duggan in Cundy at 190. They absolutely lock side by side coming out of the start gate turn. But uh, Ulan just the speed down the straight to uh, get himself back or back into that uh, second place position. But your winner, another 55 points on the board and a race win. Simon Overty, Scunthorpe 18 it is. Mallow number two from Will Duggan in D 190, Josh Woodward in Atherston 182 and Paul Morgan will complete it all in Radford 22. So, uh, good stuff from race one. So, uh, back down to the race order. Race three, then, brings out Will Alford, another first heat winner in Penau 13. Samuel Dodridge also joins him, another heat winner in Forest 515. Ryan Smith will be there in PhD 29. Ollie Stevens in Ludlow 15. Rich Owen in North Wales 1. Jack Hodgson in Yorkshire Dales 104. Lee Kent, another heat winner in North Wales, 38. And Ian Harvey in C63. Already away and uh, into turn one we go. Oh, God's facing the wrong way. And Will Alford's in trouble as well. We've got him facing the wrong way. Uh, so we keep racing. Now that unfortunately brings out the red flags. So back to the rerun lane, then they will go. So I think Jack Hodgson involved somewhere along the line as well with uh, the uh, front of the micro looking a little bit uh, deranged. So again, back to the rerun lane, they will go. So I don't know of any exclusions. We ain't got a, the radio is here, but uh, can't quite hear what's going on. So, uh, as I say, back to the Rima lane. They will go as Will Alford gets it going and uh, back to the pits under his own steam. So, uh, OK, race four then. Callum Woodward in Atherston, 83. Another first heat winner then. Chris Hall in, Sc in Scunny, 227. James Espley, North Wales, 101. Alan Pickersgill in Scunthorpe, 109. Graham Holmes will be there in North Shropshire 93. Corey Paisley in Pennine 10. Ben Foster in IK 231. And Shane Jenkins in Radford 205. And it is the first heat winner then. Chris Hall in Scunny 227 is the first one to show as uh, coming out of turn two for the first time of asking. SP then slides into second just ahead of the Pennine 10 machine. That's a Corey Paisley on that uh, outside line. Somebody coming through on the inside. Atherson 83. Callum Woodward also making ground, but Combs start to fly in and Marshalls will be watching. So uh, we'll have to see if that stays or not. But your race leader then just, uh, just edging further away. Chris Hall in the uh, Scunthorpe machine in Scunthorpe 227 as uh, they go round the start gate to 205 making, making some serious ground grade Jane, uh, Drake, Shane Jenkins up to uh, second he goes good battle also going on for third with the uh, <laughs> James Espley machine in North Wales 101 and the uh, I think it's Graham Holmes machine in it is indeed in North Shropshire 93 IK 231 going through as well and Atherson 83 of Callum Woodward but uh, with uh, just uh, half a lap to go because the last lap flag has already gone out it's going to be a win and uh, two wins then out of two you can't do no better than that after day one Chris Hall then uh, takes the uh, takes the win from uh, Shane Jenkins in Radford 205 North Shropshire 93 of Graham Holmes IK 231.
Atherson 83, James Espley will complete it all in North Wales 101. And IK231, when we got, didn't get, get to mention, got the name, but got the car name, got the car, but didn't get the mention. That's Ben Foster in IK231. Right, just to reiterate, so uh, again, the race order has actually changed. And after these class twos, then we're going to need all the class eight drivers down to the pits. So after class two, so you haven't got uh, that many races. We're on race five. So uh, get yourself sorted. Get yourself down to the pits because uh, the order has changed. We're going class two, class eight, four, six, ten and junior special. So uh, if you're in spectator land or in the camp or wherever, you need to get yourself down to the pits. Get your car ready. Get yourself ready because you're going in uh, not, not too many minutes time. So that's uh, race four. Race five then that brings out Ashley Lillington in uh, South Somerset 38. Michael Jordan in Radford 284. Ewan Twig in Typhi 202. Daniel Robbins in St. Neots 34. Jamie Lillington in South Somerset 45. Darren Eikin in North Wales 4. And JD Farrah in Scarborough 17. So that's your lineup for race five of the uh, Milford Car and Commercial Vehicle Repairs sponsored men's class two. So I think we're just waiting for uh, the Adam Pick skill machine to be moved out of harm's way. So I think that's going to be very quickly upped up to the quad bike, but uh, their uh, team that was out of harm's way. So uh, we uh, go racing and with race five as uh, they all sort themselves out round two and one. We go all one facing the wrong way, but managing to uh, get it back on track. But it's uh, North Oxford, number four, Darren Eichin. That's uh, the first one to show from uh, Danny Robbins in Sydney at 34. And he's uh, just been challenged by uh, Ashley Lillington in uh, South Somerset. 30 acres to go down that far side. But it's Eichin that still leads then. North Shropshire 4 as he just drifts a bit while Lillington looking up that inside in South Somerset. 38 to the Robbins on the outside. Good battle also going on for that uh, fourth and fifth place slot with uh, J.D. Farrer and uh, the other Lillington machine then Jamie Lillington in South Somerset 45 as they go down that far side once again and into uh, turn one and turn two already yellow flag with a black cross one lap to go then for Darren Eichin North Shropshire 4 Robbins in 34 then comes Lillington in 38 then comes the other Lillington in 45 as once again round the start gate two and we go for the final time just ahead of you and Twig in Typhi 202 who uh, just calls it a day and back to the pits he will go but uh, back to the front then, we've got to change because Danny Robbins has found a way through. Certainly, S34 then takes it from North Shropshire 4, so Somerset 38, so Somerset 45. And one we didn't mention, that will be Michael Jordan, who comes around to complete in Radford 284. So race six then of class two then brings out another first uh, hit two first heat winners Craig Conway in Scunthorpe 126 and Gareth Stokes in Pennine 87. They are joined by Clint Foles in Pennine 84. Tom Stevens in Ludlow 55. Nigel Bishop in Radford 80. Cole Blackmore in PAC 76. And last but by no means least, starting in lane one, Andy Wilde in North Wales 171. So that's your lineup for race six. I say two uh, first seat winners go uh, go back to back in this one, Conway and Stokes respectively. So let's see what happens. Can they both make it? One of them will both make it with two out of two, or uh, does uh, somebody else take the spoils? As we once again look for track clearance in a few moments' time. So just spotted over the far side, we have got. Uh, a car against the uh, Armco. I think that's maybe JD Farrah in uh, Scarborough 17. Yeah. 
So uh, just a moment or so while they get the quad bike hooked up to the uh, JD firing machine. And just to reiterate, there is no signing on tomorrow. So uh, after your second heat, after you're done, get yourself signed on, get yourself uh, in the book for the morning because there is no signing on tomorrow. So uh, once it's done, you can uh, relax and uh, go uh, watch back a bit, bit more racing or uh, get uh, back to the van and get some tea sorted or whatever you got to do, but uh, at least you'll be signed on and you'll be sorted. As I say, no signing on tomorrow. So, J.D. Farris machine out of harm's way, and uh, we're going back with race six of men's class uh, class twos, and it's the one that uh, had the win in the first ring. Craig Conway in Scunny 126. Somebody's going wide. Oh, the one on two wheels. That's uh, Tom Stevens in Ludlow 55. Bishop involved as well in Radford 80. But uh, we keep racing as Conway it is in Scunthorpe 126 that goes down the far side, but we get to red flags. So, uh, <clears throat> Mickey on the radio, so as soon as we know anything, we will... Uh, Tell you, I think they're checking on the cameras and all that sort of thing, but uh, some uh, serious acrobatics from uh, Ludlow 55. Tom Stevens n nearly uh, nearly put it over, but on two wheels, and uh, how he managed to get it down and uh, back onto, uh, onto the track. So I think there is a call for the medical team, obviously, probably a bit uh, shaken, not stirred, is Tom. I'm sure, once again, just for uh, precautionary measures, as uh, as always. So, uh, while they're discussing race six, let's uh, look ahead and see what's on race seven. Although, uh, I think the they're actually sending them off the line. <coughs> So race seven then has gone off the line and back to the uh, back to the pits. So I don't quite know why that's. Uh So I think for what we've uh, understand and what we're hearing, then uh, race seven then goes back to the pits or the ring run lane. Uh, Bows is onto the track, and I think they're going to uh, try and do a little bit of work onto the start line. So those of you who are uh, trackside, then I uh, hope you're enjoying all the action and all the thrills and spills from day one at the uh, round three of the uh, British Autograph Series here at North Shropshire. And I uh, hope you're getting hydrated and the sun cream's on, the hats are on, because, uh, say, it is mightily, mightily warm out there. Always nice to see a bit of sunshine, but uh, it can get a bit much at times. But uh, as long as you keep yourself uh, hydrated and uh, a little bit of shade and uh, so you don't uh, go down with anything uh, horrible and uh, that's what we uh, want to see those of you on bass fm bass tv then i uh, hope you're enjoying the action and we and uh, we're uh, trying to keep you as informed as we dare i'd say not always the uh, not always the easiest oh god that's horrible sight in it near me but uh mr mr langley just bringing in some more uh, points and bits and pieces just try and make it sound uh, a bit more, uh, I want to say professional, but a bit more, uh, a bit more posher, I would say. What'd you, what'd you say, Mickey? A bit posher. Well, that, that that's really does like kind of uh, elevate uh, the status of posh. I wouldn't say we're necessarily that, that posh. Uh, I've, well, for those that are watching um, down at uh, home on, on Bass TV, that kind of gives you an idea of, uh, so we've completed two heats on the men's class five and the uh, and the guys and girls next door give us um, all the points just to uh, see who's currently sat where um, and on the fives 
um, the IK55, Ian Thorndike. Um, two wins out of two. So he's the only man in uh, class fives to have done that. So 110 points going into uh, tomorrow's uh, third heat. Um, just having a look here on the uh, on the men's class one. That's always a competitive class as well. We've got semi-finals in the ones as well, I think, haven't we? Uh, yeah, ones, twos, sevens and eights. So uh, looking at that, um, three three of the guys in the men's class ones have, uh, have got a maximum points, two wins out of two, and that's Typhy 16, Connor Griffiths, Cambridge 48, Lee Deegan, and uh, Eve Shim 82, Tom Powell. So uh, there are some racing family names there, aren't there, in the, uh, the men's uh, class ones. And then uh, just looking down at class threes, which we've got here as well. Um, uh, I think we've got time. Yeah, they've got the roller out there as well doing that start line. Um, so there's only one uh, man unbeaten in the, uh, in the class threes, and that's Yorkshire Dales uh, 98, and that's Ryan Power. So uh, Ryan, two wins out of two. Um, uh, Jamie Lee and Keith Kelly have got uh, a win and a second. So uh, they're on 100 points. And then um, also just down here on the sheets is the juniors. So uh, these are the junior saloons. And uh, looking down there, there's only one junior out of uh, the whole batch of them that is uh, unbeaten. And that's Bo Bennett in Breeden Hill 33, two wins out of two. And then you've got uh, three of them that have had a win in a second, and that is West Watford 144, Neil uh, Tivy, Typhy 9, Reese Griffiths, and Reese Griffiths, Reese Davis, Michael. Hey, you changed his name, I know, sorry. Uh, Typhy 7, uh, Will Evans as well, a win and a second. So, yeah, that hopefully gives you an idea of what information we get. And that's what we're able to share with you as we prepare our paperwork for tomorrow's racing. So uh, I think Tim's ready to take you through the next uh, runners and uh, riders. So, Tim, um, I think we're ready for uh, race seven once uh, we've got it on there. Well, looking at that, they took uh, race seven off the line, didn't they? Um, I know that I've got a, a class seven rerun to come. And I think... Looking at it, I think they are going to bring that Class 7 uh, rerun out first. Um, I've got a couple of Class 9s, and then uh, um, that, for me, uh, will be the, uh, the day's work done because uh, um, they're not bringing the ladies out until tomorrow morning. So another early start tomorrow. So an early, early, early night tonight. <laughs> don't think so, really. But, um, yeah, that's uh, what uh, we've got coming up. So we're going to get through to men's racing before we, uh, we close today. And then uh, we will be back in the morning to take you through uh, the second heats of the ladies. And then we'll be into uh, heat three. And because of the semi-finals, uh, there'll probably be a slight change of format. I think uh, you've read that out already. I think that... Uh, uh, they'll look to bring out the uh, the classes that have got the semi-finals and get them uh, done and dusted. So that'll be like your ones, your twos, your uh, your sevens, and your eights. And then uh, they'll then slot the semi-finals in uh, during the course of the rest of those heats. And it then should get us to probably final time, probably around about I would think around about three half three tomorrow afternoon. Um, fingers crossed. Maybe maybe four. Um, and then uh, the finals uh, all done in their first go, no red flags. And then uh, we'll be uh, on the road and back up to wherever we're going to, either down country, up country, across country. Um, and that will get us uh, uh, back uh, ready for work on Monday for those that work. Those that are retired, you lucky people. Um, those that haven't started work yet, then uh, you've got it all to look forward to. Um, and then... Uh, we've got next weekend, um, uh, I'm uh, no rest for the wicked. I've got uh, uh, Scarborough Autograss are on, so I've got a local club meeting down at Scarborough. And then the, uh, the week after, um, it's a, I say a short hop compared to the mileage I've done already this year. Um, it's about just under an hour for me to get from home to Yorkshire Dales for the men's nationals, the, uh, the big event of the year. And, uh, yeah, we look forward uh, to that because I think it's going to be a spectacular um, celebration, really, of uh, what is all good about our uh, autograss racing.
Talking of nationals, shameless plug, of course, uh, the uh, men's nationals is uh, only a few weeks away, then uh, not too many weeks away after that. Of course, uh, it's the ladies and juniors turn and uh, hosted by Hereford All Glass Club, my home club, of course, at the uh, Lugview Raceway on the uh, September the 3rd and 4th, I think it is. Or second, yeah, so third and fourth, I think it is. So, uh, yeah, prep's well on the way for that track, starting to look really, really good. And uh, as I say, looking forward to welcoming you, uh, many, many of you down there. As I say, it's going to be a cracking, cracking weekend. We've got some good stuff lined up as well. We've got uh, a disco, we've got live bands, we've got all sorts of stuff going on. As I say, track looking really good. There's plenty of room down there. We managed to sort a lot of camping out there as well. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good one. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's it's starting to look good. Well, uh, and I'm uh, uh, going to venture across as well. Now, Callum's obviously out of juniors and into, uh, into the men's racing, so we, we, uh, we, we wouldn't uh, normally just uh, travel down and, uh, and bring the camper, but what we've decided to do is a little bit of a round trip. Uh, my old man, if he's, if he's watching Billy Barker um, on uh, Bass TV, he's down in Bexhill on Sea, or as he calls it, the Coffin Dodger place. Um, so uh, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, take the Callum's car uh, down into uh, down to Bexhill, and then from there we're going to pop across to Invicta Kent and, um, and, and have a ra- do a race uh, down there. That's that bank holiday uh, weekend. And then we're going to have a few more days down in uh, Bexhill, uh, chill out down by the seaside, and then we'll travel up uh, up towards uh, Hereford for uh, the uh, Ladies and Junior Nationals 2022. So uh, yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to it, and uh, and it will be with us before you know it. I mean, how quick has this season gone already? You know, I, I can't believe we we're into Bass Round Three, and uh, yeah, we're coming towards that mid uh, mid July. And then uh, into April, well, and that one into uh, August. I hope um, that we are still blessed with all this good, uh, good weather. Maybe not as hot as this, really, because it is absolutely toasty out there. And fair play to everyone that has been, uh, you know, sat out there. Uh, lots of shade that's around, so everyone's kind of forward planned with gazebos and umbrellas, and uh, yeah, just keep yourself out of the shade. You can't take all of this sun in one day unless you really are a sun lover. Um, uh, and obviously, myself and Tim are not one of those. We're uh, we're occasional uh, popping in out and popping out of the the sun. But uh, no, we'll let them, uh, to the more experienced ones, uh, do that. And then tomorrow, uh, forecast is another super hot day um, down here at North Shropshire. So uh, there's going to be no let up. And then uh, you think then, oh, it might get a bit cooler. Apparently, um, as we go into Monday and Tuesday, that will really, it may even go and break records for the hottest temperatures recorded. You know, I know down... In the uh, down in London, I think they're forecasting somewhere around 40 on uh, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and that really is going to uh, set the old air conditioning in the office uh, on full chat, as they say. Um, let's hope it doesn't break down. I <laughs> good grief, then that that will be. Uh, it will be a worry that. It's good, good, good job. Just in the air, Colin, and the van at work, so I'm, I'll be all right. <laughs> Oh, what you regassed of you? Yeah, oh, <laughs> done it, done it the other day. Oh, well done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- this is the time of year, isn't it? When when it's like this, that all the air conditioning uh, engineers out there are absolutely double and triple time and uh, rubbing their hands, going happy days. But uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, unlike most other countries, we don't get to use it too often. We otherwise we'd have AC units plugged into the house wouldn't you radiators and ac units we only have radiators over in this country normally don't we but uh, it's great when it comes um but again just a, a special mention out there to uh, all the marshals uh, that are out there um, what a sterling job you're doing by the way unfortunately you have to be uh, uh, kitted up you can't be wearing shorts like uh, us commentators and t-shirts you've got to have uh, your proper attire on and uh, yeah you're doing a great job it's really hot out there um you got the smallest umbrellas i've seen by the way <laughs> they really uh, they really are but uh, you can't have too too big because we'll block the uh, the view of uh, of the racing and also block uh, the view of people uh, looking at the racing and trying to pick up any incidents that are going for 
going on on the tracks and, and there's been a few and there Tim there's been a few incidents that I, I think I think some of the driving has probably been affected by uh, the weather that's all I'm saying yeah I think it's you know the, the weather plays a part I mean it certainly played a part down in uh, down in Cumdee a few weeks ago uh, and uh, you know but I think to be fair that uh, probably just did did sort of help the, the meeting and just you know help the track and everything but uh, as I say it's with here it's obviously the, it's just so so hot and uh, you know everybody's just going for it and uh, yeah obviously you know sometimes nine cars into or eight cars into into one doesn't doesn't always go you know but uh, thankfully you know there's been no uh, no major uh, no, no major drama as I say all the kits is is built to uh, absolutely top top notch safety standards these days and obviously all the tagging and stuff that goes on you know it's uh, it's just uh, credit really to uh, all the chassis builders all the car builders and you know everybody that uh, builds and puts stuff together you know it's uh, you know at the end of the day we got to get it for work Monday morning don't we so you know when you just said there about dramas it, it took me back down to when I was on holiday in Spain in May right and, and I, on a, I want people to be honest if you're around the track or you're at home put your hands up if this has happened to you before so I'm, I'm around the communal pool right so there's a number of people around there I, I wasn't wearing my speedos by the way albeit I'm wearing them today uh, and, and I, I got the old uh, sun chair out as you do uh, plastic one of those plastic ones white plastic ones um, put it on the grass, sat back, and the back snapped, right? Well, I fell off the back. My legs went up in the air, right? And you could hear people chuckling and laughing and stuff like that. There was even a bloke on a, on a balcony apartment looking down at me and, like, was, like, throwing me, uh, like, words of abuse. Like, you idiot, eh? You know? Um, and then I think something about the, me, me carrying a bit of timber or something like that. But yeah, this, the back of the chair snapped. I fell backwards, feet up in the air. Yeah, it was quite embarrassing, really. The f good thing was, uh, Jill that was sat next to me didn't spill a drop of wine. Eh? Didn't uh, impact on her at all. So hands up anyone who's done that. Either sat on uh, one of your, those uh, plastic chairs at home when you're at the... Uh, at the uh, a barbecue, or if you've been on holiday, or, or the other one, isn't it? You know where you have those sunbeds, you know, and, and you kind of you you kind of like lean up and put your hands on the end, and then all of a sudden they tip up, right? <laughs> you know, you do a bit of gymnastics, you know, a bit of forward rolling off, you know. Uh, it, it's all uh, all good sport, and I and I wasn't injured, I wasn't hurt, just me pride, um, and plus I had to go and buy a new chair, you know, which was a bit of a because I was staying at my friend's house over in Spain, and uh, I thought, do I just like, like make out that nothing happened and let him sit on it and the back fall off? I thought, no, I can't do that, Mickey. You know, that 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 would be wrong. But it, the thought did go through my mind, so I had to go out and spend I don't know 50, 50 euros on uh, on one of these replica type chairs that look the same, um, but obviously not broken. Um, so uh, so yeah. Uh, I did. I did actually do break another chair, but I can't tell you about that one. That was on the beach, one of those kind of ones that had like oh, I don't know. It's like a, a plasticky kind of seat, you know, that you take to a beach and you sit down and and I put the bottom through. So uh, that was after I'd had my lunch. <laughs> say say no more, Mickey. Say no more. So they're doing plenty of work on this uh, this start line, by the way. So it's obviously taken a, a bit of hammer. Um, during the course of the day and uh, and you generally work on this don't you is that you know if you're if you're getting through I think they the target is is to do 20 races an hour so yeah so I think 20 races an hour which is allows three minutes for um, you get your line up your start get them off the track and get your next ones going if you can do 20 an hour then that's uh, that's a reasonably good pace and then um, the trouble is, is that if you do get incidents or you do need to have downtime to uh, do some maintenance work on the track, um, every minute that goes by, um, it's um, races that need to be made up. And that's, uh, that's really where we are at this uh, stage of the day, where we're looking to get through all of the men's racing. And once we've done that, then uh, we'll be able to pack up for the evening and then come back again uh, tomorrow morning nice and early and get the, the racing going again i think what one of the uh, the latest ones that i think i've ever commentated on i think from a, a bass round this going back a number of years when there was probably 
what best part of a thousand cars. Uh, I mean, this weekend um, on uh, drivers, uh, 683 drivers uh, that are uh, signed on. So uh, looking at where we were, Bass between Bass round one, two, and now three, then it's all kind of comparable. I think the uh, the most we had, I think, was first round down at uh, Pendine, was it? Where we, I think, we had seven, about 7:30. Yeah, there was seven, I think it was 7.13 or 7.10 or at, uh, at Cumde. So, yeah, around the same sort of, uh, around the same sort of figure. And uh, as I say, six, what were we on? Six, nine, six ninety-three years, yeah, 700 ish. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's the sort of ballpark figure these days, isn't it? Where, 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 where the bass is. Yeah, you just got, and it is a lot of racing. When you divide that, you know, uh, if you just divide it by eight and then uh, times it by three, that kind of gives you the, the volume of races we need to get through on over two days. If you throw semi-finals into that as well, then you throw in reruns and then you throw in your finals. Um, yeah, it's a lot of racing that, uh, that we need to go to. Uh, the good thing is, though, is that uh, um, all you uh, spectators, both trackside and at home, get to see plenty of action for your money. And that is what it's, uh, it's all about, about getting uh, good entertainment from the racing, enjoying what we see. And at times, it can uh, be a little bit uh, uh, frustrating when uh, there is some, uh, some downtime. But, you know, um, we've done it long enough to know that that's racing. You know, sometimes you can have um, a, a meeting that just absolutely flows through without incident but in general terms you're always good for a few reruns and uh, and a few incidents along the way uh, even at club level yeah that's uh, that you're quite right there and uh, uh, and it is it's great to see that we've got so many people prepared to uh, to go and travel and support um, all of these uh, big meetings. So as that uh, sun starts to drop in our eyes down here in commentary, we are getting ready for uh, the rerun of uh, the men's race two of the Super Saloons, sponsored by Max Sport, DM uh, Design and Fabrication. Clive Williams, Barry Ashmore, Darren Adams, Kerry Pope, Tom Page, Cameron Mills. And uh, there you go, deja vu, Cameron Mills, cum D9, He's back out leading this one. Round the turn two. Oh, as Mills, he turned it round. <gasps> Woo! He hasn't, but wow. I thought he was going to get contact there with uh, Darren Adams. Tie for uh, 1 1 3 up in that mix as well. Clive Williams is uh, putting the pace down. And then Kerry Pope in that spalled in 82. But uh, what a mission this lad's on at the moment. Wow, showing his undercarriage. And it is Cameron Mills then from uh, Darren Adams, Border Counties, 26 in second. Third is Kerry Pogman, he's spooled in 82. Then we go Barry Ashmore in the 5-1-4. Typhi 1-1-3 of Clive Williams. That is how they're running. And picking up last lap flag already. And it is Cumney 9, Cameron Mills up into trade stand turn three. Round there in the start gate turn. And he's being chased down still by Darren Adams. But Darren is going to have to settle for that third place. But there's a battle going on for uh, for third. And it is between Ashmore. But uh, check a flag. Cum D9. Cameron Mills uh, takes the win. Well done, Cameron. Second is Darren Adams. Border count is 26. Third is going to go to Barry Ashmore in Spalding 514. Kerry Pope in Spalding 82. Next to show. And that final class seven is Typhi 113, and that is Clive Williams. So that's your class sevens done and dusted. That's their two heats uh, finished. And uh, I think uh, we're going to try and get um, some of these reruns uh, uh, done and dusted because we should have uh, class uh, nine material on the line, and we are off and uh, racing down here at the uh, glorious setting of uh, North uh, Shropshire. Dust flicking up, and it's had water on as well as they uh, bring it round. And who's going to come and show on this in front of me? It's ARC5. It is uh, Phil Cooper. So uh, race two is uh, the one that they're watching and uh, taking them down. It, it still is there. Where's that uh, Dave Palmer machine? Jenny Shepherd, uh, Josh Morgan, Sam Pinches as well. Oh, we've got one round. But still going, it's Cooper then from uh, Stroudon District 27. 
as they uh, bring around Shepard into that uh, third uh, place there. So uh, still going Sam Aldridge in the uh, 27. And uh, already we're going for last lap flag. Phil Cooper it is then. Needs maximum points from uh, Scott Aldridge, from uh, Jenny Shepard. Then we go down to Sam Pinches, ARC uh, 31, Dave Palmer, and PhD1 of uh, Steve Lindsay. Lindsay had a third earlier today, and that's not going to do him too good, is it? But Phil Cooper takes the win from uh, Sam Aldridge in Stroud and District 27. Jenny Shepard is our subset 22. From Sam Pinches in Radford 35, ARC 31, Dave Palmer, and PhD one, Steve Lindsay. So uh, that is your extract uh, class nine series sponsors and dig it plant hire class nine race two done. We should have one more on the line and that will bring out uh, race five. So Mark Barker, Carl Dyke Whitfield, Jamie Dodd, Jason Richardson, Reese Weatherick, Chris Colgate and Archie Rose. That uh, is who should be uh, out there. And we are off and uh, running. And who's got that uh, good start down there? I think coming out of that middle grid, uh, weather it, Colgate. But uh, dust flicking up. Oh, there was a little bit of contact, nothing too much. It's IK99, North Wales 8, Eastern 26. Then they go down into that Pennine uh, 5 machine of Jason uh, Richardson. As again, they uh, bring it down. Reese uh, Weatherick, IK99 then. Um, down into uh, turn one. Shaping the back of that car and firing it down. Reese Weatherick then. Uh, but this is a battle gun and Barker's up there as well. North Wales 8, Jamie Dodd. Uh, who's got the work to do at the back? I think it might be that uh, Archie Rose machine. Stroud and District uh, 22. But coming round this time, we are going to see the last lap flag. One more lap to go on this one. IK99, Reese Weatherick, uh, one to go for you, sir, from uh, Mark Parker in the 26 uh, machine. Round they go, still uh, trying to push hard and trying to close down that gap. But at the moment, the, uh, there's only one who looks like he may uh, get this one. But he's uh, hold on, has he slowed it too much? No, he was playing with us. It's Reese Weatherick takes the win from Mark Parker. From uh, the uh, Pennine 5 machine, Jason uh, Richardson. Following uh, that, we uh, we move it down. That's Stroud and District 22, by the way. Archie Rose was uh, the uh, last uh, man across the line. And that means that after uh, five races of the nines and our two reruns, we are done and dusted. So uh, well done. Uh, we've got uh, three water bowsers coming out onto the track um, I think uh, two are in operation at the moment um, the third one also has got the grading bar on the front but uh, back up on the line we are going back to uh, our men's class two so it's rerun time again oh I know we've had a couple of reruns but we have got race seven and eight they were taken off the line for that uh, work that was done on the track so to take you through runners and riders it's over to Tim Jones yeah, thank you, Mickey. So, yeah, back with men's class two, heat two, and we're going with race seven. So, uh, the race that was uh, turned off the line, they've gone back onto the line, and uh, we're hopefully all being well. We should see George Cresswell in uh, Scunny 127, Jamie Lane in Radford 941, Sean Grocott in Seven Valley 21, Brad Ellison in York 16, Martin Bannerman in Pennine 187, Dan Owen in North Shropshire 15, and last but by no means least, Matt Sawyer in PAC 23. So that's your lineup for race seven of the Millford Car and Commercial Repairs sponsored men's class two. Of course, Fleet Care Services is your very kind bus sponsor. As we look down towards the line, the uh, Bowsers onto uh, the circuit, giving a good old, uh, old watering down the uh, far side and round the start gate turn. And also across the start line as well. So uh, even Stephen watering it right the way across the track. And I think the Bowsers is just about done as they make their way off the uh, raceway. And then that will leave it clear for race seven of uh, men's class two as uh, 
we look then for track clearance very very shortly and already bungee lifts and already we uh, go racing as uh, down that uh, far side it's uh, Matt Sawyer in PAC 23 is the uh, first one uh, to show ahead of I think that George Cresswell in Scully 127 but uh, coming through the middle of the pack Jamie Lane it is who's uh, finds some ground and takes up the running in uh, 9 4 1 and around the start gate with two then Matt Sawyer in PAC 23 Ellison running third in 16 as they go down that uh, far side with uh, Andy Owen on the Dan Owen on the outside in North Shropshire 15 but back round towards us with another lap uh, successfully in the book still Jamie Lane your race leader 941 Allison in second in win at York 16 then comes uh, Matt Sawyer in PAC at 23 somebody coming through the middle that's uh, George Cresswell who switched to the inside line and gains ground up to second George joins second he goes as he's got uh, the uh, York 16 machine right on that outside line and one lap to go then this time around it's all very very close at the front Jamie Lane no still your race leader 94116 Scully 127 from PAC at 23 then comes Dan Owen in North Shropshire 15 from the Berry Machine in Pennine 187 and completing it all then that will be Sean Grocott in Sun Valley 21 but eyes to the front he's led right from almost from the word go and uh, he's going to take another win as well Jamie Lane Radford 241 takes it your 16 Scunthorpe 127 from Matt Sawyer PAC 23 Dan Owen in North Shropshire 15 and Martin Berryman in Pennine 187 and Sean Grocott in Sem Valley 21. So that's uh, race seven done and dusted. So uh, looking down towards the line, I think we're going with race eight. So uh, race eight then brings out Ash Robinson in Spalding 43, Adam Smith in PAC 29, Stephen Heath in Pennine 65, Dieter Tamal in Atherson 99 Darren Williams in Command and 6 Kieran Griffiths 7 Valley 4 and Sian Rowlands North Wales 57 already away and racing we go and in the inside it's Ash Robinson that uh, takes up the running but he's pushed wide coming out of turn 2 but just about holds the lead as your race leader 43 it is then PAC 29 North Wales 57 Sian Rowlands looking on that inside line in that, uh, that North Wales machine as they go down that far side Kieran Griffiths back down the order as well in Sem Valley number four but out front still Ash Robinson in uh, this bowling 43 machine of course uh former class two champ in the Spalding 43 machine command the six also running in a good strong second place Darren Williams in command the six but coming under challenge from the PAC machine that's Adam Smith on that uh, inside line Kieran Griffiths also looking to gain ground as well in seven valley four with North Wales 57 Siam Rowlands also in there as well but already already on to the last lap they go Ash Robinson Spalding 43 one to go command the six PAC 29 seven valley four North Wales 59 and one we haven't mentioned but uh, we'll give him a shout out Dieter Tamal will complete it all in Atherson 99 but uh, back to the front nobody's going to catch your race leader Ash Robinson with about seven or eight car lengths clear and he's going to take a win 55 points then on the board Spalding 43 takes the win come on the six from Ash from uh, PAC 29 Kieran Griffiths gains ground and finishes in about fifth in seven valley four from uh, North Wales 15 and completes an all then Dieter Tamal in Atherston 99. So that completes, uh, almost completes class two, but uh, we have got two reruns to come. So uh, we're going by the revised race order. We're going to class eight. We're going to Liam. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. So uh, men's class eight, then second round of qualifying wow they were on the line but they're off and they're down the straight and already headed for turn one as we get away with race one so who's going to be the first one to show as they all get it going it's not quite a clean break as we got cars facing the wrong way but at the moment then where's halfway it is that's going to lead them round in Braden Hill, uh, number one as he goes down the far side Juggins runs second in Scunthorpe number 50 the race really on for third as they go down the far side where's Daniel Smith he's dropped back he's in about sixth place in Ludlow 44 but where's halfway it is in number one Juggins runs second Beresel up to third Ash Hubbard relegated to fourth then we go to the Ludlow 44 and Ludlow 4 machine of Bryn Powell but start as you mean to go on 
red flags on race one of your men's class eight. So as I said, it did get messy going into turn one. I think Owen Lloydle in Invict Kent 28 is the one who's unfortunately found himself square wheeled. He has uh, managed to get it going again very gingerly over on uh, turn one, but uh, he has managed to get it going. So I'm sure he's gonna make his way into the pit by himself. But as I said, got a little bit messy going into turn one. And unfortunately that does bring out the dreaded red flags on your man's class eight. So we didn't do too bad in the first round of qualifying. I think we had uh, four reruns out of 10 races. So uh, to be fair, anything over 50% with class eight is a, a pretty good return. But uh, we're already a quarter of a way there with race one. So that gets red flagged. They will make their way into the pits and into the rerun lane. We're gonna look to race two, which is down there on the line. Now race two brings out two heat winners from the first round of qualifying. Dave Watkins, Hereford 282 and Tom Lewis in BC 55. We're gonna have to tell you the rest as they get away from the line because they're already off again. A bit of a messy start, but Tom Lewis it is. That leads him into turn one in Border Counties 55. I said it was a messy start, and that brings out, surprise, surprise, red flags, and oh, slow it down, boys. As uh, I think Tom Lewis was uh, early on the brakes in BC 55, he's seen the red flags, and a few people behind him didn't. And uh, there was contact after the red flags, but I think that was, as I said, down to just a few drivers not seeing the red flags come out. So uh, not doing too well at the moment, are we? Two races, and uh, I don't think we completed a lap yet. So uh, race two joins race one into the rerun lane. Race three down there on the line, of course. Big thank you to uh, Beresford Chassis and Components and DM Racing for their sponsorship. Speaking of DM Racing, Dan McKenzie's out in this one. Cambridge 44, again, we'll pick the rest up as they get away. It's a cleaner break this time. Can they make it into turn one and out turn two without any incidents? We're gonna be hoping, fingers crossed, as they slide it round. It's gonna be Dan McKenzie then that leads them round. In Cambridge 44, taking that outside line. The one sitting in second is the Comdy 115 machine, but having no luck at the front is uh, Matt Owen looking for a way through. Can't make it stick at the moment as they go down there. Mackenzie it is. Mackenzie's out wide. Owen's up the inside. This time does make it work, but Mackenzie fights back as they come past us. Yeardley runs third in the Sturrett machine in 691. Not to be discounted at the moment as they go down the far side for another time. Who is it going to be out of turn two this time? Mackenzie still looks like the one with the bit between his teeth. His last lap flag. It's 44 from 115 from 691. Then we're going to go to Craig Pine. Island treble six, Harry Lewis in YD90, Solway eight from Ron Garrett in Breeden and uh, Breedenel 169. But down the far side, Mackenzie it is, with about quarter of a lap to go into the final turn he goes. Cambridge 44 it is, that takes the win. 115 takes second, Yearly takes third. Fourth goes to Craig Pyle, fifth goes to Harry Liversidge. Six is going to be Solway number eight of Paul Sharp and then coming across to complete it all is Ron Garrett in Breeden, Breeden Hill 169. I've just made the very silly mistake of putting my elbow on the table in uh, commentary, forgetting that it is about 150 degrees, so uh, skinned all my elbow, so I got a little boo-boo, but I'm sure we'll continue. Anyway, race four, down there on the line, another heat winner, and probably, in my opinion, the fastest person we've seen around this track today, Ross Shepard. He's out in South Somerset number three. Can he make it two wins out of two? There's a couple in this that could definitely stop him, but uh, they're gonna have to pedal hard, because Shepard's the first one to show. In South Somerset number three, is he gonna be the first one out just about as Chadwick runs with him in 151, but Ross Shepard it is. That takes him round. Chadwick runs second, but up the inside is Justin Thomas in North Option number 40 as he looks to make his move, but Chadwick's got too much experience. He's too quick to let someone through. Shepard with two more to go. Chadwick with two more to go. Justin Thomas, Colin Lydon in 13 is the next one across. And I think we go to James Dorsey in 292 as he uh, looks to make a move around the outside of Jake Harden in the uh, PhD 25 machine. But at the front, it's last lap flag. It's one more to go. Ross Shepard, is this the fastest man in Class 8 racing at the moment? He certainly looks like it this weekend. 
He's looked like it for the majority of the season as he leads them round once more. Chadwick runs second. Third is Justin Thomas, just about from Colin Linen. But Colin's at the inside. Can he make a last ditch move? It's checkered flag. It's two out of two for Rush Shepherd. Chadwick takes second. Thomas takes third. Linen fourth. Fifth goes to James Dorset. Sixth is Jake Harden. And uh, last but by no means least, all the way over from Central Scotland, Stuart McLean in uh, CS number 17. So Rush Shepherd then, two wins out of two, becomes the first man this weekend in men's class H to do it. One person who can join him is Steve Mills in come D number 10. He's down there on the line. Matt Bishop's down there. He had a second. Phil Tolbert, Solway two. Peter Bilbley, York treble eight. Mike Mumford, Michael Tinkle Abbott, Paul Lockwood, and Jordan Candy. So we rushed through the names and we had time to go through the numbers as well. But looking around the circuit, we've got track clearance now, have we? Indeed we have. So keep your eye on C10 then, Steve Mills. He's looking to repeat Rush Shepard and make it two wins out of two. Is he going to do it? He's the quickest one out of the gate and he's the quickest into turn one. Is he the quickest out of turn two? No, he's gone out wide and Bishop comes through in 73 as he leads the way. Mills looks back up the inside though, doesn't quite make it stick, so it's 73 from number 10. As they go down the far side, Jordan Candy with problems aboard the Stroud in District 17. He finds himself at the tail end of the field. Well, at the front, Steve Mills looks up the inside, doesn't make it stick still as we uh, go back to third then Mumford it is Tolbert runs fourth in Solway number two but the race really heating up at the front as Matt Bishop it is in 73 that fights back round the outside takes up the running drifts out wide Mills is back up the inside he hasn't got the speed his last lap flag this time he's got three quarters of a lap to try and make a challenge as third is still Mumford fourth is Tolbert fifth Here's Michael Tinkle Abbott. Then we go to Paul Lockwood and Peter Bilbley in York treble eight. But at the front is checkered flag. It's a second and a first for Matt Bishop. It's a first and a second for Steve Mills. Mumford's the next one across. Tolbert, then Michael Tinkle Abbott, then Peter Bilbley. And after the same result in the first heat, Paul Lockwood getting it all wrong on the final lap and unfortunately limping home to take the uh, final few points uh, available in the race. So not too sure what's happening with Paul. He'd he done the same in the first heat. He was running fairly well and uh, let it all slip on the last lap. And he's done the same again here. But uh, I'm sure that uh, he will be looking to improve on that in heat three tomorrow. So race six then is down there on the line. Another heat winner, Gethin Lewis. BC40, can he join Rush Shepherd on 110 points? Zoe Leyland, Matt Middleton, Dan Stead, Dan Ray, Jamie Meehan, Graham Moss, and Carl Burns are the ones that are going to join him. But uh, it looks like Lewis is the first one to show as they go into turn one. Where's Dan Ray? Oh, someone on the outside getting an all wrong. Trying way too hard. But Gethin Lewis it is. That emerges at the front. Matt Middleton didn't have the best of runs in heat one. And running a lot stronger this time as he's there in second. Dan Ray runs third in YD52. Dan Ray had a second. So uh, he'll be looking to improve on that third. Gethin Lewis though it is. That's looking to make it two out of two. He's gone mighty wide, but he's got the speed to hold it off. He's going to stick to that wide line. Dan Ray switches, takes up the inside, momentarily takes up the lead, but doesn't have the speed to carry it down the far side. As the last half flag gets made ready this time, it's 40 from 52 from 88. Middleton is nowhere near out of this yet. He's still very much in the mix as he looks at the inside array. Apologies to the rest, but we're going to run with the best as the top three it is that go down the far side. Gethin Lewis looking to make it two out of two. 110 points at the end of day one. There is no better. He's gone wide, but we see he's got the speed. He carries it through, or does he? Well, that was tight. Lewis from Ray. Then we go to uh, Middleton, Meehan. Carl Burns is the next one across. Then I think Dan Stead just from Graham Moss in White Rose number one. So I've actually got no one else next to me in commentary to find out who won that. So I am going to turn to the right. If uh, Mark Grice can hear me, then uh, can he get a winner for us, I wonder? Because that was very tight as they come across the line. Geth and Lewis look to carry the speed on the outside line. But uh, Dan Ray certainly snuck through on the inside and it was very very close but uh, if i had to say from my point of view i thought geth and lewis just about snatched it in bc40 but uh, we will await official confirmation so uh, that is race six done then i'll tell you what the races we have got through 
have been absolutely fantastic, haven't they? And uh, I'm sure you wouldn't expect anything less from men's class eights. As I said, very kindly sponsored this weekend by uh, DM Racing and very kindly sponsored over the course of the series by uh, Beresford Chassis and Components. So that was race six. Race seven then, looking at the uh, lineup, doesn't actually bring out any heat winners. So uh, is this the first race where we've not had a heat winner? No, race four didn't have one either. So uh, no heat winners in this one. Adam Jones, BC69, is the best of the bunch. He had a second. So 45 points for Jonesy is uh, going to sit him. I think he lost to Rush Shepard in his uh, first seat. No, it was Tom Lewis, I think. So uh, I think Jonesy lost to Tom Lewis in his first seat. But uh, he'll be looking to improve. On that second, Gaz Edwards then, North Wales 55. He had a third in heat one. And uh, I was told earlier on by uh, a few people that the North Wales lads are taking over. But uh, if that's going to be the case, then Gaz Edwards has to come out and uh, take a win in this one in order to boost his points up. Those two then are joined by Andrew Sharp. Solway number three, didn't have the best of the first heats. Mark Barker's down there, Evesham 25. Thomas Browning in St. Neots 141. Reese Candy in South Somerset, 24. Dave Williams, not my dad, but Dave Williams, the racer in North Shropshire, number 60. And Dan Barnard in Scunthorpe, 181. So uh, that is your lineup for race seven of your men's class eight. Of course, two reruns to come your way a little bit later on. For those of you that are uh, a little bit confused with uh, why we're seeing class eights so early, then uh, it is because, of course, they do have semi-finals, so uh, you will see a change of running order tomorrow as well, uh, which uh, I'm sure most of you that are familiar with the bass will become accustomed to because, as I said, those that have semi-finals, they need to get the third heats done as quick as possible so they can sort out all the points to get the top 16 to then get them into their semi-finals. So, uh, obviously, we have been a little bit tight on time. What is it now? Quarter past six. So, uh, they did decide, I think, in uh, my opinion, very wisely, to uh, put the class eights out a little bit earlier and uh, not wait around for them because they do need their uh, second eats to go through and get the results. So as I said, they could put the third eats out early tomorrow so we can go into the semi-finals. So uh, that is the reason for the change of, uh, of lineup. Of course, after the class eights, I think we are, uh, I think we're going back to normal. I think we've got fours, sixes, uh, stock hatches, tens, and uh, the rest remains to be seen. Because as I said, time is pushing on, but uh, this is uh, through no fault of the North Shropshire Club, and uh, they've certainly done everything they can to uh, to make this meeting run as smoothly as possible. And I tell you what, it might have been a long day up to this point, but what a day it's been! It has been absolutely fantastic. The racing has been uh, second to none. I know there's a few people that I've spoke to around this track throughout the uh, day that haven't been here before. They unfortunately didn't attend the last bus round. But everyone has said to me, wow, what a circuit this is, what a venue, and, uh, and what a club as well. And what a meeting it's shaping up to be. Race 7 in men's class 8 is on and off the line as they get away. Jonesy was quick, but Gaz Edwards looks to go with him. So uh, it's an outside versus an inside grid as they go into turn one. The track is obviously a little bit damp, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But Jonesy it is from Gaz Edwards. Candy then runs third, Barker runs fourth in each of 25. Everyone taking the wide line throughout this top turn. So they've obviously seen the water go down. They don't want to hit it. They want to keep it wide. They want to keep the power down. And unfortunately, they're not going to be able to do it for much longer because red flags come out on race seven of your man's class eight. So not too sure why, but uh, red flags are, right? So either I've missed something or the marshals wasn't happy with something that they've obviously seen with... Uh, they're very keen eye. That's why they marshal and I don't, because I miss a lot of things. So uh, we will have to wait and see what the verdict is on that one. But race seven, nevertheless, joins race one and race two in the rerun lane. We look to the line and we got race eight. I'll tell you what, this one. If, the, if this one manages to get through the first time, then this is going to be some brilliant race. Two heat winners coming out in race eight. Liam Nichols in Yorkshire Dales, number seven, and Mitch Wells in Invicta Kent, 356. So both of those two won their first heat. Of course, Mitch Wells won the last bass as well in Invicta Kent, 356. I think I said then two weeks ago that Mitch looked frighteningly quick. He certainly looked it 
in his first heat uh, today as well. So those are the two to keep your eye on. But they're joined by Graham Bennett in the Forrester Dean number seven. Graham had a second and had one of the best races of the day as well in uh, Forrester Dean number seven. I think it was actually with Mitch Wells because I think it was Mitch that actually beat him in his first heat. So those two have met again in heat two. And uh, I'm sure Spanner will be looking for some sort of revenge to uh, try and gain that advantage from second into first. But uh, it doesn't end there. We've got Chris Dance in Radford 62. We've got Sean Wright in Scunthorpe 71. Lee Tolbert in Sturton 187. Aaron Cavagan in Yorkshire's number five. And Reese Wyeth in the uh, Wessex 19. So a very, very strong and competitive lineup of your man's class eight for race eight. Just looking to the line, it seems like Dan Barnard, unfortunately, didn't make it off the line in uh, race seven. So uh, there is a uh, recovery truck out there ready to uh, sort him out and take him back into the pit. So uh, problems for Dan. I'll tell you what, Dan Barnard doesn't have the best of luck, does he, with uh, his class eight machine. When it's going well, it goes really well. When it doesn't go well, it just goes absolutely abysmal. And uh, as I said, very much down on his luck. But he is due some at some point in the near future. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to come this weekend as he uh, finds himself being taken off the circuit. So as I said, once he gets off, then that should leave us free to go racing with race eight. Chris Dance, Sean Wright, Lee Tolbert, Liam Nichols, Aaron Cavagin, Mitch Wells, Graham Bennett and Reese Wyeth. So keep your eyes on Mitch Wells as he's the first one to show where is going to be Liam Nichols? He runs second. What line's he going to take? He's going out wide. Mitch Wells has got the speed, has he? Yes, he has. 3.56 from number seven. There, the front two. So run into the form book. Where's Spanner? He's down in about fourth, fifth. He moves up to fourth. But at the front, Liam Nichols on the outside line in Yorkshire Dales. Number seven, Mitch Wells has got the tighter line. Has he got the speed? These two neck and neck. And it's Nichols that takes up the running in Yorkshire Dales. Number Number seven, as they move on to another circuit, Mitch Wells runs second. These two are weighing on from Sean Wright, who runs there in third. Spanner runs fourth in the uh, 7F. Then uh, at the uh, back end is Aaron Cavagin in Yorkshire Dales number five. But at the front, it's all to play for. As Wells looks at the inside, doesn't make it stick. We're going to run with these two. Wells climbing all over the back of Liam Nichols, but uh, slows it down. Oh, no. Mitch is gone. He's out of it in 3.56. He's gone from second all the way back to about fifth place. That's allowed Liam Nichols to move on and take the win. Two out of two for YD7. Sean Wright takes second. Spanner takes third. Fourth is Aaron Cavagin. Mitch Wells takes fifth in Invicta Kent 3.56. And Reese Wyeth in Wessex 19 comes across in that final position. But I tell you what, that is going to shake the points up completely. Liam Nichols becomes the second driver of the weekend to make it two wins out of two. Mitch Wells, a first and a fifth. Wow, I tell you what, he's going to need a win in Heat 3 tomorrow, isn't he, to get into that semi-final. Well, that's going to be interesting. Race 9, though, is also going to be interesting. It's on and off the line as they get away. No heat winners in this one. Chris Pope had a second. He's the best of the bunch. Where is he? He's also running second in this race. There's whole right it is. That takes out the running in North Shropshire, 199. A little bit of contact towards the back, but nothing too major. So it's Holroyd from Pope. There you one and two as they go down the far side for another time and into this bottom turn. Pope, he's looking for a way through. Not going to find it. 199 from number eight. Third is uh, Pinches in 53. Then Bayard in 102. Who's going to be the next one across? True Butters just dropping back a little bit and not able to make his move work. And Hesse well down the order in 75. So Connor Jones it is that runs fifth. But Popey is moving on to another lap as he takes up the running. It's his final circuit in Spalding number eight. Holroy still there in second in North Shropshire 199. The race really on for third, I'll tell you what. Bayard is on an absolute mission in Stroudon District 1 or 2. Right round the outside he goes as Pinches gets relegated to fourth. Can he fight back? His checkered flag. Chris Pope takes the win. Holroyd second. Bayard takes third. Pinches fourth. Connor Jones takes fifth. And Drew Butters comes across in sixth. And James Hesselton, very uncharacteristically in York 75, comes across the line at the tail end of the field to complete it all. 
That completes race nine. Doesn't quite complete class eights because we've got race 10 down there on the line. And race 10, again, doesn't bring out any heat winners. But I'll tell you what, if you were at these... Ne oh, it does bring out a heat winner, actually. Looking at it, James Bow. I'm sure James had a win in uh, Pennine number nine. I've not wrote it down, but I'm convinced that he did. So James Bow, I'm sure, a heat winner in heat one. Daz Mullen is down there. He had a second. Emily Gill is down there in Scunthorpe number 20. I think Emily took a third. Sam Matthews. Sam got a black flag, I think, in the first round of qualifying. So he'll be looking to improve. Craig Dodd in North Wales number nine. Anthony Coyne, Carlo number 80. Of course, he took a roll in his first attempt. Did come back out in the rerun, but I think only picked up fifth or sixth place points. So he needs a good run. And Rich Cooper in Evesham number two is uh, the final one to go into this race as they get away from the line. Matthews, very quick. He was quick out of the gate in his first attempt, but unfortunately didn't get any points. But he leads as Cooper looks up the inside. Look at this. We got six cars and any one of these six is in with a contention of winning it. But it's Cooper from Matthews. There you're one and two. Matthews round the outside takes up the running as Mullen looks to follow him round in the Yorkshire Dales machine. Mullen looking to improve on that second, but uh, not doing it at the moment as Cooper fights back. It's Evesham number two that leads the way. James Bow, a heat winner, running in fourth, keeping it tight, but losing speed as Mullen looks round the outside. He's up into second and up into first as they go down into that bottom corner for another time. Mullen pushes on. Cooper's back. His last lap flag. Does this race have to end? I'll tell you what, what a race we have as Cooper it is in Evesham number two. That leads him round onto the final circuit. Mullen will not give up. He switches his line. He goes up the inside in 37. Can he keep it tight? Is Cooper going to fight back? His checkered flag, it's going to be Rich Cooper from Daz Mullen. Then we go to James Bow, Sam Matthews, Emily Gill. And uh, last, but by no means least, is going to be the uh, Carlo machine of uh, Anthony Coyne at the back of the pack. But what a race that was. Six cars. And I'll tell you what, I think out of the six cars, we had four race leaders throughout the majority of it. But I think Rich Cooper it was that just about took the win in Evesham number two. So Daz Mullen sits on two seconds in YD 37. James Bowe a first and a third. Emily Gill a third and a fifth. Sam Matthews a black flag and a fourth, I think. So uh, the point's certainly getting shaken up in men's class eights. I got three reruns to come your way, but uh, not coming anytime soon. But speaking of reruns, we got two rerun on the line. So it's back over to Tim. Yeah, thank you, Liam. So, uh, yeah, this is a rerun of race three of the uh, men's uh, class two. Uh, no time to tell you who's there or who isn't, but we know uh, Will Alford is because he uh, just about leads into turn one. But uh, it's Lee Kent, another first uh, heat winner that uh, goes with him in North Wales 38. Harvey also on the outside in C63 as they all bunch up going round the start gate turn. It's Alford that's got his nose in front. Penai 13 it is that uh, leads away. But look at this scrap that Second place slot, North Wales 38. Sam Doddridge also in as well in 5. 1 5 in PhD at 29. That's uh, Ryan Smith. But uh, all the while, well, they're scrapping for third, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Your race leader just getting uh, further away than Will Alford. Pinot at 13 at his end. That's uh, just starting to uh, lead the way. Lee Kent's now just about got himself through into that uh, second place slot. But uh, that PhD machine right on that outside line as they go uh, down that uh, far side also. Ollie Stevens not out of this either in Ludlow 15. One lap to go then. Will Alford, Pinot 13, North Wales 38 from uh, PhD at 19. Also the... Uh, the uh, uh, Ollie Stevens machine looking to uh, gain ground as well in Ludlow 15 as they go down the far side as uh, we enter the uh, turn one and turn two then for the final time and it's going to be the race win of 55 points on the board Pano 13 then takes it PAC at 29 from Ollie Stevens from Chris Doddridge from Lee Kent North Wales 38 Ian Harvey in C63 and one we didn't mention but uh, he come home and completes a Rich Owen in North Wales number one OK, that's uh, race three done and dusted. Looking down towards the line by process of elimination, we would say this is uh, race six. So race six then brings out Andrew Wilde in North Wales 171, Carl Blackmore, PAC 76, Nigel Bishop in Radford 80, Tom Stevens in Ludlow 55, Gareth Stokes in Pennine 87, 
Uh, Craig Conway, another first heat winner in Scunthorpe 126. And Clint Foles also should be there in Penau in Pennine 84. So that's your lineup for uh, the uh, rerun of race sixes. But uh, looking down towards the line, it looks uh, a fair depleted grid from uh, where we are. So looking on camera, then uh, there is uh, a couple of three spaces. So uh, obviously we're going without uh, one or two drivers. But uh, we'll see who's there and who's not as uh, we're going to look for track clearance very shortly as then the uh, bungee will very slowly lift. And we go racing with uh, Heat 2 of Men's Class 2. And uh, as they make their way into Turn 1, it's the uh, Pennine machine, Clint Foles, that uh, leads into Turn 1. But it's the other, uh, well, one of the other Heat winners then, Craig Conway, in Scunny 126, that takes up the running just ahead of uh, Clint Foles in Pennine 84. Uh, as we go round the start gate turn, for the first time of asking Conway already a, uh, with a fair old race lead from the uh, second uh, second place machine that's going to be uh, Clint Foles in uh, Pennine 84 as they come by us once again Conway still your race leader from Pennine 87 who's come through to that second place lot Gareth Stokes it is at the wheel of that one just ahead of Clint Foles in, PS, in uh, Pennine in uh, Pennine 84 as down that far side we go then just ahead of the North Wales machine. That's Andy Wilde in North Wales, 171 already. Just one lap to go. Conway on his way with one to go. Pen on 87, 84. Then comes North Wales, 171. And Carl Blackmore will complete it all in PAC 76 as he looks to uh, gain the place in the late stages as they go down the far side. But uh, nobody is going to catch a race leader. It's two wins from two for Conway. It's going to 126 then takes the win from uh, Pennine 87. Clint Foles in Pennine 84. North Wales 171 of uh, Andy Wilde. And then completing it all then will be Carl Blackmore in PAC 76. Right, that's all the Class 2's done and dusted. Next time we'll see them will be tomorrow for their third and final round of qualifying. Of course, we've got to get through to the top 16 because we've got semi-finals. So uh, we'll be taking the top eight from semi-final A and B. But we're going back to Class 8. We're back to Liam. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. A rerun of race one then is on and off the line as uh, they get away. Who's going to be the first one to show? Someone shooting around on three wheels and someone getting it wrong. Is that Juggins? I think it is. But the one who emerges at the front then, Jeff Beresford and Wes Hathaway in Braidnell number one. Beresford it is, though, on the inside line. That leads them round for the first time down the far side. Hathaway looking to fight back in Braidnell number one. Ash Howard, don't forget, a heat winner in the first round of qualifying. Where is he? He's about fourth, but moving his way through into third and looking to gain more ground. Hathaway it is, though, that leads. Howard's up to second in PhD 21. And keep your eyes on that PhD machine as he looks to move his way through the field. Relegated back to third, though, as it's all to play for at the front. It's last lap flag. It's Wes Hathaway from Ash Howard. Third is Bryn Powell taking that mighty wide line, but finding speed from somewhere. Juggins and Beresford are also in the mix in the uh, 50 and 55 machine, but it's going to be checkered flag already as they go into that bottom turn. Wes Hathaway, is he going to hold on? Is he? That's a big question. No, I don't think so. I think Ash Howard got him from the uh, Wes Hathaway machine and I think from where I was stood it was Juggins from Powell so uh, very tight across the line then I think the next one across was Beresford and Daniel Smith and uh, finishing it all was Owen Lloydell in Victor Kent 28 so brilliant stuff from men's class eight why couldn't they have done that at the first time of asking I know I wish they could but uh, at least they brought the reruns around very quickly. So uh, that was a rerun of race one. Rerun of race two, then, I'm hoping, should be down there on the line. Two heat winners, Dave Watkins and Tom Lewis. So Hereford 282 and BC 55, the ones that sit unbeaten after the uh, first round. Dan Tolbert, Callum Barker, Tyler Priest, Kevin McBride, Jake Herdman and Matt Stratton are the ones that are going to join them. So uh, is anyone going to go unbeaten? We're out to wait and see in this one 
as Tom Lewis looks to move his way through, but Trudman, it is that lead in Type 57. Tyler Priest runs second in the uh, Come D27 machine, but Lewis is up the inside in BC 55, and you can't let Tom Lewis get into his stride because he will get away. But running third at the moment, as Trudman, it is that leads him round 57 from 55 from 27. Tolbert in number six, Matt Stratton in each and 15. There we go to Callum Barker in the uh, Stroud and uh, Scarborough 50 machine and the Solway number four at the tail end of the field. So no Dave Watkins in Hereford 282, which is a bit surprising, but certainly Jake Herdman's in it and Tom Lewis are in it because they're the first two and Lewis is up the inside. He's made his move in BC 55. German looking to fight back, can't make his stick. Down the far side they go for the final time. Jerdman's looking for the tight line. Tom Lewis looking for the speed. His checkered flag is neck and neck. Well, pick a winner. Tyler Priest from the, the Tolbert machine. Matt Stratton, Callum Barker, and Solway number four was the next one across. I'm going to very politely ask Tim to pop next door to find out who won that because... I can't pick between Jay Kerdman and Tom Lewis. They were literally side by side as they uh, come across the line. We've got some water going down, so there we go. We've just about got time for Tim to nip next door to find out who won it. As I said, Tom Lewis and Jay Kerdman side by side as they uh, come across the line. As we've seen so often, especially with men's class eight so far today, it's uh, really photo finishes. And we were saying earlier about the, uh, the checkered flag. It is positioned very closely to the exit of turn two. And I'll tell you what, it makes things very interesting because if that checkered flag was, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 yards a little bit further up on the straight, then we would have different results. But because it is literally the first one out of that corner, it's providing such close finishes. And uh, obviously the inside line seems to be the shorter way around, but the outside line seems to have all the speed. So uh, hopefully we get a result. Tim, as I said, has popped next door. He will come back with the uh, results, so it's between Tom Lewis and Jake Herdman. Either way, both of them are sitting uh, very high up in the standings, especially in the bass. I think Tom Lewis sitting second in the bass. I think Jake Herdman was sitting third prior to this round. So uh, that's what I mean. The points are really, really interesting because as I've said, they're not just racing for points this weekend. They are racing for British Autograph Series points. I think Steve quite rightly said, and I think someone else said earlier, you get to drop four races over the course of the series. So uh, what's the verdict then, Tim? Well, there we go. So the winner, BC55, Tom Lewis takes, uh, what's that, two wins out of two? It is. So Tom Lewis then sits on two wins out of two. Ross Shepard sits on two wins out of two. And Liam Nichols sit on two wins out of two. So three drivers unbeaten throughout the class eight, throughout the second round of qualifying. We've still got a rerun of race seven, but uh, no heat winners from round one come out in that. But uh, the points are certainly shaping up to be uh, very interesting. I mean, Mitch Wells, he was a winner. He had a fifth. James Bow as well was another one who was a winner and didn't have it all his own way. So I'll tell you what, when we get these point sheets in tomorrow, it's, uh, it's going to be very, very close. Like I said, 124 points it was at the last bus to get you into the Class 8 semi-finals. I don't want to say anything, but judging by the standard of Class 8 racing this weekend, it could be even higher. It could be at least 130 to get you into the semis. We're we'll after to wait and see. So... That is one class then, class eights, of course, that has massive amounts of numbers and very close competitive racing. We're going to move on to a class that has a lot smaller numbers, the smallest numbers, I think, in the men's classes this weekend, but certainly equally as competitive as every other class. We're moving on to men's class fours. We've got two races to come your way, and it's over to Mr. Tim Jones. Yeah, thank you, Liam. So, uh, yeah, on to uh, men's uh, class four. So a Sutton Glass, of course, your very kind sponsor. As Bowser's end off the track, we'll pick uh, the runners and riders up as they uh, leave the line. As uh, once again, the bungee lifts and uh, we go racing. And it's uh, Melton 58, Jamie Williams on that uh, inside line, the first one to show, but uh, Mikey Jones it is, who's gone right round the outside in the Hereford 31 machine, and uh, Smart Driving takes up the running, H31 and here's Ross Fisher in uh, Penau number one, slotted into that uh, second place slot just ahead 
of Jamie Williams and Martin, 58. The imp looking to come through. That's uh, Stephen Morris in Tyfee, 28 as they go uh, down that far side with Graham Whittingham and SR61 also in there as well. But race leader still, Mike Jones, Hereford, 31. Just proving the mini still isn't dead in class four yet. 831, Mountain 58. There comes Penno, number one, with Graham Whittingham gaining ground in SR61 with uh, Stephen Morris just losing a, uh, a place or two as they go down the far side but uh, he uh, just uh, fights back on that uh, inside line but uh, all the while your race leader just getting further away Mike Jones it is H31 with one lap to go Jamie Williams in at Melton at 58 and then comes uh, the uh, Green Whittier machine SR61 Ross Fisher in Penau number one he's battling with Elan Lewis in PAC 71 and Stephen Morris in Typhi 28 and uh, we lost Clive Edwards in Typhi 33 and to the center of the raceway we haven't lost mikey jones because he's going to be your race winner another 55 points on the board 831 that takes it mountain 58 sr 61 ross fisher in Penau at number one pac 71 of elan lewis and completing all then Stephen morris in typhi 28 so good clean stuff from men's class four and uh, of course we just uh, need some recovery for clive edwards in Typhi 33. So while they get that sorted, let's have a look at, at race two. Race two then brings out Rob Lancaster in Radford 47. Darren Grasby in Esham 220. Ashley Littlewich in North Shropshire 112. Colin Natural in IK 272. Colin Davis in Typhi 155. Hugh Jones in Command 7. Andy Whittingham in SR 50. And last but by no means least, Daniel Jones in the imp in Penau. Number four, and away we go, and it is the imp, but it's Grasby that makes the best start this time in Evesham. 220, Hugh Jones also goes with him, as so does Daniel Jones in Penau at number four. Round turn one, and turn two we go. Still, Grasby, your ace leader, 220 from CM7. Nick of Lancaster has made some good ground. Up to 30 goes, Radford 47. Watch out for Colin Actual in IK 272. He's through to that uh, third place slot, but Hugh Jones on the outside line as well as they go down the far side. But, uh, still with Darren Grasby in Esham at 220 and Hugh Jones in command of the seven. These two old sparring partners in class four once again at it with, uh, with, uh, with the Lancaster machine also going well and gaining some serious ground as well in Radford. 47. He's through the second fighting with Grasby in each number 220. But Hugh Jones has got his nose in front as once again down the far side we go. Grasby still holding uh, second in 220. Lancaster still running third. One lap to go then as uh, Hugh Jones then uh, motors on with uh, Rob Lancaster. Radford sits uh, 47. Each number 220. Colin Natural, OK, 272. Then comes Ashley Lukowicz in North Shropshire, 112, with Andy Whittingham battling with Daniel Jones in the Pen 4 machine. Once again, down the far side we go, but uh, we're switching the right to the front. It's going to be another win, another maximum set of points. Hugh Jones, CM7 takes it, like Rob Lancaster in Radford, 47. Grasby in 220. Colin Natural, OK, 272. Ashley Lukowicz in North Shropshire, 112. Pen number four and uh, the uh, SR50 and completing it all then that is going to be the uh, Typhi 155 of Colin Davis OK, down towards the line, we're going onwards and upwards. Men's class sixes, heat to uh, race one, already away uh, from the line. Elite Racing Transmissions, your sponsor, managed quickest away in Evesham 5. He comes out of lane eight and leads into turn one. Dalt Thomas, your current bass leader in the command of the seven, also goes with him, switching to the inside as they come by us for the first time. Then comes uh, Conway, it's going to be 122 in that uh, third place lot, racing just ahead of Ollie Soul. It's in the 668, and then comes uh, the Martin Cannon machine in Evesham, uh, not to 91, but uh, eyes back then to the front. It's still Mickey Manning, or is it Dalt Thomas then switching to the outside, takes up the running command of the Evesham 5, then comes Skinny, 122, of Craig Conway, as still 1, 2, 3, Cannon now up to that fourth place in uh, Evesham, 2, 1, 2, 91, as once again down the far side we go, and Ollie Sol rounds it all out in St. Neat 668. But Dalt 
to lose then. Let's go and bring him round once again with uh, one lap to go. Come on, an eight, each and five. It's going 122, each and two, 91. And it's near to 668. So Adult only had a fourth this morning, so uh, I certainly needs a win to uh, just get himself up the points a bit and book himself a place in the final, and that's exactly what he's going to do. 55 points on the board. Dot Thomas, come on, an 810. Mickey Manning in each of five. Then comes Conway in 122. Each of 291 with Ollie Sol is sitting here at 668. And uh, that's who I think that's all we're going to have finish as uh, they make their way off the track. That completes race one of men's class sixes. OK, swiftly moving on then. Race two of the uh, Elite Racing Transmissions and PTS Caravan Transport sponsored sixes. Then uh, this one then brings out Anthony Conway in Scunthorpe 91. Andy Johnson in uh, Scarborough 16. Neil Reid in Typhi 221. James Sinnett in the CW 174. Paul Melly in Swansea 1. Stu Thompson in White Rose 3. Ben Gasby, another uh, first, first round uh, Heat winner in Pennine 7 and your national champion, of course, Darren Bryan in uh, Scarborough 41. So uh, apologies, it's Andy Johnson uh, Commercial Repairs, your sponsor. So we're uh, getting the paperwork all uh, all correct, all incorrect, but uh, we get that sorted. We get uh, race two sorted because it's off the line. And away we go then. Stu Thompson in White Rose 3 then. The uh, early race leader with Darren Bryan on that outside line. Melly's also in as well. And Swansea one so is uh, the Irish machine then. James Sinnott as he slots into that uh, second place. Slots it all thrown into the start gate turn. But Tom Owen is in White Rose 3. That leads the way. Sinnott running second in uh, CW 174. Just ahead of Conway in Scunny. 91 also in there as well is at Neil Reed in Typhi 221 but back round towards us two laps to go then Tomo White Rose at number three CW 174 Conway tries the big outside line it's going to 91 but uh, not to gaining ground as they go down the far side with Neil Reed in Typhi 221 and then Darren Bryan down the order a little bit in Scarborough 41 as uh, they come back round towards us Andy Johnson with it all to do with Scarborough 16 one to go then Tomo White Rose 3 it's going 91 CW 174. Then comes Neil Reed in 221. Then comes Darren Bryan in Scarborough 41. Paul Melly in the Swansea 1 and Andy Johnson rounds it all out in Scarborough 16. But uh, oh, he's to the front then. Stu Thompson is his luck about to change and a race win. White Rose 3 then. Tomo takes it from Conway and Scunny 91. James Sinnott and the Darren Bryan in Scarborough 41. Then comes Neil Reed. Paul Melly and completes it all then. Well, that will be Andy Johnson in Scarborough 16. So, good stuff from race two, race three then. Already assembled on the line. This one brings out Michael Keogh in Cum D, 4-3-3. Darren Thomas in Typhi, 66. Matthew Scarfield in YS, 22. Dane Copeland in uh, Scunny, 36. Jay, Colga Jay Colgate in North Wales, 20. Jordan Hampson in Pennine, 70. And Aaron Murray in Cum D, 80. So that's your lineup for race three. No first round winners in this one. Best of the bunch. I think we'll probably be Matthew Scarfield in YS22. But already assembled, ready on to the line. So we're going to be looking for track clearance then very, very shortly as the quad bike makes its way into the center of the uh, North Shropshire Raceway. And we can get uh, race three underway. Track clearance, bungee lifts, let's go racing. Men's class sixes are away from the line. And it's uh, the uh, Scunny 36 machine, Dave Copeland, who uh, leads the way. But uh, Colgate goes with him on that inside line in North Wales 20. A pass round two winner then at the front as uh, the uh, Pennine 70 machine, Jordan Hampson, also goes with him in Pennine 70. As uh, always, problems for Colgate in North Wales 20 also. Problems for somebody else, but uh, no problems because you've got red flags.
I don't quite know what that was for, but uh, OK, that's uh, there you go, back to the rear run lane. And let's try with the race four. Race four, Simon Morgan, Sem Rally 62. Tom Pipe, North Shopshire 5. D Jordan Copeland in Scunny 15. James Armstrong in Scarborough 76. Glyn Bailey in Scunny 33. Marnie Janes in Yorkshire Dales 10. And Andy Russell, IK 64. James, he took a win this morning. And uh, let's see what happens as they leave the line ahead towards turn one. Pipe, he's away in North Shopshire 5. So is at Copeland in 15. As uh, the all bunch up, somebody going right round. So I think that's Andy Russell in IK 64. But it's going to be 15. That takes up the running. Jordan Copeland. Uh, so he's gone awfully wide. Pipey then looking up that inside line in North Shropshire number five. Not quite the speed this time. Andy Russell through into third in IK 64. As uh, the pickup then on the outside. That's Glyn Bailey in Scunny 33. Trying the big, big wide outside line. But uh, not quite working this time around. 15, 64. North Shropshire five. Then comes the Scunny 33. Jamesy down the order this time. And he's looking again. Ground all contact with uh, Pipey in North Shropshire number five. Also problems for James Armstrong in Scarborough 76, but no problems for your race leader then. Back round towards us with one to go. Scunny 15 it is then, but Andy Russell looking up that inside again as they throw it into the start gate turn as uh, they uh, come back up the start straight. Russell takes up the running end down the far side. Scunny 15 from Glyn Bailey in Scunny 33. These three have pulled away from Tom Pipe in North Shropshire 15, and that's how it's going to finish. Checkers then at the ready. OK 64 will take it. Scunny 15 from uh, Glyn Bailey in Scunthorpe 33. Then comes Tom Pipe in North Shropshire 5. James Armstrong in Scarborough 76. Simon Morgan in Sem Valley 62. And uh, not to be this time around problems on board for uh, Jamesy, Marlon James. But uh, a few points, you never know, it just might be enough just to get him into that, fi into that final tomorrow afternoon. But uh, Jamesy comes across and uh, that completes race four of men's class sixes. So as Jamesy makes his way off the track, race five of men's six years. This brings out Andy Lewis in PhD 85. Joe Grayson in Scarborough 96. Adrian Lewis with the diesel in PAC number seven. Stephen Parsonage, North Wales 146. Jack Brown, another first heat winner in Mallow 181. Jordan Tinker in York 35. And Liam Morris in Border Counties 37. So that's your lineup for uh, race five of men's class sixes. As uh, once again, bungee lifts, let's go racing. Sixes are away. And from the middle of the pack, it's going to be the, uh, the Irish machine, Jack Brown. That once again leads into turn one, but uh, he's drifted wide. Parsonage looking up that inside line and uh, takes up the running. Norwell 46 82. Then comes uh, Jordan Tinker in your 35. He's uh, slotting into that third place slot. Then comes the uh, Grayson machine in Scarborough 96. Problems for Liam Morris. Early doors in Border County 37, but no, <clears throat> no, no uh, problems and no. No issues for your race leader then. Stephen Parsons, North Wales 146 from Jack Brown in Mallow 182. Tinker still running third in York 35, head of Scarborough 96. PAC 7 of Adrian Lewis and uh, Andy Lewis in the uh, PhD 85 machine at the tail of the field. Once again, back round towards us then. Once ago, still Stephen Parsons, your race leader from uh, the Mallow machine, Jack Brown. Mallow 181, Tinker still running third in York 35 from uh, the Grayson car then that's going to be Scarborough 96 of Joe Grayson as they go down that far side but uh, as uh, Stephen Parsons then tucks it in nice and tidy to the tyres puts pedals to the medal that's your winner North Wales 146 Jack Brown has settles for second in Mallow 182 York 35 of Jordan Sinker Scarborough 96 of Joe Grayson Andy Lewis in PAC number 7 and completing it all in Andy Lewis in PhD 85 So <clears throat> Bowser's then on to the uh, circuit as uh, we just won reruns to come. We're going to go. We're going to go with the last scheduled race of Class Sixes. So uh, this then brings out Kai Williams in Typhi 121, Phil Olson in Carmarthen 47, Adrian Brown in PAC 37, 
Ted Preedy in Radford 190, Paul Bailey in Hereford 99, Darren Reese in Typhi 95, and another first heat winner then in the form of Richard Jones will be there starting in lane eight, right towards the outside in Cumdi to 79. So that's the order for the last scheduled race of men's class sixes. They say Bowser's on to the circuit to uh, give the track a good old uh, soaking of the uh, dust settling solution. So once again, more water going down the uh, far side of the track. A bit of grading work going on in front of us in uh, commentary. So as the sun just starts to uh, to set around the circuit, certainly not getting any cooler. So those of you who are still uh, listening to us on Bass TV, then uh, as I said we are nearing the end of day one of the. Uh, 2002 round three or 2022 round three uh, British Autograph series and a pretty action packed day as, as well. So, all thrills and spills through, uh, throughout the classes, but uh, thankfully, no, uh, no major incidents, just a few uh, rollovers, a few, uh, a few damaged wallets, but again, nothing, uh, nothing serious. So, uh, so yeah, more water going down on the start gate turn. I think uh, absolute hats off to uh, all the marshals, all the track team, and everybody that's uh, been stood out there for uh, for most or even all of the day. And it's an absolutely stunning job. It's uh, it has really, really been uh, exceptionally warm. I know it's going to be warmer tomorrow, but uh, certainly uh, they've done an absolutely marvellous job trying to keep the racing flowing i know uh, we've had a few interruptions with uh, with a few incidents and uh, obviously the necessary watering to try and keep the track as uh, as in top top condition as we possibly can I say necessary evil i'm afraid but uh, they've done an absolutely they can do absolutely no more than than what they've done and uh, as i say i think they should be absolutely immensely proud of themselves after uh, a very warm and uh, I don't want to say testing, but uh, it's been a uh, been a, a very uh, eventful uh, day one of the British Autograph Series. But uh, I say hats off to the team. No doubt they'll be working uh, for, on it after the racing through the night. I suspect to get uh, to keep it in tip-top condition. And there was a few uh, little stones coming up and a few uh, issues, but uh, they'll get it sorted. They know what they're doing, and uh, we'll uh, no doubt have a cracking surface to race on in the morning. So Bowser's is just once again watering on the inside of the cones round the uh, start gate turn. So I think that's just about finished that. So they'll make their way, or one of the Bowser's will make their way off the uh, off the track. And hopefully that's going to leave it all clear for race six of men's class sixes. Kai Williams, Phil Olsen, Adrian Brown, Ted Preedy, Paul Bailey, Darren Reese, and Richard Jones. Just to remind you of the lineup. So the boys are out of the exit gate. We are going to be looking for track clearance shortly. Bungee lifts, let's go racing. Men's sixes are away from the line and from the outside grid then. Richard Jones makes the best start in Cum D. 279, Phil Olsen going with him in Carmarthen 47. Paul Bailey on that outside line in Hereford at 99, but back round towards us for the first time. Richard Jones, 279, Olsen in uh, Carmarthen 47. Paul Bailey having a better run this time in Hereford at 99, just ahead of Darren Reese in Typhi at 95 as they go down that far side PAC 37 also in there as well that's uh, Adrian Brown but uh, your race leader still uh, the big alpha then Richard Jones to come D 279 then back round towards us once again Olsen in command of 47 Paul Bailey in Hereford 99 with Darren Reese and Typhi at 95 PAC 37 and uh, Ted Preedy in Radford 190 
and that's IV 121 then will complete it all that will be Kai Williams but uh, into turn one then once again for the, the penultimate times and the last lap flag then goes out this time Richard Jones 279 for Lawson Kamala 47 Paul Bailey in Hereford 99 from uh, Darren Reese and Typhi 95 PAC 37 going through it's Adrian Brown Bradford 190 and Typhi 121 respectively so everybody safely on to the final circuit but we're looking for Richard Jones he's going to make it then two wins in out of two Kundi 279 takes the win Phil Olsen in command and 47 Paul Bailey in Hereford 99 Darren Reese in Typhi 95 PAC 37 of Adrian Brown Ted Preedy in Radford 190 and completed all then that's going to be Kai Williams in Typhi 121 So, uh, just one rerun to come in men's class sixes. We're going to stay with the front wheel drive machinery. Stock hatches over to Russ. Yeah, thank you, Tim. So, uh, second runner qualifying for the stock hatch crew. Two grids of cars to come your way. Uh, Paul Lickley and Chris Patterson took the wins last time out and they do not run together this time either. So could we see both on top form again? Not on this account because Paul Lickley's made a slow start, but there's contact and Forest 20 is going sideways and there's one on the infield. And uh, there we go. First red flag for the stock hatches this weekend after two clean runs first time out. And they're still not letting it up, are they? Now they finally back it off. Uh, so there we go, race one didn't get very far, only halfway down the first straight. So uh, they'll be sent back, hopefully brought back round fairly quickly, and then uh, we can go again. We'll try race two, uh, Martin Murray, John O'Crosby, Justin Hardy, Bryn Jones, Chris Patterson, Leon Cook. So fairly similar lineups, really, the two runs for these. Uh, both the Scarborough cars were in the same race last time round. And they uh, go together again this time. Donna, Donna, wherever you are, the uh, Scumvolp and White Rose uh, people need their top-ups, please. So uh, you need to go back with your woo-woo or whatever you call it. <laughs> So here we go then, let's see if race two can get a bit further as they make their way up the start straight for the first time. And it looks to be John O'Crosby who leads the way, then Melton Four goes into turn one in that Citroen AX. And uh, one of them looking around the outside, Martin Murray, as Justin Hardy, I think it is, looks up the inside, but it's Crosby who leads. Murray and uh, Hardy, and then it's Leon Cook. Chris Patterson's got work to do, he's down in fifth in uh, Scarborough 64 and the one just out of touch at the moment is Swansea 36 Bryn Jones uh, so down the uh, far side they go and don't forget stock catches will be officially at the men's nationals for the first time in two weeks and probably most of these drivers will be there John O'Crosby is on form though in this race leading the way Justin Hardy still uh, racing away with Martin Murray uh, in South Somerset 8 and Cumbie 88 and then uh, Patterson's made a position. He's got through uh, ahead of his club mate then, Leon uh, Cook, who sits there in fifth position now. And Bryn Jones still just uh, following away in Swansea 36. All onto the final lap they go then. Crosby looks clear. Murray just about looking safe in second place. The battle's on for fourth and fifth between the Scarborough drivers as they chase uh, Justin Hardy who still sits there in third. But Crosby's going to be a winner then and takes it. Melton 4 it is. Come D88, South Somerset 8, Scarborough 64, Scarborough 65 and Swansea 36. 
So, uh, stock hatch is completed then. Uh, well, one of them. Uh, one race uh, will be hopefully quickly turned around and brought back to the line. But we've got uh, sixes back on the line for another rerun. So, uh, Tim, uh, how many have we got? Just the one? Yeah, just the one rerun. Thank you, Russ. Yeah, thank just the one rerun. I think we're going without uh, the uh, Matty Schofield machine in YS22. There seems to be a gap on the, uh, on the grid. I think maybe going out with somebody else as well, but uh, we'll pick them out as they leave the line in a very, uh, very uh, uh, quick start, shall we say, from the uh, Scunny 36 machine. That's uh, Dane Copeland. That uh, leads into uh, the first turn, Jordan Hampson in Pen 970, slotted into that second place slot, Jake Holgate in North Wales 20 from Michael Keogh in Cumdy 433. He races just ahead of the uh, Typhoon 66 machine of Darren Thomas. And uh, one with it all to do then, that's going to be Aaron Murray in C80. So, yeah, we are going without uh, Maddie Schofield in YS22. We're not going without your race leader, though, because uh, that's now Jordan Hampson in Pennine 70. Problems for uh, Dane Copeland in Scarborough in Scunny 36. I think there may be a flag involved as well, something to do with the start. But uh, as we uh, head down towards Turn 1, once again, it's North Wales 20, Jake Olgate. It uh, takes up the run, it's all swap and change with one lap to go then. Hampson running second in Pen 70. Then there's Michael Keogh in Cum D 433 and Aaron Murray in Cum D 80 and, and uh, Typhoon 66 of Darren Thomas. Rounds it all out, but ahead uh, of affairs then. It's uh, your first, your second round winner looking to uh, gain more points to get himself in the final. Colgate wins it. From, uh, PA, PA, from uh, Jordan Hampson in Pen 970, Michael Keogh in Cumdy 433, Aaron Murray in Cumdy 80, and uh, Darren Thomas will complete it all in Typhi 66. So that's all class six is done and dusted. We'll see them uh, tomorrow for their third round of qualifying. And as we look as we look down towards the line, we're not 100% sure what's on the line. So uh, it could be a class A rerun. So if it is then, and uh, to take you through it, it's uh, back over to Liam. Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. So, uh, one thing's for sure, it's either eights or tens, because I've got class tens to come your way, and I can see them in the holding lanes. I have got a class eight rerun, so we're going to take a wild guess and say it is a class eight rerun, which is down there on the line. This will be a rerun of race seven to uh, come your way. So, a very big thank you, Beresford Chassis and Components of DM Race and their sponsors. So, we are away, and it is the class eights then that uh, get away. Adam Jones, it is the first one to show in BC69. A bit of a depleted field, but I'm sure they'll make a race of it. Gaz Edwards up the inside in North Wales 55 and uh, starts to take up the running as they go into that top turn. Jonesy's got the speed around the outside, as he? In 69, down the far side they go. We're going to stick with these two because it's neck and neck at the head of affairs for first and second. Edwards on the inside and makes his move and makes it work. So 55 from 69 it is. Third is going to be Solway number three, Thomas Browning in 141. And then the North Shropshire machine at the tail end, but Gaz Edwards it is that moves on down the far side for another time, ready to see that yellow flag with the black cross get made ready. He goes out wide. Jonesy now looks for the cutback up the inside in BC69. It's one more lap to go, two more corners to go, and Jonesy looks to stick with that inside line. The question is, has he got the speed to try and make it stick? It could work to his advantage if he uses it on this last corner. Edwards drifts out wide once again. It's checkered flag, it's Gaz Edwards that takes the win. 55, Jonesy takes second in BC69. So third then is going to go to Solway number three. North Shropshire 60 is the next one across. And Thomas Browning in St. Neots at 141 comes across, completes the race and completes the Beresford chassis and components and DM Racing sponsored men's class eights for the first day at uh, the third round of the 2022 Kent Cams and Simpsons sponsored British Autograph Series. A reminder then, drivers, if you haven't signed on, you need to sign on for tomorrow. There will be no racing for you tomorrow if you don't sign on. So once you finish your race, get down to the white tent behind commentary, get yourself signed on, 
if you want to race. Right, speaking of racing, tens are away. Hornshaw it is then. That leads them round. Hornshaw had a win in uh, Heat 1. He's joined by Matt Barnbrook, I think it is, in second in Scunny 45, running very well after his role at the uh, second round. Gary Morris is it on the outside in Cumdy 28. He took the outside line in Heat 1. He's doing the same in Heat 2. Fourth is going to be PAC 39. Ben Erdman in 207, Afterston number 9. And Dodd at the tail end of the field in the North Wales machine. But Hornshaw looking to make it two wins out of two. But down the far side he goes. He's got work to do to get that first place back. And he's going to have to do it later on because Red flags are out once again for me and for the first time in the uh, well for the first time I think this weekend for the men's class tens because they went through the first time in the first heat unfortunately Ben Erdman has uh, found himself square wheeled at uh, just about the entrance to that start gate turn so not too sure what happened I didn't see it I was focusing on the uh, race between Matt Barnbrook and Andy Hornshaw, but Ben Herdman it is then, as I said, unfortunately finds himself square wheeled, facing the wrong way in uh, Radford 207, which brings a uh, premature halt to the men's class 10. So speaking of class 10s then, big thank you to our sponsors. Pro Links, of course, your sponsors for the series and uh, Pave and Drive, your sponsors for the weekend. Now we got the ambulance out because Gary Morris is also stranded over on the far side in come D28. So uh, problems for Gary over there on the far side. Don't know whether he made contact with the Armco or not, but uh, the ambulance was required. Gary Morris is getting too old to be hitting Armcos, I think. So uh, the ambulance certainly out there to uh, give him a precautionary checkup. He is out of the car by the looks of things over there. So well, I'm sure he is okay, but of course the ambulance has to do the, uh, the mandatory checkup just to make sure that uh, all the drivers are fine. Of course, we had a fair few incidents over the course of the day, haven't we? And uh, the ambulance has always been there, and uh, I think the drivers for, uh, for every incident we've had have been absolutely fine. The cars have ended up a little bit worse for wear. We've certainly lost quite a few cars over the course of the first and the second heats, but uh, for the most part, all of the drivers have been A-OK, -okay, which goes to show the uh, the design and the, the buildings of these cars are uh, certainly made to withstand any damage and certainly withstand all the uh, all the melees that they get themselves into, especially the class 10s. And uh, they're not the most well behaved and uh, they have been pulling some s big speeds around this circuit. I mean, as I said earlier on in the first heat, this track's so, so quick. It's, uh, it's a little bit deceiving. As I said, you look at it, you could think, oh, it's quite a small track, it's quite tight in uh, maybe comparison to a few others. Certainly this straight in front of commentary, it almost seems as if you come out of turn two and you've uh, got to get it sideways to go into turn three. It's a very small straight, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't take away the speed that uh, these drivers are pulling because uh, they really are shifting around the circuit and it's provided us with some brilliant racing throughout the course of the day. And obviously more to come your way tomorrow, more than more, in fact, because uh, we are obviously going to have a few races left over from today that uh, we'll run into tomorrow. Of course, the ladies have already been told they haven't uh, got a second heat to come their way today. They will be the, uh, the first ones out in the morning. Not too sure on a start time as of yet, but uh, what was it this morning? It was just on half eight by the time we started, so I'd imagine it would be somewhere similar. I know uh, if they could start earlier, they probably would because uh, they don't like to play about. The North Shropshire Club have certainly proved their worth in terms of hosting bass rounds and hosting major meetings. And uh, they've certainly done their bit. Obviously, as I said, we have run a little bit over time, but these things are expected with 690 odd drivers, I think, signed on. Then uh, you do expect these things to happen. I don't think in the 20 odd years I've been going racing, I don't think we've ever had a bass round that's actually gone 100% to plan and ran on time. So uh, these things happen, we've become accustomed to it, but hey, at least we've become accustomed to it this weekend in the sunshine and we're not moaning about rain and we're not moaning about other weather conditions. It's uh, certainly been the most perfect weekend for uh, a lot of us to just relax and enjoy ourselves. And uh, I'm sure that's what a lot of you have done. I'm sure you're gonna continue that tonight after the uh, racing has finished. Of course, we have got numerous catering facilities over to the, uh, the left of us here in commentary. There is a bar as well, not that I'd know. I, I uh, don't drink, so I would never venture down there. But uh, there is a bar for those of you that would like a tipple. 
Probably not the ladies, because you've got an early morning tomorrow. You've got to be up and get racing. But uh, the bars down there, as I said, numerous catering room facilities. The trade stands, I imagine, will uh, remain open for uh, a few hours after the racing has ended. So uh, if you do need bits and bobs, we haven't got a list, but uh, certainly the usual suspects down there. Of course, BP Grassin in uh, their familiar yellow and green tent. Pat is down there with all your needs. Certainly won't need any umbrellas this weekend. But uh, she's down there. Vision Plus is down there as well. I don't know if Daphne's here with Dragon Racewear, but uh, she's been at the last two rounds, so I'm going to guess that she's down there. Obviously, you can see the big Beresford van as well, parked more towards the pits. So uh, it's certainly worth going down there this evening, checking it out, paying uh, a bit of attention, a bit of respect to uh, a lot of the trade stands. And, of course, a lot of the trade stands are a lot of the sponsors as well. So uh, a very big thank you to all of them. And uh, as I said, the food and the bar as well. And uh, we make no apologies for reminding you that, of course, if you are going to go back to either your campers or your tents or wherever tonight, please do not light any disposable barbecues and uh, place them on the ground. There has been uh, posts all over Facebook and there have been reminders that if you are going to have a barbecue tonight, then uh, make sure it is an actual barbecue with legs that can stand because uh, the last thing that we need is open flames in a field like this when the grass is so dry. And likewise with cigarettes, again, I've said it already, if, uh, if you do smoke, then uh, make sure you do extinguish your cigarette before putting it on the ground and stamping on it. It might seem like it's out, it might seem all well and good at the time, but uh, we really do need to stay on top of things because I'm sure you can all appreciate the weather that we have had, the, the, uh, the dryness of the field, and the last thing we need is a, uh, an open flame. And just to go along with that, if you see rubbish on the floor, whether it's yours or not, please pick it up and pull it in the nearest bin. There's plenty of bins around, and they have all been emptied as well because I've seen the crew going around and uh, emptying the bins and making sure that the, uh, the field is absolutely spotless. So please do make sure you put all your litter. And as I said, even if it's not yours, if it's around you and you see it, please do just pick it up and uh, put it in the nearest bin. Because uh, the North Shropshire Club have obviously done their part to give you the best weekend possible. So uh, the least we can all do as spectators or uh, drivers or whatever you may be, the least we can do is uh, reciprocate that respect and uh, help them out in any way we can. So just looking around them, we still got issues over on the far side. I think a bit of fence repair going on, is it? So uh, we've got a couple of JCBs out. The water tanker taking this opportunity to uh, put some water down on the circuit as well. As I said, we are approaching the uh, end of day one. There are uh, still a few races to come your way. I've got, what have I got? Three races of men's class 10s to come your way. Whether we'll be seeing the junior specials or not remains to be seen. But uh, the holding lanes do look like they've got a fair few cars in them. So... Uh, it does look possible. It is quarter past seven, so uh, we will just have to wait and see. But certainly we're sticking around to uh, watch the remaining races. And uh, as I said, hopefully if, uh, if they can carry on, then I know they will. And uh, we will have to wait and see. And then uh, obviously the ladies racing to uh, be done in the morning. So uh, Ross Thompson is uh, certainly one of those people that would be, uh, well, I don't know, are you hoping they run the junior specials, Russ, or are you hoping they don't? Because he's, he's been sat here for a while waiting, so uh, I'd imagine he would be hoping they do come up, otherwise he's wasted his time completely. And trust me, the last thing anyone wants to do in this field is be sat in the commentary box with me listening to me. So uh, big respect to Russ Thompson for putting up with me for this long, to be honest. But uh, he did say they have called him up, so it does seem like they are going to try and get him done. And uh, as I said, once they get them done, then all that will be left is the ladies racing in the morning, which isn't too bad. Uh, I'm sure they will power through it tomorrow and uh, crack on, of course. Tomorrow, only one round of qualifying. And uh, then we do move on to semi-finals for the ones, twos, sevens and eights. And uh, of course, the finals for the rest of the classes. So there is less racing tomorrow because uh, obviously only the one round of qualifying rather than two so uh, it does give them an opportunity to uh, if they do start early they can obviously play catch up we seen it at Cumdy uh, a couple of weeks ago I think they stopped at ladies twos I think so they had four six eights and tens to do and I think they still had the junior specials to do as well the next day and uh, I think they played catch up and managed to do it 
And uh, I think we was all done and dusted and out of the field by about six o'clock in the evening. So it shows that it can be done. And uh, I'm sure we're all used to it at Bass Rounds now. As I said, nothing ever goes smoothly and uh, nothing ever goes to plan. Blame the drivers. It's the driving standards. That, uh, that's the issue. Class 10s, they shouldn't have anything to worry about. They've only had one rerun out of five races throughout the whole day. So uh, as long as it stays at one rerun and we get the next three done, then I'll be more than happy to, uh, to congratulate them on, uh, on their success. So what else are we missing then? We don't really want to go quiet because, as I said, we are so late. And uh, what else can we shout out? Those on Bass TV then. I'll tell you what, if you've been here since half eight this morning and uh, you've been sat watching the stream for the whole time, drop us a message. Whether it's, there you go, we're on camera. So hello, those of you that are still with us. If, uh, if you have been with us since the morning, then drop us a message. Oh, there we go. We say that. We got a message now. Can you put a shout out to all of the people at York UK from us York Club Farrow Crew? So there you go. Big shout out to all the Farrow Crew that are at the UKAC. I know that uh, they've got a, uh, a TV at the, uh, the Wunderbar and are uh, showing the bus. So hopefully you're all enjoying the bar. I'm sure you are, especially the Farrows. That goes without saying. But uh, I'd imagine the UK would be done by now. So hopefully then, if you're all sat there outside the bar and enjoying yourselves and uh, getting ready for day two of the UK AC, then hopefully you're enjoying the coverage of the bass. We are a little bit behind you, but I tell you what, it's been worth it. We've had some brilliant racing, so we can't really complain. So uh, hopefully you guys are all enjoying yourselves. Hopefully you've all had a good day as well. If anyone wants to send us uh, some results from their, uh, their respective races at the UK AC, by all means, please do. We got another message. Here we go then, who's that? Andy Jefferson, looking good fella. Andy's obviously watching something different. So I uh, don't know what Andy's watching, but uh, he might be five, about 50 minutes behind before I was on the mic, but uh, I'll take it. Cheers, Andrew. So uh, appreciate the comments. As I said, anyone else that is out there, if you are watching, then uh, please do give us a message. Please drop us in. It's uh, 20 past seven in the evening. The sun is shining. We've uh, still got some more racing to go. And uh, we've all got an exciting evening ahead of us as well. So uh, if you are sat there, like I said, whether you're at home, whether you're at the UKAC, whether you're uh, wherever you are in the world, you could be on holiday, you could be anywhere. But if you're watching, drop us a message, let us know. And uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, give you a shout out. I don't know whether Nick Apps is uh, watching. Let's see if he's online. If he's online, we'll give him a message. We'll do it the other way around. But, uh, of course, if Nick Apps is watching, then uh, we have to give him a thank you because without, uh, probably without his input last year of doing the live streams for uh, all the meetings, then uh, this Bass TV probably wouldn't have come to fruition. So a very big shout out to Nick. I know he did, uh, he did this meeting last year, the last Bass round, and uh, provided some excellent coverage. We was actually sat at home on Thursday, I think it was, watching the coverage and uh, getting ourselves in the mood to, uh, to come back and uh, come back to this absolutely fantastic venue. We've got more messages then. Who's this? Callum Coventry. Can you stop getting red flags? Everyone wants their pint. Callum, we've known each other a long time. You know I can't stop getting red flags. It's just ingrained in my, my brain that I need to do it. So uh, I've also been told to get a skinhead for the Nationals. That's definitely not happening. And uh, I won't be on camera for the Nationals anyway, because I'm not commentating. So uh, there's nothing wrong with me, yeah? It looks all right. It's been a long day. It's been sweaty. It's been warm. So uh, let it lie. But uh, as I said, all of you then, drop us a message. Even if you're trackside, then uh, give us a message if you want to shout out. Oh, there we go. Autographs Royalty messaging us now. We got a uh, fellow commentator, Kevin Herdman. Of course, uh, I don't really think I need to introduce Kevin to uh, any of you trackside. I'm sure you've all heard him over the course of the last 70 odd years or so he's been commentating. Seems like that. So uh, what's Kevin put? Great coverage. Look forward to working with you at the Nationals. Well, again, thank you, Kevin. But unfortunately, I won't be part of the team at the Nationals. But uh, I will certainly be there and I certainly look forward to seeing you. Uh, I don't know if I've seen Kevin this year. I don't think I have because he wasn't at the map. So, uh, Kev, then uh, definitely see you at the Nationals. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, we won't be able to work together, but I'm sure we can sneak in a cheeky lemonade or a cheeky Diet Coke together at uh, some point during the course of the weekend. Andy Jefferson's now sent me a photo. He sent me a photo of myself. Andy, I can see the TV in front of me, and it's the last thing I want to look at. 
So <laughs> I don't need to see a picture of myself. Although saying that, in that one, I look quite good. So uh, that might be a new Facebook profile picture for the uh, foreseeable future. Callum Coventry again, he's messaged me. Pay 50 quid up to anyone who would do that. So anyone who would get a skinhead. There you go. I guess Callum Coventry is the one paying the money. So if anyone wants to shave their head ready for the Nationals, Callum Coventry is willing to give you 50 quid. We've seen Adam Jones dye his hair blonde, ready for this bass round. So uh, who knows what could happen? Another message then. Tom Roberts has dropped us one. Shout out to CC Fabrications, Craig Conway, Jess Roberts, and all the gang from Sonny Barnsley. So a uh, big shout out to them. I did see Jess earlier. I think she's actually to the, well, she was at one point only to the left of us here in commentary. And... Uh, I think I'm right in saying that Jess and Craig have got some sort of big day coming up in the uh, next few weeks. So uh, a big shout out to them. And uh, look at that. Tom even managed to get the sponsor in there. CC Fabrications. Eh? Not just a big shout out to Craig Conway and Jess, but uh, shout out to CC Fabrications. So a big shout out to them then from Tom Roberts from Sonny Barnsley. So... Uh, as I said, any more, keep them coming. We've got time as uh, they're still working over there on the far side. We don't mind reading them out as long as, uh, as long as there's no words that we can't read out. And even if there is, I'm sure we can substitute them for something else. So uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to talk and make it sound interesting. Which, unfortunately, that's probably why I'm not doing the Nationals, Jeff, is uh, talking and not making it sound interesting. So there we go then, just hearing, for those of you, uh, I'm sure you just sit on camera to the right of me, Jeff Guyot from uh, West Country Videos, of course, is the one providing you with the live stream for the weekend. Archie Lewis, I'll tell you what, <laughs> he might be my brand new hero. So uh, Archie Lewis, I don't mind giving him a personal shout out myself. Thank you, Archie. So uh, Jeff Guyot then, as we were saying, from West Country Videos, the one supplying you with the, uh, the live stream this weekend. He's the one filming all of the footage that you've seen over the course of the day. They will be at the Nationals. There will be no live stream, but uh, he will be filming. He will be uh, filming all of the action and uh, recording it. There will be DVDs available of the Men's Nationals. So uh, there will be DVDs of the men's nationals and USB sticks as well. So there we go, technology moving itself forward in the world. So well, all the action then at the men's nationals, what's that, two weeks is uh, to come your way. Jeff Guy will be filming all of the action. I imagine then that might mean there will be a trade stand there, but don't hold me to that because he hasn't said that. That's just me guessing. Uh, but uh, they will be filming it all. They will be providing DVDs, not just the men's, but the ladies and juniors as well. Of course, we've spoke so highly of the men's nationals because it is coming up so soon. But ladies and juniors nationals, of course, this year being hosted by the uh, Hereford Autographs Club. Uh, I think we've got, I don't know, I think about six weeks maybe until that. Uh, I do know one thing, which is probably a good time to say it. The cutoff date for those ladies and juniors that haven't signed on yet, haven't got your entry forms and filled it out. If you do want to race at the Ladies and Juniors Nationals, you need to get it all done by the 18th of July. That is the cutoff point. So uh, Barbara Harper, of course, has uh, got all the forms, got all the information that you need. So if you do want to be racing at Ladies and Juniors Nationals, you need to get it all sorted out by the 18th of July. It's the 16th today. So really, you're looking at tomorrow. You've got one more day in order to try and get it all sorted. I'm sure that most of you would have got it done, but for those of you that have forgot or have maybe been putting things off, then make sure you get your entry forms in by, uh, well, by tomorrow evening at the latest Monday morning to uh, get it all done, to get yourself there. And I'll tell you what, that will be an absolutely fantastic meeting uh, from the Hereford Club. And as I said, also being filmed by West Country Videos. And again, they will be providing DVDs and uh, USB sticks for that. So uh, the USB stick, I guess then, is just one of those, you plug it into your computer and uh, the coverage comes straight to you. I'm not exactly the most technical person, so uh, don't ask me. Right, we've got a message. Oh, God, I said about autograph royalty earlier, about Kevin Erdman. We've got it even worse now. So uh, the cream of the creme, then, I think, is the word. Sally Langley, unfortunately, not with us this weekend. And uh, I'm sure that uh, 
she's enjoying the fact that she's not with us this weekend. She's uh, probably got some peace and quiet. Although saying that, I think Sally might be one of those that has actually stuck with us on the uh, whole stream. So Sally has said, shout out to TLL Media Motorsport. They are uh, taking photos all through the weekend on track and off track. Having a blast of a time racing the nine as well, TA42. So a very big shout out to them. And uh, she sent me another message. Shout out to Neil, Sophie and Hannah Lewis and all my racing family. Missing you all loads, but watching you all on Bass TV. That would make me tear up if she put my name in it, but she didn't. But Sally, I miss you too. So uh, a big shout out then to Neil, Sophie and Hannah Lewis. Uh, I think, uh, I think was it Hannah Lewis that unfortunately come to grief in the juniors in the first round of qualifying? But I'll tell you what, she's got love from uh, Sally Langley. That's all that matters. If I raced, I'd rather write my car off and have Sally Langley tell me I love me than I would have a good result. So, but uh, there we go. So as I said, Sally, unfortunately, not with us this weekend, but uh, I'm sure she'll be with us at uh, the next round well i'm sure she'll be at the nationals because uh, she always is and uh, not quite the same without sally we've missed her running around this weekend dropping in paperwork although on a personal note just to sally i have received my t-shirts and uh, they do fit so thank you very much steve 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 did say if they didn't fit then blame you but they do fit so thank you right we look like we are done so all that talking for absolutely no reason liam i know but there we go then. That is going to conclude the first day of the third round of the 2022 Kent Cams and Simpson sponsored British Autograph Series. It is just coming up to half past seven. They said they was going to run between seven and half past seven. They've uh, stayed true to their word. There's obviously certain things that they've had to do over on the far side, which has stopped things from uh, progressing even more. We have got a few races of men's class 10s. We've got the junior specials and the ladies we obviously knew wasn't coming out today. Unfortunately, then, that does bring us to a halt. But I'll tell you what, a brilliant day's racing. Well done to everybody involved, especially, and I make no apologies for saying this, to all the marshals that have stayed out there in the centre of the field, in this heat, in their, uh, their high vis and all their overall. So a very big well done to them. Very big well done to all the lap scorers, all my fellow commentary team and everyone like that. That does conclude day one, as I said. Tomorrow we will be racing, not too sure of a time, but I'm going to guess it's going to be about 8.30 again. But make sure you are trackside and ready. Make sure you get ready by about 8 a.m. Because, uh, as I said, if they can start early, then they will. We're obviously going to be kicking off tomorrow, probably not with Class 10s, but we will be starting probably with the Junior Specials. We've got all the ladies' second heats and uh, Class 10s men for their second heats as well. For those of you then that are uh, staying on track, for those of you trackside, make sure you have a good night. As I said, please do abide by the rules with the, uh, the barbecues and things like that. Make sure you all stay safe. For those of you watching on Bass TV, thank you for sticking with us. Hopefully you've all enjoyed the stream. We will see you tomorrow. As I said, not too short on the time, but be ready for 8 a.m. Make sure you go, uh, get yourself sat on the sofa, ready to go. For those of you trackside, make sure you're ready to go. For those racers, make sure you're signed on if you want to race tomorrow. And on that note, I will see you all in the morning.